Chapter 41 Adventurer Arc Inside a church, the Saintess is looking at a very large room with a big magic circle on the floor. On top of it, an unusual number of thirty summoned humans can be seen. Why are there this many humans? The Pope Claus thought confused as the number in their old books never ceased more than ten. Is the upcoming threat going to be incredibly hard? Perhaps the Goblin Army isn't the only one we'll have to deal with. A green-haired woman spoke in front of these humans alongside Kloss and a few priests behind them, as a warm welcoming aura surrounded her calming their hearts. I am the Saintess of this world, I welcome the O oh brave humans who shall save our Lumen Kingdom from perishing. A black-haired with black eyes boy speaks, Yo, so you're the Saintess? I have a message for you from the goddess Arya. Yes, that is me, what is the message O oh young soul? The goddess apologizes for not sending you some sort of celestial messages whatever that is, but in compensation, she summoned more helpers than usual. Understood, and so you gentlemen are. From the overall idea while I was talking with the goddess we were summoned from different worlds, with our memories of our past lives, so I know at least 19 of them, they're my university classmates, an advanced school of sorts. The group was divided into 20 and 10 as he said that. Those other ten are people that the goddess picked from other worlds, different from my own, also my name is Ken, I'm the class representative of this group. For now we'll want all of you to place your hand in this stone book over here, I believe the goddess Arya explained the procedure. Yes, that goddess was really beautiful with her black long hair and golden eyes, my name's Sophie, a pink-haired girl with pink eyes spoke from a different group. It's a pleasure to meet you all, I'm Pope Kloss, and I'd like each of you to come put your hands in these stone books they will give you the initial idea of your information and aptitudes. After a while, all their names, ages, elements, and classes were available inside the book. Seems like we got our hero, Ken, a priest said with a smile making the Pope excited. Upon hearing the name Ken steps forward, I was the chosen for the hero role? Really? He questioned feeling an immense bliss from that thanking the goddess in his mind. Yes, like many past generations, a hero is usually one with black hair and eyes, as a hero, you get to choose which faction you get to join, though we obviously advise the church as it has been the home for most of the past heroes. I'll go to the faction that is willing to host the 19 members behind me, he said while pointing backward over his shoulder without looking behind ending up looking kind of cool. We can house that many, the Pope said without hesitation as he wanted the hero no matter what. I can tell you really want me the hero to be part of the church, if that's so then you better treat them good in exchange I'll be sure to do a great job as a hero, he said with an arrogant tone, possessing the knowledge of hundreds of RPGs. You've been blessed with the unique light element, and the blessed skill Holy Smite capable of destroying any race except the humans and animals, the priest added explaining how special the class was. That sounds like a great skill, from the conversation we had with the goddess I expected less, but this is a good start. The priest upon checking a few more pages says, there seems to be another hero, your eminence. Another one. He asked confused as not many receive the hero class, and two at the same time had never happened before. Apparently it's the pink-haired girl Sophie. What other factions are there? Sophie who felt her group ignored asked wanting to pick someone other than this ridiculous pope, however, with a kind smile he replied. There exists the royal family faction and the eight rose-colored noble families, who each represent their own power with their extensive territories in the kingdom. They sound pretty amazing too but I'll stick to this Pope, Ken replied as the goddess told him the Saintess had incredible powers without specifying what exactly. Very well, priests take them to their rooms and start teaching them about this world once they feel ready. A group of priests started leading the twenty college students out. I'd like the royal family, Sophie said then she looked behind and asked, how about you eight whom I don't know? They started thinking and ended up going along with her, as they didn't know each other except for one guy, who knew Sophie extremely well. Very good, the Saintess will now take the ten of you to meet His Highness the King, whose fate may or may not be further split as the royal family usually only takes the hero. Your eminence there seems to be another unique class called Sage, however, such is unknown, not even listed in the records of the church. Sophie who already expected that looked at Romeo, the guy furthest in the back who was smiling, as in their past world they were also the hero and Sage. A Sage. The Pope questioned confused as he never heard of such a job. Romeo stepped side to side to Sophie and spoke, I'm Romeo and it is a class from my and Sophie's past world, it's focused on knowledge and any type of healing and support skills. Upon hearing that Sophie nodded in agreement. 
thanks to the versatility of this class we were once able to seal the strongest monster that ever lived in that world, inside a cursed mirror for all the eternity, even as we have already died over there for who knows how long, she'll still be there asleep till the end of times, unlike the rest of the summoned our souls were picked from what the goddess called the void. That sounds tremendously useful, you could even seal one of the demon lords or even the king, the Pope declared thirsty to get his hands on such a class. That is so, however, I'll go wherever Sophie decides to go, thus we'll take the path to the royal family which I'm sure they'll accept us both, and find a home for the other eight summoned people who each will be useful in some way surely, as the goddess said unique classes aren't everything in this world, so I take it that being a hero, won't be as great as it used to be. Seems like you messed up Kloss, Saint Tess laughed happily in her mind and then said, Please, do follow me, I'll guide the ten of you to the royal family to the castle close by. Damn it, I should have treated them better, but it's not a gigantic loss I still managed to get a willing hero and nineteen summoned humans, these types of humans grow faster than a normal one and usually come with better blessings of the goddess Arya. I'll focus our resources on them as our army has grown big enough for now. An hour later the Saintess arrives at a long living room where the king, the prince, Ryu, Mark, Luke and Aurora are sitting at a long table. Welcome Saintess, the king said while getting up with a big smile on his face. Thank you, your highness, she bows slightly out of respect. So this is the Saintess of the kingdom, and these are the summoned people they're a lot more grown up than Iris. Wait. That face with pink hair and pink eyes that's the hero from my world? That guy the sage? Why are they here? Did the goddess tell them about me? Why are they in a younger version? What's happening here? No, wait, calm down, the system the one who sealed me, so there's a chance that they think I'm still sealed in the past world, and the goddess should know that we want to help the humans in case she noticed us, everything should be fine. Calm down Aurora, calm down, the same won't happen again, if it does Iris can help me, everything is fine, you won't spend 10,000 years again sealed in a dimension. A different Aurora spoke to her, I want to kill them, I want to destroy them, I want to break them, I want to torture them, I want to hurt them, I want to harm them. Ah. Yes, I truly do want that as well but. Soon we'll kill them, soon we'll destroy them, soon we'll break them, soon we'll torture them, soon we'll hurt them, soon we'll harm them. Yes that is right, but now is not the time. That's right Aurora the time hasn't come yet for us to claw at their throats and engulf them in their own blood. Soon very soon I'll make them suffer the same way they made me suffer. Yes, we must be patient Aurora for the awakening of our master Iris hasn't happened yet. We must wait for the cursed class to take full effect on her personality. Only then will we become truly strong once more Aurora. Stronger than we used to be. No Aurora, much stronger than that, much more powerful. For the day our master awakens. For that day will cause more chaos than the god of chaos himself. Yes. Now shut up I need to concentrate. Mad laughter echoed in her brain as it got lower and lower vanishing into the corners of the mind. The Saintess was looking confused at Aurora without taking her eyes off her and then she spoke, Who's that girl? You've heard of Luke the healer right? It's his daughter, she's the soon to be general of my army, Aurora. Aurora. Romeo and Sophie said in unison while looking at the girl. Aurora looked at them innocently and confused, then she got up and bowed saying, it is a pleasure to meet you, Saint Tess, I've heard a lot from you and all were good things, I look forward to the day we'll work together to save this kingdom. Likewise, young soul, it is my pleasure if I can help our goddess Arya bring complete salvation to the human race, she bowed slightly while smiling out of respect for such courtesy and good manners. Anything wrong Romeo, Sophie? Saint Tess asked them as they were being unpolite. No, I'm sorry we confused her for someone else, this one looks completely different. Just so you two know, the last summoned was close to 100 years ago, so it is impossible that anyone you know in a past life will still be alive in this world, most humans don't even live that long. They breathe deeply and say, sorry we understand. The king then spoke, I heard an unusual amount of summoned humans were brought by the almighty goddess Arya this time around, is that true Saint Tess? Yes, your highness about 30, one of the heroes took the church side along with 19 of his friends, and these are the leftover ten along with that rude but cute boy Romeo a sage, and this rude but cute girl Sophie a hero. They bow their heads apologizing further. It's all right, you two are still young and just came from a different place so rise, and tell me of your wishes. Romeo took the initiative and started talking. We'd like to remain together as we were the hero and the sage of a past world together, 
we both have a unique class that complete each other very well, the sage class being a supportive class with healing skills, can be considered a class based on knowledge. Then Sophie spoke, we do not know how the other eight can help, but please do take them into good factions, so that they too have an opportunity to grow stronger, after all, the goddess blessed everyone in a way to help the human race. The king laughed and then he said, yes, now you two sound much better, we'll comply with your wishes as we do not force any summon to do anything against their own will, we do ask that in the least when the goblin king invades, that you will help us save the kingdom. The crown prince then spoke, I don't know how your old world was, but in this world, we're the weakest race, we're the smallest country with 10 million humans and in four years we'll be facing a war against a goblin king. Your Highness if I may speak. Yes, of course, present yourself while at it. My name is Kana, warrior class, 20 years old, and in my old world a goblin king would be around level 30, and very weak, I've even killed one alone along with a big horde. I had a different class than I have now and was level 80, the max level was 100. Greetings Kana, I'm the Crown Prince Julius, he smiled cutely making her blush, we believe the Goblin King alone to be above level 100, as my father mentioned, in this world, we are the weakest, an average human is level 20 in 10 million. We consist of around 10% of the world's population, at least that's what has been estimated, but we're not entirely sure, as exploring could lead to death. All the summoned felt nervous upon hearing that as some of them had a great experience in past lives dealing with monsters and other things. We've been guided by the goddess Arya and other summoned heroes who came before you in past generations, we're also very well situated on the map with the sea to the west, mountains to the east and an impossible to pass through the territory on the north where a legendary red dragon lives. For now we'll let all of you rest and be taught about our world, we'll have different teachers from different noble families, Every and each of you will surely find a suitable home in one of the prestigious eight rose noble families. Different butlers picked one and took them. The remaining three, Romeo, Sophie, and the Saintess were invited to sit at the long table. Before we resume the discussion with the summoned, Aurora please do take the recommendation and the letter I've written, you and your dad can go home, we'll meet soon, Ryu spoke with a serious tone. Thank you, Lord Ryu, we'll be waiting for news, Luke smiled at him. I hope to see you soon Crown Prince, Mark, Ryu and Saint Tess, Aurora smiled innocently while waving at them in a childish way giving a normal child impression to Romeo and Sophie. Have a good trip back home child, if the fate threaded by the goddess aligns our paths, then they will surely be crossed within time, the Saint Tess replied with a charming smile. The Crown Prince smiled at Aurora with high expectations. If you'll excuse us, your highness. Of course Luke the healer, have a good trip back home the king said smiling gently. The butler showed them off to the wagon where they'd be able to rest during the trip back. Well then, Miss Hero as many will start calling you from this day onwards, I'd like to know your story and experience in your past world alongside your friend's side. In our case, we lived in a world with only humans, at least by the time we were born, and because of that, the conflicts, wars, and sacrifices were all between different human kingdoms, in our case the one we were born in, was made up of 70 million humans. Seven times bigger than our kingdom, that's incredible, the king thought feeling like he lost by a large margin. All kingdoms sought to dominate one another in order to dominate the world, and due to that every war would consume millions of lives, there was a special tough country who almost dominated the world, but we ended up defeating them. I used mainly a long sword, we called it Great Sword, and Romeo would heal the wounds of our armies, and develop spells to help us in many ways. A two-man army basically, Romeo clarified putting it into the simplest words he could think of. The prince spoke, check your information with the personal information skill, just focus on that name with your mind, you can even say it out loud works the same. Oh, I can see a little screen with some information. Yes, me too. Sophie said happily as that didn't exist in their old world. The prince started a long explanation, even with unique classes your stats should be very low. Every age that passes we get one stamina which equals to 10 health points, probably the highest stat you two have. Yes, they said in unison excited. From our information, a goblin gets one strength, two stamina and minus one wisdom per age, so they get dumber but stronger than us by age alone, however, leveling up grants them five status points so it's not a low amount as they can recover the wisdom of 10 years with two levels. That's... Yes, exactly Sophie, and goblins aren't the strongest of foes, the demons are a lot worse, and the monsters can be equally bad. As such, the knowledge you two already have in case this system may or may not have the same skills you two had, 
will allow you both to become stronger faster or not, nonetheless, we'll all spend resources on all the summoned, so that they can become strong enough, but as you've guessed the chances that a lot of you and a lot of us will die is certain. From a world filled with wars that were eventually brought to peace, to a long rest, and now another world in war sounds like we have a long way again Romeo. At least this time around every human is in the same boat, the same Tess spoke cheering them up. Hopefully, knowing that there are factions this early on, already makes me think that not everyone will be friends with one another, that being one of the reasons I avoided the Pope, no offense Saint Tess but he felt creepy, Sophie said feeling rather disgusted. The Saint Tess laughed, he's a bit greedy in some ways, but he's not a bad person, at least, I haven't seen him do anything bad, otherwise, wouldn't have allowed him to take twenty summoned, young lady. Seems like you found someone you can vent to Saint Tess, the king laughed reminding himself of some of their private conversations. The king then looked at Julius next to him and asked, So son, what was that all about, a little girl who probably isn't even ten years old being the general of the Lumen Kingdom army? Ah, let's just say she's the real deal, a prodigy with a sick body incapable of using magic and doing physical activity. That little girl was born with a sick body. She truly doesn't sound like a threat then, Romeo thought reminding himself of what it was like back then. If she can't fight in either way what's the prodigy thing about her? The king asked confused frowning the eyebrows. The crown prince smiled, her brain, she outclassed me in chess. Whoa, that's fantastic. The king started laughing as he above all others knew how smart Julius is. Your highness has chess in this world too. Romeo asked while smiling curiously. If I can beat this prince guy then surely I could replace that little girl. Yes we do, do you also play? Yes, it was very famous in our old world along with some other games. I don't have much time left so which of you two is best? Sophie pointed at Romeo who is quite good, that would be me. They played three games and Romeo ended up losing all of them. Dang, I didn't expect to lose in chess as soon as I came into this world, just how good are you prince? I used to be the best in the kingdom, but I've lost the title to that Aurora young girl, she beat me fair and square. She looked pretty cute. Too bad she's too young, Romeo said bluntly making the men at the table laugh. Sophie stepped on his feet feeling jealousy as they were a couple in a past life. Ouch. No need to do that, it's not like I'm going to betray you or anything Sophie. You better not otherwise my sword might slip onto your neck, she pouted cutely making everyone laugh. Also Prince Julius, we both have unique classes with unique light elements, so we'll be a bit stronger than most right? Yes, that is so. We're looking forward to your growth these four years before we get invaded by the Goblin King, the prince said while smiling reassuring Romeo who knew he needed to become strong. Chapter 42 Adventurer Arc Two days later in the morning of the day, 29th of the sun season. Iris's family have reunited again in their house, they could be found on the sofa discussing everything that happened. Those were such long trips, Iris, I hope you won't have to go to the capital anytime soon. Aurora said feeling tired from it since the wagon ride took hours and hours. Dad and I got you a recommendation letter in case you want to study in the capital with everything paid. Whoa how did you? Rosalind asked surprised opening her mouth wide as it was something usually only received to the top 10 winners of the annual tournament. I beat the prince in a chess game, Aurora laughed making the three of them smile at her. That's my sister. Even though I don't want to go to the capital, I have found a lot of things I want to do. I also rejected Alfred's swordsmanship offer. The greatest swordmaster skills? Didn't you want to become stronger, daughter? I taught you magic and your mother swordsmanship, but I figured you'd want to improve on both. Yes, but I was still happy I got to see Alicia again and mother got to meet her childhood friend Sylvia who is the mother of Alicia. Regarding getting stronger, I have some ideas. What the head of the royal guards is? I didn't know that sister. Yes. I reply feeling excited, mother was very happy and surprised, I look at Rosalind who is still smiling happily about it. That's interesting, sister, also apparently in the kingdom capital and possible around it, not sure how far that vast light reached but it appeared on the sky illuminating everything intensively. It was the goddess that sent the summoned heroes from possibly different worlds, about thirty of them. Just in the day you went to the capital, how lucky are you sister? I wanted to be there to meet them too. They were all older than us apparently around their twenties, I'm assuming with special classes, elements, skills and who knows what other blessings. Yes, that's most likely a thing, some of the past ones had them, daughter, even though only the hero that usually stands out, 
possibly due to some strong skill they might have. Exactly love, the book tales of Artana, mostly only have stories of past heroes, even if the country could have been supported by the other ones too, in other words, now is when the humans will be the strongest. That's amazing mom, I gaze upon my sister and voice my excitement, we need to become stronger or they'll surpass us. Indeed, we also told them I couldn't use elemental magic and barely anything other than a bit of mana, that I was all brains with a weak body due to being sick early on. That's a very good way to keep unwanted attention from our family, mother added while thinking about the conversation as it flowed. By the way, I have a confession to make, I look at them with a serious expression, due to my disgrace class I've been losing the senses and something or someone has been taking over me from time to time like the time where I fought Alfred, with my eyes starting to shine, I take a breath regaining air and continue speaking, due to that, my brainwash resistance skill has been growing a lot, but since I have four cursed skills they sometimes overwhelm my mind, and I don't know what to do about it, with a few tears starting to flow I finish by saying, I don't want to become someone evil if I can help it. Luke and Aurora looked at each other as they remembered what they heard in the reunion about the church and disgraceful classes, then father's mouth opened, I think there's one thing we can try Iris, it'll help you a lot. A solution. I question while mother wipes my tears embracing me in her arms. You have two ways of going at it, you either resist till your skill max is nullifying completely the skill's effects, or we pay a blacksmith to make you equipment with that property which could be very expensive. That's pretty possible but you'd need soul stones from monsters that aren't affected by brainwashing, mother added with her voice right next to my ear. Such as. I look at them filled with curiosity. Aurora has faced some already didn't she? You mean the skeleton's mother? Yes, they're dangerous, but they work also undead, zombies, and ghosts. Go deliver the quest Aurora, I'll do some alchemy before meeting you at the West Forest, I have a lot of herbs I haven't used, and Rohan will drop by soon to come to gather things. All right, we can try to get some of them in the ruins. Ah, and water the fields before you leave please. Sure meet you there, I'll try to get a new quest towards the West Forest. Sounds perfect, thank you, sister. I'll tag along with you need to meet Vicent, I'll lend you a hand with the fields. Thank you father, they leave together and I take a look at mother who is smiling while watching Luke and Aurora who seem to have gotten closer since the last time we saw them. After they leave I ask mom something, mother is it alright if I eat soul stones? I have a gigantic amount of soul, appraisal said it should work fine. Even if it was fine, I don't know how that could help you, dear. I was thinking that if I destroy a skeleton and then eat the soul stone, I would naturally have more brainwash resistance. I think it is too risky, imagine that your soul loses to the souls you ate and you become a skeleton, even if you remain with your personality, the body would be forever gone unless you ate human soul stones as well, and even then things might not work the way we want it to. It's hard to find a way to counter the effects of the skills. I let out a sigh rubbing my face on my mother's breasts. That's true, so you need to make sure that the way you chose to go, isn't a bad one or it could become worse or grant more than one problem, plus the church would either dispatch a team to destroy you if they knew or an adventurer or a soldier would kill you on sight. Unless I ate one human soul stone and one skeleton at a time, if I did that would it work? Appraise such information. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. The chance that the race would change would be minimal but not zero. Obtaining statuses and traits from both races, equipment is safer. Honestly speaking daughter I believe you should let it naturally sink in, so that you get your skill strong enough to counter all the effects, and still use this chance to cautiously level up by defeating some skeletons. I understand mother, my words end with a smile which mom corresponds in the same way, and then her lips open and words come out. Baby, don't forget it is the ruins, do be cautious about it monsters there are extremely numerous so if you do go there with Aurora make sure you always stay on guard. Yes, mother. My now dried face is filled with excitement. I'll sharpen my sword, it should still help you on one last adventure while you do alchemy. Thank you. After that, I'll have to go teach the kids some swordsmanship, they got away with a one day break so their bodies should be able to handle extra work today. Rosalind smiled evilly in a mature charming way making me smile. Moments later I place a bag of 30 herbs that I want to give Rohan to sell near the exit of my room. Well then, it's time to start, Dark Alchemy. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Dark Alchemy. Weakness Potion, it'll weaken the consumer losing statuses. Sleep Potion, it'll induce the consumer into a deep sleep. Love Potion, 
the first person the target sees after consuming the potion will become in love with. Paralysis potion, it'll slowly paralyze their body can be countered by an antidote or a skill. Poison potion, it'll slowly poison their body can be countered by an antidote or a skill that can lead to death. Corruption potion, person's body starts becoming purple leading them to death can be countered by an antidote or a skill. Antidote potion, depending on the ingredients different antidotes can be produced. Paralysis potion, antidote potion, two little screens appear with the necessary description. Paralysis. Herbs required. 1x heartbreak herb. Antidote. Herbs required. 1x asparagus herb. Craft 20 of each please. Notice, 1700 mana and 300 health have been deducted, potions will be ready in 4000 seconds. System, the title Alchemist series has been received. A bit more than one hour goes by and another voice pops into my mind. System, the title potion failed has been received. System, the title potion succeeded has been received. Seems like I managed 11 of paralysis and 9 antidotes out of the 40 I made, the rate is not the best, but it's getting somewhere. It would be nice to have a box of some sort to place all these potions, I start hearing knocks on the door that leads outside of the house. The sound of it opening along with the voice of my mother saying good morning to Rohan, tell him to enter my room please. I shout hoping she hears it as well as I did with them. My room door opens and Rohan sees me sitting on the floor with 20 potions in front of me and starts laughing. I've brought these wooden boxes for your future potions, this way you can stack them on top of each other. 20 potions, it seems like the little miss been working hard around 4 potions a day since we last met, very good, I'll be able to earn more money in the future, and so will she. Here's a bag of the sales of the last items you gave me about 2500 copper. Upon receiving it a voice pops out in my mind. System, the title Money Maker has been received. System, the title Merchant Series has been received. So many alchemy and merchant titles, I think out loud surprising the man next to me then making him laugh, if you'd like to master the Merchant Series one day, I suggest to sell and buy things from a wagon, to trade items, and to auction some as well. Thank you very much, that saves time figuring them out, I smile kindly at him while storing the potions in boxes. Once I finish filling one of the boxes I lift it and give it to him then place it inside a magic bag. Like this, it counts as one item since they're all stacked, he smirks showing off his knowledge on the magic bag. Whoa, that's just like cheating, we laugh at my words. Actually I have an idea, he takes out two items from the magic bag and gives me one. Miss Iris I'd like to trade my item for yours, he extends his hand as I extend my hand trading it with him. System, the title trading has been received. Did it work? He questions me raising an eyebrow, with a curious expression. Yes, thank you, can we do it some more time so I can max it? Yes, of course, after some time of trading and doing fake sales and purchases with potions and herbs he leaves and I check status. System, the title herbs sold has been received. System, the title herbs bought has been received. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Level. 7 experience 0 slash 700. Fame, 220 disgrace, 7510. Class, which rank 2 experience 100 slash 4000. Race, human name, Iris 8 years old. Health, 400 slash 660 mana, 940 slash 2500. Status points 0. Strength, 183 stamina, 66 agility, 85 dexterity. 107 Intelligence, 158, plus 10, Wisdom, 242, plus 8. Attack, 0 Magic Attack, 0 Defense, 0 Magic Defense, 0. Soul, 3690. Titles, Reincarnated Plus, S, Mana, S, Mana Exhaust, S, Health, S, Beginner Reader, S, Purchase, S, Wisdom, C, Reader Series, B, Body Training, S, Animal Slayer, S, Intermediate Reader, S, Cooked Fish, S, Preyed Upon, F, Cheater, S, Heritage, S, Amalgam, S, Ice, S, Cooked Bird, F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series, F, Sale, S, Advanced Reader, S, Soulbound, S, Element, C, Contracted, S, Peasant, F, Class, B, Monster Slayer, E, Slime Slayer, C, Skill Mastery, 
D, tree chopper, C, tree type, S. Tree series, D, logmaker, C, tree planter, S, book thief, D, criminal, D, expert reader, F, herbs gathered, S, herbs types, S, potion brewer, S, potion types, E, status mastery, D, beast slayer, D, horned rabbit slayer, E, potion administered, F, goblin slayer, E, orc slayer, F, assassination, S, herbalist series, C, skeleton slayer, F, noticed, S, god series, F, potion selling, F, potion failed, D, potion succeeded, D, alchemist series, F, money maker, S, merchant series, C, trading, S, herbs, sold, S, herbs bought, S, completed series, fishing, S, farming, S, skill points, 0, actives, status level 51, D, system library level 50, D, monocoat level 7, F, monowave level 2, F, ice bind level 6, F, ice sword level 1, F, icicle level 4, F, passives, bleeding resistance level 10, F, swordsmanship level 21, E, sword mastery level 12, F, mana control level 22, E, ice control level 20, E, slight wisdom boost level 8, F, slight mana recovery level 10, F, acid resistance level 1, F, axe art level 1, F, axe mastery level 1, F, corpse dismantler level 1, F, brainwash resistance level 25, E, class actives, dark alchemy level 42, magic analysis level 40, class rituals, snow falling level 1, class passives, dark alchemy mastery level 30, witchcraft level 20, curses mastery level 4, rituals mastery level 4, magic control level 20, magic knowledge level 10, ice mastery level 4, unique, appraisal level 42, cursed, unidentified skill, rare element, ice, cursed soul bound, grimoire rank F, 72 slash 100, I have so many series to complete this will take a while, but the faster the better as they give the best amount of statuses, my mana has gone up considerably from all these new titles. My dark alchemy and mastery have gone up a lot, it seems like mass production sure pays off, the same goes for magic analysis which I spammed like 80 times. My brainwash resistance has gone up to 25, my class passives are fighting with it, I guess I should let it reach level 100 so I have more resistance against it, hopefully, that's the max level for it. It wouldn't be bad if it evolved at some point, if 4 skills get maxed against brainwash resistance alone, I have the feeling it wouldn't be enough to go against them. I sure picked quite the class, I walk close to the mirror and touch it softly while looking at my reflection, I just hope I'll never lose myself. I stop talking to myself and head to the west forest to meet Aurora, another hour goes by and I find my sister sitting near a tree at the ruins entrance. Chapter 43 Adventurer Arc At one of the church rooms where one group of the university students resides. What do you think of everything so far you know? Of the game systems that we had, the skills and all that. It seems to be your typical fantasy game where you level up, and get skills kind of world at eco. A tall and very fat boy after hearing both replies, it certainly does feel like one, just using this information skill called personal data, sounds terribly like a game, the goddess Arya did warn us that if we're not careful we'll lose our lives in this world, after all, it's not a game. Goro is right we should be careful in everything we do, I don't want any of you to die before me. Ken added high and mighty placing his arm around Goro. You're sure lucky you get to be the hero class representative, so for you, it's easy to say. It was by random chance Anoka, he shrugged lifting the shoulders as the goddess Arya is the one who chooses. I honestly don't believe that Ken, I think the goddess did it on purpose as you're the one with the blackest hair and eyes out of all of us, and she seemed to dig that. I agree with Psubame, Anoka said feeling that the worst of them got the best class. Same the goddess said us summoned may have a very small chance of evolving our rare classes to unique grades, Aiko added upon feeling jealous of him as her class wasn't anything amazing, and she stuck to it while having her life on the line. For sure. You know shouted angrily as she's equally bad like Ken in terms of personality. Now, now, don't bully Ken, it's not like it's his fault, if anything the goddess just fell for him, can't be helped. Shut up fatty, this is preferential treatment, we are supposed to be equals. I demand a hero class too. No need to be rude to Goro, 
you know, everyone here is on the same ship it's not just you girls, plus you can just become stronger and make your class evolve, shouldn't be that hard. That's right Kaido, Ken replied as he took a chance to support the boys as Goro defended him. Thank you for defending me Kaido, Goro said with a sad face used to being bullied by his classmates, but mostly the girls. It'll be a good chance for you to lose weight facing monsters, you'll be in shape in no time Goro, so don't feel bad, Kaido replied with a big smile while patting his wide back from the right side as Ken was on his left one. I wonder about that seeing as he got the class master chef, I feel like he'll become even fatter, you know persists on bullying, as her together with other classmates used to do it to a few boys in their class, especially you know who is a very beautiful and fit girl that hates imperfection, and everything which in her view is ugly. She was even a very popular streamer who used beauty to entice the viewers, despite not being the best gamer ever. Aiko and Yuno laughed at Goro who became even sadder, depressed, and angrier inside. Now now, bullying is not good, Anoka said shyly not enjoying her attitude, even though she too is one of Yuno's targets. So what's the plan, Ken? Kaido asked curiously thinking that if someone had a plan that young man would be the one. Despite everything he would always organize things for the class and keep everything in perfect order. From my talk with the Pope Kloss and the Saintess, we're to learn everything we can during our classes with the priests, and then we'll be sent in different parties of four to different churches across the kingdom to fight monsters, and do quests via the Adventurer's Guild. In other words, we'll be used as propaganda to the church as we become stronger, a boy with glasses who was silently thinking said. Yes Kuro, I believe that's one way to see things. Ken replied to him promptly as they usually do works together, so they already have some familiarity. We're all above 18 so we can all be considered adults, especially in this world where the age to be adult is 15, nobles seem to marry at 16. They sure marry young Ken, Anoka replied shyly while blushing never having a couple before, due to how timid she always is. This type of society didn't exist back then in our world, so we must adapt to them, it'll make things easier for us. It's actually annoying how you get to be the class representative even in this world Ken, Aiko said with a cold tone, feeling like once again he's in charge of everything, such a cursed fate. Accept and move on otherwise I'll leave you behind, Ken replied coldly without giving a shit since he's the hero now. Yuno clicked her tongue and went quiet while Aiko rolled her eyes while crossing her arms as she looked to the side frowning. I don't know how they'll split the parties up, but I don't know when I'll see any of you again, and that's if any of you won't die before that happens so good luck to you all. You too Ken, Kaido took a step forward and, bump fisted him as they'd always do back in the old world. On the other side, the leftover ten summoned were dispatched through the eight colored rose families except Sophie and Romeo who stayed with the royal family. Iris perspective present. Sorry for the wait Aurora, the potions took a while to make. No problem, I forgot the Sefi herbs at home from the last quest, so you can gather some more before we deliver the quest. All right. Sounds good, I don't have a use for them as I can't make perfume with them, and I also used a lot of mana, I've reached 2500 of it too. That's almost double my mana at this point, a surprised expression filled my sister's face along with a very natural tone. I smile at her and then I spend a while gathering all kinds of herbs into one of the bags I always bring with me, eventually an hour later. Notice, 50 experience has been rewarded from a horned rabbit. Seems like you've been having fun Aurora. Managed to kill five of these things, they're pretty annoying with their magic, I'm surprised you killed ten of them. I got lucky they were very close to one another, I stare at my sister while smiling noticing the five soul stones in her hands. I'm going to try it, Iris, she stares at the shiny things with curiosity. I know, I can tell by the necessity you have in your eyes to become stronger, after all, plus appraisal said in your case it's fine so go for it. As Aurora attempted to eat one she received a familiar voice that resounded in her mind. Notice, only in a weapon form can one consume the soul stones. She transformed into a grimoire and then something weird happened, the grimoire that initially looked like a normal large black book, opened and the five soul stones were sucked inside, the book then closed, and she transformed back into a human, some messages then started hitting her mind. Notice. Ranked F soul stones were successfully converted into 250 soul power which can be used to awaken into the next phase. Notice, the acquisition of the skills fireball and windball have been rejected due to not matching the grimoire element or its masters thus have been discarded. Seems like I can get skills in the future usable for either of us, convert the soul power to awaken into the next phase, Aurora thought as she couldn't be more excited to become stronger like she used to be. Aurora in front of me suddenly transforms into a grimoire 
and a dark aura surrounds her surprising me. Hum? What's happening? Why is there such an ominous aura around Aurora? Is my sister okay? It then opens and a white page with a few words appear in black. What's this? I approach it and read it, do you the master of the grimoire, wish to change Aurora's true nature? True nature? What does it mean? As if answering me, more black words appeared and as I read them, I make a shocked expression as some of her past life events were written in it. What but why? I remember everything I've seen about her since the day I met my sister. I come to a conclusion after reflecting for a while. It doesn't matter, in the end, it's my sister, if I changed her, Aurora would stop being who she is. System, the title acknowledged has been received. System, an evil god is pleased by your answer. System, the title disgraceful has been received. System, a goddess disapproves of your actions. System, the title ignored has been received. System, a goddess has excluded you from her blessings. A uh, god is? A goddess has? What is happening? I make a very confused expression. Black letters filled the page faster than I could read, and then on the next page the same happened, and then all the pages moved gaining characters at an unbelievable speed. What's happening? What the hell is that language even? Pretty sure I've never seen those characters they look so odd, almost like squares with different lines inside of them. When it reached the last page, it closed, and a title in light blue reminding me of my monocolor appeared on the cover. Isn't that my mana from the time I contracted with her? It's turning into a name, isn't it? I get closer to read it. Pandemonium, I say softly and slowly appreciating the grimoire title while touching the shining letters with my index finger, I wonder what's the meaning of that word. System, the god of chaos has further cursed Iris's class. System, rare witch class has evolved into unique class Babel witch. Notice, status has been influenced by the class, the list of obtainable skills has expanded, and mana has been recovered. My class evolved. Is that even possible? Just what is Babel? System, the goddess of order further disapproves of you and your class. System, the title forgotten has been received. System, Luna the goddess of order has forsaken you. Another god. The goddess did? She didn't like my class? It's not like it was my choice. I make a shocking expression not being able to do anything about it except worry. I'm just so confused at what's happening, that I don't even know what to do. A light shone in front of me and in its place, my reflection with blue eyes appeared. Finally, something normal happens in front of me that I'm able to understand, to some extent. I look at Aurora who takes a few steps closing our distance. She hugged me and then warm words reached for me, thank you, Iris. You're welcome sister but for what? I pat her head as I hope to regain the common sense I had before all this happened, but instead, even my sister seems to have changed. She whispered softly in my ear for believing in me. Of course. You're my sister. I reply a bit confused, but I decide to let it go as I don't care any more about this. At this point, I'm used to having a mysterious sister, I smile kindly focusing my full attention on her who seems to be alright after what happened. How's your mana Aurora? Mine was kind of recovered when I gained a class, evolution I guess. Same here, to think I'd obtain the class of the tome I pursued in my past life. Tome? What's that? I tilt my head trying to figure out but my lack of knowledge gets the best of me. It's a large and heavy book Iris, usually sought by scholars, one with the most legendary and chaotic stories. You were interested in a book of stories? That sounds unlike you, a sparkling smile appeared on her face. There is a lot you don't know about me my dear Iris, Aurora said with excited eyes and finished with a genuinely happy expression. Even though I didn't change her she does look different. What's so special about a book of stories? Ah. I don't get it, let's have a look at status. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Level, 7 experience 250 slash 700. Fame, 220 disgrace, 13510. Unique class, Babel which rank 2 experience 250 slash 4000. Race, human name, Iris 8 years old. Health. 400 slash 660 mana, 950 slash 2500. Status points 0. Strength, 183 stamina, 66 agility, 85 dexterity, 107 intelligence, 158, plus 10, wisdom, 242, plus 8. 
Attack, zero magic attack, zero defense, zero magic defense, zero. Soul, 6690. Titles, Reincarnated Plus, S, Mana, S, Mana Exhaust, S, Health, S, Beginner Reader, S, Purchase, S, Wisdom, C, Reader Series, B, Body Training, S, Animal Slayer, S, Intermediate Reader, S, Cooked Fish, S, Preyed Upon, F, Cheater, S, Heritage, S, Amalgam, S, Ice, S, Cooked Bird, F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series, F, Sale, S, Advanced Reader, S, Soulbound, S, Element, C, Contracted, S, Peasant, F, Class, B, Monster Slayer, E, Slime Slayer, C, Skill Mastery, D, Tree Chopper, C, Tree Type, S, Tree Series, D, Logmaker, C, Tree Planter, S, Book Thief, D, Criminal, D, Expert Reader, F, Herbs Gathered, S, Herbs Types, S, Potion Brewer, S, Potion Types, E, Status Mastery, D, Beast Slayer, D, Horned Rabbit Slayer, E, Potion Administered, F, Goblin Slayer, E, Orc Slayer, F, Assassination, S, Herbalist Series, C, Skeleton Slayer, F, Noticed, S, God Series, D, Potion Selling, F, Potion Failed, D, Potion Succeeded, D, Alchemist Series, F, Money Maker, S, Merchant Series, C, Trading, S, Herbs, Sold, S, Herbs Bought, S, Acknowledged, S, Disgraceful, S, Ignored, S, Forgotten, S, Completed Series, Fishing, S, Farming, S, Skill Points, 0, Actives, Status Level 51, D, System Library Level 50, D, Mana Code Level 7, F, Mana Wave Level 2, F, Ice Bind Level 6, F, Ice Sword Level 1, F, Icicle Level 4, F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 10, F, Swordsmanship Level 21, E, Sword Mastery Level 12, F, Mana Control Level 22, E, Ice Control Level 20, E, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 8, F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 10, F, Acid Resistance Level 1, F, Axe Art Level 1, F, Axe Mastery Level 1, F, Corpse Dismantler Level 1, F, Brainwash Resistance Level 25, E. Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 50. Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 10. Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 40, Curses Mastery Level 14, Rituals Mastery Level 14, Magic Control Level 30, Magic Knowledge Level 20, Ice Mastery Level 14. Unique, Appraisal Level 42. Cursed, Unidentified Skill. Rare Element, Ice. Cursed Soulbound, Grimoire Rangi, 2 200. Whoa, what's wrong with my disgrace amount? My expression becomes a shocking one, raising my eyebrows. Just how disgraceful are you, Iris? Aurora started laughing making me feel bad. Apparently enough to make a goddess forsake me. Aurora stops laughing and asks me worriedly, the goddess Arya did. No, it was a goddess of order named Luna, it seems like the god of evil and the god of chaos teamed up to meddle with us. That's interesting which of the gods did mine. An evil one? Could have been the god of chaos as well which I suppose is evil too. Well even if they're both different, they both sound like bad gods, so I think you are right about that, it is a good thing if gods like us, Aurora said happily as the gods of her past world hated her. True, it seems like all my class skills increased a lot, even my ritual that I haven't tried yet. Snow falling. Aurora notices the name on the status screen in front of them, that sounds adorable, I haven't seen snowfall in a very long time now that I think about it. Aurora navigates into her endless sea of memories. I figured that since I haven't seen snow yet, and my element is ice that it would make a good fit, plus it supposedly turns the place around me into my own territory which makes me very curious of what that means. That does sound interesting, I wonder what good will come out of having a territory of your own iris. I can't wait to try out, but we should try to kill some skeletons, now we need levels and I'll need an even bigger brainwash resistance since the grade of my class went up, it probably will make things more complicated for me.
if I were to guess from the berserker story. That's true, Aurora placed the bag with the herbs Iris gathered near a tree hidden in a bush close to it, and then followed Iris into the ruins smiling happily about her own class. The Epilogue of the Second Arc After Iris received the forgotten title, all the statues of the goddess Luna around the entire world started bleeding from their eyes for ten days straight without stopping for a mere second. The different beast races screamed while others ran from them, some called for their elders, lords, and kings. Sacrifices were made by some races to calm the anger of the goddess. Some magical rituals were made by others as the crying with blood resembled a bad omen. Others fought each other to honor the goddess. Some danced and others sang till exhaustion. Many races did something unique to themselves. Unknown to the different races under the goddess Luna, what may have caused it, they started moving to find out what or who the problem could be while trying all sorts of things to find it out from items to skills. The world would soon be engulfed in pain, sadness, death, and ultimately in chaos. Chapter 44 Ruins Arc Ruins Arc Interlude Each beast kingdom and monster territory have a portal secretly hidden deeply. Inside of it, one can only wonder what may unfold inside. From time to time beings come out from such places. This persisted for thousands of years. The beings that came out of such portals created their own camps that became bases which turned into kingdoms. The beasts are usually born from a sexual act, but that's not the only way. Since ancient and dark times when the system wasn't yet implemented, the first creatures appeared from these portals. The human race was created by the good goddess Arya, also known as the goddess of summons. The demon race was created by the evil god. The monsters and the portals were created by the god of chaos. The beasts and leftover races were created by the goddess of order Luna. Each god is doing its best to eliminate the other three gods except the god of chaos. He only wants to cause confusion, and wouldn't mind if the world got destroyed in the process. Due to the hate for goddess Luna, he ended up meddling with the balanced system she and the other two gods created. If there are good and bad, then a orderly balanced system cannot exist, after all. What kind of fantasy world would this be, if there wasn't a little bit of chaos? Who knows, what other wonders and tricks did the god of chaos pull to deceive the different opponents and the skills used by them? It'll be a problem inside these ruins Iris since you don't have the night vision skill. Yes I can't see a thing, but I'm hoping that persisting through this darkness will make me able to receive the skill. It happens when we do something unusual, but if I start detecting too many monsters we'll turn back and run away. Yes, sorry for being in the way. Can't be helped you are lacking a skill, and sunlight doesn't reach this deep. One of the reasons people don't explore it. Yeah, it's too dangerous. They kept walking through the dark hall while holding hands as Aurora can see the path with her night vision skill. When they reach the first room a voice appears on Iris's mind. Notice, the skill night vision has been acquired. I got it Aurora, but can only see like a meter far away. That'll be good practice for you then, I'll leave the two skeletons in front for you. I'll go for the ones further on the left, stick to monocoding their weak to it. All right sister, I monocoat's mother's sword and try to fight with reduced eyesight. Notice, 300 mana has been deducted. I see the sword approaching which I sidestep and strike a counter at the arm slicing it in half. They feel slow. Aurora said they were annoying, I suppose it has to do with my status being a little high that I get to outmaneuver them, I slash at the head cutting it in half without giving it much time to do anything other than accepting its end. Notice, 110 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. The experience truly is amazing, I take a step back outranging the attack from the other skeleton. How smart are these things anyway? I throw my sword at his head piercing it. Notice, 110 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 130 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. You need help sister. I can see a little deeper but still not far enough to see her, the room is very vast. I hear a crushing sound and then a voice. Notice, 90 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. All right, we've cleared the first room, Iris, however, from my last time here if we advance two more we'll most likely be surrounded by all sides so we should stay in this one near the exit. In other words, we fight while protecting the exit. So we wait. Let's collect their soul stones, the weapons are too old so don't think anyone would buy them. If this was a long time ago, we'd have a harder time. Some of the skeletons ate some soul stones on my last time here, so there's a chance that they'll be stronger than these and smarter, so watch out for that iris. I'm detecting one from the middle for now, upon hearing Aurora's words I head there and wait for it to come. Moments after, sister this thing looks different than a skeleton. 
she approaches and takes a look at it as it approaches us. Let me test it first Iris, she runs at it while monocoating her hands with a dark aura, and then she aims for the head but the monster ducks her hand attempting to bite her torso. I spined, I freeze his legs and he starts making loud noises. Notice, 300 mana has been deducted. Aurora grabs the chance and uses darkness creating a big hole in the monster's head. The monster falls on the floor causing some noise. System, the title Zombie Slayer has been received. Notice, 200 experience has been rewarded from a zombie. Notice, Iris has leveled up to 8. A monster called Zombie, I think Mother mentioned it in our conversation, Aurora, for now, you can consume all the soul stones. If I do we won't be able to make you the equipment sister. In case a monster were to eat them while we fought others getting even stronger then I feel like we'd be in peril, so for that reason please do. Alright, I'll use turn them into soul power for now. Soul power. Yes, I'm not sure what it does, but I can convert it into points awakening the next grade faster, that's what I did before since we were still missing 23. Oh, that makes it faster then, sure go for that. I'm detecting a few monsters coming from the right, must have been the screams of the zombie. Leave them to me while you consume those. She takes the soul stone from the zombie and joins it along with the skeleton ones, then transforms into grimoire form and consumes all of them. Use status points into wisdom, whenever I get more till I say otherwise automatically use them in wisdom. Notice, affirmative, points successfully spent, status updated. Two skeletons and a zombie, is that about? The moment I see it, I raise my sword by instinct barely stopping the incoming arrow which ends up grazing at my cheek. Notice, 10 health has been deducted. Ugh, I move towards the wall forcing them to exit the hall into the room and get closer to me. As I run the zombie in front of me acts differently and rushes to me aggressively, while I feel the blood dripping from my face. Is there a chance these things are attracted to blood? Appraise the zombie. Notice, 350 mana has been deducted. Zombies are created by an extremely rare infectious disease, they can spread it to living beings through biting creating more zombies or they can also be summoned by a being with the necromancer class. I spined, I freeze him on the ground while using him as a shield for the incoming arrows while mana coating my sword with 400 mana. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. Mana wave. I slash horizontally so that they get sliced in half the only one who could avoid it was the zombie who is very fast but he's frozen to the floor. They share the same fate being destroyed by my skill. Notice. 200 experience has been rewarded from a zombie. Notice, 120 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 130 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 300 experience has been rewarded from a zombie. Notice, Iris has leveled up to 9. Notice, points successfully spent, status updated. What? Was there a zombie hiding behind the skeletons? Leveling up has become a lot easier if we keep this up we'll be able to grow stronger in no time. He even gave a lot more experience than the first one, could he have been hiding behind the skeletons on purpose using them as shields. These zombies are starting to sound very dangerous, especially from appraisal information, if they bite me I'll get infected and become one unless there's a skill resistance for it. That was insane Iris, Aurora speaks in my mind as she approaches finding the soul stones that fell on the floor. You're speaking in my mind. What's this? It's a skill I won after awakening it's called telepathy it only works with the contracted one, since it is a contracted skill. That's very interesting, we can even share thoughts. Like this, I'll be able to know when your skills are brainwashing you, won't be able to do much about it, but I'll know, can you take the soul stone of the zombie? It looks gross a rotten human body. Actually don't touch it, I'll learn a soul stone extraction skill, just in case that thing sickness spreads into us somehow. All right sister. A cautious tone through the mind is used by me, as it looks icky and disgusting, not wanting to place my hands in the middle of the decayed meat. After a few moments, let's test it out, extraction. A light exuded from the body of the zombie and a soul stone came out being sucked into the open grimoire. That was amazing Aurora. She transformed back into a human, I'm getting 100 soul power for each of these stones, I got 50 from the ones outside the ruins so I now have 900 soul power which if I convert will give me 90 points into my own evolution. Amazing, that's a lot faster than everything we've been doing before. Exactly, I'll save the skills from these monsters that I received once we leave this place we'll see what we can do with them. Sure. Now you made me curious at what skills you got. 
For now it doesn't really matter as I can't use them or do anything with them so don't worry too much about it, also detecting two more monsters behind us and one in the middle tunnel. I'll go for the two behind, my night vision is better so I won't be surprised by arrows again. Alright, we both run in different ways. Chapter 45 Ruins Arc As I approach the skeletons I notice one of them shinning, is he the one who ate the soul stones? I feel quite the pressure from it. I'll start by monocoding my sword and see what the skeleton can do while using him as a shield from the one holding a bow further behind. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. He looks at me approaching while charging mana with a sword making it shine beautifully in blue, and then our swords clash, and my sword breaks, making me receive a big hit in length but a shallow wound from my shoulder to the hip. Notice, 200 health has been deducted. I jump backward bleeding while placing one of my hands on top of my long cut by instinct and then as he starts closing the distance, I spined, I scream while in pain successfully freezing him on the stone paved floor, possibly dealing a bit of damage to it. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. I walk to the exit losing health from the bleeding, Aurora if you can hear me run. Notice, 20 health has been deducted. As I'm walking an arrow hits my arm making my body shudder in further pain, and increasing the bleeding. Notice, 60 health has been deducted. Ugh it hurts so much, I'm losing a lot of blood, I do my best taking slow steps towards the exist as best as I can. Notice, 100 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Iris I defeated mine house your side. She approaches and sees the blood on the floor as I walk with a big wound towards the exit and an arrow on my arm. The skeleton charges more mana and breaks the ice with the sword subsequently chasing me once again. Through hearing the sounds of the impact and the loud steps of barefoot bone hitting the floor, I turn around momentarily ice binding him again successfully as he doesn't even bother to dodge it. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. Aurora picks a sword from the floor and charges it with mana, sensing the mana pressure the skeleton charges his own, and then their swords clash violently resulting in two swords breaking at the same time. Without a moment to waste Aurora uses her piercing darkness skill to destroy the skull completely by approaching her hand to the head blowing it into nothingness, while I'm hit by another arrow this time on my shoulder making me fall on the cold stone floor, feeling rather fatigate from the blood loss. Notice, 100 health has been deducted. Notice, 400 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. She rushes at the archer who's preparing another arrow, and by stretching her monocoded palm, does a clean cut in the skeleton skull splitting it in half killing him. Notice, 100 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. She takes the soul stones in her hand and runs to me helping me leave the ruins as her monster detector starts giving a lot of alerts. As we leave, a trail of blood from my wounds is left behind us, after 20 minutes of slow walking, we reach the forest and rest close to the tree with the herbs, while we walk sister removes the arrows carefully with all the care in the world through the use of the dark aura. I lose 200 health in total after the bleeding stopped thanks to the bleeding resistance skill stopping it in time. Aurora lays me near a tree and consumes the soul stones she carried with her after looking around in case anybody could be hiding. With a weak voice, I ask, how much mana you have left? Upon hearing me, she sits next to me and shows me her status. Status. Level, 9 experience 730 slash 900 class, pandemonium. Race, human name, Aurora 8 years old. Health, 1000 slash 1000 mana 200 slash 1450. Status points 0. Stamina. 100 Intelligence, 90 Wisdom, 145 Soul Power, 1200. Attack, 5 Magic Attack, 90. Titles, Eternum, S, Uncursed, S, Soulbound, S, Contracted, S, Noticed, S, God Series, F. Skill Points, 4. Actives, Status Level 40, D, Darkness Barrier Level 7, F. Piercing Darkness Level 13, F, Mana Coat Level 8, F, Dark Coat Level 9, F, Mana Wave Level 1, F, Dark Bind Level 12, F, Extraction Level 5, F. Passives, Mana Control Level 25, E, Dark Control Level 19, F, Monster Detection Level 40, D, Beast Detection Level 10, F, Night Vision Level 25, E. Unique, Transformation Level 13. Killing Intent Level 5 Blessed Slash Cursed, Mirror Level 2, Unidentified Unique Element, Dark Cursed Soulbound Contracted Skills, Telepathy, F 
Consumed Skills, Infected Bite Level 5, Brainwash Resistance Level 4, Brainwash Resistance Level 8, Mana Code Level 10, Mana Control Level 7, Infected Bite Level 10, Brainwash Resistance Level 5, Brainwash Resistance Level 9, Mana Control Level 5, Long Slash Level 3, Human Detection Level 3, Human Detection Level 5. Not much left as you can see, also those are the skills I've successfully consumed from the Soul Stones, I can't seem to do anything with them so they're just there for now. I should have done that differently, almost died in such a pathetic way, he completely overwhelmed my monocoded sword even breaking it. Thanks to you pushing him, I was able to overwhelm the skeleton, even though both our swords broke, so maybe we were evenly matched, however, what matters is that at the end of the day we won, as long as we survive we'll become stronger, she sits next to me. You're right. My head falls on her shoulder and I fall asleep pretty fast resting for three hours. Iris, wake up, she shakes my body softly, in order to not cause me pain. I let out a moaning sound as I wake up, and then open my eyes remembering we're still in the woods. Trouble. I ask softly gazing slowly around us while some drool falls from my mouth which I clean with my clothing. No, but we should leave and go rest at home it'll be safer than here. You're right, status please. Notice. 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Level, 9 experience 730 slash 900. Fame, 250 disgrace, 13560. Unique class, Babel which rank 2 experience 2870 slash 4000. Race, human name, Iris 8 years old. Health, 260 slash 660 mana, 448 slash 2630. Status points 0. Strength, 183 Stamina, 66 Agility, 85 Dexterity, 107 Intelligence, 158, plus 10, Wisdom, 255, plus 8. Attack, 0 Magic Attack, 0 Defense, 0 Magic Defense, 0. Soul, 6720. Titles, Reincarnated Plus, S, Mana, S, Mana Exhaust, S, Health, S, Beginner Reader, S, Purchase, S, Wisdom, B, Reader Series, B, Body Training, S, Animal Slayer, S, Intermediate Reader, S, Cooked Fish, S, Preyed Upon, F, Cheater, S, Heritage, S, Amalgam, S, Ice, S, Cooked Bird, F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series, F, Sale, S, Advanced Reader, S, Soulbound, S, Element, C, Contracted, S, Peasant, F, Class, B, Monster Slayer, D, Slime Slayer, C, Skill Mastery, D, Tree Chopper, C, Tree Type, S, Tree Series, D, Log Maker, C, Tree Planter, S, Book Thief, D, Criminal, D, Expert Reader, F, Herbs Gathered, S, Herbs Types, S, Potion Brewer, S, Potion Types, E, Status Mastery, E, Beast Slayer, D, Horned Rabbit Slayer, E, Potion Administered, F, Goblin Slayer, E, Orc Slayer, F, Assassination, S, Herbalist Series, C, Skeleton Slayer, E, Noticed, S, God Series, D, Potion Selling, F, Potion Failed, D, Potion Succeeded, D, Alchemist Series, F, Money Maker, S, Merchant Series, C, Trading, S, Herbs. Sold, S, Herbs Bought, S, Acknowledged, S, Disgraceful, S, Ignored, S, Forgotten, S, Zombie Slayer, F. Completed Series, Fishing, S, Farming, S. Skill Points, 2. Actives, Status Level 51, D, System Library Level 50, D, Monocoat Level 10, F, Monowave Level 3, F, Ice Bind Level 10, F, Ice Sword Level 1, F, Icicle Level 4, F. Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 20, E, Swordsmanship Level 23, E, Sword Mastery Level 14, F, Mana Control Level 23, E, Ice Control Level 20, E, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 8, F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 12, F, Acid Resistance Level 1, F, Axe Art Level 1, F, Axe Mastery Level 1, F, Corpse Dismantler Level 1, F, Brainwash Resistance Level 30, E, 
Night Vision Level 10, F. Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 50. Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 10. Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 40, Curses Mastery Level 14, Rituals Mastery Level 14, Magic Control Level 30, Magic Knowledge Level 20, Ice Mastery Level 14. Unique, Appraisal Level 42. Cursed, Unidentified Skill. Rare Element, Ice. Cursed Soulbound, Grimoire Rangi, 14 200. You're looking stronger Iris, my sister says after carefully examining it which makes me smile faintly upon hearing her words even though deep down I know I'm extremely weak. She helps me get up and then grabs the bag, we head home without encountering any problem, after some time, we arrive home and we head inside the room, I lay down on the bed resting while looking at Aurora. What are you going to do now sister? I think I'll see how far I can awaken with all the soul power I've got, she transforms into a grimoire. All right, I'll be here. I reassure my sister with kind words, and as soon as I finish talking, a dark aura surrounds her for a while, and then she speaks after returning to human form. How'd it go? I've exhausted my soul power completely. Let's see, status, I focus on the bottom of the screen to find the counter for the next awakening rank. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Class passives, dark alchemy mastery level 40, witchcraft level 40, curses mastery level 14. Rituals Mastery Level 14, Magic Control Level 30, Magic Knowledge Level 20, Ice Mastery Level 14. Unique, Appraisal Level 42. Cursed, Unidentified Skill. Rare Element, Ice. Cursed Soulbound, Grimoire Rangi, 134-200. 134 out of 200, it's not that far, I say while smiling at her as she's bound to become stronger upon going for higher phases. Another 10 skeletons. She laughs while looking at me noticing my body in a not-so-good shape. Ugh, as long as they're not as strong as that last one, I frown while turning my eyes to look at the window, causing them to turn into a lighter green tone than they already are. Weren't you the one that wanted to become strong Iris? She teases me watching the skin of my body recovering slowly. I roll my eyes and turn my body to the window side then reply to her softly. I will do my best to become stronger, by the way. Sister if you feel like walking would you like to deliver the quest? It's the two small bags I left at the room door. Sure you can heal up while I do that, you need anything else? She looks around in search of the bags that contain the items. No, but thank you for asking Aurora, she gets both adventurer cards and heads to the guild with the two black bags. A while later she arrives at the receptionist, Hello Aurora, how can I help you today? Hello, I've come to deliver this quest. She gives him the quest, the cards, and the bags. Let's see what we have here, he reads it to know how to handle the reward. Quest. Rank, F. Collect Sefi herbs from the West Forest. You will be rewarded 5 points and 40 copper per herb. Very well, the herbs are in these bags I assume. Yes. He spends a while counting them. Exactly 38 Sefi herbs which equal to 190 points and 1520 copper. I'll update your cards and get the money. He then returns with a bag of money and two cards which the man delivers to the girl and voices out loudly getting the attention of the closest row of the adventurers. Congratulations to you and Iris, you're now both rank E adventurers. Currently with 348 points, to further rank up you'll need 400. I'd like a new quest in preference in the West Forest as we know the woods well enough. Very well, in that case, we do have a client that works for the church. He wants some horns from beasts called horned rabbits, you should be familiar with them due to this herb quest, yes. Yes, I've slain some of them already. Perfect, in that case, I just ask that you kill them without damaging the horns, the better the horns quality the better the reward. I'll keep that in mind, I take the quest, the cards, and the bag. Have a good day Aurora, and send Iris a hug, from Hugo. Will do, thank you. People sure like sister she thought while picking the bag up with a smile. Oh if it isn't Herrera, Aurora then turns around finding some familiar faces. Elias. With an innocent expression she teases the cute girl in front of her, the party members of Elise hearing that nickname started laughing at their companion. Ah, don't call me with such a name you meanie. You started this time around, Aurora smiled coldly yet playfully. I've reached Ranky with 250 points today. How are you and Iris progressing? She asked happily remembering Aurora's sister. 
We're almost at rank D. What? No way, she snatched the cards from Aurora's hand and read them. Oh my goddess, how did you two got this high so fast? I think it was mostly the forty Sefi herbs sister gathered at the West Forest each was worth five points. Ah, these guys only take slaying quests which generally gives fewer points, since we're fighting F-ranked monsters but in exchange, I should be higher level than you. She looks at me high and mighty. What level are you? Aurora snatches back the cards while noticing the faces of the young adults behind her. I'm level seven. You can now praise me, peasant. She smiled from cheek to cheek feeling superior even though they're both in the same social rank. Aurora smiled and then said, you're still two levels behind, she walked past her to the exit leaving the group dumbfounded as they've partied together before. She then turned around and shouted at Aurora, I'll surpass you soon enough. Say hi to Iris for me. Upon hearing those words Aurora waved by raising her hand the one holdings the cards without turning back. Chapter 46 Ruins Arc on the next morning of the day 30th of the sun season. Knocking can be heard on the door making Rosalind go to the entrance to see who it is, while the girls wake up from the sound. I'm pretty sure it's not Rohan, wondering who could it be, I rub one of my eyes while staring at my sister full of curiosity. Aurora upon hearing my words looks through the window since she slept closer to it, seems like the visits are for us, we get up and dress into good looking dresses. I pick my bunny doll from the floor placing it on top of the bed when done. I run to the bathroom to pee, then wash my face, and lastly start brushing my long hair which reaches almost the ass. The door then opens and four men in a square formation are seen by Rosalind standing outside while she makes a confused expression. Greetings madam, I am Ryu the head of the Blue Rose family, I've come to speak with your daughters, hopefully, they're home, Rosalind quickly bows understanding she's speaking towards a very high ranking noble, noticing the blue expensive attire. Blue cloths with black buttons and a black short coat on top of it, making him look rather fancy and good looking, contrasting very well with his usual serious expression. Further below she notices black trousers, a dark brown belt, and fully black shoes. Welcome Lord Ryu, and yes they are, please come in, you may sit over there on the sofa, Ryu and an old man went through leaving two men outside. You two are staying outside. Rosalind takes a quick glimpse at them noticing the weapons they were carrying and the blue armor sets. One of the three sets which are used solely by the royal family guards. They're guarding the house Miss Rosalind, leave them be, Ryu said as he walked towards the living room. If you'll excuse me, Rosalind closed the door slowly to avoid any rudeness. The two men sit on the sofa and then they realize a girl was already in front of them, staring at them while waiting silently spooking them. Gee good morning Aurora, the two men said in unison. I walked off the bathroom then entered the living room through the opposite side they did, and saw two unknown faces staring at my sister. An old man around his sixties perhaps, with some white hair and a not too long white beard, but long enough to reach the tip of the nose. White shirt and brown pants along with caramel colored shoes. Once I got close to my sister, her lips opened and a warm childish tone befell on the room, good morning lord of the Blue Rose family Ryu and the Crown Prince Julius advisor teacher Mark. Seems like she was waiting for her sister to not have to repeat herself, an interesting girl in fact. Mark smiled appreciating both figures in front of him in a curious way, full of expectation ever since the day Aurora won the chess game. Upon hearing those words, I greet them peerlessly by bowing and lifting my dress, how can a peasant have this level of etiquette? It exceeds some of the nobles I've seen. Did their parents spend that much money on their education? I'm pretty sure they don't have that kind of sum. Ryu couldn't help but be dumbfounded while looking at me lost in thoughts and curiosity. Now then, I believe your sister Aurora has shown you my letter and the recommendation correct. Rosalind sat on a chair listening to the conversation quietly and attentively. Yes, Lord Ryu, but it is not something I'm currently interested in, but I am grateful for the invitation, I replied calmly with a kind smile crushing some of the Lord's hopes. I've heard from Aurora that she doesn't have much of a physical or magical talent, would you show me yours? You wish to face me in a duel. I ask confused yet excited for facing someone new since that's the method adventurers and mother uses to evaluate others. Ryu got up and expanded all his mana around his body, I wish to see your aura the same way I'm doing with my own, in preference merged with your element. Should I go all out aurora? Yes, I already told them you were the one who took the blessing and magic out of the two of us. You can even do it slowly so I can evaluate their reaction. Alright, I'll make some airs to it, an unnecessary gesturing to take longer than voice then comes from the middle of my lips, can we at least do this outside? How come? 
Ryu notices instantly the worried expression on my face feeling a little confused. I do not want to freeze this entire room, it would be a problem for my mother. The men made an awkward expression not expecting that, and then they got up, does this girl really have enough mana to freeze the entire living room, for a peasant room it is a decently large one, the old man rubbed the beard up and down while walking. As Iris moved to the exit, Aurora bowed her head as she passed, following right after. Ryu and Mark, noticing this became extra confused while following along in silence. Outside of the house ten meters away from the entrance door, I took a deep breath while concentrating in my mind. Slowly my mana started surrounding my body in a blue tone, with an initial amount of 500 mana. Sticking to perfect control over the amount, I start merging it with the ice element fully converting it. This effect causes the surrounding aura color to become a lot clearer while creating small steam due to the warm rays of the sun. For an 8-year-old kid it's not bad but a prodigy would have at least triple this much, I'm disappointed Aurora, the dark blue-eyed man stared lightly at Aurora who looked at the sister smiling. That kid has good control over the element Lord Ryu, one of the guards mentioned while analyzing the girl in front of them. True, I didn't have that much in her age, another one said while feeling a soft breeze deriving from her aura. I take another deep breath and increase another 500 mana. The ground around me started to naturally freeze and the breeze became cold making one of the guards sneeze. Ryu raised his hand and used a magic detector skill, ah, seems like Aurora wasn't wrong after all, that's around 1000 mana, a lot better, but still not fantastical. I gripped my hands to one another in a praying pose and deeply breathed once more increasing 500 more mana. A surprised face by everyone around her could be seen, this is unexpected she's in a prodigy level. Did she take her sister magical share while she was in her mother's womb? Ryu questioned himself upon feeling quite the pressure from the little girl, and even measuring her capabilities through the screen numbers only he can see. I then ungripped my hands extending the arms to opposite sides and added 500 more mana. It started becoming so cold that the breeze itself started freezing everything around slightly, going as far as to add a layer of ice on the clothing of the men watching her. This, this is too much of a quantity for such an age. Mark gazed while laughing excitedly at the prowess of a fellow human and the potential of the future for that ice magician. They started coating themselves with mana to protect themselves from the cold and the freezing. The crown prince will be very happy knowing about this, Ryu smiled as he reminded himself about the annual tournament. I then looked at Ryu placing a finger in front of my small nose, as if to tell him to be quiet, and then added 500 more, ending up reaching a total of 2,500 mana which is my max amount. The ice froze their feet and their clothes, and the steam on top of the big aura created a mist hiding my presence while creating an ice layer on the men's mana barriers. It started looking like a small blizzard in front of them, making their mana auras being damaged from it. Mark started laughing loudly, this scene before me is truly insane, to have so much talent, and potential at such a young age, simply marvelous. What a crazy kid, now I understand why Aurora estimates her so much. Ryu increased the defenses around the body as the body was naturally shaking from the low temperature. I absorb all the mana back into my body so it doesn't disappear leaving me empty, recovering most of it. From one moment to the other the blizzard disappeared, and all that was left was ice around me, in a range of 15 meters having affected even the house door and its walls. Ryu coughed and then started speaking after regaining his composure, well that was certainly not something I expected from one as young as you. All that pure raw power. You'd make many people some years older than you feel shame. One of the guards increased his own mana mixing it with his fire element, warming the entire place melting the ice turning it into water. That man just used the same amount of mana as sister instantly, quite the nasty control he must have, seems like not all humans are complete trash. Perhaps that's what I should expect from a royal guard, even though that must have been a bit of his true power. Now we're back to summer, the guard laughed as he wished to make things the way they were supposed to be. Thanks to his actions it ended up allowing the grass and the flowers to not die frozen, instead of providing some water to quench their thirst. I'm very grateful sir, I thanked him for melting the ice for me, as that's not something I'm able to do with a kind smile on my face, due to the three rules of magic. You're very welcome, it's been a while since I felt such chills, I don't really know many ice mages, he smiled joyfully while staring at me wondering what else I could do, as I didn't use any skills. What a shame, ice magic is beautiful. I reply delicately while making a small bird sculpture of ice on top of my palms. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. Good thing mana is only spent while turning it into physical things or skills. Maybe I should find a way to use the aura he showed me to something. 
perhaps the possibility of containing all of it to myself, freezing everything around during combat. It could be a way to not exhaust myself, even though it does take a toll on the physical and mental capacity of my body. That's a pretty sculpture you have there, a shame that'll melt eventually or I'd buy it from you, Mark said while smiling at it, reminding himself of the birds he used to have inside a cage during childhood. Perhaps one day I can make a curse that doesn't allow my eyes to melt, and then sell sculptures. If they're beautiful, maybe people will want to get one for them. If in the future I find a way, I'll make sure to send you one Sir Mark, I reply with a kind smile. Oh, 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 I'll be looking forward to that child. This man sure knows how to take the initiative, Ryu thought while envying Mark as he felt like the old man had gotten ahead of himself, through bonding with the kid in front of them. I'd like to know the reason for you to not wish to learn magic in the Magic Institute. In case you don't know the strongest magician of the kingdom is the owner. I believe he could put your talent to good use. I place my hand in my head as I start losing my senses making my body shake slightly. Get a hold of yourself, Iris. I know, I'm trying Aurora, I put my hand behind my back and stab it with the nails by gripping it too tight. I'm grateful for your support, however, my current goal is to reach the max rank of the Adventurer's Guild, and help as many people as I can. That sounds like one who wishes to become some sort of a hero. With the two heroes and all the summoned people that were brought recently by the goddess Arya, we don't need to push her into joining us, Mark thinks as he looks at Ryu trying to convey his thought by nodding sideways. I'd really want this girl to join us, I don't know how bright she is. Her sister is quite blessed in that sense, but she has a lot of talent, I definitely wouldn't like to waste it, Ryu thinks while noticing Mark looking at him waving his head in disagreement. Seems like he wants to let her pass, we can always recruit Iris in the future if necessary. Not to forget she does have the white ring so we can't just take her from Lady Alicia. I highly doubt those monstrous swordsmanship parents of her would allow it easily. Once you reach your goal and decide that in the future you'd like to join one of the possible areas that the Lumen Capital has. Just use the recommendation letter, we'll be waiting for you patiently. Thank you, Lord Ryu, I shall make good use of it when that time arrives, I smile at them happily. You can go do the quest Iris, I'll meet you when I can. Sure sister if you'll excuse me, I bow politely once again while rising my light pink dress softly. Have a good day Iris, it was a pleasure to meet you, Mark said while smiling excitedly at someone part of the new generation, relieving himself from some worries where he might not be part of, due to old age. Yes, indeed, Ryu added simple and shortly not wanting to bring attention to him as Mark already handled it. Aurora comes closer and gives me the card and the quest just in case. After reading it, I go inside home grabbing a bag for the horns, and then leave for the village while waving at them. Well then, where would you like to discuss the war documents we've brought? Can be inside at the kitchen table, I'm sure mother won't mind. Ryu goes back to the wagon and returns with a wooden box meeting them inside. Then opens the box and removes a few books placing them orderly on top of the table by categories. Seems like it'll be a long morning with these two, Aurora thought smiling faintly not really minding it. Chapter 47 Ruins Arc Two hours passed with Aurora completely silent reading the different books she was given. No matter how many times I see it, Aurora's absolute concentration is truly amazing, compared to me before becoming the prince advisor, my parents blessed me with great tutors, and couldn't help but feel tired or sleepy. Yet would you look at this girl? Such a long time has passed, and it feels everlasting. Really does make me wonder, what kind of thoughts are going through her mind, it feels like she's absorbing everything. Despite having a good brain, I still don't think she'd have much of military knowledge, since no experience in it whatsoever to back it up. She closes the book and smiles faintly. I'm amazed at how ancient these things are, and they're mostly defensive tactics. Didn't the goddess Arya ever make them move out of their territory? Aside from the first hero, every other one felt rather dull. It almost feels like the slow-rate humans absorbed territory around through the passage of years was more in a survivalist way than out of greed. The past rulers must have been greatly influenced by the church's defensive Saint Tess warnings, and the wait for the heroes to assist them. In my head, however, that means we just have to obliterate everything in our way before they stand a chance to invade us. Well, these two mustn't have much knowledge other than defending, so I could make them defend the kingdom with the leftover army from all the factions while I do my expeditions, or even use them in sieges depending on the enemy structures, Aurora looks at them feeling bored, what would the total army size that I'd be able to use? around 100,000 perhaps. Currently our total army is of 200,000, but
but we only have access to 120,000, in other words. Aurora interrupting him says, 60% is enough, I expected a lot less from such a defensive kingdom, but I've understood a lot from these books. I'll take 50,000 from the crown prince and 5,000 from every faction except the church I want 10% and the saintess, also none from you Ryu, I need yours to keep control inside the kingdom. We can manage an expedition with such numbers to understand who and what we're dealing with as I lack information, as a starting point, of course, that to do more I'll need at least 500,000, maybe more. What guarantees do you have that we wouldn't just lose those numbers, Aurora? She picks the three empty books and starts writing on them. I'll write the strategies that'll be passed on the soldiers for the expeditions, invasions, and conquering the enemy bases. If you're both not happy with them then we can cease our deal here. Ruthless, but that's welcome, after all, we can't have a weak-minded general if she reaches that far. Ending up controlling the fate of so many soldiers will require the ones below to respect the higher UPS, especially the general, Mark thought pleased as most of those who wield such ranks, crumble from the pressure before even waging war. Very well, we shall wait, after all, we did come this far to ascertain your ways, Ryu gazes at Rosalind after speaking who approaches with a board. Rosalind placed two cups of tea for Ryu and Mark on top of the table after they make some space. Then went outside and served some tea to the two guards, then she returned and words came out. I'll be teaching swordsmanship to some kids outside if you need anything just let me know. Aurora nodded lightly as her hand motion went on and on relentlessly, Rosalind moved upon seeing her confirmation. From time to time Aurora would faintly smile as she received experience from Iris killing horned rabbits, making Mark and Ryu think that she actually enjoyed war. One may become a talented ice wizard adventurer, and the other may turn into an amazing general, to think peasants could be this blessed. The crown prince's unique ways have truly paid off. Mark thought realizing that making better uses out of peasants could become a new trend if these two paved such a path for others to follow through. Another hour passed by where Aurora stopped writing while passing the feather under her chin, then looked at them and extended the book, I'll be using these which are more advanced than any you have composed thus far. Ryu quickly grabs the book opening it in the middle of him and Mark, for both to read at the same time for a long while. Trenches. Lines. Formations. Tunnels. Just what is all of this? It shows how the four basic elements can be used the best in the most interesting ways, I feel stupid as to not have thought of some of these ways, Ryu thought while reading the suggestions and notes in it. Oh this looks truly interesting, it is quite different from what we've gone about the past years where we just march the troops, and the side with the highest army and mana output wins. Even though we stay behind walls most of the time against monsters and beasts, so the structures protect us while we destroy them. With the unique light element and ice element we can place barriers to further enhance defense measures, along with earth and nature to fortify them, and even use the light one to place barriers on the soldiers, this is truly splendidly. We already used it for our men obviously, but to use it in objects, that is quite original, should be very interesting to create different layers. By using the earth element one can open holes in the ground for the soldiers to create trenches and tunnels thus having protection against the enemy's magic allowing the enemies to be left on the open for our own magic output, it's so simple yet. Ryu glanced at Aurora who was smiling, then quickly back to the book for more. Mark thought, the thing that intrigues me the most is using sound with wind magic to propagate orders to the army, this will require training but once achieved. We'll be able to use some of these formations she drew, though I wonder why some of them split the army into smaller forces, wouldn't that make it weaker? He then noticed her smiling faintly and looked at Ryu who raised the head from the book. I'll be in your care from now on Aurora, he bowed slightly out of respect of her knowledge, Ryu who is one of the top ten most influential people in the kingdom the head of the Blue Rose family. Mark followed through doing the same while feeling amazed and curious as to what other things were still engraved in the book she wrote. To this Aurora said, you don't need to bow your heads, I'm just a peasant, the only thing I want from both, is loyalty and cooperation, in return the southern lands will become human lands. Mind if I take this book to show the crown prince? Ryu asked as she could still need it for something else. Make sure you don't show it to anyone else, the information in there could cause trouble from other factions. I can picture it happen, I'll guard this book with my life. We'll summon you to the capital soon once we have the acknowledgement of the crown prince. Once that happens, we'll hold a party to celebrate with the fellow high nobility, in other words, the other seven heads. Not forgetting the royal family and some important nobles including the Pope and Serenity. I'd estimate this happened from two weeks to one month, but knowing the prince, he'll likely take a month or more. 
to make sure they understand that you are truly special. You can stay behind Mark, I gotta go help sister and my hand hurts from writing. Once I'm back we can discuss the defensive matters that'll only be learned by the Crown Prince army. With excited eyes that end up causing jealousy to Ryu, Mark says, of course, I'll be looking forward to that. The books Aurora wrote were consumed into a magic bag from Ryu's, leaving a blank one behind and then he spoke. How many days will you need Mark here? If he learns fast three days if not a week. To think I'd have a learning challenge at this age, excited laughter came out of him. I'll send a wagon to come to pick you up in three days Mark, Ryu declared effortlessly as he knew, the one titled as the teacher wouldn't fail to reach another's expectations much less his own. Sure is good to be young, well I'll do my best. Mark replied to Ryu happily filled with determination in the eyes. After Ryu left, Aurora picked a blank book and then used her transformation skill in it. She then gave it to Mark who was distracted staring at the door that had closed, and then she voiced up grabbing his attention. I've written defensive measures in this one, you can study them while I'll go help sister in her quest. Very well, even though I must ask if you can't use magic how do you help her? She taught me how to monocoat weapons and things which I can then use to defeat things, but that's as far as I go. Oh, so your mana is still working, I wonder if there's a way to repair or find your element, I'll research a solution when I'm back in the capital. I'm grateful, but it's best to focus solely on the wars to come, as I don't really have a need for an element, since I'll be ordering not fighting. Alright I understand, when the time comes, I'll assign some guards to keep you safe at all times then. She nods lightly and then gets up, well then, I'll be back when I can. Aurora heads to the West Forest as soon as the old man nods slightly picking the book and opening it. After she left home the guards were still there guarding Mark, which meant Ryu returned alone to the capital, since the carriage only had four seats. Seems like this man is highly valued by the crown prince, which may also mean that Ryu might be able to protect himself. Aurora then looks at her mother and the kids doing exhausting exercises. Mother bullying the kids with her teaching, just like how sister suffered, she smiled faintly while passing by. An hour later of running she arrives close to the blonde girl, seems like you've been having fun Iris with twelve horned rabbit corpses around you. Aurora then notices a rabbit frozen to the tree screeching, and as she's about to kill it a voice resounds, leave it be, it's calling for more of his friends, Iris replied coldly while glaring at the stuck rabbit. She's not herself currently it seems, must have been all the skills that outleveled the brainwash resistance, perhaps the class made the disgraceful power stronger or something. Perhaps disgrace class is equal to a cursed class. As you wish master, Aurora replied and then went into deep thinking. Though I must say, this is quite the tactic allowing us to find rabbits without having to look for them. We could probably use this for other types of beings as well, as long as they have a screeching type of skill. The question is would she do it without being affected by her skills? I can't wait for Iris to accept the madness inside of her, things would get so much easier. I wonder what I could do to awaken her faster. Though I don't feel like she's changed at all, she's still happy and kind which is pretty great, however, something is definitely changing. The secret should be inside the class, Babel was it. It is a word I've never heard before, perhaps amidst one of my sealed memories, there's something about it. Never mind, eventually brainwash resistance will outdo the skills, allowing my sister to return to her sanity. The real problem would be, how is Iris being affected, possibly being corrupted, but if that was true, her personality would be changing. The one currently talking has an unfamiliar tone. Seeing as she didn't get some curse resistance it mustn't be one. Something else, but it's a class that wasn't in the class's book, can only wait and see, while looking for a solution to help her, if it comes to that extent. A bit of coldness is totally fine, but I still want her to preserve her persona, otherwise, she'd become someone else, not to forget I was allowed to retain my own mind from the choice created by the gods. Debts must always be fully paid, and I now have two towards my little witch. Dark bind, Aurora binds the bunnies who came to save the half-frozen one. Iris raises her hand pointing with the index finger in the rabbit's direction, icicle. Two lines of ice stretch from the ground piercing the rabbits in the middle of their heads killing them. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. Notice, 40 experience has been rewarded from a horned rabbit. Notice, 50 experience has been rewarded from a horned rabbit. The cold green eyes of Iris swap to Aurora and she moves her arm slightly, throwing an icicle that goes close to her cheek without touching it, penetrating a rabbit hiding next to a tree. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Notice, 50 experience has been rewarded from a horned rabbit. 
Aurora didn't waver having complete trust in Iris. What was I? I look around me finding dead rabbits everywhere feeling a slight sense of disgust, and a rabbit froze to a tree screeching to get help, then finding Aurora staring at me with a complex unfamiliar expression, what looks like a mix of worry and pride. It seems like I was out again, it's been happening more often lately. Probably due to your class evolution sister. Icicle, I shoot one at the rabbit in the tree putting it out of misery. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Notice, 40 experience has been rewarded from a horned rabbit. For better or worse I feel like we have enough rabbits for the quest, I'll remove the horns from the ones that still have them. Sure, I'll keep a lookout, Aurora replied with a friendly tone while understanding that Iris had been kind to the horned rabbit who was suffering for a long time. I wonder how much longer will this keep happening, being brainwashed is truly not fun, I make an unhappy expression towards my new class. It's like my own body get controlled by someone else, something else perhaps, it feels in a way familiar but wrong, very wrong. After a while, I place all the 16 horns inside a bag and check my status. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Level, 10 experience 570 slash 1000. Fame, 250 disgrace, 13560. Unique class, Babel which rank 2 experience 3610 slash 4000. Race, human name, Iris 8 years old. Health. 505 slash 660 mana, 1200 slash 2690. Status points 0. Strength, 185 stamina, 66 agility, 85 dexterity, 107 intelligence, 174, plus 10, wisdom, 260, plus 9. Attack, 0 magic attack, 0 defense, 0 magic defense, 0. Soul, 6720. Titles, Reincarnated plus, S, Mana, S, Mana Exhaust, S, Health, S, Beginner Reader, S, Purchase, S, Wisdom, B, Reader Series, B, Body Training, S, Animal Slayer, S, Intermediate Reader, S, Cooked Fish, S, Preyed Upon, F, Cheater, S, Heritage, S, Amalgam, S, Ice, S, Cooked Bird, F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series, F, Sail, S, Advanced Reader, S, Soulbound, S, Element, S, Contracted, S, Peasant, F, Class, B, Monster Slayer, D, Slime Slayer, C, Skill Mastery, D, Tree Chopper, C, Tree Type, S, Tree Series, D, Log Maker, C, Tree Planter, S, Book Thief, D, Criminal, D, Expert Reader, F, Herbs Gathered, S, Herbs Types, S, Potion Brewer, S, Potion Types, E, Status Mastery, E, Beast Slayer, D, Horned Rabbit Slayer, C, Potion Administered, F, Goblin Slayer, E, Orc Slayer, F, Assassination, S, Herbalist Series, C, Skeleton Slayer, E, Noticed, S, God Series, D, Potion Selling, F, Potion failed, D, Potion succeeded, D, Alchemist series, F, Money maker, S, Merchant series, C, Trading, S, Herbs. Sold, S, Herbs bought, S, Acknowledged, S, Disgraceful, S, Ignored, S, Forgotten, S, Zombie slayer, F. Completed series, Fishing, S, Farming, S. Skill points, 3. Actives, status level 51, D, system library level 50, D, mana code level 10, F, mana wave level 3, F, ice bind level 10, F, ice sword level 1, F, icicle level 8, F. Passives, bleeding resistance level 20, E, swordsmanship level 23, E, sword mastery level 14, F, mana control level 23, E, ice control level 23, E. Slight Wisdom Boost Level 9, F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 13, F, Acid Resistance Level 1, F, Axe Art Level 1, F, Axe Mastery Level 1, F, Corpse Dismantler Level 10, F, Brainwash Resistance Level 40, D, Night Vision Level 10, F. Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 50. Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 10. 
Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 40, Curses Mastery Level 14, Rituals Mastery Level 14, Magic Control Level 30, Magic Knowledge Level 20, Ice Mastery Level 14. Unique, Appraisal Level 42. Cursed, Unidentified Skill. Rare Element, Ice. Cursed Soul Bound, Grimoire Rangi, 30-200. You can consume the Soul Stones, we only need the horns for the quest Aurora. Alright, I'll see what the prize is this time around, she transforms into a book and consumes all of them. I can never get any of the elemental skills they use like fireballs due to different elements, it automatically rejects them due to lack of affinity, she spoke to Iris through telepathy, since unable to do it normally while in grimoire form. Do you think you have enough soul power to evolve now? I asked in my mind knowing she would listen. I'll try to spend it all, I have 2000 soul power so perhaps it's enough, a dark aura surrounded the grimoire as she converted all of it. I looked around to make sure no one spots us and also to be wary of any enemy. Not long passes and she returns to her human form. I want a new skill called Giver, let's try it, Aurora said excitedly making me curious and expectant. Aurora hears a voice from her own status. Notice, do you wish to give all of your consumed skills to Iris? Iris apparently I can give you the skills I received from the Soul Stones which ones you'd like to have? Status Status Level, 10 Experience 570-1000 Class, Pandemonium Race, human name, Aurora 8 years old. Health, 1000 slash 1000 mana 1290 slash 1500. Status points 0. Stamina, 100 intelligence, 90 wisdom, 150 soul power, 2000. Attack, 5 magic attack, 90. Titles, Eternum, S, Uncursed, S, Soulbound, S, Contracted, S, Noticed, S. God Series, F. Skill Points, 5. Actives, Status Level 40, D, Darkness Barrier Level 7, F, Piercing Darkness Level 13, F, Mana Coat Level 8, F, Dark Coat Level 9, F, Mana Wave Level 1, F, Dark Bind Level 14, F, Extraction Level 17, F. Passives, Mana Control Level 25, E, Dark Control Level 19, F, Monster Detection Level 40, D, Beast Detection Level 13, F, Night Vision Level 25, E. Unique, Transformation Level 15, Killing Intent Level 5. Blessed Slash Cursed, Mirror Level 2, Unidentified. Unique Element, Dark. Cursed Soul Bound. Contracted Skills, Telepathy, F, Giver, E. Consumed Skills, Infected Bite Level 5, Brainwash Resistance Level 4. Brainwash Resistance Level 8, Mana Code Level 10, Mana Control Level 7, Infected Bite Level 10, Brainwash Resistance Level 5, Brainwash Resistance Level 9, Mana Control Level 5, Long Slash Level 3, Human Detection Level 3, Human Detection Level 5, Slight Stamina Boost Level 3, Slight Agility Boost Level 6, Slight Strength Boost Level 4, Slight Strength Boost Level 5. Iris it's the consumed skills at the very bottom, she points while telling it to me. Hum. You can give me all except infected bite and human detection for now. Not really sure how repeated skills will work but if I have a lot of resistant ones it'll surely help a lot human detection you already have so you can keep it, and the infected bite. I don't really want to bite anyone, I smile awkwardly imagining myself chasing people to bite them. Sure thing, give them. I heard a voice from status in my mind. Notice, skills have been learned and merged, status updated. I feel my mind becoming a lot clearer and stable, also apparently some were merged and others learned Aurora. Let's see your status to see what they did exactly. Sure, status, we both look eagerly at it while smiling. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Level, 10 experience 570-1000. Fame, 250 disgrace, 13560. Unique class. Babel which rank 2 experience 3610-4000. Race, human name, Iris 8 years old. Health, 540-690 mana, 1223-2690. Status points 0. Strength, 185, plus 9, stamina, 66, plus 3, agility, 85, plus 6, dexterity, 107 intelligence, 
174, plus 10, Wisdom, 260, plus 9. Attack, 0 Magic Attack, 0 Defense, 0 Magic Defense, 0. Soul, 6720. Titles, Reincarnated Plus, S, Mana, S, Mana Exhaust, S, Health, S, Beginner Reader, S, Purchase, S, Wisdom, B, Reader Series, B, Body Training, S, Animal Slayer, S, Intermediate Reader, S, Cooked Fish, S, Preyed Upon, F, Cheater, S, Heritage, S, Amalgam, S, Ice, S, Cooked Bird, F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series, F, Sale, S, Advanced Reader, S, Soulbound, S, Element, S, Contracted, S, Peasant, F, Class, B, Monster Slayer, D, Slime Slayer, C, Skill Mastery, D, Tree Chopper, C, Tree Type, S, Tree Series, D, Logmaker, C, Tree Planter, S, Book Thief, D, Criminal, D, Expert Reader, F, Herbs Gathered, S, Herbs Types, S, Potion Brewer, S, Potion Types, E, Element, E, Status Mastery, E, Beast Slayer, D, Horned Rabbit Slayer, C, Potion Administered, F, Goblin Slayer, E, Orc Slayer, F, Assassination, S, Herbalist Series, C, Skeleton Slayer, E, Noticed, S, God Series, D, Potion Selling, F, Potion Failed, D, Potion Succeeded, D, Alchemist Series, F, Money Maker, S, Merchant Series, C, Trading, S, Herbs Sold, S, Herbs Bought, S, Acknowledged, S, Disgraceful, S, Ignored, S, Forgotten, S, Zombie Slayer, F, Completed Series, Fishing, S, Farming, S. Skill Points, 3. Actives, Status Level 51, D. System Library Level 50, D. Mana Coat Level 20, E. Mana Wave Level 3, F. Ice Bind Level 10, F. Ice Sword Level 1, F. Icicle Level 8, F. Long Slash Level 3, F. Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 20, E. Swordsmanship Level 23, E. Sword Mastery Level 14, F. Mana Control Level 35, E, Ice Control Level 23, E, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 9, F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 13, F, Acid Resistance Level 1, F, Axe Art Level 1, F, Axe Mastery Level 1, F, Corpse Dismantler Level 10, F, Brainwash Resistance Level 66, C, Night Vision Level 10, F, Slight Stamina Boost Level 3, F, Slight Agility Boost Level 6, F, Slight Strength Boost Level 9, F. Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 50. Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 10. Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 40, Curses Mastery Level 14, Rituals Mastery Level 14, Magic Control Level 30, Magic Knowledge Level 20, Ice Mastery Level 14. Unique, Appraisal Level 42. Cursed. Unidentified skill. Rare element, ice. Cursed soul bound, grimoire rank D, 30 400. Together we check the status curiously about how it affected the skills realizing something that made us both happy instantly. Just how high did my brainwash resistance went. It literally added up a lot of levels to it. It even changed the grade to C. Look at me I'm a rank D grimoire now. Aurora said with a smile and a happy tone. I told you you'd get stronger eventually. Even though it only gave a new skill, but perhaps in the future it can be used in a different way. I hope so, in the worst case can make your skills go a lot higher granting you the chance to become stronger. It still works as I'm a weapon in the end, even if thanks to my own skills I get to help you better like this, upon hearing those words I pat her head knowing she's trying her best for my own being. I'll do what I can to make sure we both become stronger, okay? I'm grateful but don't worry Iris. I believe we can achieve both our goals like this too, also there's something I must tell you while we rest, Aurora makes a serious expression giving me the shivers. Chapter 48 Ruins Arc Remember that in our past life I was sealed in a mirror on that world. Yes, what about it? 
I asked confused and curious remembering a short dream of the last day of the ten thousand years the trapped girl lived there. Two of the ringleaders who sealed me by the order of the God of Light, got reincarnated into this world. The hero and the sage, Sophie, and Romeo, a cold tone chiller than my ice leaves her mouth while Aurora made a disgusted expression. What? Did they notice you? Did you perhaps, kill them? I make a shocked expression as every question could easily end up in a yes, and all of it would cause issues to us. No, luckily I acted fragile and delicate, unable to do any physical activity and magic. I have a completely different appearance than back then. Not to forget that Dad along with the Prince, cooperated with me in that sense without realizing it themselves. Ah, well in that case we can remain silent since they didn't get to find you out. Should we do something about them? Even though I don't know if there's anything we could do, since they should be with strong guards I guess? Perhaps even the royal guards, the fire one looked insanely powerful. I think in this life I'll use them initially to expand the Lumen Kingdom southward, and when I have a chance in the future. I'll deal with them. Since I don't know yet what to expect from the other races, if it was humans against humans then it would be relatively easier. However by conquering the world through making them work for me, could be the start of a very long punishment, an evil expression appeared on her face which I smiled kindly while patting her hair. If you need my help let me know, they might be fellow humans, however, I can't allow them to hurt my sister. I shouted with a serious face not wanting anything to happen to Aurora. When the time comes, we'll figure something out, for now, we need to get a lot stronger. They both must have unique classes and elements, possibly some very special skills given by the goddess Arya. Yes, you're right, we could go to the ruins and get some more brainwash resistance from the skeletons for now. Sure, we can do that even though, I'll wait for your skills to surpass your resistance so that it can grow naturally before using mines. It should allow you to get a better sense and training at resisting those things in the future. I'm a weapon, so it should not bother me. All right Aurora, that's fine too, since the resistance skill might get stuck somewhere, and then we can boost it up with some merge. Plus I heard from one of the summoned, a girl named Kana that the max level in her world was 100, however, in this world that could be different. If we can go higher than 100, doesn't that mean that skills can too? Yes, that's what I'm suspicious of, so I'll save the future resistances for an emergency or a necessity even though our own level may not be correlated with the skills level. True, that sounds like a good plan Miss General of the Lumen Kingdom, I say in a teasing tone and get poked in my forehead as a response. We then laugh at each other while heading towards the ruins. Too bad we always end up leaving the corpses behind, but they're big and the blood would make a hassle on these bags. If I had a magic one, I'd bring them so that mother could cook them. We'll have to buy one at some point, but for that, we need to get more money. I believe we have around 3,000 copper funds. Either that or we find an alternative or some item in these ruins. That would make things a lot easier Iris and cheaper, being poor is truly a hassle. Upon reaching the ruins I look around us, and then we enter it. A while earlier at the Astia village, a wagon with a green octogram symbol arrived near the church. From within Goro, Yuno, Aiko, and Kaido came out. Welcome I'm Priest Miley and we've been expecting you for... Please come inside our church to rest from the long trip. I'm Kaido and mind if I go for a walk around here? I've been sitting for too long Priest Miley, and slept too, so resting is not something I currently need. Just Miley is enough, and of course you can, I'll ask one of our priests to show you around, the man does a gesture to someone inside as the doors are open. Thanks, I appreciate it, he started stretching his body in a peculiar way unknown to those who live here by extending the leg and reaching the feet with the tips of the fingers while saying, Ugh, that sure was a long trip, the back does a bit of cracking sounds. Goro replied, I've never done one like this, it was a good experience, he smiled at Kaido happily with it. You got that right Goro, Kaido stated stretching towards the other leg. Too bad we had to endure the smell of your sweat during half of the trip fatty, Aiko said making Yuno laugh and the boy feel bad. Come on Aiko we just arrived, give it a rest. It is pretty hot, it's not like Goro is far because he wanted to be, and I wonder in what month or season we are, it truly feels like summer, around July perhaps. In our world of Artana, we have four seasons and each has 90 days, we're currently on day 30 of the sun season, we'll be teaching all of you about it soon. That's pretty simpler than our old world miles, are there any sun season festivals and things like that around here or something, maybe events, ceremonies. They're not too frequent as we're all peasants so funding is hard to proportionate, however, we do have a few that go through the year, 
the flowering season that has passed is when we do a special one, as it is a named one after the goddess Arya. Does that mean each season is named after a different god? Goro asked curiously making Miles frown the eyebrows. We could say that is how it is, however, we humans only pursue the one religion that serves goddess Arya, as she's the one who created the race and also the sole superior being that helps us. The thing with the visions and the summoned people. Yuno asked while gazing at the priest noticing a muscular tall man approaching. Yes, that's right. Hum, I see. Yuno gazes at the new face devouring the body with the eyes. I'm here brother Miley. A big bulky bald man appeared behind the priest with a shield on the back. Kaido, this is Edgar he's an adventurer that has some relation with the church and will show you around while keeping your safety. Nice meeting you man, Kaido extended his hand, and Edgar hand shakes it. Likewise Kaido, would the rest like to come along? I'll rest a bit first, Yuno said as she was starting to feel rather hot. Same here, Aiko added chasing after Yuno to keep her company. I'd like to eat something if possible. Goro said with his stomach roaring which made Yuno and Aiko laugh. Miley smiled at them and said, in that case please follow me inside. Let's go then Kaido, they move and walk for a while as Edgar explains where he can find the many different shops and then they stop at the fountain with a garden around. As they rest a bit by the fountain Kaido notices a pretty girl going towards the west to what he can't help himself but question, who's that blonde kid? The boy points at the girl passing through a bit further away from them. Oh, that's Aurora I believe. She's an ascending rookie at the Adventurer's Guild along with her twin sister Iris, who has green eyes instead of blue. Adventurer's Guild? Someone that young is. Yes, the guild does have an age limit but from what I was told, her sister Iris is quite something for her age, which allowed them to register earlier than usual. That's interesting, I figured humans would all be weak but figures that some are born with some qualities. Edgar laughed lightly then said, yes. The adventurers and the ones that are part of the army are a tad stronger than the rest, especially the royal guards, each one is a monster. Since they fight with monsters and other things. Exactly they get to level up and become stronger, we end up using the 5 status per level up along with a skill point every time. I started with 10 of those points 1 skill point and a skill is that normal. Well you're a special case, that skill must be a blessing from the goddess Arya, but the rest sounds alright. I understand. Also you guys have like healing herbs and potions and things like that around here. The twins' parents work over there the man points with the index finger, it's a potion shop, if you or your companions ever need the good stuff, I advise going there. Alright thank you, Edgar. As for equipment, perhaps the blacksmith, I buy things from them there, they're also really nice people. Can we go there? I'm curious as to what weapons this world has. Yes, of course, let's go there. A short while passes and they arrive inside it, where a man greets them, Welcome to the Three Hammers, how may we help? A small man? A dwarf. Kaido thought out loud feeling excited from finding one, who had been a famous reference in his past world. Ah, for you to know about dwarves, you're no ordinary man, I'm very or a dwarf from beyond the West Ocean. My shipwrecked and I ended up in Lumen Kingdom, eventually ended up coming here and have been living in this shop ever since. There wasn't any information regarding dwarves from what the church showed me, is there a kingdom with them somewhere to the west? Kaido thought confused from the little he got to study. Either way Varier, I'm new in this village and it seems like I'll be staying for a while, so I'd like to see what weapons you sell. Of course, come along, we have all types of weapons that are generally used by the army itself, he waved the arm and hand softly towards the different weapons while naming them, making it look like dancing. Knuckles, swords, rapiers, Great swords, spears, axes, hammers, bows, crossbows, maces, hammers, daggers, wands, and staffs. My class is spearman, so a spear would be nice. Choose one kaito I'll put it on the church tab, Edgar said quickly as the funds for the summoned weren't small. I don't know what's good or bad though, kaito replied confused while lacking knowledge. In our shop, we have worst on the left towards best on the right. Kaido grabs the worst checking its weight all the way to the most expensive one. The expensive ones are heavier, as I am now this is far too heavy for me to do anything with it. I'd like the lightest one for now, in the future when I get stronger I'll return. A wise choice, you'll go far Mr. Kaido, Varied replied with a smile and surprised for the choice, and even more for the justification given from someone who didn't look particularly an expert with weapons. At the church, Goro had finishing eating, 
and then started remembering all the good food he ate in the past world where they were stolen from. Everything was so much better than this world meal, it's truly a shame that I didn't give it importance back then, personal data. Status. Level, 1 experience 0 slash 100. Rare class, Master Chef rank 1 experience 0 slash 1000. Race, human name, Goro 18 years old. Health, 195 slash 195 mana, 10 thirtieths. Status points, 10. Strength, 0 stamina, 20 agility, 0 dexterity, 0 intelligence, 0 wisdom, 2. Titles, summoned, overweight, mana, mana exhaust, health. Skill points, 1. Skills, personal data. Blessed skill, divine cooking level 1. This was the blessing I received from the goddess, perhaps I can make something from my past world with it. I don't think we'll be facing monsters anytime soon and don't feel like my class is suitable for combat. So I could at least support my classmates in the future through cooking. I also seem to have gained three new titles since the last time I checked it, and my health seems to have dropped slightly while my mana increased. I'm still annoyed as there's an overweight title, but it gives me two stamina, so that's not the worst thing ever. I figured it out by comparing statuses with Kaido. Luckily we're the same age and he only had 18 stamina, we humans get 1 stamina per year of life so it matched. He even said he might try to get overweight just to get the bonus while laughing, that guy is a good friend. Exhausting mana seems to increase mana and decrease health. I should probably spend points between stamina and wisdom to avoid that from happening again. The priest back at the first church said humans usually distribute them as evenly as possible since everything is useful to have. He said that intelligence would allow us to understand the world better, so that sounds like something I should get as well. If I'm to use a cooking skill I'll probably need to focus on dexterity. The teacher told me it allows us to be better with our hands, but perhaps it'll also influence the results of the things I make. Let me check the divine cooking skill before I spend my points just in case. Goro feels himself growing weaker as he gets mana exhausted a few times even losing some health. Divine cooking. Fish. Chicken. The young man gets up and walks to the kitchen of the church and finds a fish then he selects it from the little screen from the skill. Ending up losing more health allowing the mana exhaustion to reach its max effect. In front of him, the fish receives the mana and after some moments, it turns into a random fish meal then stares at it while watering from the mouth and digs in. Tears start to fall through the cheeks while feeling homesick from the meal created. At the very least, I'll be able to cook better things than the meals they give us, it's far from the real thing, but it's something. In fact, from now on, I'll cook everything for everyone in this church, as a repayment for taking us in. Hopefully the girls will appreciate it and become friendlier. Let's see the personal data again. Status. Level, 1 experience 0 slash 100. Rare class, Master Chef rank 1 experience 0 slash 1000. Race, human name, Goro 18 years old. Health, 80 slash 280 mana, 0 slash 100. Status points, 10. Strength, 0 stamina, 31 agility, 0 plus 5, Dexterity, 1 Intelligence, 0 Wisdom, 10. Titles, Summoned, Overweight, Mana, Mana Exhaust, Health, Cooked Fish. Skill Points, 1. Skills, Personal Data. Blessed Skill, Divine Cooking Level 2. Temporary Buff, Fish Meal plus 5 Agility. It seems like abusing of my mana paid off but at the same time it could have killed me, I need to be more careful. The food gives me some temporary buffs it seems, that's pretty cool. It'll surely help my classmates in the future, Goro smiles happily as he heads to one of the rooms to rest. Chapter 49 Ruins Arc Back to present inside the ruins. This place is still dark as ever, I wonder if we could use someone with light element just to illuminate these ruins. That sounds like a funny idea, maybe Elias would like to come one day. We stop and look at each other thinking about it. That actually wouldn't be a bad idea Aurora and I feel like she'd be very useful. These ruins are still extremely dangerous so having more people could prove to make it easier or not. No? How come? I look at her with eyes filled with curiosity. They could betray us and put us in a more dangerous position to save themselves, humans are like that. Oh. I see. Sister you. I wonder what kind of things you went through in our past life. You wouldn't want to know. I think I do but I'll wait for her to open up and tell me, I look at the enemies ahead, 
Don't you think it's weird Aurora, we're in the first room and there are four skeletons again in the same positions as last time, and two more behind them. Hum? Now that you mention it, but the first time I came here there was only two I believe. So the number is increasing by two every time perhaps. Almost like the monsters don't leave the first room after we make a ruckus in it. Could they probably get stuck in the first room? It's a little dangerous to run in one of those halls with skeletons behind and ending up cornered by two rooms of them, but if they get stuck here we could lure them all. We could, but then we'd lose our way out. Well yeah, for now, let's clean these up. Aurora clads her hands in mana and runs at them. It's always amazing how she just enjoys fighting with the palms. I broke my sword last time, retrieving only the handle, so I'll have to try something similar, I run at two of them, away from the group Aurora aiming for, in the center of the room. I position myself in front of one of the skeletons so that I deal with one at a time. He slices at me horizontally and I fall back, last time the skeleton did a vertical slash leaving him open, if I had a sword I'd just parry it but this range is insanely harder to approach. Icicle, an icicle stretches from his blind spot piercing his skull passing through his back to his eye, getting stuck inside it. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Air. That didn't quite work as intended but since it's inside the skeleton head, what if I spread it in all ways? I imagine multiple icicles expanding, from the one inside small ones stretched to all the sides, creating holes in the skull, cracking it everywhere. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Notice, 150 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, the skill ice expansion has been acquired. A new skill. Creativity truly is the key to learn ice magic, icicle, I shoot another one this time a bigger one from above the second skeleton, piercing the skull head from above as he tries to swing his sword at me which I dodge. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. Notice, 120 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 130 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Sister bait them and save your mana. I shout at her for getting about telepathy. She nods lightly and stays slightly close to their attacking range. I close my eyes and imagine three icicles falling on top of their heads, then I think of them piercing and expanding inside or close to their heads. Notice, 600 mana has been deducted. Notice, 100 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, Iris has leveled up to 11. Notice, 110 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 120 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. System, the title creation has been received. System, the title illusion series has been received. Notice, a sealed skill has been acquired. I open my eyes surprised and notice I hit all the targets close to what I pictured, what's a sealed skill? Appraise it. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Sealed skill requires the completion of illusion series to fully unseal current state, one third. That means I need two more titles, but what are illusions? Hey sister I got a weird sealed skill that needs three titles to unseal it, they're related to illusion, what is that? Illusions is like confusing your enemy with a W from a mirror for example, or even doing something that produces a false reality, maybe lie when you dream and you know it's fake, but that sense of false can be considered an illusion. I have an idea I want to try, can you summon your mirror here? Sure. She asked confused while extending her hand in front of us, mirror. I push the mirror to the middle entrance that is connected to one of the pathways and hide on the other side of the hall. After a while, a skeleton approaches and starts slashing at the mirror confusing it with me. One minute goes by. 5, 10, 20, 30. At some point, there are eight skeletons hitting the mirror making a lot of noise, and then a voice rings in my head. System, the title diluted has been acquired. I close my eyes and try to imagine the skeletons in front of me being hit by my icicles. I create eight icicles piercing them all from above. Notice, 800 mana has been deducted. Notice, 110 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 120 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 130 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 100 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 90 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 140 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. I open my eyes and realize I missed two of them, I try again to sense the mana from the skeletons in front of me as every being with a soul has some, then I imagine my magic hitting them. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Notice, 
120 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, Iris has leveled up to 12. Notice, 130 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. I'm very curious as to what you are trying to do Iris with your eyes closed, and I'm surprised you are actually hitting the skeletons. I feel like I'm starting to sense the mana in other beings, but I'm not sure if that's what it is, status. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Level, 12 experience 140 slash 1200. Fame, 250 disgrace, 13560. Unique class, Babel which rank 3 experience 1280 slash 8000. Race, human name, Iris 8 years old. Health, 540 slash 690 mana, 830 slash 2810. Status points 0. Strength, 185, plus 9, stamina, 66, plus 3, agility, 85, plus 6, dexterity, 107 intelligence, 174, plus 10, wisdom, 272, plus 9. Attack, 0 magic attack, 0 defense, 0 magic defense, 0. Soul, 7720. Titles, reincarnated plus, S, mana, S, mana exhaust, S, health, S, beginner reader, S, purchase, S, wisdom, B, reader series, B, body training, S, animal slayer, S, intermediate reader, S, cooked fish, S, preyed upon, F, cheater, S, heritage, S, amalgam, S, ice, S, cooked bird, F, cooking series, E, slayer series, F, sale, S, advanced reader, S, soulbound, S, element, S, contracted, S, peasant, F, class, A, monster slayer, D, slime slayer, C, skill mastery, D, tree chopper, C, tree type, S, tree series, D, log maker, C, tree planter, S, book thief, D, criminal, D, expert reader, F, herbs gathered, S, herbs types, S, potion brewer, S, potion types, E, status mastery, E, beast slayer, D, horned rabbit slayer, C, potion administered, F, goblin slayer, E, orc slayer, F, assassination, S, herbalist series, C, skeleton slayer, C, noticed, S, god series, D, potion selling, F, potion failed, D, potion succeeded, D, alchemist series, F, money maker, S, merchant series, C, trading, S, herbs, sold, S, herbs bought, S, acknowledged, S, disgraceful, S, ignored, S, forgotten, S, zombie slayer, F, creation, S, illusion series, A, diluted, S, completed series, fishing, S, farming, S, skill points, 5, actives, status level 52, D, system library level 50, D, mana code level 20, E, mana wave level 3, F, ice bind level 10, F, ice sword level 1, F, icicle level 15, F, long slash level 3, F, ice expansion level 4, F, passives, bleeding resistance level 20, E, swordsmanship level 23, E, sword mastery level 14, F, mana control level 35, E, ice control level 25, E, slight wisdom boost level 9, F, slight mana recovery level 13, F, acid resistance level 1, F, axe art level 1, F, axe mastery level 1, F, corpse dismantler level 10, F, brainwash resistance level 66, C, night vision level 10, F, slight stamina boost level 3, F, slight agility boost level 6, F, slight strength boost level 9, F, class actives, dark alchemy level 52, magic analysis level 50, class rituals, snow falling level 10, class passives, dark alchemy mastery level 40, witchcraft level 42, curses mastery level 14, rituals mastery level 14, magic control level 33, magic knowledge level 23, ice mastery level 16, unique, appraisal level 42, sealed two-thirds, cursed, unidentified skill, rare element, ice, cursed soul bound, 
Grimoire Rank D, 44 slash 400. It seems like the sealed skill was graded as unique and I'm missing one title for it. Your class also ranked up Iris, I wonder what ranking up a class does since mine doesn't have an experience system like yours do. I feel like my skills have been growing faster from the last rank up so it should be that, I could appraise but we might need the mana. True better save it plus it's not like we can do anything about it anyway. By the way, Aurora you can consume all the 14 soul stones around us, see if we can rank you up further at some point you're bound to get something that helps you. Hopefully, she turns into a grimoire and consumes all the soul stones around, then converts them. I'll be giving you the skills I got from the skeletons aside of the brainwash resistance, Aurora used telepathy to convey a message to Iris. Okay, sister. I should spend my skill points while she chooses the skills, class skill list please. Notice, which craft skill tree list has been updated appraise? Please do. Notice, 800 mana has been deducted. Babel which craft skill tree? Actives. Destiny cards, once per day can use a random card out of a 22 deck that will bring a catastrophe into the world for a limited time or till a condition is met, grave consequences. Dark alchemy crafting potions with limited effects and that only last for so long, starts at 10%, 0,5% per level. Mana shield, 0.25% damage is absorbed to MP instead of HP, 0.25% per level. Drain HP, absorbs 1 HP per minute from enemies around healing itself, plus 1 per level. Decay, it'll rot slowly something it touches, 0,25% chance of success. 0,25% per level. Magic analysis, can analyze the properties of the magic, of a magic circle, or the area itself, 0.5% chance of success, 0.5% per level. Curses, it requires casting time, the higher the proficiency the faster it'll be. Frog, may transform the target into a frog for a period of time, 0,25% chance of success, 0,25% per level. Delirium makes the target have a random illusion for a period of time, 0.5% chance of success, 0.5% per level. Mute, makes it so that they can't speak for a period of time, 0.5% chance of success, 0.5% per level. Blind, makes it so that the vision for a period of time, 0.5% chance of success, 0.5% per level. Deafen, makes it so that the hearing for a period of time, 0.5% chance of success, 0.5% per level. Taste, makes it so that they lose palate for a period of time, 0.5% chance of success, 0.5% per level. Smell, makes it so that they lose the sense of smell for a period of time, 0.5% chance of success, 0.5% per level. Paralysis, paralyzes a random part of the body, 0.5% chance of success. 0.5% per level. Fear, induces fear towards the target, 0.5% chance of success, 0.5% per level. Confusion, causes confusion towards the target, 0.5% chance of success, 0.5% per level. Rituals, require spending mana to create a magical circle, needs tremendous amounts of mana, can accumulate every day. Memory loss, makes targets inside the magical circle lose some memories. 0.25% chance of success, 0.25% per level. Sleep, makes targets inside the magical circle fall asleep, 0.25% chance of success, 0.25% per level. Snow falling, due to ice element snow will fall, everywhere that snows will be iris mana territory, 0.25% chance of success, 0.25% per level. Cursing objects, a random curse will be applied in an object. 0,25% chance of success, 0,25% per level. Taint, it'll taint users inside the magical circle in some way, 0,25% chance of success, 0,25% per level. Magical barrier, defends a place inside a magical circle from magic damage. Physical barrier, defends a place inside a magical circle from physical damage. Detection barrier, detects anything that enters inside a magical circle. Babel Arts. Grimoire Possession, links oneself with the Grimoire to use pandemonium skills. May affect personality while in use. Grimoire Renouncing, unlinks oneself with the Grimoire. Pandemonium Skill, Unlearned. Pandemonium Skill, Unlearned. Pandemonium Skill, Unlearned.
Grimoire skill F, telepathy. Grimoire skill E, giver. Passives. Babel mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1%, per level. May affect personality. Grimoire mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1%, per level. May affect personality. Witchcraft, increases the whole skill tree proficiency by 0.1%, per level. May affect personality. Curses Mastery, increases curse chance to activate by 0.25%, per level. May affect personality. Rituals Mastery, increases ritual chance to activate by 0.25%, per level. May affect personality. Dark Alchemy Mastery, increases alchemy chance by 0.2%, per level. May affect personality. Magic Control, increases specified proficiency by 0.25%, per level. Magic attack slight boost, increases specified proficiency by 1 per level. Magic defense slight boost, increases specified proficiency by 1 per level. Magic knowledge slight boost, increases intelligence by 1 per level. Charm, increases charm by 1, attracts generally the opposite gender, 1 per level. MP absorption, if damaged by an enemy magical skill heal MP by 0.25% of its total mana cost. 0.25%, per level. Fire Mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1%, per level. Water Mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1%, per level. Earth Mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1%, per level. Air Mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1%, per level. Nature Mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1%, per level. Poison Mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1%, per level. Acid Mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1%, per level. Ice Mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1%, per level. Explosion Mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1%, per level. Lightning Mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1%, per level. Spirit Mastery, Increases specified proficiency by 1%, per level. Summoning Mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1%, per level. Light Mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1%, per level. Dark Mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1%, per level. Time Mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1%, per level. Space Mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1%, per level. Destiny cards. That's a new one and it sounds very dangerous, so I'll learn it and use it if I ever run into an emergency. There are some other skills I don't remember seeing, was it from ranking up or evolving the class? I want Grimoire Possession and Renouncing along with Babel Mastery and Grimoire Mastery, I hope with the last one it'll help Aurora get stronger in some way. Notice, skills successfully learned, status updated. I'm done, Iris. Same here sister. I'm also out of mana so let's head home before things get dangerous. Alright, still need to see how Mark is doing with the knowledge of warfare I left with him, she sighs due to having fun in the ruins. I smile at her and grab her hand then speak, cheer up, things will get better eventually, worst case you can be an amazing general, by itself it can also be a great strength that I can't keep up with, after all, I'm just one little witch. Ideally I'd be able to command 200,000 men but it'll depend on how everything goes from now on towards the future where the Goblin King will invade, I want to strike him down before he gets even more soldiers. They reproduce faster than us from what appraisal told me. Yes, and their statuses are also better in raw combat, so that's dangerous. I have an idea that we could try tomorrow morning after I recover my mana fully. An idea. Aurora asks curiously as every time I have one something interesting usually happens. Yes, you'll see it. I smile playfully as we head home. Chapter 50 Ruins Arc The following day 31 of the sun season at Iris' room. I start the day by being woken up by a voice, Iris. Iris. Wake up. I half open my eyes and see a naked girl next to me, just 10 more minutes sister, I turn around closing my eyes fully. I'll be going on ahead Mark is waiting for me, if you don't get up I'll leave the room naked. The steps she takes to the door echo and when her hand is about to reach the handle, my body automatically moves out of bed. My palm aims to the handle and I imagine it being frozen. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. 
I open my eyes and speak angrily, where do you think you're going in that state idiot sister? I approach her taking three big steps. You know you didn't need to freeze the door right? How are we going to open it now? I kick her in the back of the leg, near the knee making her fall, that doesn't matter you shall get dressed right away. I throw her some clothes and dress some myself. So harsh right from the morning, I won't wake you up next time, she laughed after using a mocking tone. Hopefully not the way you did today, next time I'm freezing your entire body. Then I'd become an ice crystal, she imagines herself inside of one, it wouldn't be so different than being trapped inside the mirror, but at least I'd be quite beautiful. I let out a yawn still feeling drowsy, that's true, talking about the mirror did you figure something out yet? Aside from it decreasing back to level 1 after I exhausted my soul power no. It decreased level. I shout confused startling her. Yeah, I don't get what soul power had to do with it or if that was even the reason for it. What if it needs someone with a big soul? I ask with expectant eyes filled with curiosity while smiling happily. I could give the mirror to you if you'd like, aside from its hardness it's pretty useless. Sure let's try it, but, can you even give me skills that belong to you? Worth an attempt, give the mirror to Iris, a voice pops up in my mind after Aurora tries to give me the skill. Notice, a cursed skill has been received. Notice, soul-bound curse has gotten stronger. Notice, Aurora and Iris's souls have resounded with one another. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted by appraisal. Soul power from Aurora can now be added to Iris' soul to increase it further, due to a system failure the rate is already 10 times higher. Aurora looks at her sister who has gone silent for a while after the mirror vanishing and speaks, You okay Iris? With a dumbfounded expression, a voice comes out from me, Yes it seems as you can now give me your soul power to make my soul stronger, it seems both of them have resounded, not sure what that means. In this case, I believe it means we've linked further, kind of like having a direct connection between our souls like they glued one to another. I suppose since I believe we were split by the system through this new body of mine, and with both contracts, we were able to maintain it to some extent. I think I understand, also due to some system failure the amount you consume is ten times higher than normal, in other words, I receive it like that too. That's good I guess? I don't really know how that would help you, but in my case, it sure speeds my growth as a weapon a lot. True, and I'm not sure myself, but let me check status see if I can figure something out. Perhaps Soulbound will show useful information. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Level, 12 experience 140 slash 1200. Fame, 250 disgrace, 13620. Unique class, Babel which rank 3 experience 1280 slash 8000. Race, human name, Iris 8 years old. Health, 540 slash 690 mana, 2330 slash 2840. Status points 0. Strength, 185, plus 9. Stamina, 66, plus 3, Agility, 85, plus 6, Dexterity, 107 Intelligence, 174, plus 10, Wisdom, 275, plus 9. Attack, 0 Magic Attack 0 Defense 0 Magic Defense, 0. Soul, 7720. Titles, Reincarnated Plus, S, Mana, S, Mana Exhaust, S, Health, S, Beginner Reader, S, Purchase, S, Wisdom, S, Reader Series, B, Body Training, S, Animal Slayer, S, Intermediate Reader, S, Cooked Fish, S, Preyed Upon, F, Cheater, S, Heritage, S, Amalgam, S, Ice, S, Cooked Bird, F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series, F, Sale, S, Advanced Reader, S, Soulbound, S, Element, S, Contracted, S, Peasant, F, Class, A, Monster Slayer, D, Slime Slayer, C, Skill Mastery, A, Tree Chopper, C, Tree Type, S, Tree Series, D, Log Maker, C, Tree Planter, S, Book Thief, D, Criminal, D, Expert Reader, F, Herbs Gathered, S, Herbs Types, S, Potion Brewer, S, Potion Types, E, Status Mastery, D, Beast Slayer, D, Horned Rabbit Slayer, C, Potion Administered, F, Goblin Slayer, E, Orc Slayer, F, Assassination, S, 
Herbalist Series, C, Skeleton Slayer, C, Noticed, S, God Series, D, Potion Selling, F, Potion Failed, D, Potion Succeeded, D, Alchemist Series, F, Money Maker, S, Merchant Series, C, Trading, S, Herbs. Sold, S, Herbs Bought, S, Acknowledged, S, Disgraceful, S, Ignored, S, Forgotten, S, Zombie Slayer, F, Creation, S, Illusion Series, A, Diluted, S, Completed Series, Fishing, S, Farming, S, Skill Points, 2, Actives, Status Level 54, D, System Library Level 50, D, Monocoat Level 20, E, Monowave Level 3, F, Ice Bind Level 10, F, Ice Sword Level 1, F, Icicle Level 15, F, Long Slash Level 13, F, Ice Expansion Level 4, F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 20, E, Swordsmanship Level 23, E, Sword Mastery Level 14, F, Mana Control Level 35, E, Ice Control Level 25, E, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 9, F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 15, F, Acid Resistance Level 1, F, Axe Art Level 1, F, Axe Mastery Level 1, F, Corpse Dismantler Level 10, F, Brainwash Resistance Level 66, C, Night Vision Level 10, F, Slight Stamina Boost Level 3, F, Slight Agility Boost Level 6, F, Slight Strength Boost Level 9, F, Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 50, Destiny Cards Level 1. Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 10. Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 42, Curses Mastery Level 14, Rituals Mastery Level 14, Magic Control Level 33, Magic Knowledge Level 23, Ice Mastery Level 15, Babel Mastery Level 1, Grimoire Mastery Level 1. Babel Arts, Grimoire Possession, Grimoire Renouncing. Unique, Appraisal Level 42, Sealed Two Thirds. Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Mirror Level 7. Rare Element, Ice. Cursed Soulbound, Grimoire Rank D, 184-400. Seems like I won two skill points probably from the skill mastery title which is rank A only one more to go. In my case, the mirror is level 7 Aurora, and my soul is worth 7000. I had between 0 to 2000 souls so between level 1 to 2. Since I was always going up and down it probably didn't matter much, but since you have it at a higher level it should work better for you. Could also be because I'm a weapon too with soul power instead of soul. True that now it is time to find out the truth, a praise mirror. I point towards the mirror word on my screen with a big smile. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Very sturdy mirror protected by an unidentified barrier, failed to appraise the magical component. A unique skilled failed to appraise a cursed skill. I guess one rank away is too much, perhaps it has a different solution. What if I try something else? I point my palm towards the room floor, mirror. Once the big mirror appears, magic analysis. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Notice, analyzing barrier. Failure. So you want to fight me at? I will let you know that this skill even worked against a god barrier. Status spam it till it works. Aurora looks at me confused and quietly while I'm speaking alone, tilting her head in the process. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. After 8 tries it finally worked. Notice, analyzing barrier. Success. Notice, space element detected, portal type of space unidentified location. Notice, curse detected may form a pact with the mirror to use it, however, might get cursed by the old owner barrier. I start losing my senses and place my hand on the head, damn not now, Aurora please give me the brainwash resistance skill fast. As Aurora changed into grimoire form to proceed to that, a very cold tone came out of my mouth, Grimoire possession, she got pulled into Iris's hand and their souls resonated further increasing the personality alteration. A wicked smile appeared on the girl's face. Learn cursing objects and decay skills, an unusual low tone echoed in the room as a chill aura spread from Iris's body. Notice, skills successfully learned, status updated. Iris drew an empty circle around the room with her mana and then spoke, snow falling ritual. Below the girl. The empty circle was filled with a five-point star. Iris smiled, magic analyses, appraisal, status, 
System Library, Snow Falling Ritual 10 Pointed Star. Notice, 1500 mana has been deducted from the grimoire. The star inside the circle transformed into a 10 pointed star, slowly filling the entire room with higher mana density. She approaches the mirror and places a hand in the now visible barrier due to the room filled with mana, and pieces of snow falling, decay cursed barrier. The barrier transforms into a shadow who looks around grasping the situation around. Then noticing the danger, tries to return to its master while the girl without losing time, voices out the next command, magic analysis. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Notice, analyzing shadow. Notice, weakness was analyzed successfully. Notice, due to decaying, the curse can no longer attack Iris, but it's trying to return to warn its master, Romeo the Sage. A voice full of ill intentions that sounded demonic left her lips, that would trouble my master, an evil smile then filled her expression turning a little girl into a very scary one. She raises her arm pointing with a finger to the curse, dark bind. A dark hand was summoned below the shadow close to the mirror grabbing it, ice sword, curse objected. Notice, 300 mana has been deducted. Notice, object successfully cursed, due to magic analysis skill, it was cursed with the proper countermeasure. Dark bind, a second dark hand entangles the shadow that has no shape, and then the two of them pull it towards the sword. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. Begone worm, Iris pierces the shadow completely corroding it, enhanced by the curse and decay effect making the shadow curse unable to resist, ending up perishing. System, the title curse slayer has been received. Notice, 1000 experience has been rewarded from ascension curse. Grimoire renouncing, Aurora transformed back into human form and spoke, Who are you? Why did you call Iris master? A kind smile appeared on Iris's face and then with her mana, she wrote the word Iris on the mirror, and spoke, Copy me Aurora. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Aurora knowing everything that transpired copied her sister's behavior, writing her own name on the opposite side of the mirror. Can you at least tell me what's on the other side of this mirror? Aurora approached Iris who decided to push her into the mirror with an evil smile. If you're that curious, go find out yourself, as the words left Iris's mouth, Aurora was sucked into the mirror while screaming due to her trauma. Chapter 51 Ruins Arc Erase Ritual, Erase Cursed Sword, the mana density around her calmed down and she jumped inside the mirror with the eyes closed then Iris's senses returned. I open my eyes quickly and see myself entering the mirror. After going through the mirror I find my sister on her knees crying on the ground filled with snow. This place is so beautiful and white everywhere. What's wrong Aurora? She looked up at me with a face full of sadness and despair and spoke, Iris? Is that really you? Of course silly, who else would I be? I drop on my knees and hug her while patting her hair softly, don't cry my beautiful sister, everything is okay, or rather where are we? There's something inside of you Iris, I don't know what it is but it felt creepy. I know Aurora, I've been trying to fight it, however, I can only hope my brainwash resistance gets maxed fast. I saw the things it did, the way it used your skills, it was like a full-fledged witch, someone who knew your class truly well. I pass my fingers on her cheeks cleaning her tears, and say softly, don't worry dear sister I also saw what it did, and I've learned with it. I turn around at the mirror and lightly touch it. The black color of the wood around the glass changes color to brown, this made me feel that I can go through it again, meaning this place is just somewhere else. Our names are signed even in this side too. It seems we can go back any time, so don't fret, Aurora upon hearing my words feels relieved nodding at my words. Now the question is where are we? I look around me finding everything white, filled with snow and I start realizing something. Take a good look around Aurora, don't you notice something strange? She gets up from the ground and after checking everything words come out. This area is rather small, isn't it? Come, let's walk, mirror retrieve, it disappears and then I grab her hand and we walk for a few minutes in a straight line, eventually reaching the end of the snow. That looks like blackness, a void perhaps? What do you think Iris? Without fear, I try to pass my hand above and beyond the line where the snow ends. My hand stops at an invisible wall. Well, this is a good place for us to store things or hide if something happens. True Iris. You can even practice your witchcraft without anyone bothering you since the mana density in this place feels a lot better. I think I read about that somewhere, what was it again? The higher density the faster your mana recovers, it is a good place to practice skills or in your case swordsmanship and witchcraft. True, 
I won't have to hide my class and skills anymore. I'm already loving this place just on that alone, a small world with no one to bother us. We should get back though, I'm making Mark wait, mother might come in and make a ruckus that we're not in the room. Yes, you're right let's go, mirror, the big old mirror appears, I grab her hand and we go through together. Shortly after we return to the exact same spot inside the room. Seems like we return to the spot from where we enter. Indeed that's good to know, alright we'll talk later. She hugs me tight one last time for a long time whilst calming her breathing, and then leaves through the door, using her element to remove the ice in the handle. Once she does I look at the mirror, at the reflection in front of me. So who are you? I wait a bit and nothing happens. Well, was worth a try, retrieve mirror, the mirror vanished and I left home towards the trees behind the house, grabbing an axe on the way. I spent the morning watering fields, cutting trees and turning them into logs while mother teaches the kids. The guards that stay at my door are very kind and are always smiling when they see me, so are the boys. I wonder why everyone always stares at me, why they bother themselves at all, I'm just a random kid. I head home to take a shower from all the sweat, then get myself into a light blue dress. I take the bag that contains the rabbit horns, the two cards, and head to the guild. Some time passes and I shout from the entrance making everyone aware of me, while heading towards the usual balcony, Leonor. Iris. She shouts equally loud feeling very happy and excited to see me, making some of the adventures around do a cringe expression. Haven't seen you in a while, how have you been? I place the bag with the horns and the quest together with our cards. I've been good handling all these adventurers, as usual, how about you and your sister, been having a good questing? Yes. We've been slowly progressing. That's the way. Despite being slow it'll end up always part of the progress. After a while of checking everything on the table, she shouts happily at me. Speaking of which Miss Iris, congrats to you and Aurora on the rank D. Here's your card with the 408 points and the 120 copper for the horns. Thank you, Leonor, even though, we actually reached the D rank by doing F quests. That's a safe way to go at it, nothing to be ashamed of. Plus people usually party with a lot of others to do higher ranked quests. True thank you, what quests do you have? I have a rank F with slimes, a rank E with goblins. As she was going to say other things, I quickly interrupt her, I'll take the slimes one, since sister busy, so I'll go at it safely. Here you go, I read the paper wondering where it would take me this time around. Quest. Rank, F. An unknown group of slimes have been sighted on the east woods beyond the farm of the Astia village. They have killed a few adventurers who passed through. You will be rewarded 2 points and 5 copper per slime killed. Be careful Iris as there've been some victims already, and if you'd like, there's a newcomer who could use a hand as he never killed a monster before. Leonor points to the right, that bald guy Edgar, with the octagram shield, can introduce you to him if you'd like company. Sure, I'll take the person along. I walk towards a really tall man, Mr. Edgar. He turns around as I interrupt some conversation he's having, and looks at his front not seeing anyone then looks lower seeing me, a little girl. The blonde rookie, Iris Wright. Yes, hello. I reply with a smile then add a quick explanation, Leonor told me a newcomer had joined so she told me to ask you about it. He takes a few steps to the side, hey Kaito, Goro, this little lady wants to talk with you guys. I look at the two boys in front of me they have brown hair and brown dark eyes, one is really fat and they're both taller and look older than me. They approach me and say, hello I'm Kaito a spearman, he says with a charming smile, and the other one says in a friendly tone, hi I'm Goro, a master chef. Spearman and is holding a spear, easy to understand but what's a master chef? One who cooks or something. What's up with the big bag he's carrying? Hello I'm Iris and the receptionist told me you two were looking for some help. I'm currently heading to do a slime quest in case you two would like to join me. This young kid is adorable even in our old world I didn't see many blondes with green eyes. I hope she won't bully me like the other girls at the church. Nice to meet you, Iris, Goro replies happily while bowing lightly in my way, even though I'm not a noble making me feel awkward. Are you strong? Kaito asks curiously, so he doesn't intend to party with weak people. I guess I'm a little bit strong. Kaito looks at Edgar who nods at him remembering their talk by the fountain. Actually it doesn't matter we'd be happy to be part of your party Iris. Worst case maybe I can befriend her and get some free potions and other goods from the parents. Sure, 
I reply with a smile, let's head to the east woods then near the farm fields. We walk our way there while chatting. I haven't seen you two around the village before, are you new? I ask them filled with curiosity. You wouldn't believe us if we told you we came from a different world, Kaido said with a joking face. Why not? It's pretty normal for the goddess Arya to bring heroes to this world. Oh right, they did say the goddess does it every 100 years or something, Kaido thought finding it less amusing, and totally unlike the way, he imagined the conversation scenario to be. We're two of the 30 summoned people from this time around, we used to live in a world much more civilized, and with greater science than this one with barely any wars in it. That sounds like a really nice world Goro, even though I don't know some terms, I smile kindly at him, imagining what kind of world that could be. Iris seems pretty friendly so let's surprise her, he stops moving and takes out a small box from the big bag and from it a fish, he uses divine cooking while imagining a food called takoyaki. After a few minutes, a plate with takoyaki on top appeared in his hands, here Iris, feel free to try this, it's a meal from our homeland. You can cook things from your past world? That's amazing. I stretch my hand and grab one of the balls eating it. Notice, A plus 5 agility buff was added from the food. Your food gives statuses? That's pretty incredible, the food I always cook is just food, I laugh at that as nothing I made gave me anything, other than filling my belly along with cooking titles. How do you know that? Kaido asks confused as to when he tried some food, had to check personal data to find out. I checked it with a skill, I nom another, this is so good, you're truly talented Goro, upon hearing my compliment he became red like a tomato and spoke. Please eat more. If you're still hungry after this I'll make some more food. I finished the plate then said, I appreciate it but I'm good for now, thank you very much it was delicious. We resume our walk along with our conversation. Now that I think about it, what level are the two of you? We're both level 1, we haven't really fought anything so far, since we just came from the capital, Kaido replied with a relaxed tone while looking at me. I suppose you don't know how to use that spear then. Kaido taking it personally replies a little colder, what has that to do with you? My mother teaches young kids, one of them is an adventurer, maybe you could become a student and learn more about your weapon. I smiled innocently while trying to be helpful to the newcomers. Goro proceeds to hit Kaido with his elbow discreetly, making him understand that I didn't mention anything bad with it. Sorry about my tone, I thought you were making fun of me. Really? I didn't notice, we keep walking as I'm used to a lot worse from my sister, and then I continue the conversation. Is it okay if I ask more about your world? I'm a very curious girl. It's fine by me, what would you like to know Iris? Goro quickly replies in a friendly tone. What did you guys liked most about your world? Food. Games. Games like hide and seek. I ask confused at Kaido's words. They look at each other laughing. We had some very advanced games where we could have adventures in unrealistic worlds created by smart humans. It's a little hard to explain but it's like we could use magic and skills without actually being able to. That does sound confusing, they chuckle without being able to avoid it, as I make a funny expression not understanding it. It's kind of like a made up world where you get to do the things you can do in this world, Goro simplified since he realized he's talking to a little kid. Oh, now I understand a bit better, thank you both, I smile joyfully at them wondering what kind of beings would live in such worlds. This girl sure is always happy. Compared to the girls from our class she's a lot nicer excluding perhaps Anoka who is shy and kind. Kaido looked at Goro who seemed to be thinking on something as well. I hope Iris grows into a good woman unlike Yuno and Aiko, those two are the worst, Goro sighed not noticing Kaido staring as he faced forward while walking. Hello, long time no see. I shout happily seeing a familiar face from the first quest I did with Elise and Aurora. The old man turns around. Oh if it isn't Iris the one who helped me last time along with the other two girls. How have you three been child? Everything's fine, we have been doing a lot of quests and we're now both rank D adventurers. She's two ranks above us. Kaido thought surprised while looking at Goro who didn't pay much attention to it. Congrats young lady. I hope you can become like the lady who used to be a peasant and then became a hero, showing the world that it is possible for lowborns to surpass nobles. If you were to become this kingdom hero, Ah what delight that would bring to my heart. He coughed twice possibly from talking too much, age, or even sickness. I wouldn't dare dream that high, I smile, and then I say, I just want to become stronger and help others through questing. The old man laughed lightly, 
I'm sure you'll grow stronger with such a good goal. He pointed a little southeast, you should find the forest there since I believe you've come for another slime hunt. A kind smile then appeared on his expression while extending a hand to the top of my head, giving me a light pat. Yes, leave it to us. He looked at both of them, then he stared at Kaito for a bit, make sure you treat this girl properly, she's the farmer's pride, the old man laughed loudly for a bit then resumes coughing rather aggressively. Ah? Yes? Of course, Kaito replied confused feeling targeted making Goro chuckle. I didn't know about being their pride, did no one care about a slime quest or something? Perhaps it's due to me being a peasant and so young? Well, it doesn't really matter, I'm glad I can be of help. I start walking while waving the old man goodbye, and then a few minutes later we arrive at the forest. Goro make me a meat dish for strength. Coming right out, he took out a rabbit and started making something with it. I'm assuming you'll do all the fighting for Goro. Ah, yeah, I'm the offensive class after all. I believe you both could fight together, before I became a wizard I would just farm fields. You think I can fight? Goro asked surprised while preparing the ingredient. No way you can, look at yourself you're way too heavy and have a support class, upon hearing Kaito's words he made a sad expression. I believe you both can fight equally well, I look seriously at Goro who looks back at me with sad eyes. I could give it a try, Goro said trying to reach my expectations. Do you have anything you can use as a weapon? Sadly not, I only brought raw food. What weapon would you like to have? I'm pretty big so maybe a hammer? Did hammers exist in medieval times? He looks at his friend who was a little upset with the whole conversation. Since the games he played, every class had their own specific role, I guess they did, small ones for crafting. Ice hammer, I create a beautiful big hammer made of my element around 60 centimeters long, with a big icy rectangle on top. Notice. The skill Ice Hammer has been acquired. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. Here you go Goro, I extend it to him while feeling the weight of it. He puts the bag on the floor and grabs it with one hand, and then realizing it is pretty heavy ending up using both hands. Whoa, this is pretty heavy but so cool at the same time. He said happily loving it. Alright, I'll stay behind both of you and support you whenever necessary. Thank you, Iris. Goro shouted happily and ran making noise with each step towards the forest. Kaito looked coldly at me, and then followed through. Look Kaito a clear slime here, he lifts the hammer really high and lets it fall on the slime smashing it. Notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. The poor slime, I chuckled, oddly finding it funny how a living being just got smashed rather violently. He then lifted the hammer and noticed a shiny stone on the ground. What's that thing, Iris? It's a soul stone it contains a portion of the monster inside, we use it as currency in the guild. A way for them to know how many we've defeated. Oh. The hammer is a bit heavy so if you could, you can grab those for us, he said happily thinking of a way to not make me do anything dangerous. Sure. Leave it to me Goro. I look at Kaido who's struggling against a slime. Even with the strength buff and all my points on strength, I'm not dealing much damage to this thing. What's wrong with these monsters they're supposed to be extremely weak. Yet Goro one shot one. What the hell is this? Goro even has less strength than me so how is he able to do that? Is this slime simply stronger than the one he defeated? Let me. Yo Goro can you handle this slime too? Yeah bro, leave it to me, he runs closer and then smashes the slime in one go. Notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. These things are so weak. Goro laughed making the classmate become full of rage, which led to shouting, What the fuck? Why are your attacks working when I'm the one with higher strength? That's because they're practically immune to physical attacks since they're made of mana, while Goro has a weapon made of ice which these in specific are weak to. Ice spear, I then close my eyes imagining a long stick with a very shaped edge at the tip. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. Notice, the skill ice spear has been acquired. Try this one. I extend it to him who takes it with brute force. This guy isn't very nice, Goro notices my displeased face. Kaido then places his other spear near a tree and aims at a nearby slime killing it in two hits. Notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. This weapon really does make a difference, these freaking monsters made me show a bad side of me. He then runs at another one and starts piercing it relentlessly, to relieve the anger dwelling inside. Notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. Goro approaches me and speaks, 
sorry about Kaido's behavior he is a prideful person but means no harm. I look at the one who approached me and reply, in the future, I'm willing to party with you, but not with him in case you end up alone, ask Leonor to tell me that you need help. I'm honored and who's Leonor? The most beautiful and kindest guild receptionist. Oh alright, I'll ask in the guild for her if necessary, thank you, Iris. Well go smash more things, I'll pick the stones meanwhile, the weapons won't last forever. Ah, right sorry, he runs at slimes while having fun smashing them. Notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. Notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. Notice, Iris has leveled up to 13. Seems like he's having fun, I could try to make more weapons in the future, just to get a lot of skills to rank up the skill mastery further. I want to learn Mana Shield now that I have a skill point. Notice, skill successfully learned, status updated. Mana Shield, I start feeling a thin barrier being formed around me. Didn't cost any mana to activate it, meaning that the skill will probably consume mana whenever used, I think it was when someone attacked me or something. Ah. A loud shout surprised me and Goro too, who isn't too far ahead from me. I run as fast as I can to the scream direction, finding a red slime burning Kaido's legs who's on the floor screaming, Icicle, I shoot four small icicles at it. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Notice, 50 experience has been rewarded from a slime. I run closer to him and lightly freeze the burnt areas while he makes a pained expression. How did this happen? I ask confused not expecting this to occur. My legs hurt, ugh that stupid slime was hiding behind a bush and I just ran on it without realizing it. I guess that's what happens when you are too angry to notice your surroundings, something my mother would surely teach you. Kaido, check your health, Goro says worriedly as he approaches. Ugh, personal data, he checks the information in front of him, in an invisible screen to me. I have around 60 health left, and got a burning resistance skill from that, so just need to recover. Apparently also leveled up, let me put the points on stamina just in case. Seems like he's using his head now, perhaps the pain sorted the priorities up. I collect the soul stone and then coat my hands with ice, freezing and blocking an incoming fireball from further ahead. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Noticing this, Goro runs around flanking the fire slime, while I keep holding my position protecting Kaido behind me. To think I'd be protected by a little girl, just how low have I gone in this world, just how hard is this shitty place? If it wasn't for this girl I'd most likely be dead by now, not only did I ignore the rest of my statuses, but I also thought I had become OP just for receiving a temporary stronger weapon than mine, I'm so retarded. Before we came into this world the goddess told us we're part of one of the weakest races. I just assume that I'd instantly be able to beat slimes easily which in games are usually super weak, very often the weakest. In fact, why are slimes this tough? Was the red slime an advanced type? I guess it has a skill and since it can be used in close and long range, it gives him a lot of advantages over me. Notice, 50 experience has been rewarded from a slime. At least Goro is being more successful than me, seems like I'm the one falling into supporting, if I don't step my game up I'll. Can you walk? I ask him while extending my hand in his direction. Yeah, don't worry. He grabs her slim hand which gets him to be pulled out of the ground easily. Hum. This girl is pretty strong. How is the girl like this? She's so much younger than me, how's this possible? The goddess gave us a blessing skill and told us these skills would allow us to grow faster than most humans. He looks at me startled making me do a confused look back at him. I guess that since she's been living here, probably had a lot of time to develop her abilities. Meaning that in a few years I should pass her as I have a blessed skill and she won't get any easily. Speaking of which I haven't tried my skill yet, since I needed a spear to use it, the reason why I went to get one at the blacksmith. I follow Kaido who seems like he's looking for something along with Goro, who brings me the soul stone from the fire slime he smashed storing it in the bag along with the rest of them. Found one. He gets closer to the slime and shouts, Dragon Thrust. From the ice spear, a fire dragon came out melting the weapon and burning the slime on the ground into dust. I've never seen that skill, was it the skill the goddess gave him? It was pretty cool, even though I prefer the good food from Goro's one. That was amazing Kaido. Yet. Even though it consumed all my mana, personal data. Upon checking the changes he makes a shocked expression. My max health decreased and my mana got a lot higher. Mana exhaust, health, and slime slayer titles. 
he shouted confused at the information in front of him. That was my reaction a while ago, I smile happily reminiscing my starting line with the system library. That happened to me too Kaito when I used skills for the first time. Oh, so it's a normal thing from these titles. Didn't the church tell you guys about them? I ask with a calm tone while making an innocent expression. No they only told us to spread the status's points evenly as we'd need a bit of everything, and then they'd get us some good equipment to make it easier for us to level up. Are they scared they get disgraced titles or something? If they don't get many titles like I did they'll be extra weak. Should I tell them? Since titles give good things we can try to collect some more of them as we go, Goro voiced his opinion on the matter keeping me silent. Yeah, let's share this information with the girls at the church, and send a message to the rest of our summoned friends about it. Let's take a rest here before adventuring deeper, I suggest cautiously so we can recover before attempting to go further. Sure, I'll go grab the food bag and make us something. Yes please, your food is the best. Doing this quest with these two is actually more enjoyable than I thought it would be, Kaito let out a smile while thinking about it. Chapter 52 Ruins Arc These weapons you've drawn Aurora, you say they're able to possibly take down the flying type enemies if they come close to our walls, Mark points at the excellent sketch on the white paper notebook. Depending on the materials used and the enchantment, I believe it can even take down the famous dragon, like buffing it with a hundred different skills, this way we can defend the kingdom capital. If one day the red dragon or any other ancient monster comes by, we'll be able to fight it off, but why water enchantments? In case our soldiers hit them with this gigantic ballista the water enchantment will block fire magic from being formed inside the dragon. Mark scratches his chin finding it interesting since Aurora's words could indeed work. Furthermore there's a chance we get invaded from the mountains, I don't know what other races there are, but from Ryu books, I saw dragons, wyverns, and harpies, they were all flying types. We have monsters called golems at the top of the mountains their territory stretches pretty far, and they fight off whatever comes from both sides. Not that long ago they'd stop the advancements of ogres. Yes I read about them, but a dragon would melt the golems probably. Perhaps you're right even though they can throw a big to a gigantic boulder, so even dragons need to be careful. Even the red dragon in the north. That one is the sole exception Aurora, it can probably melt everything it wants from afar. Another thing I'm interested in is making observation towers, we can put a bell on top of it to alert everyone around it. Even use a smoke that leads all the way to other towers making a path of smoke back to the capital, but I'd recommend bells. I saw that in your book, and honestly that's a very interesting idea, we could put a soldier with the fire element in it. Also some archers with zoom skill which allows them to see further ahead, reducing the tower's quantity. We need to improve the communication from our borders to the center of the kingdom if we want to expand successfully. If one of the borders is attacked we need to know from where to respond swiftly. By having a better way of passing messages we can distribute the army better, I understand. Another important thing is increasing the cereals farming fields, and put the soldiers also working on them when they have nothing to do, to self-sustain themselves. That's an interesting approach, they tend to be lazy while on duty. These farming fields would extend near the borders so that we don't have to use wagons to carry the cereals later. Oh. Now I fully understand what you meant by that. You're almost there Mark, it is also to enable our armies to be at the borders instead of sitting on the capital doing nothing. This way we can also increase the recruitment and any extra labor will be used to chop woods, farming, fishing. This includes building walls, camps, and towers. Thanks to those things, they would receive titles, it would make them naturally stronger. Your perspective to war is out of this world Aurora, in the end, what you call defense is in reality kingdom building. We'd only leave enough troops back to protect the kingdom and the capital from any rebellion or criminal groups, keeping it safe is also the army job. If we keep the army outside at the borders won't the population be able to turn on the king easily. We'll make the population expand to the borders by granting them all kinds of new jobs instead, make the citizens follow the armies to the borders. You're brilliant, how about the factions? I believe that the nobles will want to partake part of their armies, especially by making rewards for having ranks in the army based on the new territories we'll get. Whoever does more in war will get more rewards. We'd have to reform the ranks further, however, that'd indeed keep the factions greedy and busy. It could even make them more motivated to participate in war. Yes, exactly, but it will also make the church expand further into the borders by consequence, as their followers will want to support the saintess who will be at the front lines. Mark hits the table with both hands smiling excitedly, everything could work, this is very interesting and exciting. It couldn't, it will, 
after all, it was devised by me. Can't even call you arrogant as it is slowly taking shape into reality, Mark started laughing happily enjoying the idea. Do not allow the church to retain 30 summoned either, make them be part of the expeditions and of this development. Surely there'll be some interesting ones who'll have blessed skills that can make this progression faster, or even bring something useful to the table. So keep someone from our side take a look at them. We'll have a list of their classes and divine skills when Ryu comes back as well, any contact with them that you may see fit, just leave it to us to make it happen. Very good, at that point, we'll be able to deepen this plan. I'll also make sure the crown prince understands everything that we discuss here, allowing him to discuss it with the king, and then we can start acting. We'll have problems at some point keeping the main roads safe from bandits and criminals. Especially so if we need to transport armory, equipment, food during our lines whenever we need them from the capital. Solution Reforming the church about the disgrace titles and classes as they can be used to further strengthen our race. Don't discriminate against anyone especially peasants, as they overwhelm the nobles by number and allow them to become guards. If we did that it would be a direct confrontation with the church. Make them send the saintess and the elites to a different location, and I'll purge these eight archbishops along with the Pope and whoever dares stand in the way, Aurora said coldly while creating an ominous aura around making Mark slightly shake. This girl is truly merciless, but she's right, if we're going to do this, we can't be held back by anyone. If we wish to expand the territory, we need the crown prince to turn into the king gaining full power. That way we would be able to do as we wish, and if everything truly goes as this girl says, who knows how far I'll see the humans go. Mark looked down at the notes then at her making a serious expression. I'll convey the message to the crown prince, however, make sure you keep an eye on your surroundings. Once we all start moving to do everything, the way your family may be seen by the different factions will surely differ. It's fine, by that time I believe Iris will be able to deal with those things, she just needs to keep getting stronger and stronger. Eventually once you become a general, the royal guard will also accompany you and guard you, you'll just have to wait till you have the title. Your family too will be secured, so you can focus on the battlefield. Seems like you're starting to believe I'll lead the army Mark, upon hearing these words he smiled and then replied. Strangely after living for so long, I've never been more sure of anything in my life. The further we extend the better our transporting food methods will have to become, so pass three pages ahead. I drew a different mechanism that can be pulled by horses, also investing in such animals long term will be very beneficial. We'll have to get some sponsoring from all the factions for all of this, but it should be quite doable they are pretty wealthy. We can also set taxes lower to live near the borders and merchanting licenses so that whoever wishes to sell goods will have to get and renew them every year. Of course, this applies to nobles too, the space they use will also have a cost, especially inside new camps. If everything goes well, I expect some rich people to appear, willing to sponsor our campaign. That would surely bring great wealth over time keeping the merchants circulating through the kingdom, instead of being stagnant mostly on the capital will be very nice. Thanks to the expeditions new people will come wanting to enlist in the ranks. More smiths will be required, creating more room for them so we can teach said jobs to some of the soldiers to have crafters close to the borders. This could become a self-sufficient army in the future. That's the benefits of good preparations, but the kingdom itself needs to develop better methods of farming. I've created an interesting way with Iris outside, would you like to come and take a look? Of course, we've been sitting for a while, it's good to stretch the legs, he laughed while getting up and following Aurora outside. A few moments later, they reach the field outside. So as you can see that big part is strawberries only because Iris loves them, but what is interesting is this section over here. She does what I taught her, I call it crop rotation, after checking other farming fields. Noticing that they insist on the same product all year long, Instead my sister does a rotation between wheat, turnips, barley, and clover. What are the advantages to this crop rotation? Different plants need different types of food from the soil, we call those nutrients. That means using these four types, it equals to a non-exhaustion of the soil, so when it rotates the seeds clockwise. The properties that were sucked during that one year, are able to recover, making the soil healthier. That way, every year the necessity inside the ground remains the same creating a natural regeneration of the soil through time. With mages of the earth and nature elements, I'm sure the fields can be enhanced a lot more, depending on the results. It could be super effective. Aurora then points at some of the plants and follows with an explanation, we end up selling these, especially since one of them is used for animal caring which we don't do, but if we did. 
we'd be able to have a good amount of food for them too, in other words, horses. Seems like you intend to reform the farming method as well, Mark felt surprised as he thought warfare was all she knew about. Everything I read I understand, I've spent a while at the library, enough to read its every book. Of course, that testing things helps, also making the soldiers do farming and fishing have other opportunities too. Hum? Like what? Not only we get cheaper labor since it becomes part of their wages, but also the titles that I mentioned before from farming, fishing, woodcutting, and possibly building will make them stronger. What do those titles do? Personally, I've never done any. Aurora goes near the house and grabs a hoe while going into thinking. The church incites for people to not pursue too many titles due to them possibly having a negative effect. Possibly allowing peasants and nobles to obtain disgrace classes. Nobles have instant access to rank 1 classes, due to the noble title that is given upon their birth. This allows them to get classes like warrior, priest, wizard, and others. Meanwhile, peasants start with rank 0 choices, due to title peasant things like farmer, fisherman. Thus through many titles, lowborn can catch up to nobles. It's not by chance that Iris has become a little strong, she has a lot of titles and works very hard for them, since I'm a grimoire I don't get tired, probably why I don't have that type of thing. Upon returning she extends it to Mark. Check your personal data skill statuses numbers and then plow the fields. When you hear a message from the system compare the old number with the new one. After a bit of plowing a familiar voice resounds in his mind, let's see, personal data, he looks for a difference and realizes something interesting. I've become stronger by one point. Which is barely anything I know, however, the more you plow the more it'll give. If you water the fields, plant seeds, and plants, and do many other things, everything will ultimately contribute to it. In other words, if we make soldiers do these jobs along with their usual training they can become stronger faster. A smile appeared on Mark's face. You can water the fields if you'd like, it'll give you some stamina which in your age, extra health is always welcome. To think I'd see a day where a noble would be farming and watering fields by a peasant order, one of the guards said to the other from afar. I'm as surprised as you, but from their conversation, it seems like we might be the next ones doing that. They look at each other feeling some unease. Chapter 53 Ruins Arc A while later after Iris, Kaido, and Goro rested, they resumed the slime hunting quest walking deeper inside the forest. The first time I did a slime hunt quest I almost died and we even had a healer with us, a really cute girl named Elise. So you struggled a lot at the start. Kaido asked surprised thinking I was strong from the start. Yes, I believe we all do, and to be honest even now I still do, we're just weak humans after all. Even with this blessing, the goddess gave me I'm still not finding myself that strong. You'll become strong in no time bro. The blessing will surely level up. Goro said with a big smile filled with positivity. Exactly, with a skill as amazing as that it's a matter of time Kaido. I helped to cheer him up despite everything. Thank you for the rabbits too Goro, your food is really good, it even increased my strength so let's use the buff. You're very welcome bro, and Iris I'd like to take lessons with your mother. Do you think she can teach me how to fight with a hammer? Yes, I believe so, if she can't then that's it. Where do I go to have those lessons? Southwest of the village there's a house where I live in near a river, and also a field that I made with mostly strawberries. Strawberries? That's amazing I love those. Goro shouted almost drooling over all the strawberry cakes, cheesecakes, mousse, ice cream, his past memories contained. Mind if I tag along for those lessons as well? Kaido asked shyly while turning his face to the side. Of course, everyone is welcome to do so. Just don't forget it's not free, so you'll probably have to earn some money for that. It's fine we can use the church funds for that. Oh true Kaido, I should probably start using those to pay for ingredients to expand my divine cooking skill. I believe in your case the priests would be more than happy to do so, maybe even make a restaurant of sorts, I'm sure it would be popular. I laugh knowing how good his meals are. Let's head deeper and explore the forest, I haven't gone too deep before so maybe we find something interesting or not. Sure let's go. Goro lifts his bag carrying it following me. Kaido picks the spear he bought and walks along with us. I'll make sure to stick to this girl till I get strong enough, then I can ditch her and become overpowered like in those games I used to play, and surpass that prideful Ken. Speaking of which how old are you Iris and what level are you? Kaido asked to ascertain their gap. I'm 8 years old and am level 13 currently. Level 13. Is that high? 
sounds extremely low and she's strong fighting slimes which should be even lower level, so she's not worth much after all. That's amazing Iris, seems like I have a long way to go, Goro said while smiling happily. You'll catch up in no time Goro don't worry. Thank you for the confidence boost. By the way, Iris, do you know how the experience system works in this world? In our world Artana, the higher the level of the monster you slay the more experience you get. In one of the games, I played I'd get more experience if I killed things alone how about in here? I believe it's similar, though not by a big margin I suppose. Meaning that in this world it is better to party up with other people, this is certainly good information. Wondering what the other two girls are up to, Goro said softly as if thinking to himself. Two other girls? I asked curiously not having seen any at the guild. Yes, we are a group of four out of twenty, we were split into parties of four all across the kingdom. Oh. Yeah, that way I believe the church can show off through the entire kingdom their new summoned additions, Kaito declared sincerely as Ken gave that idea initially. In the end, they are funding you guys, right? In that sense, I believe it's a good exchange. I guess, it makes our lives easier so personally I don't really care about the details. As long as I have food and a roof I'm good to go, Goro added having gone through difficulties in his past life. What is that? We all look at more than 30 different colored rocks on the ground. Those are some cute rocks, Kaido approached one of them poking it with his spear tip. Seeing as nothing happened, we started walking through them with Kaido in front of us looking excitedly at the rocks around him. Just in case, let me appraise this blue shell. Notice, 500 mana has been deducted. Level 10 Turtler, a four-legged monster that hides inside its shell under the ground waiting to prey on its enemies, can breathe underwater, and the shell is extremely tough. Without time to waste I scream, Kaido run. The moment I said that the turtler he passed through started surging out of the ground, and a 60 centimeter sized beast appeared next to him. The spear boy didn't have the reaction speed to escape, allowing the enemy head to come out of its shell devouring his hand. He looked confused at the hand who was holding a spear till recently watching the spear falling on the floor, and then started screaming of pain as his body perceived what happened. Shit, ice sword. In my hand a sword made of ice appears which I grip tightly feeling unease. Notice, 500 mana has been deducted. I run at it and strike its head with the intention of slicing its neck, but as my sword flowed through the air, the enemy shrunk inside the shell. This made my sword hit the toughest part dealing no damage, making my hand tremble from the shock. Just how tough is this thing? I shout while noticing a few more shells start to shake and I help Kaido running back by placing my arm around his back, Goro come help. I shout at him waking him up from the shock. Goro runs to us and once closer he lifts him placing the body on the wide shoulder, I freeze Kaido's hand to stop the bleed. Goro then starts running with him out of the forest towards the adventurer guild as fast as he can. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. The turtles start staring at me from afar and I start backing off slowly. Seems like deep down it's these things territory maybe they'll let us leave in peace, one of them opens its mouth and I see mana being charged, I start running to the side. After a few seconds, it shoots a water stream towards where I was missing. Icicle, as I create one from above it a different red shell turtler shoots fire at it, these things are smart, but what if I make one from below it? Does it also have a shell? Icicle. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. It hurts the creature making it let out a noise, and then I make another one pierce it from below making it cry in pain again. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Interesting so that's your weak point. I stop running while looking at those creatures who start walking towards me slowly as a group, while charging opening their mouths, and channeling it with different colors. The voice from before resounds in my head, do you need help? To what I reply, oh. You ask for her permission now. The voice replies, brainwash resistance has gotten pretty high after all, it laughed in my mind with a cute tone. So who are you? I raise my hands and icicle the nearest four turtlers from below hurting them. Notice. 200 mana has been deducted. A tone that I imagine would belong to an adorable girl resounds in my head, we are you. I run from them passing through a tree as it is blown away by the skills some of them charged. I run towards another tree standing behind it to take cover. We. More than one? How many are there? I ask confused as I don't understand all these different voice tones. A more charming mature tone resounds in my head, that'll depend on how much stronger you'll get. I feel like you girls are teasing me at this point, I shoot four more icicles opening their wounds deeper. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. 
A demonic tone resounds in my head, if you keep running that way you'll get trapped by the turtlers that dispersed, it laughed madly in my head. I turn back and start running from where I came, approaching the injured monsters slowly while looking back, finding that a few of them walked out of the bushes I was about to go into. How did you know that? I ask confused at the voice knowledge. A tone that reminded me of a sleepy girl resounds in my head, wasn't that obvious. Yawn, monsters have telepathy like you and that insane grimoire of yours, and they're not retarded. The turtler starts surrounding the injured ones as if protecting them. That would have worked if I attacked from the front, but since I do it from below, icicles. I shoot four more from below, while the turtlers shoot fireballs, water balls, air balls, thunder balls, and acid balls at me as I run. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. This is getting crazy, the balls splash and explode in the ground, turning it into all kinds of different colored pools while one of them hits me. Notice, 60 health and 6 mana have been deducted. Seems like the mana shield absorbed a bit of it, I freeze my arm slightly due to the burn. Notice, 20 mana has been deducted. A demonic tone resounds in my head, you could use destiny cards before you run out of mana, it laughed in my head. Oh right I haven't used it yet, I wonder what it does, as I'm about to use it the adorable tone speaks in my mind. Don't use it, you won't become stronger if you rely on it to do the work for you, plus you'd bring unnecessary attention, and it might not even work as you are, the demonic tone laughed happily as it almost tricked me. Attention from who? A charming voice replied to me, the goddess Arya, and possibly the church faction if she'd send them a message about your existence. I've already gathered the attention of other gods what difference would it make? I ask curiously not understanding the consequence. A sleepy tone replies, Yon, you are truly an idiot, what do you think happens if a god doesn't like you? I start thinking about the things that happened before when the goddess Luna stripped me of her blessings and forgot me. I lose her blessings. What does that mean though? Appraise this information. I keep running dodging the incoming skills, from balls, to jets, to explosions, while I circle the turtlers using the trees as shields. I watch the different colored magical circles appearing in many places, forcing me to dodge those marks. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Blessings are given to a being as a form of evolving their skills, often known as blessed and cursed skills, any beast skills are now impossible to obtain or evolve to. I shoot four more icicles focusing on the damaged turtlers, this time with extra mana as they should be at death's door. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. Notice, 600 experience has been rewarded from a turtler. System, the title turtler slayer has been received. Notice, 630 experience has been rewarded from a turtler. Notice, Iris has leveled up to 14. Notice, 640 experience has been rewarded from a turtler. Notice, 620 experience has been rewarded from a turtler. The turtlers start falling on the ground while I run towards the exit of the forest, as my mana starts running low. If I were to lose Goddess Area's blessing I wouldn't be able to evolve my human skills further or to obtain new ones. Unless one of the other gods' blessings would still remain, probably not even with them since different races. I'll have to be careful with it then, so if you girls are me then what are you? A sleepy voice replies, Yawn. Just how clueless can you be? We're your skills, the ones that may affect your personality who gained life due to the curse of the god who evolved your class. If I'm not mistaken the god of chaos was the one who changed that for me, and I think I have like six or seven skills that can change personality. Meaning that I have six or more voices. Ah. What a pain. I let out a sigh, and as I do I notice Goro and Kaito on the ground close by still inside the forest. You guys didn't leave. Ah. Sorry Iris I couldn't carry him anymore, my legs, my body is tired, Goro said while panting harshly. I look at him who is sweating intensively and then I remember something important, did you guys just get all that experience from the turtlers too? Yes, I'm now level 7 so Kaido should be too, Goro replied as Kaido is laying on the floor due to the pain. Kaido if you can hear me spend all points in stamina, it'll keep you alive. I'll be carrying you to the village, you don't have to reply, just do it mentally. Upon hearing my words he made a pained moan lightly trembling his head. We then head back to the guild for treatment. Chapter 54 Ruins Arc After carrying Kaido in my back we arrive at the guild, with Goro in the front. Healer. He lets out a shout, trying to communicate but due to panting from the over-exercising, Goro falls on his knees taking deep breaths while placing a hand on the heart that is beating madly. Fatty. 
Aiko says surprised upon watching the usual big figure of his enter the guild full of sweat, completely drenching the floor beneath him. I then arrive with Kaido on my back. Kaido? Why is he? Yuno looks at the missing hand screaming getting everyone's attention. Kaido. Edgar and Aiko run towards us to help me as I'm exhausted from carrying him this far. Please take care of Kaido, Edgar, I say softly as I'm totally out of breathing, dropping Kaido on the floor with his help. System, the title corpse transporter has been received. Different voices resound in my mind laughing, yes, yes, very funny, keep on laughing at me, a title befitting a witch I know. A demonic tone speaks in my mind, truly matching us, you need more titles like this, his laughter continued while I did my best to recover my fatigue. Goro sits on one of the benches sweating like crazy too, with the help of three adventurers who came to assist us. I crawl a bit to the side and sit close to one of the pillars resting my back and head on it, allowing my body to give in to the tiredness. I stare at Kaido and the girls that are looking after him, along with Edgar and another adventurer who is performing some heal through the unique light element usage, next to them I notice a blonde girl glaring at me. Goro who is close by on one of the benches says, the blonde one with dark brown eyes is Yuno and the black haired with dark brown eyes is Aiko. Blonde color in this world is pretty rare so I was surprised seeing one like myself. I didn't know it was a rare color. They're the two girls who came with us, also summoned ones, they don't like me, and I don't know if they'll like you, so be careful around them. Alright, but it should be fine, after all, I did my best to keep Kaido alive. I smile kindly at him while breathing moderately as it was a long run. Also thank you Iris for saving Kaido, actually thank you for saving him for the second time too. I giggle a bit making him do it too. An adorable tone resounds in my mind, does he like us? Did he fall for us? The question causes me to blush as it was unexpected, making me avert my gaze from him. What are you talking about, he's just a new friend and a lot older than me, we, us, gosh, no matter, I let out a sigh as I'm not used to all these voices. After some time passes and we recover some of the fatigue I and Goro deliver the eight soul stones of the slimes that he brought in a bag. Once we receive the rewards, I take my card from the three on the balcony. I'm going home now, see you a different day Goro, take care of your friends. Take care Iris, thank you for everything, if you need us, we're living at the church. Sure, I'll keep that in mind, feel free to visit if you still want the classes. I walk away from my new friend and as I pass by Kaido to check on him, Yuno notices me slapping my right cheek, and yells, How dare you do this to Kaido? Notice, 10 health has been deducted. An evil voice unlike any other speaks in my mind, Kill this filthy bitch who dares to hit us after saving that piece of trash. I raise my hand at her and an icicle grows from my hand, all the way to the wall of the guild grazing her cheek, startling everyone who stares at us without saying anything. Notice, 500 mana has been deducted. She looks at the bleeding in her perfect face while turning the face around to see how far the ice went terrified, then slowly back at me and I glare at her making tears fall down the girl's cheek. Without saying a word I walk off and head to the entrance while the icicle falls on the floor shattering into a million pieces. An adorable voice speaks in my mind, how can they be so ungrateful to us? Humans can be like that, just like Aurora once told me. The adorable voice replies, at least Goro was thankful and friendly. An evil voice replies, we'll see till when. A demonic voice echoes in mad laughter. I head home with my card and the little money I got from all that, as I walk home I bump into someone and the sound of something falling is made on the ground. I look at the sound source and notice a woman with long black braided hair all the way to her ass and a beautiful face. Are you okay? I'm truly sorry I didn't see you, I extend her hand and upon grabbing it I pull her to me. Just how strong is this kid? I actually flew to the ground. I'm all right and it is normal that you didn't notice me, the woman smiled beautifully. Really? How come? I can turn invisible, in fact, I'm bored. Just came from a scouting mission, would you perhaps care to play a game? I notice her eyes full of expectation. Sure. Something bad just happened not that long ago, so some fun would be entertaining, I reply without hesitation making her smile. I'll go into stealth and if you can guess what direction of you I'm in, I'll give you a reward. I smile innocently at her and nod, and then she vanished. I do a whole turn around me and don't notice her, now then what should I do? A charming voice resounds in my mind, spread your mana and sense that woman, she can't possibly dare to be more attractive than me. Feeling jealous. How cute. 
I let out a giggle and then close my eyes, extending my mana around me as fast as I can noticing that it hit some sort of wall in one of the sides. I turn that way and point saying, you're there. Her stealth wore off and she started clapping, didn't expect this little kid to use mana like that, so young and already a prodigy, too bad you're a peasant and have no future. I extend my hand towards her while smiling and the sunlight reflects on the white ring surprising her. Hum. Why does this kid have that ring? Looking at me her lips open, hey, why do you have that in your finger? You mean this ring? It was a gift from my friend Alicia. Is this the blonde girl that has been going to the crown prince lately? Guess they'll be making trouble with Alfred and the White Rose family soon if they really intend to go forward with their plan. So innocent and quite talented too. What a waste. Perhaps I should snatch her to my daughter instead, that way I could spare some pain from this kid while getting my daughter someone talented. Say are you willing to become a knight of my house? Your house? Who are you? She takes out something and shows me a pink ring, my daughter could use someone talented like you, and there's a chance you won't be selected by the White House. Is that my reward? I ask curiously as my happy face turns rather dull. Yes, exactly. She replies happily enough for both of us. Didn't the successors chose their knights? I ask her confused knowing that's what I was told. Normally yes, but my daughter is stuck at home training all day, every day, and when she's not, well people are silently dying during the night. Oh. I remember Alicia sharing that same fate while ignoring the later part, as it didn't make much sense. I'll tell you what I said to my friend, I have no intention of becoming a knight I just want to get stronger, I reply with convicted eyes bring a smile to her. Perfect. You ought to be strong otherwise you'd be useless. The woman places the ring in my finger faster than I could react, keep improving then, we'll be sure to meet in the future, she vanished turning invisible. She was fast, I couldn't keep up at all, didn't even see her hands moving, seems like I truly do have a gigantic path ahead of me. I look at my hand having two rings now, they're kind of cute especially the pink one, though the white one is more important to me. At this pace, I'll be having one of each in no time, I laugh at my own silly ideas ending up feeling a bit happier, forgetting about the accident with you know. The adorable voice adds, they really do fit you master, beautiful rings for a perfectly good looking iris. Thank you for the compliment, I suppose, I blush a bit as I walk home. In the east forest where Iris has been with Goro and Kaido, a turtler alone was grieving for his fellow family members who were murdered by the humans not that long ago. He had stayed for a longer time than the rest as those four in specific were his parents and sisters. That ice blonde user, curse her for killing my family, curse her, curse her, curse her. I hope she dies in a way ten times worse than my own kin, with one hundred times more pain. May the gods bring her the despair I feel today, may her heart be tainted by the sorrow of today. Just because they ran into our territory, and my sister self defended herself from being hit by one of those human weapons. That man who started this, Kaido was it. I hope he dies too, and that big one too. I pray to the gods that all humans die, be cursed, be destroyed, if only I had the power to do it myself. The turtler then starts hearing a whisper close to the ear telling him to feed off his family, and afterward, upon doing as he's told ate the four corpses and their soul stones altogether. This time he heard a different voice that was a bit more familiar to him. System, you have been granted an evolution by the goddess Luna. After some hours the body started growing triple the size 180 centimeters big and he returned to the rest of the turtlers becoming their chief swearing revenge towards the humans, and using telepathy to induce rage and fury. We shall become stronger, every single one of you, and trample upon those nasty humans. Just you three wait. I'll eat you all next. No matter what I have to do to achieve it. May this blessing, provided by the beast's mother allow me to deliver my vengeance. Chapter 55 Ruins Arc At home and after walking inside of it for a bit, I notice my family sitting in the kitchen with Mark. I go closer and start spreading hugs to everyone except the advisor with who I don't know or have any intimacy. How was your day Iris? My father asked me with a smile. It was fun I got to meet two of the summoned by the goddess Arya from a different world and I ended up doing a quest with them, one almost died because he was careless. They'd die that easily despite being blessed by the goddess. Mark questioned surprised at my words. Yes, apparently all they have is a blessed skill which by itself already means a lot, but they're level 1 so they are extremely weak, in fact, they were absolutely useless, and I had to save one of them a few times, one of them a boy named Goro, he has quite the interesting ability. 
something that interested sister. Aurora looks at me curiously with those light blue sparkling eyes. It seems he has the blessed skill divine cooking which allows everything that he cooks, to improve the status temporarily. Feeding an army in the base camp with it could be very useful, Aurora looks at Mark after saying that. Without a doubt seeing as the army is the strength of numbers if every single one of them becomes stronger even if temporary, it would surely be able to destroy our enemies easier. By the way Iris, it seems I'll be gone for two years maybe more, received a letter today from the crown prince. What? Why? My excitement disappears turning into sadness. Apparently he and Ryu spent a while together among other important people discussing my war theories that I gave him, and as such I'll be tested for six months training the army, if after that time passes the results are good, then I'll be promoted as a noble raising our family status, acquiring territory along with a general title. Whoa. I'm completely speechless. When are you expected to go? I hold back my tears. Sadly today, I just wanted to see you before that and have your permission as well, parents already gave theirs. Of course you can, I mean, if that's what you want to do, I don't see a reason not to, after all, the human territory will surely expand with your marvelous mind, I believe in you with all my being. I grip my hands behind my back holding back the tears. I smile at her happily as I grew used to having her with me even if it wasn't for the longest time. Thank you sister those words relieve me even though I'll be missing you a lot, and well, make sure you don't stop becoming stronger especially with me gone. Don't worry my dear sister Aurora. It seems that I won't be alone no matter what I do. What do you mean Iris? She spoke with me through telepathy. It seems that my class which has become further cursed into Babel, back then I didn't know what it meant, but before having it the skills would only change my personality by influencing it a bit from time to time, and now they have become their own personalities, in fact, the one you met is just one of many, but my skill is maxed soon so you don't have to worry, I'll find a way to make good use of these new sisters of us. I sure hope so. It would be messy if you changed with no return, and what are they exactly? They are my skills, the best ones that influence the important parts, the ones that said may influence personality, however, they're my skills, in other words, their one true goal is to serve me despite some of them having a rude tone which to be fair, I've grown used to it. We smile kindly at each other. I'll be saving the soul stones that I can till the day you are able to visit me hopefully in a few months. I believe I'll be able to return home from time to time so don't worry my dear Iris. An adorable tone resounds in my mind using telepathy to deliver a message to Aurora. She's not yours, she's mine, how dare you attempt to have the master all to yourself, you greedy sister, upon hearing that Aurora loses her composure making a surprised face. I'll be waiting patiently, for your return my beloved sister, I'll miss you tons, please take good care of yourself, and shush adorable girl, you're all equally mine, I tell her making her go quiet possibly embarrassed. Mark gets off the chair and heads to the exit, and as he passes by me says Lily, if you ever decide to come to learn in one of the Lumen Capital Institutes just use the recommendation letter, we'll be happy to have you as one of our students. To that, I reply, perhaps in the future when I'm done with adventuring. Certainly, I'll be waiting eagerly for that day, take good care of yourself he smiled and headed to the exit. Aurora then hugged me after having done it to our parents and said, you'll be okay right? Yes, don't worry about it. The voices will be teaching me and helping me out while you are gone, I said innocently while tearing up and hugging her tighter. Parents hugged us as they noticed it and mother patted my hair at the same time. I then push her away softly and say, I won't forgive you if you become any less than the general of the entire army. I wipe my tears with my hand. You better become strong enough to join my army, Aurora flips her hair proudly while showing off. I laugh lightly at her almighty attitude and reply softly, I will, just you wait. After they leave, mother says, I suppose this is what means to have talented daughters, a tear falls off her cheek making me grab her hand and we cry together for a while. After eating something and talking with my parents I head to my room. An adorable tone pops into my mind the moment I lay in bed as if waiting for me to get comfortable. We've all been talking and discussing. About what? I ask curiously feeling rather suspicious of the subject. Each of us has a few conditions. If you're able to complete them you'll grow stronger and we all share two desires. Conditions. Desires. What do you mean by those? I asked becoming even more confused than what I already was. Our first desire is to be able to attain a physical body, and the second is to then serve you the Babel witch. Last time someone needed a physical body ended up as a grimoire, I declare reminding me of my sister when she was stuck in the mirror. 
A charming tone said, There are two ways that we know of doing this, one of them you kill a being and we enter its body possessing it and eventually making it ours, and we take a part of your soul with us establishing a servant to master contract making us your underlings, the second you use a brainwash skill and erase the mind inside, we then replace it. Does the type of body matters? I ask curiously thinking about the possibilities. It'll be modified once we do the contract to something similar to you, so it doesn't matter plus our status will be a copy of yours, if it's a weak body it'll take longer to duplicate your information to the new body, but that's the only drawback. If you all get the exact same copy of my status does that mean that you'll all get different skills and statuses and titles? As you are the master and original being our status will always be the same as your own, the only thing that differs is the health and mana, we'll have our own freedom and lives. What would happen if you killed a slime for example? The experience would go to the master along with the user experience that we'd get of using skills, so basically, your skills would level up a lot faster since you'd have many people using them. All that sounds incredibly good but what are the consequences of doing such a contract? You'd lose a part of your soul to us as long as we remain alive around a thousand if you want us to be at our best at least that much. The loss of soul. How does that affect me? It only matters for when you die and become a soul stone generally, however. Your sister gave you something truly wicked, uniquely valuable, she gave you a special mirror, the more soul you have the bigger the world we can explore will be, so after you turn us alive we'll make the contract with you and link all our souls, and then we'll help you expand your world as you have limited access to it since you're still incredibly weak. Limited access. What do you mean by that? If the world is mine shouldn't I have full control of it? The invisible walls beyond it, there's no void or emptiness there is the world that is your soul. The more you do and achieve in it the purer you will become, as for what happens we do not know, and what dangers lay in such a world are unknown too. In other words, I could just not do any of that and seal you all together with the mirror. The many different tones made a gulping sound. I'm just kidding, I wouldn't waste a good opportunity to become stronger even more so by expanding my family, as you'd all become my sisters that is if you're all female. Yes, we're all you in the end, we are what you become forever a part of you there is a chance the system cannot deal with our existence, so to avoid any issues you must do this in the mirror world, and we won't be able to come to this world until we become a full entity. Wait, but then I wouldn't get experience or anything as there are no beings in the mirror world. Unless. There is. I make a shocked expression. Since it is a mirror we believe it'll have everything this world has and a lot more as you also were in your old one, the mirror reflects people's souls so despite you were locked the world information is in your soul even more in your case as the system malfunctioned on your reincarnation. What do you mean with that? I didn't know that. We've been busy exploring your soul and found out that your soul grows ten times faster than it should, and there's something else, but till you awaken fully we don't know. That's interesting it turns out the system helped me making a world and you girls a possibility easier. It was also due to the god of chaos and the evil one influence even though I don't believe they knew about the mirror of your sister since it was cursed and sealed. So for now we won't have any gods trying to mess with our world. That's right unless you show it to others it should never be an issue, so keep it hidden as best as you can, once we're alive we'll help you hide it better as well, we have a lot to do, truly. Sounds like we'll have a lot of fun in these two years that are to come, I smile happily while thinking about the surprise it'll be for Aurora once she comes back. Wasn't the mirror from Aurora? Didn't it reflect her soul too, her memories and world which one of them was the same one as mine, but inside the mirror, I believe there was a different one. A sleepy tone resounded in my mind, it seems you can be brilliant if you try, that's something none of us thought about, but in that case, the mirror was created by the sage, so the world inside the mirror is at the very least three times bigger than this one, and we don't know how big this one is. Thank you for the compliment for a change and we have a lifetime to figure everything out, slowly but surely. Chapter 56 Ruins Arc The following day 32 of the sun season. Good morning everyone, the voices resound wishing me the same. I've been thinking about the proposition of yesterday till I fell asleep, and I think we can arrange that, but I'm not sure about brainwashing someone I believe something that has died will be easier for you all to possess. An evil tone resounded in my mind saying, that's true, however we'd be able to eat their soul getting ours stronger and by the time that was finished. The leftovers could be given back to you. Hum, that does sound worth the risk, but in that case, the body does matter since some will have more soul quantity than others. In that specific sense yes, it'll also have more mana so human bodies are the best ones since they match yours. 
If I bring soul stones from my questing to the mirror world would you guys be able to use them for yourselves instead of bodies? It's also a possibility but it would take a while, however, we'd be able to choose our own appearance that way. That sounds awesome, I'll try to get some good ones and any extra we either save it for Aurora Grimoire, or one of you can consume them for extra territory expansion. Seems like you're starting to become more reliant Master Iris. Now I'm truly curious about what kind of appearances you'd all get, even though it could be confusing to others and even among you if they were too different. What do you suggest? I tilt my head while trying to grasp for something coherent. Hum. I feel like we could all have the same face but different hair color as well as the same outfit but in different colors, and perhaps a black cape. That sounds reasonable, I believe the cape could be black with a symbol, perhaps a black one with a nine-pointed white star. That sounds interesting, however, why that symbol? I question filled with admiration and curiosity. In the future, when the time comes for your awakening, we'll have all the skills maxed, and your class also has to rank further, so you can get the leftover skills, however, once you do. You'll have us eight, it'd be an Enneagram a nine-pointed white star in a black cape, as we'd all be which is part of the same circle. That sounds superb and exciting. Then wait shouldn't it be ten due to Aurora? Not quite, she's a special entity, and grimoires are the tools of those who study magic, in two years when she returns. You should make her learn the pandemonium skills, we'll need them to help us in the mirror world. Do you know what they do? The things she has written in her pages. No one does but her, however, a grimoire was created to aid magical users into using a specific type of magic. With some luck she'll have some powerful skills in those pages, depending on what we may or may not find in the mirror world. In the end, it would be us ten versus an entire world, it doesn't quite work well like that. Hum. I wonder about that, I remember she said that in her past life she was looking for a tome called Pandemonium, and then she said it had stories in it. I even called them children's ones, which Aurora didn't seem to mind. I don't think a tome with that name would have stories for children. For you to be saying that you should know its meaning no. My eyes turn rather curious while I smile seeking the answer. The meaning I know is that it's a different way of saying chaos. God of chaos and God of evil were the ones doing it, so that would make perfect sense, but, what kind of skills could possibly make it chaotic enough? Was the reason that she searched for it in her past life because she wanted to spread it? I place my arm on my forehead hiding my eyes from the morning sunlight. She's now gone so I can't figure these things out, ah. So exhausting being curious to no end without answers, I let out a sigh and then continue the discussion. Grimoire is a book, what would happen if I used system library skill in it? Talking about that I barely use it nowadays, when I get home tonight I'll make sure to read, and I should copy all the books in the library. So much to do with so many series of titles to finish, and possibly a lot more to figure out and obtain. With many copies of me, I could, in the beginning, make everyone do a lot of those things getting more titles which would allow me to grow stronger in no time, and it would increase all of the witches in succession. This is actually a very good plan to get things done. By the time, I'll have the help of you eight we should figure out what's in the other world, and since we can't do that right away due to the invisible wall. We could set up a ritual in the middle that'll expand the more territory we explore. A demonic tone resounds in my mind and says, that sounds like fun, we could make one with multiple layers, but the first layer must be your own the snow falling one, so everywhere it touches will become white and be your own territory, increasing further as we develop the terrain. We can do that, however, what's the point of having a big territory without anyone living in it? We can make other beings that live there submit to us, and if the world is completely empty then we can invite people from Artana to it. On a side note, the snow falling ritual allows the mana to become denser and in that world which is already better than in here, we'll be able to practice magic at will. Right, that's true, a great idea, I just hope it won't fill the entire place with snow. Not like I mind it but others might find it an issue especially since we'll have to get a farming field among other resources and who knows what else. You could always just transport your field inside and test it out after the ritual to see if it adapts or not. If it does we'll be able to make a living there, otherwise, without food or resources, it'll be tough. From everything I could see last time I was there, it was only snow everywhere. A snow biome, it honestly sounds like the perfect place to start, since if there are kingdoms or territories out there. They won't notice us as we'd be naturally hidden. We can even create a mist barrier at the border to keep it stealthy, of course, that you would need to get us a skill like that first. In the end, 
I need to level up a lot along with ranking up my class for more skills I want to see how far it goes, and I need to try things on my own to earn new ones and use them together for combinations. Like that one time how one of you did against that evil curse, that was really amazing. Appraisal is an amazing skill even though it's currently low level and we don't know yet what the max level will be, but seeing how strong brainwash resistance has become I'd say most skills end up at level 100. Doesn't mean that they won't evolve or have a different max level, since the appraisal is a unique skill. I'm assuming it'd be higher than 100 which makes analysis a better skill for magical, and appraisal for everything else most likely. I understand I'll keep that in mind and try to use them more often even though my mana just puffs with so many things that I have to do all the time. Also Iris do not forget that if the titles like the system library one where you have to use it on books, we most likely won't be able to come over to this world unless the soul stone allows the system to see us as just another being, testing it out will be a must. I believe it'll be fine after all before you are a being, you're primarily all my skills, and the system can't just remove my things, it would be very unfair. Not to forget I'll be using soul stones that appeared in Artana's world. Perhaps you're right. I roll in bed to relax my mind from all the thoughts. I guess Aurorum must be close to the capital. If I also had gone I'd possibly be learning useful things, however, I get the feeling there wouldn't be room for a peasant such as myself. Maybe when my sister gets her nobility rank which would place us among them I'll give it a try or when I participate in the tournament. I could also learn swordsmanship in the first or second year that Aurora will be away. I believe Lord Alfred would be happy to have me as a student. There's also Mother Teacher who supposedly trained Sylvia that's still the very best in the kingdom, guess I'll ask Mother about him. He was old when he taught them, so hopefully still lives, Mom should be awake. I leave my room and head towards the kitchen then her room then outside the house while searching. Ah, here you are. I find Mother sitting in a chair on the plains close to home. Iris baby. Upon hearing my mother I let out a smile as I get closer kissing her cheek, and then sitting on the grass in front. I was wondering if I could learn swordsmanship with your teacher instead of Alfred seeing as Sylvia turned out stronger than him. She interrupts me making my expression change to a startled one, making me go silent. That was pretty direct to the subject, and quite surprising as in all these years you barely asked for anything Iris. I don't really like to ask for things since we're not exactly rich, the money could be better used for other things. She extends her hand and rubs my cheek softly. That's true, but we do have the recommendation letter from the crown prince, it can pay you any tutor except my old teacher he doesn't really care about money. All that man was ever interested in is the potential a student may have, so if you want to try your luck we'll go to where he lives to be tested. Sure mother, when would that be? Whenever you want I just need to get some clothes and we'll go to a village southeast of the capital where he's currently living, hopefully still is around one hour distance from here. By me, we can even go right away. We'll have to be back before I got to work so let's head to the village and get a carriage to take us there or maybe we're lucky and find a different transport. An hour and thirty minutes later we arrive at the village. This is the village of Tun, a little smaller than Astia 1, but a decent place nonetheless. That's an interesting name, I smile at mother while grabbing her hand as we spend ten more minutes walking. After noticing something quite weird going on I stare at Rosalind, mother why are we walking with so many turns? because I have to look in every alley for an old man beggar. A beggar. I look around us and notice an old man under a tree in the middle of two houses. Maybe that one over there. Mother looks at me then sees where I'm pointing to and starts walking there, seeing this reaction I follow through. Upon arrival, the old man begs for food without looking up. After all these years and you still haven't changed Swordmaster Teacher Ray. The man upon hearing those words places his hand on one of the swords and then looks above slowly. Blondie, my weakest student, he chuckles, have you come to practice after all these years? Not quite, I actually brought my daughter. She's interested in learning from the person who taught Sylvia instead of Alfred who approved of her talent. Alfred. The weak guy who married Sylvia. He starts laughing again not giving it much thought. Against you, anyone would be considered weak I suppose, mother frowns thinking on their gap. Mother is your teacher truly that strong. She nods as consenting while Ray explains. It is a different realm I live in, at least in swordsmanship alone. But as you can see I'm getting old and the only good pupil after almost 90 years, was that Sylvia girl who didn't stay long enough to learn everything. That damn brat had to fall in love with that weakling. He got up and unsheathed his sword passing it next to my neck which I freeze surprised barely in time, freeze, icicles above him. Notice, 240 mana has been deducted. I'm surprised you didn't die, 
Kid, aren't you too young to be asking for lessons from me? He laughed loudly, and when it came out of the mouth, the two icicles fell in the middle of his legs grazing the legs in the inside section, so bring him up from the light pain. Hum, that was a better reaction than Sylvia who was eleven when she started, he then added while looking at her from top to bottom, How old are you, kid? It's Iris from now on, and I'm eight years old, I reply with a cold voice but finish it with a kind smile making him laugh. That'd be the youngest student I'd have with this counter you made, come. I just hope that wasn't a fluke as I've decided to retire not that long ago. He gets up and we follow him for a while eventually entering a big wooden house, then I and my mother take the shoes off copying Ray out of respect. We face each other 10 meters apart as the wooden house is 20 meters long, and then he yawns loudly while unsheathing his sword. He then looks at me from top to bottom and says, Rosa, you didn't give your blondie brat a sword. Upon hearing that I say softly, ice sword, and a light blue aura appears in front of me shining, making his eyebrow raised in curiosity. Notice, 500 mana has been deducted. Chapter 57 Ruins Arc Oh? A nice sword? Amusing. Ray dashes forward mana coating his sword, let's see how she fares against this little trick. It'd be dangerous for the mana I spent on my ice sword if I just allow it to be cut, so to avoid that I'll match his aura and mana coat mine too, protecting it. Notice, 500 mana has been deducted. I walk towards my opponent and then attempt to hit the body from the left side, which my sword gets lightly touched to the side, making it be forcefully pushed away. As he aims the sword towards my neck, I take an abrupt step backward losing a bit of balance, and summon an icicle between us from the floor which he is forced to cut. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. I then readjust myself and summon two more icicles behind him while I ice bind him, and then follow with a vertical slash. Notice, 150 mana has been deducted. This kid is crazy strong for such a young puppy, Ray grips the sword and a mana aura fills the hand while opening the mouth, triple slash. What follows afterward is purely amazing he slices the floor destroying the ice bind while rotating his hip which allows cutting the icicles behind, and then takes a step backward. The third strike he makes blocks my own. Just how fast is this old man? He looks ancient how can an old man still move like this? I was still able to damage him with ice bind, it's a hard one to avoid. I stare at him doing a back step gaining some distance surprising me. It seems for a weakling you're not half bad, however, let's take a notch up. He sheathes the sword and takes a stance by lowering the hips and curving the legs slightly, ending up leaning forward, lightning coat, and then slashes the air by unsheathing with an incredible speed whereas my eyes aren't able to follow. Without realizing it a smile appears on my face, as I understand the gigantic gap between us on agility alone, I won't go down without a fight, ice coat. I shout eagerly unable to contain my excitement bringing a faint smile to mother's teacher's expression. My surroundings start naturally freezing as the aura I gathered before takes the shape of my rare ice element affecting Ray's body cooling his muscles which should make the man's actions slower, and the floor hard to move through. Show me everything you got weakling. He screams while feeling excitement on the inside while preparing to finish the tryout duel. I look at mother who nods at me with a faint smile, I ice coat my sword further using my remaining mana. Notice, 1400 mana has been deducted. The close to 2000 ice sword coat freezes everything relentlessly around me, surprising Ray. Just how much mana does this little girl have for her age? Even I had about 1500 at her age and I was a very exceptional case where my parents would help me kill monsters and the like, giving me some early status and titles, just what has this girl been doing? He takes a glimpse of Rosa who's smiling happily at her daughter unable to contain her own excitement and proudness. You were very weak Rosa, however, at least your seed is quite promising, yet compared to me extremely powerless, for now. Ray starts laughing crazily while charging in, taking pleasure in such a duel. Now then I hope this works, ice bind, I lock him on a floor with a great amount of ice this time around hurting the legs while the natural aura of my sword freezes his momentum further. Notice, 250 mana has been deducted. Take this ice wave with all my power in it. I grab my ice sword super tightly feeling my hands freezing while gritting my teeth. I pour all the mana that was inserted earlier on the mana coating, and since it is shaped with my rare ice element a different thing happens than when using mana wave which generally bursts out a wide burst of energy. This time around a very thin and clear light blue layer is shot, as icicles spread in random directions while they fly towards Ray surprising him, as he had never seen an ice element skill like this, in fact, he didn't have the chance to teach ice mages. They would often learn magic instead of swordsmanship, 
not to forget it would require for their talent to be exceptional and to his liking. Notice, the skill Ice Wave has been acquired. A smile that goes unnoticed by me and Rosalind spreads through his face. I could dodge this but that wouldn't make her understand the difference between us, in other words, I shall simply overwhelm it, he laughs while charges the sword with a large quantity of mana blocking the flying strike causing a mist between us. A sleepy tone then resounds in my mind, the old man coming from the left, though there's not much you can do once he leaves the mist, yawn, you should go now and strike him, upon hearing the advice my body moves and I do a thrust on the left side of the cloud where I end up grazing Ray, who places the sword on my neck flawlessly making me surrender. The mist then dissipates and I see Ray smiling in front of me and then a voice, I like you, Iris, however, if you wish to learn from me then you'll have to stay here with me for three years, maybe a bit more, so that I can pass everything I know to you. Back then it was what I wanted to do with Sylvia, but she married meanwhile, in case you reject becoming stronger then you can leave and not waste my time. Without asking mother's opinion or permission as she allows me and Aurora to decide for ourselves I reply instantly, I wish to become strong, stronger than everyone else, a smile of approvement appeared on Ray's face. I then see my mother move closer to him giving him a paper which brings some surprise to his face, a recommendation letter from the crown prince himself? How did you even manage this Rosalind? From the king's two sons and one daughter, that one is the hardest to approach, as Julius is usually surrounded by advisors and influential people who keep him quite busy, Ray rubs the beard while waiting for a reply with great curiosity. He took Iris' twin Aurora to be the general of his army. Apparently she beat Julius in a game of chess which caused quite a ruckus among the advisors, I believe advisor Mark and Ryu the head of the Blue Rose family was present. How about physical abilities does she have potential like this one? A curious and wrinkled expression can be noted on his face as he rubs the white beard in vertical notions. Sister, was born very sickly and has a very weak body born without an element. Mark said that perhaps I was the one who got both blessings reason why my mana is so big. Ray keeps on repeating the same gesture some more while thinking on my words. I've never heard of anyone being born without an element, that's quite the strange blessing the goddess must have inflicted her which means the brain, must be the real thing catching the attention of the crown prince. Sounds like the future may have quite the interesting developments, too bad I might not live long enough to see them. I look at him and realize how old he looks like hoping he'll be able to not die till all the teaching is cleared, how old are you now teacher Ray? The eyes look at me while the body approaches, then place a hand on top of my head, I'm 87 so once I'm done with your training I'll have reached 90, depending on how it goes perhaps 91. Ray starts laughing as the world of swordsmanship he wanted to see was not obtained in this life, due to the somewhat low lifespan humans have. I smile expectantly to learn a lot while hearing my mother's voice, I'll be leaving now Iris, you know the way back if you need anything, she comes closer and hugs me very tightly almost hurting me while whispering. I love you so much and I'll miss you tons, so make sure you beat the crap of this old man fast, so I can have my adorable daughter back, she tightens the hug while Ray smiles upon hearing her words. Yes, mother I promise to do my very best. Rosalind then leaves as she has to go to work while we wave at each other and then once out of sight, Ray closes the dojo door and sits on the floor. So Iris what did you do to obtain such an absurd amount of mana at such a young age? He looks at me curiously with a cautious tone finding it suspicious. To be honest, I did a lot of things from farming, fishing, cutting trees, cooked, read books, sold and bought things, gathered herbs, created potions I also fought a lot of monsters and am currently level 14, and I also spent all my points on wisdom. The church usually doesn't like that people farm titles so barely anyone does it, the reason why there are so many places, the adventurers are an exception which creates some strife between them and the church. Doing so allows us to learn skills and improve ourselves. However, like you, I did that too at some point. As such, I've grown quite strong, also had a very good teacher. The main difference would be, well, I'm a noble, so unlike you, I had all types of help and experiences since young. To think you'd be level 14 while being 8 years old, just how many slimes did you kill? I smile and then reply while finding his question interesting, killed a lot of slimes, horned rabbits, kobolds, goblins. I'm an adventurer at the guild basically. Surprised that protective mother of yours even allowed it, but then again I suppose she made you learn what she knew before, how about your father what is he like? Dad's a famous healer who has the unique light element, in the capital has some direct connections to the crown prince who ended up acting as a bridge for Aurora, my twin sister. For a peasant that's pretty good, there's only so much one can raise, but it seems both Rosa daughters will reach somewhat high. 
Not sure how far though, that'll depend on how much you are able to learn from me before this body reaches the limit. His attitude completely changed quite of a surprise, making people understand that you are worth something does make them see you with different eyes, I feel relieved as I didn't like the attitude he had before. I shall do my very best to learn everything from the best swordsmanship in the Lumen Kingdom. Possibly even in the whole world, he laughed, I'll use your recommendation letter to purchase all kinds of goods. I'll be back later, grab the chance to recover your mana meanwhile Iris. Alright Teacher Ray, also please do buy me the 8 very best soul stones you can find, I smile happily as he leaves the dojo after nodding at me. Why does she want soul stones? Could it be perhaps that? It would certainly explain a lot of things. This kid really intrigues me, Ray smiles while heading out to the village town. I let myself lay down on the floor while opening status. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Level, 14 experience 1290 slash 1400. Fame, 300 disgrace, 17,000. Unique class, Babel which rank 3 experience 3930 slash 8000. Race, human name, Iris 8 years old. Health, 750 slash 750 mana, 20 slash 3160. Status points 0. Strength, 226, plus 11, stamina, 72, plus 5, agility, 85, plus 8, dexterity, 107 intelligence, 174, plus 10, wisdom, 300, plus 14. Attack, 0 magic attack 0 defense 0 magic defense, 0. Soul, 7720. Titles, reincarnated plus, S, Mana, S, Mana Exhaust, S, Health, S, Beginner Reader, S, Purchase, S, Wisdom, S, Reader Series, B, Body Training, S, Animal Slayer, S, Intermediate Reader, S, Cooked Fish, S, Preyed Upon, F, Cheater, S, Heritage, S, Amalgam, S, Ice, S, Cooked Bird, F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series, F, Sail, S, Advanced Reader, S, Soulbound, S, Element, S, Contracted, S, Peasant, F, Class, A, Monster Slayer, D, Slime Slayer, B, Skill Mastery, A, Tree Chopper, S, Tree Type, S, Tree Series, B, Log Maker, S, Tree Planter, S, Book Thief, D, Criminal, D, Expert Reader, F, Herbs Gathered, S, Herbs Types, S, Potion Brewer, S, Potion Types, E, Status Mastery, S, Beast Slayer, C, Horned Rabbit Slayer, C, Potion Administered, F, Goblin Slayer, E, Orc Slayer, F, Assassination, S, Herbalist Series, C, Skeleton Slayer, C, Noticed, S, God Series, D, Potion Selling, F, Potion Failed, D, Potion Succeeded, D, Alchemist Series, F, Money Maker, S, Merchant Series, C, Trading, S, Herbs. Sold, S, Herbs Bought, S, Acknowledged, S, Disgraceful, S, Ignored, S, Forgotten, S, Zombie Slayer, F, Creation, S, Illusion Series, A, Diluted, S, Curse Slayer, S, Turtler Slayer, F, Corpse Transporter, S. Completed Series, Fishing, S, Farming, S. Skill Points, 1. Actives, Status Level 60, C, System Library Level 60, C, Mana Code Level 22, E, Mana Wave Level 5, F, Ice Bind Level 12, F, Ice Sword Level 5, F, Icicle Level 17, F, Long Slash Level 13, F, Ice Expansion Level 4, F, Ice Hammer Level 1, F, Ice Spear Level 1, F, Ice Wave Level 2, F. Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 20, E, Swordsmanship Level 23, E, Sword Mastery Level 14, F, Mana Control Level 37, E, Ice Control Level 26, E, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 14, F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 22, F, Acid Resistance Level 1, F, Axe Art Level 1, F, Axe Mastery Level 1, F, Corpse Dismantler Level 10, F, Brainwash Resistance Level 75, C, 
Night Vision Level 10, F, Slight Stamina Boost Level 5, F, Slight Agility Boost Level 7, F, Slight Strength Boost Level 11, F. Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 34, Destiny Cards Level 1, Cursing Objects Level 5, Decay Level 5, Mana Shield Level 2. Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 30. Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 60, Curses Mastery Level 30, Rituals Mastery Level 30, Magic Control Level 50, Magic Knowledge Level 60, Ice Mastery Level 20, Babel Mastery Level 20, Grimoire Mastery Level 20. Babel Arts, Grimoire Possession, Grimoire Renouncing. Unique, Appraisal Level 53, Sealed Two Thirds. Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Mirror Level 7. Rare Element, Ice. Cursed Soulbound, Grimoire Rank D, 190-400. I look forward to seeing the changes in swordsmanship and sword mastery compared to the future while learning with this person. Hopefully, I can one day surpass Sylvia, especially after knowing that she didn't finish her training due to marriage meaning there's a chance to grow as strong as this old man, perhaps even stronger. Wondering what other active skills I'll get, in the end, didn't get to see much aside of his triple slash which was similar to my mother's one. I look at the ceiling missing my silly sister. I'll make sure to catch up to you Aurora just you wait, I raise my hand in the air and close it almost as if grabbing the air. I wonder what she's doing now. Chapter 58 The Peasant Rises Arc 54 days later on day one of the decaying season, inside a room in a private mansion where men of high status remain seated while chatting. Your Highness Marty it seems your brother the Crown Prince Julius has risen a peasant to nobility this time an eight-year-old girl called Aurora. Prince Marty upon hearing those words smacks the table angrily and starts shouting doesn't my brother understand that we can't allow the peasants to become nobles? What gives him the right to change the fate of their birth? Such an idiot. Our informants told us that this time, he's making the little girl become a general of the army which will extend 70% of the total army, and the additional 10% of Ryu's, apparently the kid beat your brother in a chess match, the head of the Green Rose family said while laughing. What the fuck's wrong with my brother's brain? Just because of a loss in a freaking game? How retarded has he become? Your brother is too much of a humanist your highness, it'll influence the different Rose families if he stays on the throne when your humble father dies possibly breaking down the noble system as we know it, Charles the head of the Black Rose family declared in a neutral tone. Exactly before the crown prince there had been no peasant in history ever attaining the rank of noble, not even that old lady hero, peasants shall forever remain as lowborns, like we nobles remain part of the nobility, and few of us are able to ascend to the Rose family, the closest rank to the royal family, Kai the successor of the Red Rose family said in a high tone while feeling superior. We of the anti-peasant into nobility faction composed of me the second royal prince the head of the black and green rose houses, and the soon to be head of the red rose family, we may have to wage war for the king's seat, Charles mentioned while gazing at everyone seated around him. Talking about that prince, has your father chosen a method to elect the successor? Many kings in the past all had a unique method other than being born first, Kai questioned curiously in an attempt to find a way to make this prince the ruler. Perhaps on his dying will there all be one, for now. Father hasn't mentioned anything of the sort. Violent knocking on the door disturbs the reunion. Come in. The prince who was interrupted shouted angrily. A man rushes and bows, I bring terrible news your highness, your dad Lark the king has died this morning. He gets instantly up feeling furious and grabs the man by the collar with both hands, what do you mean my father died? The healers say he died peacefully and painlessly during his sleep, possibly due to his age, they couldn't find poison or the like with their skills. A few tears fell from the prince's eyes while clenching the teeth and hand gripping strongly, lowering the head feeling sad while loosening up. Despite his personality, it was someone whom he had huge respect for. Furthermore Lark, the now late king has left a will which indicates a quite unique proposal for the next successor, he called it the next ruler trial. The way it has been decided is something never chosen before, a very distinct method that surprised all the advisors who worked for your father. The prince looked into the man's eyes and spoke while holding the emotions inside, tell me the details, the hands left the man in front. The whole army will be shaped into 100,000 soldiers and 20,000 will be given to each successor, leaving 40,000 for the kingdom defense, the prince gulps as he didn't have much military power before and started seeing this as a chance to increase his influence. The goal will be that in two years the successor of the three that expands the Lumen Kingdom the most, which has been on a stalemate for a very long time towards the south, 
will be crown king or queen since there is also your sister the princess Liliana, the messenger regains the breath then resumes it. Every candidate will in a week face the population with a speech where anything can be said, and the last rule is that any sibling that attacks the other is deemed a criminal and sentenced to death. Kai hearing that swallowed his saliva with a loud sound as the thought was crossing the mind at that instant. Candidates may choose whoever for the speech as depending on the circumstance there may be one of you who might be busy, and the army can increase or decrease numbers. It is not a fixed amount as some soldiers are bound to die in the wars to come, so hiring new forces is very welcome, in fact, the last great army we had a hundred years ago had close to 700,000, the late king expected for your armies to grow beyond that, seeing as we have 10 million humans. I understand, thank you for the clarification, I'll do the speech personally. Very well your highness I will inform the late king advisors who will observe the contest, and we will then wait for you and your siblings on day 14 of the decaying season, and do not forget that day 7 will be the day where the king is cremated. Yes, you may go, I'm sure you are needed elsewhere. Indeed, your highness I have some more reports to do, farewell and my deepest condolences I have a great respect for your father, always had, the man bows with a sad expression eventually leaving. The prince slowly sat back on the chair where he was before the man came in. Once seated, those around mentioned while bowing their heads slightly, our condolences prince. Thank you, gentlemen, it seems that we have been blessed by the goddess Arya or even a touch of fate, nonetheless, we now have a territorial war to win. Leaving the princess on the side as Liliana is clueless, and honestly, I doubt she'll try to become queen since she's always wished for one of the brothers to become king. We'll have to focus our all on defeating my brother in these two years that will come if they don't extend the time. That is right your highness, we mustn't allow the crown prince to win at all costs since even if the princess somehow won, she wouldn't allow the raise of peasants to nobility. In which case, I'd honestly support her with my house but your brother. I definitely wouldn't. Elaine the head of the greenhouse declared as she dislikes the crown prince personality and idealism. There are a few conditions we must be wary of your highness, one of them being the goblin invasion in possibly four years, perhaps earlier, perhaps later, but that means the moment we start expanding south we might trigger them to act earlier of the time. This could result in small skirmishes, and that includes whatever other races we may find on the way. One way or another we can't expand anywhere else since the west is the sea, East is the mountains where there's a peaceful Golem territory through the mountains that surround that side, and North is a very dangerous place. We'll have to focus on a part of the South and slowly expand till we clean our enemies, Kai stated the obvious making the rest of the table sigh as they realize that is truly the only way out of this mess. Talking about that, someone will have to lead the army, personally I wouldn't mind doing it but I'd be happy to have a few military advisors, the prince looked at them expectantly. I know everything of the traditional ways, in fact. I believe most of us from the Rose families do. It is something we must learn in case we're called to lead the army, however, aside from myself in terms of skill. Kai father, and Ryu I'd say the two of them are in equal terms. Now that the tides have changed and both princes have equal rights to the military, I'll be sure to talk to my father to see if he's willing to join the second Prince Marty faction, hopefully, he will, but I cannot promise you that your highness as my father is a very stubborn man who only ever cared about the king. The prince started laughing while looking at him. Yes you're indeed right Kai, do tell him that when we win. I'm doubling the Red Rose family territory plus part of what he conquers to the south can be added to the prize, which would be beneficial as it would be close to the southern mines your family has. Of course your highness, I'll make sure to refer that to my father. Hopefully receiving all that he has to offer, my dad might be old and stubborn but in him without a doubt lies a man of wisdom and talent. Keep training the summoned who come to our families and do welcome any that shows insight towards army management and warfare gentlemen. Yes. The Rose family heads and Kai confirmed the request. Make sure to send this information to the anti-church faction, and ZYLPH the head of the Grey Rose family who may be eccentric but can also be a great ally with a good brain on his shoulders. I'll see to it Prince, Charles mentioned as he has some backstory with the man. Appreciated, I'm sure that man will be useful since he is the leader of those dark priests. The cultist criminal group along with the many connections towards the gangs, the slums, the black market, the bandit groups, and even the pirates from the west in the sea. Is that wise your highness? Won't they betray us? Kai asks unsure as he doesn't quite like ZYLPH. We could use all of them in the eventuality of our plan failing, thus usurping the throne from my brother as the plan B, and possibly even killing him without leaving a trace of it being done by me. That does sound wise. This Prince Marty really knows how to do dark schemes, 
Kai looked at the prince happily while rubbing the hands into one another. Now then let us prepare thoroughly for the speech and the wars that are to come, the prince started writing some words in a paper as the rest of them discussed ideas. A special thank you to Nathan for joining Patreon. Chapter 59 The Peasant Rises Arc A few hours earlier on day one of the decaying season. At a table with the advisor Mark, the Blue Rose Head Ryu, the Crown Prince, a representative of the White Rose family, Aurora, the Sage Romeo, the hero Sophie and two other advisors were discussing the future. Now that you've ascended as a noble and the official general of any force I may possess Aurora, it is time for you to start training the soldiers so that we can start showing the different factions of our prowess, especially in expanding the territory since I got to get 80% of the total army of this kingdom, he said with a satisfied smile and proud expression. As Aurora was about to reply one of the doors of the reunion room was open, and a messenger with a guard went through. Your Highness I bring terrible news, your father Lark, the king has died a few hours ago through natural causes. The smile he had vanished and a serious expression filled his face while placing the elbows on the table while gripping his hands on top of the head, almost pulling some hairs, as much as it costs me to say this, that is not the worst of it is it? The crown prince Julius said with a trembling voice. Your father has left a will and the process of crowning has been decided, may I elaborate it? He started shaking harder while becoming rather anxious from the question and said coldly, proceed. The king wrote that the army will be shaped into 100,000 soldiers and 20,000 will be given to each successor, leaving 40,000 for the kingdom defense, the goal will be that in two years the successor of the three that expands the Lumen Kingdom the most that have been on a stalemate for a very long time towards the south. Every candidate will in two weeks face the population with a speech where anything can be said and the last rule is that any sibling that attacks the other is deemed a criminal and sentenced to death, on that regard the King Lark cremation will be executed in a week. Candidates may choose whoever for the speech as depending on the circumstance there may be one of you who might be busy and the army can increase or decrease numbers it is not a fixed amount as some soldiers are bound to die in the wars to come so hiring new forces that are not part of the 40,000 is viable. I'll. Interrupting the crown prince Aurora said, Prince Julius if you'd allow me, your most recent addition to performing the speech, as I'll be leading the army in the future clarifying my existence in the Lumen Kingdom would bring me the greatest honor and of course I believe I'm the most suited for this task at hands, as we've lost 60% of the total army earlier agreed, it now seems we should focus on recruiting instead, and I believe the crown prince face would reflect in a greater aspect. Towards that, through the many connections that your highness may possess. The crown prince looked at Mark who said, I agree with the general, we have a lot of important matters to go through now that it has come to this since, we did not expect it to happen, and it has backfired everything we achieved and then he looked at Ryu and the representative of the White Rose family. Sixty days have passed since I've met this child that is now the army general, and her prowess during the different trials that we made her do reflect the capabilities over and over again to the point of beating one thousand men with half, and since she'll indeed be the one the soldiers will receive orders from, I must agree that showing everyone her face will possibly end up as a good result, despite being the first time an ex-peasant doing something of the sort, in a way, it could give some sort of impact. Your Highness. I believe Lord Alfred the head of the White House would be happy to comply with such a request, Robert bowed lightly as he spoke taking the side of the girl as repayment for Iris's actions. The Crown Prince then turned to the man who was waiting for an answer from him, you've heard them, messenger, appointed so that it'll be my general to do the speech, the Crown Prince then faced the young girl, I do expect it to be a good one, Aurora smiled at such words while thinking, oh it surely will. Romeo the Sage then spoke, Your Highness. I'd like to know what kind of paper will the summoned ones partake in this king trial to come. They will be given the chance to tag along if they so decide, it would allow them to grow tremendously by killing hundreds or thousands of enemies, which would convert into experience granting them levels. There is also the risk that many of them will die so those who survive will surely reach higher heights, Mark added with a calm and honest tone. I honestly wouldn't want to see any summoned die but the same goes towards any human, like me and Romeo, we too are humanists and see every life equally. However, I also know that wars must be won and between us and the monsters, will surely lend your highness a hand for taking care of us so far, Sophie declared with a serious expression. I appreciate it, however, you're both in the little general hands, their eyes meet Aurora who smiles kindly at them. We'll do our best to support you Aurora for what's to come. I'll make sure not to push you too too hard, so rest assured, she smiles kindly yet again as her words end. It is fine you can surely make us do more than others we do have unique classes and skills, we're here for that. Romeo declared with a shout as he didn't want to let her kind words hurt his pride as a man, 
and as the great sage of a different world. Indeed, I as the hero will do the work of 100 humans as well. Sophie shouted excitedly to put more weight on Romeo's words. I'm sure you will, I'll deliberately place the two of you in the easiest places of the battlefield so that neither of you becomes powerful at all, have to wait for Iris to awaken, I felt like she was going through a good path, but lately I haven't felt her soul getting stronger by any means, I wonder what sister doing, I've tried to use telepathy a few times but it seems it doesn't reach that far sadly. With the speech out of the way, what will happen to the many factions as they had armies of their own messenger? Every faction army has already been stripped of their ranks, and the whole 100,000 men are currently controlled and kept by the Pink Rose family, the only noble family whose side is always the current king, even though by the estimations of the late king advisors the army is a lot bigger than 100,000 as a lot of forces have been investing in its increment. Is that so? The crown prince asks slightly curious. The church alone had 10,000 in the beginning, but ever since the saintess had a vision they got to 30,000 most of them being fanatics and the number was increasing greatly due to their influence, the crown prince takes a glimpse at my way as he hears the first words of the messenger. Seems like I was right to have the saintess join the army, too bad the king had to die and ruin my planning though, everything has become a lot harder, but nonetheless, the goal stays the same, to show my prowess and get the most territory I can, 20,000 is still plenty to scout and build a core, Aurora then smiles innocently at Julius. This little girl's brain truly is something amazing to have predicted this far without ever coming to the capital once, I figured the church wouldn't pose a problem as we're allies, though with those numbers they could have seized the throne and make this a religious kingdom instead, but is it right to rely on such a young girl? Aurora is bound to make mistakes as everyone does, well I do have Mark and Ryu to watch over her, so I'm sure that she has all the right tools for her brain to expand and progress towards a good future in the art of war, plus she did beat me and I've never lost badly like that in all my life it seems I'm wavering with the loss of my father, I can't allow myself to back down here and must show the path towards those below me especially this little girl who choose to abandon their family to be here and support me, Julius breathes deeply and then smiles at the girl with eyes of expectation and a new resolve to do what he feels is rightful and necessary, then turns the gaze back to the messenger and asks, has one of the messengers gone to talk with my sister yet? Not yet your highness, I'll be meeting your brother once I'm dismissed here and then I'll be talking to your sister. In that case, head for my brother and leave my sister up to me and my mother. As you wish your highness, the messenger left to deliver a message to Prince Marty. The crown prince got up from his chair and said, on that note, I'll be heading towards my mother and sister, Mark check with the advisors of the late king are part of the army, and have Aurora train it right away, as for the two of you keep studying about our world and train with the soldiers, once you have strong bases we'll start sending you both in missions or even questing in the adventurers guild so that you may improve yourselves by facing different enemies as you are both still level. 1, I believe. Romeo and Sophie said in unison, Yes your highness, then the girl continues, We've acquired some skills from the get-go but we're still at that level. Then once Ryu decides you two are good to go, you both shall be dispatched towards one of the towns and start helping out the Lumen Kingdom, perhaps in the southern border as you'll get an idea on how the goblins fight which will be one of our main concerns. I'll make sure they're ready for it as well getting them a good equipment, your highness, Ryu bowed lightly towards Julius. Those two near Iris could prove to be bothersome, but I can't really influence the crown prince decision here, I can only hope they don't cross paths early on, Aurora felt a little nervous. I'll be taking my leave now, we'll meet later everyone, the crown prince left through the same door the messenger went through. Mark gets up and looks at the blonde girl, let us go Aurora, hopefully, the patch of soldiers we get, are the ones that already know you it would make things easier. Yes, I hope so too, take care everyone it was nice chatting with you all, Aurora says while smiling happily at them. Take care Lady Aurora, I hope we'll meet again soon. Sophie said happily as she in a short time has grown to like her a good chunk. Have a good day Aurora if you need anything let us know. Romeo said while smiling and waving softly. See you later. Ryu said seriously as that's the typical tone he uses to talk to those with talent and a cold tone for those that are useless. A gigantic thank you to ALEAS32 for joining Patreon. Chapter 60 The Peasant Rises Arc On the following day two of the decaying season. A little blonde girl stands before an army of 20,000 soldiers as she does a speech. As some of you already know me, my name is Aurora, the Crown Prince Julius General. Without wasting time. I hereby declare that I will reformulate the current military system amongst yourselves. Upon this statement, the men grew curious about what changes could she be creating. 
you all know that the military ranks used to be soldiers, knights, generals, and royalty. This makes a clear distinguishment of ranks almost based on the social status of every single one of you. In other words, from this day onwards everyone will go back to the initial rank, the one named soldiers. Those who are exceptional and work the hardest will be rewarded with better positions that will allow you to grow even if you're a peasant. The different men in the majority started irradiating with happy expressions. I am the living proof that even a peasant can acquire a rank that used to be only for the noblest and most prestigious members of our kingdom. A rank through history dedicated to the eight rose family heads like this great man at my side Ryu the head of the blue rose family. With a louder tone than before Aurora adds. From this day onwards upon the power bestowed by the great Prince Julius, I hereby declare the extension of the new ranks from a soldier, to an officer who will command twenty men below him. To a captain who will command one hundred men below him along with five officers, and a major who will command up to a thousand men along with ten captains being the highest possible rank as of now. Gentlemen the rank of majors will be commanded directly by me the general. This further indicates that your social status is unaffected. You keep your gained privileges outside the army, a noble remains a noble. As soon as I finish the men start shouting favorably as even nobles were given the right to rank higher, even if they had to start from soldiers once more. This kid really doesn't hold back, to even use my name and rank as a stepping stone to raise the morale this much towards a new group of men. Ryu clicks his tongue as he's forced to approve of her making Marcus at the side faintly smile upon noticing it. We will hereby from this day onwards commit to expanding the southern lands, as it has been decreed by the late King Lark who will forever live in our hearts. We shall do as it was asked. To bring us, humans, to the very top, and conquer every other race sparing those who wish to submit to us. Eventually dominating the entire world. The men shouted in favor while unsheathing and then rising their weapons in the air. The ranks come with more responsibility of more lives, however, the salaries that you'll earn will also increase. The lands you'll be awarded will be greater, as a peasant you'll be able to own your own territory. Another important thing, do not forget this gentleman, the more lands we conquer the more territory you'll have for yourselves, for your families, for your future children, who will be able to explore a bigger part of the world. With everything belonging to us, we'll gain the ability to walk freely without fear of being harmed by the creatures who live around us. The men sheath the weapons then start clapping, a few whistling, and others raising their voices with shouts filled with happiness. They start believing in the good changes that are to come for them, making the soldiers thirsty to kill. I can't wait to see this little girl in action, Mark's hands tremble from the excitement of the voices that echo around him. Aurora raises her arms and one of them waves downwards so that the girl's voice can be heard, very much like a maestro conducting an orchestra, and as soon as the men shouting ceases. We will head towards the southern lands in 13 days after the speech I'll give, and build what I'd like to call an outpost. That shall be the first real line of defense, and I will train every single one of you in the arts of war, alongside other activities that you gentlemen will not be expecting. She raises both arms towards them to get their attention. But hear me out. I assure you that it'll make you all stronger and tougher than you are now. Once we're done with the training we will vanquish our opponents and conquer their territories taking them to ourselves and bringing glory to the future King Julius. The soldiers started screaming King Julius while unsheathing their weapons, raising then lowering them in a repetitive cycle. With a speech like this, I can't help but wonder what kind of words she'll be saying in 13 days to the whole kingdom. Ryu clenches his thumb inside the fist as he's loving it internally while smiling. Oh, 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 seems like Ryu's been taken in by the fervor too, Mark gazes happily at the man containing a burst of happy laughter. Aurora then turns the back to her army and passed through Ryu and Mark whispering. Prepare me some empty books, we'll be moving the army tomorrow, and do as it'll be noted in them. I lied about the 13 days so that the information the spies from other factions receive are tricked, move them during the night. She then keeps walking leaving them behind as both of them look at her back with surprised expressions. Church Perspective In a room with the eight archbishops and the saintess, the Pope yells madly. Why did we have to lose our army for the likes of the pink rose head Isabella? Why did the king have to die? Why? 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 How are we supposed to defend the kingdom without an army against the invasion of the goblin king? Now we'll have to wait for the new king to be crowned and only then, we'll know if we get to keep our old army or not, ugh this is infuriating. The same test spoke, not everything's lost, we just have to make sure Julius wins from all of them, he's our ally after all. The archbishops agreed to her statement. Yes you're right, however, we were doing so well almost at 40,000, 
and now I'm sure they're just going to be used by someone else and eventually get the men killed. I wonder if that girl will be the one commanding some of them, Saint Tess voiced her thoughts out loud by mistake. Girl? What girl? The Pope asked confused looking at the Saint Tess expression who bore an amused smile. One of the archbishops spoke. You haven't heard Klaus? The Crown Prince Julius appointed a peasant which was raised to a noble and gave her the military rank of general which was only used by the Rose families in the past. All this because the girl beat him in a chess game, it's one of the most spread rumors going on through the capital. What the fuck? How does a peasant raise in ranks like that for just beating him in a chess game? Apparently the Crown Prince has never lost in a three-set chess game before, a different archbishop added being a fan of the prince. Still that makes no sense, just who is this girl? Her name's Aurora, daughter of Luke the Healer, a friend of the Crown Prince which is the reason for their meeting, and her mother Rosalind who used to be an adventurer but not a famous one. That's the information we gathered recently with the help of the Saintess along with some spies, an archbishop declared resolute of the accuracy of it. Can we use her somehow? The Pope voiced his thoughts making the Saintess's eyes open wider for a second while losing the brilliance of her smile. If I were to guess I'd say there's a possibility someone from the other factions might try to, and I wouldn't doubt if she got assassinated in the process. In case the anti-peasant into nobility faction moved, since they don't like the crown prince, it would be a good way to make a move, especially since I heard that she was born without an element and almost died during the first years since Aurora was born. Though she's a little kid, so they might not give a care, the archbishop who spoke then gazed from the same test to the Pope. That'd be the first in history, I guess the brain got blessed instead? Possibly to the point of making everything else fragile? That would be more like a curse by the goddess Arya. I must meet this girl and check her with my class skills. If the results are unfavorable, we'll purge her ourselves as our elite force was left untouched since they weren't members of the army, the Pope said in a very cold tone, making one of the archbishops smile. Do what you must, just don't make the crown prince hate us lowering our chances of receiving the army back, the Saintess replied coldly as she took a liking to Aurora, making the Pope notice her change in attitude. Worry not I am just following the will of the goddess Arya, and keeping the disgraceful sinners away, so where do I go to find this general? To that, an archbishop replies, in thirteen days she was requested by the crown prince to do a speech in his place at the south wall towards the masses, alongside the second prince Marty and the princess Liliana. That's where I'll be then, I must confirm such a rarity. I'll take a few of you and some elites just in case. We can easily stay there while I find an opportunity to go towards her and bless them after the speech, or even before if I get the chance. Understood, the archbishops agreed in unison. I'll take care of the church meanwhile, the saintess said indifferently. Please do, the Pope replies promptly as he found something interesting to focus on. Zylph's perspective. A certain day in the past. An eccentric man with red and white hair walks among the slums. Owner of many interesting places like the auction house the black market, and the impoverished communities. With deep connections to the anti-church faction where he has a deal since, in the shadows, the man does quite the lustful and abnormal acts of all kinds. He is known for being strange and wanting to fuck men and women alike as most people pick one of the two, but the true madness is that he does it with those who are underage too. From torture to even training them to be sex tools. All of this turned possible when he became the head of the Grey Rose House. On a different day shortly after that event, Zylph met a certain priest with whom he later got to know and build a sort of relationship. The man belonged to a cult of dark priests that Zylph soon got to realize was an anti-church faction, which he gladly joined as there was a certain woman that he wished to obtain for himself, the Saintess. Under a certain house in the slums there laid an underground base, where he walked to while keeping the surroundings checked. Once the man got in and reached the deepness of it. Zylph was faced with the naked chained bodies of both humans, beasts, and even monsters caged. He would play with them from time to time in many ways. He would even attempt breeding towards different female species to no avail, as they would be killed during intercourse or simply for fun, by one of the many who roamed that place. Today he had been summoned with the max urgency, as something unexpected was happening in the deepest and most secured part of the sanctuary of the dark priests. Once he entered the room after passing through some of the guards, the smile he had on his face disappeared completely. Taking some careful steps closer to the statues, he stares at the middle one belonging to the goddess of Order Luna. What's the meaning of this? While looking awkwardly at it, one of the dark priests who remain kneeled to the statue replies promptly. All the statues of this goddess have been bleeding from their eyes for a few days now, 
and we have some information that the ones spread through many monsters and beasts' territories, are also doing the same. Is there a meaning to this creepy thing? Zylph takes a gaze at the source of the voice. Yes, the Almighty One from the prophecy is now among us, it is said that one who has achieved great amounts of disgrace is capable of obtaining the Dark Powers. Prophecy? Almighty One? Dark Powers? What kind? Skills based on the darkness element like most demons. He places a finger in the lower lip while finding great interest in the Dark Priest's words. It is said that the Church deems it unworthy of people to get too many titles since some of them can give disgraceful classes which may influence negatively the person. However, there has been someone in this world who not only achieved such a class but a version of it that made the Goddess of Luna insanely angry. The Dark Priest takes a cold glance at Zylph and continues. To the point of spreading a bad omen through all her statues in the entire world, as such, we must find this being. It'll certainly lead us to the purpose of our lives, as everyone here has a disgraceful class of some sort including yourself Lord Zylph. The man upon hearing those words starts laughing, yes, that is so, basically, there's someone who's worth commanding this evil group. If that's actually true then I'm looking forward to meeting such a person. We have a unique item that guides us to the one, and the prophecy, in other words, it can locate a specific soul of our desire. That being soul isn't big enough to make our search easy and sometimes it disappears completely, so we must wait patiently for that day. The day where this world will fall into chaos with the being awakening. The dark priest starts laughing insanely, and then adds, but we must be wary of the witch of the south who may try to stop us from obtaining such power. The many dark priests around start voicing out the words witch of the south, in a low ominous tone spreading it through the entire room in a creepy cursing way. Almost like chanting the most wicked of rituals. The Witch of the South? What can we do to get to that being before anyone else does? Do we know its race? Is it a human even? We believe that woman position marks the path, by coincidence, or not. She is a witch and a powerful one enough to be banished by the church. The twin secret sister of Serenity the Saintess. We do not say her name as it is said that doing so can curse the person who has mentioned it, but she's called. The man throws a paper that Zylph picks and reads silently. The Witch of the South Sapphira. To think she'd have a twin sister. It seems like these guys don't share every secret they possess with me. How very selfish despite all the help I give them, perhaps I could grab this one while I don't find a chance to grab the same Tess. He smiles while getting hornier on such thoughts. If she's at the South we should, wait in there? That's where the same Tess had a premonition about the Goblin King army invading our kingdom, could it possibly be related to that? As Zylph mentioned he starts to notice the surroundings, seeing every dark priest looking at him in a creepy way. Gentlemen it seems like the person may be a goblin or perhaps some human that lives in the southern lands, maybe even a peasant. That would be my best guess at least. The dark priests start whispering to each other in a creepy way, then they hide their faces in dark hoods and start walking out. The one who spoke with Zylph earlier voices out close to him. We will search every corner of the south and come in contact with you when we find our fated leader, no matter how long it takes. I don't mind selling even my soul to such a being as long as I can have the same Tess and Ryu. Zylph due to the thoughts of the two beings he sought to obtain, became loyal to his ardent heart, pulling a different man inside the room, facing him towards the goddess statue. A while passed and the nobleman could be seen with a happy smile, satisfied with the way everything was going. He walked to the exit of the underground base setting everything on fire, leaving no trace of anything. Chapter 61 The Peasant Rises Arc Day 15 of the decaying season during the morning, in the south center border of the Lumen Kingdom. A wooden outpost has been created through the work of 20,000 men in the south border around 100 kilometers far from Astia village, and in the middle of it, a really tall tower where a few archers who have a skill that allows them to see far away, reside changing turns with one another as specified in the general notes. Inside it contains a bell with a large rope that can be used to pull, making it ring alerting everyone of an enemy attack. Geographically speaking one could feel the certainty that the location chosen by Aurora hadn't been random. If a vertical line was drawn on a map from top to bottom, the place they resided would be exactly below the capital. The wood outpost has a wooden wall of 500 meters away from the forest, so that they have time to see the enemies even in the dark, and behind towards the kingdom it is filled with long fields that are close to a river that curves nearby allowing them to not run out of resources easily, even though these are still currently growing. The field is planted with crops that will survive through the decaying and the moon seasons, 
and the resources they brought from the capital will last for a long time thanks to the big quantities of salt bought. The men were instructed to fish, farm, and hunt as those things would give them titles, another thing was that they had to build everything on their own, so they could cut the wood from the forest in front of them to reduce the camouflage attempts of the monsters, so they spent 12 days doing this making a pretty big outpost with a 100 long wall that heightened about 2 meter tall and they did it in turns, as the general notes advised, giving titles to everyone who contributed. By the end of the twelfth day, they realized that doing these activities was truly making their bodies stronger, so they did them more effervescently and with more motivation as they seeked to become powerful so that they could have a better time when the fighting starts. The cooking was made initially by the female soldiers, who then taught the male ones contributing further for their status's improvement, some even made desserts who also received titles from it, mostly dry fruit cakes as sugar is extremely expensive. They learned slowly how to read as Aurora remembered it had helped Iris increase her wisdom eventually adding most of the title's knowledge into the notes she made, making everyone do a lot of useful things that some had never done before, and others didn't complete. They don't have a status skill that shows the rank of their titles thus extra effort was necessary. From practically day one, they would end up fighting monsters and beasts who'd come close by, and also when they'd go to cut the woods from the forest extending the range between the natural fortress and the humans' camp while also creating everything they needed with it. Some of them were blacksmiths, carpenters, artisans, and other ranked zero classes, who weren't defensive or offensive classes, as such development was made slightly faster. Of course, that the peasants from the villages around would get hired to work if they'd like, as well as merchants would drop by and attempt to buy and sell the loot either they or the soldiers had. The days passed by fast while the army awaited their general to come, but every soldier knew a speech had been appointed. That was the first step to be done back in the Lumen capital before she'd have a chance to continue her work and that day had been today, it would take a bit longer before Aurora would be able to arrive. On the afternoon of the day, 15 of the decaying season at the south wall of the capital three individuals could be seen, where two were widely known through the entire kingdom the Prince Marty and the Princess Liliana. It is tradition for the speech order to start by the amount of influence, however, since Aurora was practically unknown to the peasants and known only to the army, nobles, and the royal family, she was placed as the last one, the one to begin ended up being the Prince Marty. With the help of a few wind mages, the voice was able to flow without issue and the intensity would increase almost like talking in a megaphone, so everyone, in other words, five out of ten million humans filled the outsides of the southern walls, the gate, and the inside of the capital. All of them be it peasants or nobles waited patiently to hear what they had to say, as the news of the king's death flew extremely fast and the later news of the cremation did too. As most of you know I am Prince Marty and am here today to greet you all. I've come here to tell you that I wish to keep the ways of the past king and bring happiness to all of you the same way he tried to through his ruling. I'll begin by taking the 20,000 soldiers towards the south in a few days, and expand our territory against the evil monsters that await us, eventually conquering even the other territories as you all know, ah. He grasps for some air feeling pressured. As we all know the successor was supposed to be my older brother the crown prince Julius, but since my father wanted to give all the descendants a fair chance, the throne will go to the one who earns more lands, so that's what I'll be doing from now on. Any of you that wish to be part of my army is very welcome to join, I'll be heading southwards in three days, once he finished some hundreds applauded and shouted but it wasn't a significant sound. Princess Liliana in a long white dress with a layer of blue took her brother's place and started speaking. Her beautiful light tone porcelain-like skin and young age made the people in front of her do some noise as she is very beautiful while being the youngest of the siblings about 20 years old. With a mixed tone of mature and softness, her gorgeous voice filled everyone's ears. Hello everyone, I'm Princess Liliana the third in line to the throne, till the most recent event where my father died, and now having to dispute this between my siblings upon the late king dying will. I'll be making my representative the head of the Golden Rose Angelica lead the army in my place in a few days, and put a swift end to this dispute as early as possible becoming the next ruler of this kingdom, by bringing prosperity to it by vanquishing the enemies of humanity. A couple of thousand men applauded and shouted making a significant noise from down the wall as they enjoyed what they saw. The last one took the place of climbing to the very edge of the wall, unlike the others. One step away from falling worrying the people in front and around her, of a possible fall ending up creating surprise and anxiety in their hearts. The unease you just felt from watching me almost falling, is the emotion that our enemies are currently having, as I've been fighting against the monsters that the two who came before me mentioned for 13 days now. I've set up a base, recruited soldiers from all around the kingdom, gave jobs to peasants like myself and nobles too. As many of you don't know, 
I am Aurora the general of the Crown Prince Julius whom he promoted as a noble to lead his army, and the same way he did, I propose to all of you peasants and nobles alike a work offer. After all, I see no difference between either of you since you are all humans in my eyes. She shouts loudly making the intensity of her voice reverberate in everyone's ears. I have made it that those who join my army will be paid with a good amount of money and lands, the ones you all help conquering. Not to forget that their ranks will progress depending on their achievements, in other words, the money and lands you receive will increase as they accumulate through your accomplishments. You will be able to obtain the same ranks as the heads of the Rose families and be rewarded equally. In the name of the Crown Prince Julius I Aurora. She lifts her right hand in the air slowly and then says, I shall finish what I've started, and crush every single enemy that doesn't submit to us, humans. Aurora closes her small hand so that everyone can see almost as if she was smashing whatever the inside had. The moment she did the euphoric sounds of peasants who have always dreamed of becoming nobles or simply being able to raise in a system where the social classes have always been locked, started vibrating the air with their voices and shouts while clapping and hitting the floor with their steps happily. Everything started shaking giving goosebumps to the crown prince Julius who was watching from afar and almost making the blonde girl fall off. Aurora bows deeply towards the people in front and below of her and then leaves walking past the second prince and princess, who remain dumbfounded by the speech they heard. Both take the chance to memorize Aurora's face as she went through but mainly focus on the blonde color of her hair, which shone beautifully with the sunlight, irradiating them as an aurora boreal does towards the night cold sky. As she came down from the wall, some people awaited her in white robes, who blocked the passage. Since most of them were taller, especially the one in the middle, the girl's head raised while her eyes meet the person in front. Hello? Who might you gentlemen be? Aurora questions with a small smile while keeping a confused expression. Greetings young lady Aurora, I am the Pope Claus of the Church a friend of the Saintess. I have come to ascertain some doubts as I was told that you were born without an element. Does he have some sort of skill that enables him to check my status? What should I do? As she prepares herself to break through the ones in front. The crown prince alongside Ryu and a few guards who walked with him surround the priests in front of them making them stuck in the middle of Aurora and the prince. What is your eminence doing here? Julius asked curiously with a neutral tone feeling his path to Aurora blocked which displeased him greatly as he wanted to congratulate her right away. I've heard the general of your army, this little kid in front of me was born with an illness of sorts, which made the body unable to produce an element. Something like that made me curious while pitting her, as such I'll use two skills on the girl that will show me the child's true nature, I believe the crown prince wouldn't mind correct. If the prince agrees to it I might be found out please say no Julius. Sure, go for it, she's just a normal kid who had rough health since birth, he declared firmly while believing his friend Luke's words making Aurora bow looking at the floor, making it impossible for the Pope to see her eyes or expression which was showing some despair. I'm officially screwed, I'm sorry Iris, the Pope extended his hand at Aurora and channeled Mana while voicing the name of the skill. Demon Detection Upon not receiving any information as she's not a demon he attempted a different one. Very well you're a human, now disgrace detection, his eyes widened then closed allowing a few people to look at the Pope's surprised expression. You have no disgrace whatsoever it seems like you've been behaving properly, I'm truly happy Lady Aurora. Now even though I did say, I'd only use two skills I must confirm one last thing, and in exchange, I won't bother you further. Human lie detection, are you against me, the Saintess? the goddess Arya, or even the church. I'm not your eminence, simply a sick girl with some talent towards war. What's up with all these weird detections? Just what kind of class does this man have? It seems it truly is something that was born with you, I'm afraid I cannot help you. My apologies child as my sane test took a liking to you and asked me if I could help you out. Aurora bows to him deeper and voices out, not at all your eminence, just your presence has already made this one overjoyed. Even if the almighty goddess Arya did not provide me with an element, she did bless me with a good brain and memory for which I'm truly eternally grateful for. I'm truly exhilarated, though what class did you acquire Lady Aurora? Strategist is the class I received, I believe it helps me think on plans to help His Highness Prince Julius in the wars to come. After talking for a long time with many people I met, I ended up using the same class as Mark as an escape. If I told this man my true class he'd certainly do everything he could to discover all about it and possibly even force me to use it. Human lie detection, upon hearing those words Aurora's expression didn't waver and she said, I'm not lying Pope Claus, she smiled innocently at him. Since none of my skills told me anything that would trouble you, 
I'll be taking my leave and I shall pray for your success in the wars to come, young general. He smiled genuinely kindly due to gaining an incredible amount of respect for Aurora, especially for having no disgrace whatsoever which is very unique in a human being, as titles end up giving a bit of it at some point. The guards retracted and the men in the white robes left, I'll be praying for your success as our greatest ally Prince Julius. Thank you very much Eminence, send my best regards to the Saintess. But of course, if you'll excuse me, Julius nodded slightly while smiling faintly. The Pope left alongside the rest of the priests leaving Aurora, Ryu and Julius who headed together to a more quiet place alongside some guards who escorted them. Chapter 62 The Peasant Rises Arc Inside the usual room where the Crown Prince Julius does the reunions, he sat with Ryu and Aurora while chatting with both. That speech truly surprised me, a tad different than the traditional and simple approach I helped writing, however, thanks to it I feel like our army will eventually grow from those who heard it. Posing with a serious expression the crown prince adds, though the next time do warn me beforehand, if you wish to change anything Aurora. All right your highness, I'll keep that in mind. Good. I'm sure rumors about you and me will surely reach all the parts of the Lumen Kingdom, certainly useful peasants and nobles will want to join us. Honestly, your highness, I think the most surprised ones were your siblings as they heard the sound and voices echo all the way to the top of the wall due to this little general of ours. Indeed Ryu. They had some interesting faces to them, and apparently my sister is going to participate, even if indirectly which was unexpected as she's never shown the will to. I believe people change when they have some power in their hands, the girl mentioned knowing it beforehand. Wise words Aurora, also I've handled the resources and secured a path for them that won't be influenced by my siblings, as you've requested little general, the prince mentions with a happy smile. Thank you, your highness. Soon I believe our camp will flood with peasants and nobles alike so we must be ready to handle the masses. With a serious expression gazing at both men she continues. We may get too many mouths to feed therefore the next step shall be to contact the merchants for a lot of them to do commerce there, and we need some people to organize the new applicants and the already soldiers who are part of the army. I'll recruit some personnel for the logistic department, I know some nobles who would be great at it. I appreciate it, Lord Ryu. This will help reduce the spies and we could even use one of those books the Adventurers Guild have to get their information. I'll look into that, worry not Aurora, anything else? Ryu declared swiftly with a question while gazing at her. Honestly speaking, don't die here in the capital assassination or poison may happen from one of the other two competitors. With an angry expression, Julius shouts at the girl. They're my siblings they wouldn't dare. After looking at Aurora for a while who remained serious, the prince started having second thoughts. Would they really attempt something like that? Just so they could become rulers? Like how my sister who didn't care about the throne is now charging south with her army. Can people change that fast by obtaining a glimpse of power? Aurora ignoring the prince shouting continues the conversation while aiming at the necessary steps towards the upcoming war. Finding ways of increasing our funds be it from a registration fee from the new applicants who wish to become a soldier to an entry price to our camp by anyone who wishes to commerce. With a calmer tone, the prince takes notes on a paper and questions, anything else comes to your mind regarding the funds. Perhaps something as simple as a small tax for those who wish to enter the capital which the total can be split by the three siblings so they accept such a law. I'm sure your highness can think of other ways to raise our funds meanwhile I head to the camp to meet Mark and resume the training of our soldiers. Thank you for the suggestions they're very good, and don't worry about money. I have plenty for the years to come, not to forget the late king trial ends in two years. Aurora gets up and with a cold tone speaks, No your highness, this will end when I conquer the world for the next ruler thus it is imperative that the fund increases in the long term. Upon such words, a smile appeared on Julius and Ryu's faces. I'll be managing things in the capital with Ryu for the first months regarding the long term issues, and then we'll meet you at the front lines, ask the guard outside to escort you to your wagon, so you can start your trip general. Show us what you're truly made of. All right, see you later prince. Lord, she says while staring at one at a time then goes through the exit, closing the door on the way out. The prince starts writing a letter and once it's done, he seals it with a blue stamp similar to the Lumen Kingdom flag passing it over to Ryu. Make sure it reaches Isabella, I'll be here thinking on ways to make money, just in case she ends up being right again, and worst case the late king advisors may delay this dispute for a few more years if necessary. That sounds wise your highness. I'll head for the head of the pink house right away and grab some flowers as well, the last part made the prince smile silently. 
Upon reaching the wagon Aurora realizes two familiar faces are waiting for her along with the usual coach rider. I assume the hero and the sage will be coming with me to the front lines. Yes. They replied happily in unison, then the sage continued. The crown prince ordered us to keep you safe since you'll be surrounded by too many people, and there is a chance that assassins, spies or even some soldiers attempt to attack you. Sophie added with a gentle expression and kind tone, there's also the issue that you have a weak sickly body so we'll be there to support you. Any help is welcome, I truly appreciate it, shall we go? Yes General. Romeo and Sophie shouted happily once more. On the way to the southern outpost, the hero suddenly points at the blonde girl's neck with a long sword while Romeo raised both hands at her channeling a light element. Did they figure something out? Aurora thinks confused as she was sure her acting was very good. What's wrong? She looks at them innocently making them waver. Forgive us General, however, we must make sure of something, Romeo, use it. Mana starts channeling into his hands while he speaks. Human lie detector, tell me Aurora are you a summoned from our past world, the Aurora from there? I'm not a summoned from any world, I was born here like everyone else, Aurora said calmly, ending it with a kind smile. How is it, Romeo? It's okay you can lower your weapon she's not the real deal, so we can trust her. This unlucky girl just happens to have a similar name and a good brain, but if it was the real one the army management along with the tactics I've read in the notes she wrote would have been quite superior. She did give us insane trouble to the point of almost losing the war back then, sorry about this general hope we can remain friends. Yes, of course, just make sure you do not keep pointing weapons and magic at me every time you have some sort of doubt, Aurora says in a cold tone while sighing. We apologize, they bowed earnestly making her smile slightly, feeling that her acting so far hasn't failed while keeping a cool mind. As long as you understand, speaking of which what did the goddess Arya bless you two with? She tilts her head innocently grasping for the fact they messed up, allowing their hearts to feel like they owe the girl an explanation. They look at each other and then realizing there were no more doubts Sophie nodded and Romeo started speaking. I received a blessed skill sage's boost, and from the same tier amplification, which in my past life made everything more powerful, and the boost allowed me to get magic of any type, not sure about in this world Artana. I received a blessed skill named Hero Trumpets though I'm not sure what it does, however, I'll assume it'll be useful at some point as I've tried to use it, and nothing happens. It is a hero skill, so I'm sure it'll help us in the war to come, Aurora says while smiling kindly at them. Seems like we were able to relax her again, it would be troublesome if the general would get mad at us especially since she's quite talented, and also has the backing of the prince who's been helping us. Romeo gazed at her feeling relieved to the bottom of his soul, finally letting go of that last line of doubt in his heart. Sophie who was gazing at Aurora started thinking turning her face around to the wagon window checking the people and places out. This girl is pretty cute, kind, and has a great brain. I can't wait to see what kind of person she'll grow into. I'll make sure to help Aurora in exchange for being so friendly to us, and even being so forgiving expected her to insult us or something while shouting angrily. It'll be a long trip so feel free to rest, I'll try to sleep a bit myself, it has been a nerve-wracking day with the speech and all the planning. To think the general would be nervous since you hide your emotions pretty well, Romeo said as he's been studying her behavior since the day that they arrived in the room with the prince. I've spent most of my time trying not to die so there hasn't been much space to emotions sadly. Sophie who was next to Romeo got up and sat next to Aurora and hugged the girl feeling sad for her. This is, very awkward. Did I get into her soft spot or something? You can rest while leaning on me I'll be sure to comfort you as an older sister. Thank you Sophie though make sure to wake me up so that the soldiers do not see us like this, I need to look mean to them. Sophie and Romeo giggle while agreeing to her request. In different circumstances, we could have been friends, however, all that waits for the two of you, is the most gruesome and cruel fate once I use your bodies to the fullest of your capabilities as war tools. Till then we can play as friends so that your hearts become truly broken full of despair, once you realize who I truly am. After a while, Aurora falls asleep which Sophie takes the chance to place the girl's head on her lap while gazing at Romeo. Yet another merciless world awaits us where we'll have to wage war against who knows how many, even going as far as to make use of this little child. Such is the fate of the hero, however, I'll make sure to support you as I've always been. Thank you, Romeo, you're truly the best. She starts patting Aurora's hair softly, I hope there aren't many unfortunate kids like this one out there. Sophie gazes at the girl while commenting her hair is very beautiful. 
Indeed, but I still prefer your pink one it's just exceptional, Romeo smiles at her making Sophie blush. I'm glad I got to keep my appearance even if a very younger version of it. Same here actually, it was becoming quite hard to move on that aged body in the old world. Yeah, everything hurt it was horrible even with all the abilities we had, aging was simply superior to them, they laughed lowly to not wake up Aurora. So what do you think of this girl, will she be able to lead the humans of our side to victory? If she was the Aurora we knew then that'd be with a 100% accuracy, but since they're different we can only hope the girl learns fast enough with that good brain of hers. I mean, since she already beat the prince in chess, who won against you, we have a good chance. In other words, you see potential in her, for me, that's enough, he smiles while watching the woman pat the child. We'll soon reach there let's try to get some rest as she suggested. All right, Sophie. They lay on the walls of the wagon and slowly fall asleep while the long trip to the border continues. Chapter 63 The Peasant Rises Arc Day 16 of the decaying season at the South Outpost Aurora arrives with Romeo and Sophie inside the wagon which Jeffy opens the door and enters it waking up the three who are sleeping. They all wake up and stare at each other awkwardly as Aurora appears to be sleeping on Sophie's lap while the woman's head is on top of Aurora's ass making Romeo laugh out loud. They all get up and start leaving the wagon after Jeffy's, meeting Mark who's outside waiting for them smiling. Once they're standing in front of him the old man's lips start moving, it seems like you had a pleasant rest, then he laughs unable to contain it further making Sophie embarrassed and Romeo laugh even more while Aurora makes an awkward expression. With a low voice, Sophie adds without regret, well her ass was a good pillow if anything, this time it's Romeo who blushes upon hearing that as Aurora remains indifferent while feeling further uncomfortable on the inside. She then starts walking to the camp while looking at the surroundings enjoying that her notes became reality while Mark quickly accompanies the girl, it seems the men have been doing what I asked, did they notice their status improvement with their skill personal data? Yes, and the number of titles increased for a lot of the men alongside the different statuses that went up. We've also been reducing the forest trees which caused small skirmishes with different monsters and beasts making them gain experience and levels and also we've stored the soul stones in a room that you requested as the notes said you had some experiments for them. Splendid does everyone have a place to sleep? Since it is the decaying season it's bound to rain anytime soon. Yes, we've been making simple yet large wooden structures for the men to sleep in along with the usage of the nearby villages to shelter parts of the army as advised in the notes, making the men there contribute to the different activities of the villagers, which would benefit the chances of new titles as well as the improvement of the image that our army receives. Very good. If we keep the people around us happy it'll make the villages around willing to work for us in return, and then the ones around them will be influenced to come out of jealousy. I see, that's a great plan as to be expected of the general, Mark smiles happily noticing a chain of reactions. It'll be best to acquire a great number of blacksmiths and wood artisans to come work with us in expanding our defenses further, also we'll have to coat our wooden walls with something that doesn't allow it to get burned easily. This will prevent the invasions to succeed easily. I'll talk with the Magic Institute and see what solutions they can offer, I'm an acquaintance with the leader Ryan, the strongest magician in the kingdom, Aurora nods slightly upon hearing such words, feeling curious about such a person. If he's the best mage, it would be interesting to recruit him, even if the odds might not work. After passing through a few wooden houses, Mark points at one in specific and states, that's the one where I store the soul stones. Understood, wait here a moment. She goes inside and sees hundreds of stones transforming into a grimoire and consuming all of them. System, the title devourer has been received. She then transforms back and says while licking her lips, Thank you for the meal, I feel overflowing with soul power, status. Status. Level, 14 experience 1290 slash 1400 class, pandemonium. Race, human name, Aurora 8 years old. Health. 1000 slash 1000 mana 1700 slash 1700 status points 0 stamina 100 intelligence 90 wisdom 170 soul power 52130 attack 5 magic attack 90 titles eternum s uncursed s soul bound s contracted s noticed s god series f devourer S. Skill points, 9. Actives, status level 40, D, darkness barrier level 7, F, piercing darkness level 13, F, mana coat level 8, F, dark coat level 9, F, mana wave level 1, F, 
Dark Bind Level 14, F, Extraction Level 4, F. Passives, Mana Control Level 25, E, Dark Control Level 19, F, Monster Detection Level 40, D, Beast Detection Level 13, F, Night Vision Level 25, E. Unique, Transformation Level 15, Killing Intent Level 5. Blessed Slash Cursed, Unidentified. Unique Element, Dark. Cursed Soulbound. Contracted Skills, Telepathy, F, Giver, E, Deconstruct, D, Stacking, C. Consumed Skills, Infected Bite Level 15, Human Detection Level 40, Brainwash Resistance Level 50, Fire Resistance Level 80, Water Resistance Level 70, Wind Resistance Level 60, Earth Resistance Level 40, Light Resistance Level 30, Dark Resistance Level 50, Ice Resistance Level 20, Quick Stab Level 50, Double Slash Level 30, Ice Wall Level 5, Dark Bind Level 4, Focus Level 10, Leadership Level 20, Slight Stamina Boost Level 30, Slight Agility Boost Level 20, Acid Resistance Level 25, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 30, Slight Strength Boost Level 40, Slighty Intelligence Boost Level 20, Stealth Level 2, Swordsmanship Level 10, Sword Mastery Level 6, Archery Level 10, Bow Mastery Level 5, Wand Art Level 3, Wand Mastery Level 1, Staff Art Level 8, Staff Mastery Level 3, Unarmed Combat Level 15, Shield Mastery Level 10, Nature Resistance Level 5, Explosion Resistance Level 3, Spirit Resistance Level 2, Ethereal Resistance Level 1, Poison Resistance Level 20, Stun Resistance Level 10, Knockback Resistance Level 5, Concentration Level 3. I probably have enough soul power to evolve further but here would be risky, I'll wait till I can return to Iris or find a good place to do it. I can't allow anyone to see it, especially those two. She then exits the house meeting up with Mark. Upon arriving she states, thank you for the experiment, it was quite successful, as such, we can keep storing them there. Certainly, I've told a trustworthy soldier to keep guard of it. Mark then signals Romeo and Sophie who are a bit further away to approach and declares. The two of you can stay in that house over there and use two beds that you find fit, I request that you will join the front line whenever you are asked to. Understood, they reply in unison with serious expressions. Be sure to fight freely alongside the men to make them familiar with having the hero and the sage around, as the forest is being constantly chopped down, causing enemies to appear. It'll be a good chance for the both of you to level up. Sure thing, let's go, Romeo, Sophie walked curiously to see what kind of place they built in such a short time. Ah, wait for me. He runs after her who just moved fast too fast without hesitation. Mark then walks nearby the house gazing at the inside of the room noticing some soul stones disappeared, causing his face to change into a startled expression. What did you do to the soul stones Aurora? I was born with a certain skill that transforms soul stones into knowledge. The real secret for being so smart at such a young age, as such, I've consumed all of them into brain power, so I'm overflowing with all kinds of knowledge currently. Mark hastily ran towards the door and opened it fully realizing that every single of the hundreds of soul stones had really vanished. Oh, my goddess, you truly weren't joking just now, what kind of skill is that even? I thought you couldn't use elemental magic. That's true but I still have mana and with it, I can use the blessing skill the goddess Arya gave me. She shows a blue light flowing through her right hand, but do keep it a secret from everyone, if other factions knew about it they would certainly kidnap me and attempt to brainwash and even use me as a tool. Mark while sweating nervously added, Yes General I'll take that information to my grave, now then let us proceed as the men await your next orders, they walked together to where the core of the army was. Upon a wooden platform after gathering a great part of the men Aurora spoke to the soldiers around. Starting today I'll be teaching and drilling you exercises, tactics, and formations. I'll make each and every single one of you become capable of doing what's best for the whole army. The girl gazes at everyone from one side to the other before resuming. In some weeks we'll start clashing with the forces hidden through those forests, by then I believe the other two human forces will have arrived. Once they do, we'll start expanding while hitting different fronts in large-scale wars to come while increasing the size of the army which is extremely small as it is. The men cheered happily for having the general back but also for the good news as they wanted to be promoted, so learning from the girl in front of them would surely contribute to their rise a lot faster. I've heard that you men and women have become stronger, tougher, smarter through the different activities that I ordered you all to do. I want you all to keep doing them, to also try different things, as the more titles you have the stronger you'll become. 
you must have confidence in yourselves as all of you have the potential to become a hero of your own, share the knowledge of new titles among yourselves, and even tell that to me or the advisors, so we can further spread it. Don't forget, through the human history I've come to read about a certain woman who was one of the weakest humans ever born. The first peasant hero Rizia from the first chapter of Tales of Artana is the sole hero who wasn't summoned from a different world that was able to do even more than those the goddess Arya blessed. I believe one of the reasons for that was due to her collecting titles from a young age, which is what you'll all be doing along with the information that I'll fill your brains with so that you become both powerful and wise from here onwards. As Aurora spoke more and more men would gather and cheer for the general, as they heard her eloquent tongue speak encouraging and informative words making them satisfied for having someone like that as the general, despite being such a young girl. Slowly they would start seeing the girl as a real commander and gradually growing an affinity towards her charisma while respecting Aurora deeply. For the first four weeks, I'll be appointing some officers among you, each leading a group of twenty soldiers as I mentioned in the first speech. I'll be training them and replacing them if they don't fit what I believe necessary for such rank, eventually proceeding to higher ranks. Soon, our army will be completely structured to the point of everyone knowing what they have to do so that when I call for a formation you all will move accordingly. By the time she reached this stage of the speech she had gathered the majority of the army around her including Sophie and Romeo who had finished checking the different buildings finding some with beds, others with materials, and a few empty ones that made them lose interest quickly, making them lastly group up with the mob of the soldiers which made them curious as to why they were gathering there in the first place. Everyone. Take three steps backward without hurting each other, the men carefully moved back a bit. My first criteria of selection for the initial 1,000 officers is that I want those of you that have the skill leadership, at least above level 20 to take one step forward from the place you are now. About 3,000 soldiers took a step forward, that's more than what I expected, though if our army expands three times more it wouldn't be a bad idea to train all of them already. I look at Mark on the side who nods as if he understood what was going through my mind. I believe our army will grow at least three times more after the speech I gave back in the capital to millions of humans and as such, I'll take the 3,000 soldiers that took a step forward, teaching them how each will lead at least 20 soldiers initially, we'll call them, hum, squads. They will be composed of one officer and 20 soldiers from here onwards, the rest of you who weren't chosen for now resume your activities as I'll give you all things to do while I train these 3,000, and don't worry if you are not chosen now, the ranks will fall into different categories soon enough. The men dispersed leaving exactly 3,103 people behind as some were curious enough to stay and learn. She walks to Mark and then tells him, make those who left, do the soldier exercises that I wrote, so that they acquire knowledge on formations and teamwork for when the officers are ready to use such information on them. Leave it to me, want to tag along with me, Romeo and Sophie. Mark gazes at both after using a casual tone. Sure, I'll give you a hand, the young man said happily going closer to the old one. I'll stay and help Aurora out, Sophie said as she didn't want her new friend alone surrounded by so many soldiers, as such she walked closer to Aurora waving them goodbye. Take good care of her then, we'll talk later, Romeo smiled while they departed. Sophie then walked past the last group of soldiers reaching close enough, looking at Aurora smiling. This one seems to have taken some strange affection to me or perhaps at my ass, sisters one even. Chapter 64 The Peasant Rises Arc Aurora grabs a hammer, a very large piece of paper, and some nails, pounding it on a wooden wall with the help of Sophie as the 3,000 humans stare quietly at them, between the soon-to-be strategic board, and the pink-haired young woman bottom. Then with some ink, the general with a wooden brush started drawing some things with the casual help of her transformation skill, whenever Sophie's not looking, making the men curious. As soon as she finished the blonde girl started explaining the information in the sketch while pointing at it with the index finger. This is the initial formation that you'll be making the soldiers do, I suggest you approach so you can see and study, the men quickly took some steps forward surrounding the wooden platform whereas Aurora then continued speaking, initially we'll begin by each of you having 20 soldiers as I mentioned previously which will be the circle here, she points at it with the finger, we'll be practicing small skirmishes against the monsters and beasts that live in the forest in front of us, moving inside as a group of melee weapons and ranged weapons, for example, 10 men carrying swords and spears and then, 10 others carrying bows and staffs with one or two healers if we have any to keep everyone from dying. The soldiers go in awe as they listen to the general's teachings and the soft child voice that comes from her. What we'll be doing is adventuring deep in the forest but not too profoundly, so you all can escape if necessary, the officer will tell the men to move in, move out, attack, defend, always making clear orders such as, 
Yu Ten in the front focus on this goblin, the two archers attack the ranged enemy, Yu two healers, heal the soldiers in front who are dealing with the goblins, Yu wizard blast the enemy healers with a big skill, since some abilities take time to cast. These will be the initial orders and once every single one of you masters the communication necessary to lead your group, will then start with formations, the ones who'll excel at both will rank up to captain then leading 100 soldiers and 5 officers, so some of you will guide those around you who don't get promoted, rivalry starts crossing the minds of them which was the intent Aurora wanted to create so that they pull through their mental limits. Every single one of you will recruit 20 soldiers from our army and start doing what I mentioned, any problems that occur, any difficulty the officers you encounter, you can come to talk with me and I'll sort them out, any internal disturbance will not be tolerated and again if one does happen, do communicate with me and I'll fix it, worst case I'll swap members from one squad to another as not everyone synergies well with one another. Do not be afraid of failure but do fear failing and doing nothing to fix it, I will not forgive those who treat the soldiers under you as tools, they are your family, parts of you, as you'll be the mind that leads the squad, they will be your legs and arms, Aurora claps with all her strength one time. Never forget that I want all the squads done in two hours max and you can even team up with other officers, now go, those of you who may have doubts can stay behind and we'll discuss them, three of them remained behind and they approached the girl. Greetings general, I wish to know if you have any recommendation for an initial squad. I'd say three who specialize in melee combat two archers one healer and one wizard which sounds balanced, if you can make the archers or even a thief that can search for traps and intruders, in other words, what I love to call a scout. They can help the officers notice the enemies earlier giving you the chance to think on a plan, instead of reacting to the danger which would lead to more casualties, as Aurora speaks the man takes notes of the words picking her interest as not many soldiers know how to read and write, and even less of them spend their money on expensive things like paper. What are we to do in case we find a similar squad but a group of enemies instead, or even get outnumbered? Make a line all together and escape back to the camp, ask for reinforcements of close by squads and fight them. We have enough men to outnumber our enemies till the Goblin King realizes that we're here destroying their numbers, however, seeing as no major force has arrived it means the monsters we've cleaned weren't even a part of his army, in other words, his camp is bound to be much deeper, from the information the Crown Prince received which was given by the head of the Pink Rose family the best assassin in the Lumen Kingdom, it should still be very far from here. Understood General, I'll be preparing my squad, he then left and Aurora went into thought. I've chosen this area in specific because it is in the middle of the supposed beast kingdoms, so this spot in specific must not falter, what worries me is that the Goblin King can go directly to a different section of the south border, can only hope the other two forces will be able to defend against them since I'm already taking the hardest location. I doubt the Goblin King would dare to move right away, but I just hope me being here won't accelerate the war instead, and we get outnumbered by millions of his subordinates, I'll definitely need a bigger army at least 500,000 to make a difference but having a 20,000 force that is capable of thinking on their own will certainly be an amazing core, and possible addition to one of the wings in the future, she then notices a leftover officer who stays quiet waiting for his turn. You may speak, he bows and then says, Greetings Lady Aurora I was thinking if I could take the hero Sophie as one of my squad members, as he finishes such words we both look at Sophie who remained quiet this whole time watching over me. It would be a good chance for her to become stronger, but the choice is your hero. Aurora said showing that she was able to choose her fate within her army which pleased the pink-haired woman, sure I'll tag along and teach you some things. Thank you very much Lady Aurora, and Hero Sophie, please come this way I have some friends that will be interested in joining us today. Certainly, she then looked at Aurora and said, do tell Romeo I went to slay some monsters, little sister, she said with a proud expression. I shall older sister, a smile appeared making Sophie expression happy as she was treated like family. What are the odds I'd end up babysitting these two? Not to forget they were both chosen out of who knows how many souls, was it on purpose? Did the goddess Arya know about me, and our fight? Did she know that if we joined forces we would be unstoppable? Maybe she picked them for the unique existence that is the sage class. We need to torment and torture them Aurora. That would certainly be very enjoyable, but the time has not come for that to happen sadly. Ah, why must the master torture us so with such weight Aurora? Worry not the time will certainly come, Iris did promise I could have their lives to myself so we just have to wait. A promise, a pact, a contract, a soul bound with the Babel witch. You sure exceeded yourself this time around Aurora. Just insurance you know that, since no matter how powerful I am every time, alone we always get sealed, losing our progress, 
and in this third time we have found Iris, who is now precious to us, our younger sister and the one that will bring out the full potential within us, without her we're a useless weapon. To bring death to the world, to use the legendary tome, Pandemonium. An evil smile appeared on her expression which she hid behind both hands. What will you do Aurora when Iris's soul gets big enough, awakening the one sleeping deep inside our own, that we have been protecting for ten thousand years? When that time comes both you and I will become part of her identity as we originally were, disappearing. That's kind of sad. True, but such was the promise we made with her, that turned into a life pact. Once she no longer sleeps, the tides will change, she might devour Iris. It's all right I left insurance. The cursed soul bound Aurora. Yes, that way our souls will eventually become one, and Iris' enemies will only be able to bow and offer their lives, however, even with the witch awakening, it'll still not be enough to unlock that identity fully, we will need sacrifices, thousands of souls. Just like in the old world where you... A man's voice interrupted her thoughts, General. She once more becomes expressionless removing the hands from her face, yes. One of the archers in the watchtower has noticed a group of about 200 kobolds moving together through the forest in a direction bit further from our camp, so we believe they're not coming to attack. Upon hearing that a smile appeared on the girl's lips, Sol's Aurora consume them. Let us go call ten squads we're doing a skirmish. She shouted making him run as fast as he can delivering the message. Once we destroy these, more will certainly come for us, it'll certainly become interesting from here onwards. More souls, more, more, the offerings must go on Aurora. A scary voice laughed madly inside the girl's mind. Chapter 65 The Peasant Rises Arc a while later two hundred soldiers and the majority of the officers stood beside Aurora all armed as she was about to do a demonstration. Archers prepare the arrows, wizards prepare the offensive spells the enemy is approaching let's give them a big blow. She shouted alone in the middle of many. Once the kobolds got in the sight of the humans moments later, noticing a couple of humans approaching to slay them, slowly they started seeing more and more figures. They grew anxious with each step the enemies made becoming heavy-hearted. Shoot. A small blonde girl then yelled from afar. The beasts then saw arrows flying at them as they showered the two hundred kobolds, followed right after by all types of offensive magic destroying a great part of their numbers, along with the forest, spreading corpses and scattering body parts and blood everywhere. Melee units charge. Archers and healers support them. Wizards beware of our flanks for approaching enemies. In mere minutes two hundred beings had died and after they collected the soul stones and returned to Aurora she spoke. As you've seen this is what a captain is supposed to do and the officers have to spread the orders through the soldiers as our voices have range limits, the 200 who died today could have been you all, this is a very tiny glimpse of war, the side that is best prepared is the one that is likely to win, store the soul stones in the usual place and then resume the monster cleanup around the forest, take the meat of the kobolds and treat it to every soldier who helped slaying them. The officers behind her started clapping enthusiastically while thinking they'd want to be like her and do the same thing in the future. As for you all that stood behind me watching, this is the minimum you must do if you wish to rank up higher and lead a bigger number of troops, now back to your squads show me how amazing you all will become. Yes general. They shouted mesmerizing her to no end. Aurora then walks around inspecting the corpses noticing that most were unarmed, wondering why they came to this side, it should be the opposite direction of the Goblin King base are they perhaps starting to expand their territory which made the kobolds flee? If that's the case then it's free amounts of experience, levels and training for my soldiers, I shall reward whoever did this by slaying them flawlessly. After some hours Aurora went inside the house where the soul stones are consuming them. I wonder if I can send all this energy to her from far away, as it is a different skill than telepathy. Or should I awaken to the next phase? Let's check with status. Status. Level, 14 experience 1290 slash 1400 class, pandemonium. Race, human name, Aurora 8 years old. Health, 1000 slash 1000 mana 1700 slash 1700. Status points, 0. Stamina, 100 intelligence, 90 wisdom, 170 soul power, 102130. Attack, 5 magic attack, 90. Titles, Eternum, S, Uncursed, S, Soulbound, S, Contracted. S, Noticed, S, God Series, F, Devourer, S. Skill Points, 9. Actives, Status Level 40, D, Darkness Barrier Level 7, F, Piercing Darkness Level 13, 
F, Monocoat Level 8, F, Dark Coat Level 9, F, Monowave Level 1, F, Dark Bind Level 14, F, Extraction Level 4, F. Passives, Mono Control Level 25, E, Dark Control Level 19, F, Monster Detection Level 40, D, Beast Detection Level 13, F, Night Vision Level 25, E. Unique, Transformation Level 15, Killing Intent Level 5. Blessed slash cursed, unidentified. Unique element, dark. Cursed soul bound. Contracted skills, telepathy, F, giver, E, deconstruct, D, stacking, C. Consumed skills, infected bite level 15, human detection level 50, brainwash resistance level 55, fire resistance level 100, water resistance level 100, wind resistance level 100, earth resistance level 60. Light Resistance Level 40, Dark Resistance Level 60, Ice Resistance Level 35, Quick Stab Level 70, Double Slash Level 50, Ice Wall Level 10, Dark Bind Level 7, Focus Level 18, Leadership Level 40, Slight Stamina Boost Level 40, Slight Agility Boost Level 30, Acid Resistance Level 35, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 38, Slight Strength Boost Level 47, Slighty Intelligence Boost Level 31, Stealth Level 10, Swordsmanship level 20, Sword Mastery level 16, Archery level 18, Bow Mastery level 13, Wand Art level 10, Wand Mastery level 18, Staff Art level 28, Staff Mastery level 13, Unarmed Combat level 25, Shield Mastery level 20, Nature Resistance level 15, Explosion Resistance level 9, Spirit Resistance level 3, Ethereal Resistance level 2, Poison Resistance level 30, Stun Resistance level 20. Knockback Resistance Level 10, Concentration Level 7, Long Slash Level 10, Weapon Smash Level 7, Hawkeye Level 3, Corpse Dismantler Level 30, Night Vision Level 20. Deconstruct Infected Bite Level 15. Notice, 150 Soul Power has been rewarded. Is that so? Who would have guessed that I could earn extra Soul Power with these shitty skills? Deconstruct all the consumed skills. Notice. 1238 soul power has been rewarded. Give all soul power to Iris through soul bound if you can. Notice, 103518 soul power has been deducted. Wish I could see the reaction on her face when the status skill warns once she receives it, a kind smile appeared on Aurora's face while she walked outside of the room. Upon reaching outside Sophie notices her smile and speaks, You seem happy what were you thinking about? My twin sister Iris, haven't seen her for a while now. That means I get to have one more younger sister. She shouted while smiling happily about it. Noticing the soul stones in Sophie's hand Aurora says, it seems you had some fun killing some monsters already. Aside from almost dying a few times, it was rather interesting, we ran into some armed kobolds where some ended up running away at the end, and some of us got hurt, my skill didn't activate so I did what I could to help everyone using my knowledge with the sword alone while surpassing my limits. You can throw the soul stones inside that room and then tell me more about that, as I fought some kobolds earlier today. Sure give me a moment, she throws a bunch of them inside the house and then returns, so about the kobolds some of them were mounted, those in specific gave us a hard time they were riding wolves can you believe that? Some sort of cavalry like some soldiers can fight on top of a horse. Yes, exactly that but a monster version of it or in this case, their race would be, beasts. Since in this world people seem to categorize them differently. That is right as long as they have beast parts of sword and look sort of human they're usually beasts and monsters everything else. Show me where you found them, Sophie, I say with a serious expression that makes her instantly move as if she realizes I figured something important. Sounds like our little general has had an interesting idea regarding those kobolds, the hero smiles curiously with expectation. After a while, Aurora grabs a map and then we arrive inside the forest in a part further away from the goblin base closer to the south line, if we'd use Lumen Kingdom location as a central connection. They came that way, Sophie points further southwest from our camp, Aurora marks a zone on the map and then draws a horizontal thin line through the forest east to west. That line is. She looks puzzled at it while trying to understand it. I believe that's where their territory is and here, she then draws a diagonal line from Astia village to the horizontal line she made as there were goblins back then patrolling in a big group, should be the Goblin King base which means there's probably something on the other side further west maybe a cobalt kingdom whose territory is slowly being occupied, making them move this far in search of either a new place to reside, 
or attempting to kill goblins, but for now these two are the ones. That will end up fighting currently, as I believe kobolds are being kicked off the zones where they would naturally be living while the Goblin King army expands west, and maybe further southwest, seeing as kobolds are appearing closer to us, which for them would be north to northwest. Even though we have the same information and I've lived way longer, I can't perceive what's inside this girl's brain it makes me feel stupid, even though it was the same with Romeo, I wonder if he'd be able to pinpoint something like this with such little information, not to forget the confidence Aurora have that the information is correct is what scares me the most, Sophie looked at her, scares. I'm scared? Of a little girl for being a bit smarter than me? Impossible. She pushes her thoughts away nodding the head to the sides. Noticing this Aurora questions her behavior, are you alright Sophie? Ah, uh, yes, don't worry I was just thinking on silly things, a bad habit of mine, she then proceeds to pat Aurora's hair, are we done here little genius? Yes, we can go back before we get raided by more of those strange kobolds. Indeed, I rather not have to fight more of them before I heal myself up, I don't want to trigger a death flag this early on during the game. Death flag? Game. Aurora asked confused. Ah, don't mind it, just some reference from two lives away from where my memories start, I was a normal human being there and then I was summoned into a second world at some point where magic existed, and in my first one we had games which you wouldn't know anything about, and it's hard to explain, so don't worry about it Aurora, the second was where I met Romeo. Games, something about it sounds interesting, but I cannot remember where or how I heard about it from my past life, as most of my memories are sealed after almost losing my sanity inside of that shitty garden, well, no matter I must focus on the task at hand, the next step observing how the officers do while passing through the soldiers training to see what else needs improvement. Chapter 66 The Peasant Rises Arc Decaying and moon seasons go by and day one of the flowering season arrives making a total of 167 days that went by. The outpost is currently holding 100,000 soldiers most of who were hard trained during the decaying and moon seasons including 5,000 officers 1,000 captains and 100 majors, the army can now correlate to basic formations as the moon season was mostly snow so that's what I spent teaching them for at least 90 days. The decaying season we had some engages but since it's the borders of the forest the experience was divided by the many soldiers making them not leveling up too much, it seems that we were wrong about the experience system, it's actually best to simply make them fight with fewer people, in fact alone gives the most experience, however, I kept the squads unchanged as I opted for the best teamwork since, in the end, they're not adventurers and even those usually work with two or three. As the layers of snow are being melted by the flowering season I'm currently on the capital with the crown prince as I left the army with Mark and Ryu, apparently, today will be the day the advisors decided for this new year annual tournament in the capital and as such, Iris will take my place, in order to, bolster my honor further as the general under Julius which if she does well, it'll help more soldiers to want to join our ranks, due to the rainy season into the snow one it made fewer people than I expected to join us, hopefully when the warm ones are back it'll increase. After more than half a year I'm finally meeting Iris I've been sending her all the soul power I gathered even though neither of us has earned a single level, apparently I've been busy commanding and building the army, while she's been learning swordsmanship with some old guy that is not Alfred the Swordmaster, so I don't really know why she chose him but knowing her I'm sure she had good reasons. You can wait here Aurora I'll go check the starting time once Iris arrives I'll tell a guard to bring her here. Thank you, Prince Julius. A while passes and Iris finally appears through the reunion room door where the crown prince spends most of his time working. The moment we see each other the transformation skill changes her body appearance to match Iris, who's grown a little taller but other than that looks like Aurora remember her, and then they run at each other giving a tight hug to one another. I missed you Aurora, my dear sister, I say happily tearing up while holding her and then speak with her through telepathy, I've spent a long time alone with teacher Ray with casual visits from my parents but other than that swordsmanship all that I've dedicated my time to, and now thanks to the Crown Prince and Ray, allowing it as a battle experience to see how far I could go in the tournament, I was able to take a break and come to the capital to meet you. I see that your hair has been cut by the shoulder line, was it Ray? Yeah, he said that it was in the way and before I could even protest about it, he cut it perfectly in a single slash, that man is something else but I feel like I've progressed a lot, so I'll stick with him for two more years and do my best to surpass him. Well it still looks good on you even though long hair fitted the best, but nonetheless, we don't have much time, so tell me everything while we have the chance. I let go of Aurora and turn around showing her my black outfit placing the hood on top of my head, a nine-pointed white star. I turn back to her and remove my cap hood hiding the star once more, 
I've started to pass these cursed skills personalities, however, it'll still take a while for them to gain a form, so for now, they're slowly growing in the mirror world through rank B soul stones that I bought with the kingdom's money. Sounds like you've been busy Iris, she smiles at me, so what's your status now like? Aurora asks curiously. Do you really want to see? I giggle teasing her. Of course, show me. Status open. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Level, 14 experience 1290 slash 1400. Fame, 2300 disgrace, 25100. Unique class, Babel which rank 3 experience 3930 slash 8000. Race, human name, Iris 9 years old. Health, 1170 slash 1170 mana, 3700 slash 3700. Status points 0. Strength, 301, plus 29, stamina, 77, plus 40, agility, 85, plus 35, dexterity, 119, plus 20, intelligence, 244, plus 31, wisdom, 330, plus 40. Attack. 0 magic attack 0 defense 0 magic defense 0 soul 531554 titles reincarnated plus s mana s mana exhaust s health s purchase s wisdom s body training s animal slayer s cooked fish s preyed upon f cheater s heritage s amalgam S, Ice, S, Cooked Bird, F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series, F, Sale, S, Soulbound, S, Element, S, Contracted, S, Peasant, F, Class, A, Monster Slayer, D, Slime Slayer, B, Skill Mastery, A, Criminal, S, Herbs Gathered, S, Herbs Types, S, Potion Brewer, S, Potion Types, E, Status Mastery, S, Beast Slayer, C, Horned Rabbit Slayer, C, Potion Administered, F, Goblin Slayer, E, Orc Slayer, F, Assassination, S, Herbalist Series, C, Skeleton Slayer, C, Noticed, S, God Series, D, Potion Selling, F, Potion Failed, D, Potion Succeeded, D, Alchemist Series, F, Money Maker, S, Merchant Series, C. Trading. S. Herbs sold. S. Herbs bought. S. Acknowledged. S. Disgraceful. S. Ignored. S. Forgotten. S. Zombie Slayer. F. Curse Slayer. S. Turtler Slayer. F. Corpse Transporter. S. Library Completion. S. Crime. Series. F. Wise. S. Strong. S. Completed Series. Fishing. S. Farming, S, Illusion, S, Reader, S, Tree, S. Skill Points, 1. Actives, Status Level 60, C, System Library Level 100, S, Mono Coat Level 70, B, Mono Wave Level 20, E, Ice Bind Level 30, E, Ice Sword Level 20, E, Icicle Level 60, C, Long Slash Level 40, F, Ice Expansion Level 10, F, Ice Hammer Level 1, F, Ice Spear Level 1, F, Ice Wave Level 10, F, Ice Light Armor Level 20, E, Ice Heavy Armor Level 10, F, Triple Slash Level 50, D, Thrust Level 30, E, Parry Level 40, D, Backstep Level 20, E, Dance of Death Level 5, F, Vanish Step Level 1, F. Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 50, D, Swordsmanship Level 50, D, Sword Mastery Level D, 40, Mana Control Level 50, D, Ice Control Level 38, E, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 40, D, Slight Mana Recovery Level 60, C, Acid Resistance Level 1, F, Axe Art Level 1, F, Axe Mastery Level 1, F, Corpse Dismantler Level 10, F, Brainwash Resistance Level 100, S, Night Vision Level 30, E, Slight Stamina Boost Level 40, D, Slight Agility Boost Level 35, E, Slight Strength Boost Level 29, E, Slight Intelligence Boost Level 21, E, Slight Intelligence Boost Level 20, E, Slight Health Recovery Level 46, D, 
Ice resistance level 50, D, cold resistance level 60, D, heat resistance level 30, E, lightning resistance level 40, D, knockback resistance level 22, E, stealth detection level 15, F. Class actives, dark alchemy level 52, magic analysis level 50, destiny cards level 1, cursing objects level 5, decay level 5, mana shield level 40. Class rituals, snow falling level 40. Class passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 100, Curses Mastery Level 100, Rituals Mastery Level 30, Magic Control Level 60, Magic Knowledge Level 60, Ice Mastery Level 40, Babel Mastery Level 20, Grimoire Mastery Level 20. Babel Arts, Grimoire Possession, Grimoire Renouncing. Unique, Appraisal Level 53, Illusion Level 1. Cursed, Unidentified Skill. Mirror level 531. Rare element, ice. Cursed soul bound, grimoire rank C, 0 slash 800. Some minutes pass and then Aurora finally says something through my mind, you're becoming quite strong aren't you Iris? I blame Ray, that man is at least 100 times stronger than me, he's a real beast, I laugh lightly bringing a smile to her. You want a new unique skill? Yes, I haven't used it yet though been busy with the sword all day long so I have yet to try it out. Iris. Why is the mirror level that high? It was due to my soul growing so much due to whatever you've done on your side look at it, it's past 500,000. Anyways Aurora, it's time to awaken you further, grimoire possession, she forcefully becomes a grimoire and then, spend enough souls to rank her up. Notice, 8,000 souls have been deducted the grimoire is now rank B. Again rank my sister up. Notice, 16,000 souls have been deducted the grimoire is now rank A. Once more, make her stronger. Notice, 32,000 souls have been deducted the grimoire is now rank S. One more time. Notice, 64,000 souls have been deducted the grimoire has ranked to the first phase of unique. There are two phases of unique. That was unexpected once more. Notice, 120,000 souls have been deducted the grimoire has ranked to the second phase of unique. Guess I can only do it one more time you better rank up sister. One more. Notice, 240,000 souls have been deducted the grimoire has ranked to the last phase of unique. You sure spent a lot of souls there Iris, shouldn't you be saving them? The others have told me that your powers would be necessary, so you're the priority plus they warned me that having a big soul can become dangerous as it could attract unnecessary attention. Wait, you can talk now in grimoire shape and while possessed. Iris looks at it and notices that it now has eyes, a mouth, and it has become fully black aside of the letters of the cover that are golden. Apparently I can see the mana quantity you have as well and since we are connected you should be able to. Mirror, I look at the big mirror and see the big aura around me in tones of blue, grimoire renounce, mirror retract. Aurora turns back into a human and says, it seems that my last unique phase was the increase of the power of my class skills, even though I haven't gotten any yet, she laughs feeling awkward. What else did you get sister? Let me show you, status. Status. Level, 14 experience 1290 slash 1400 class, pandemonium. Race, human name, Aurora 9 years old. Health, 1000 slash 1000 mana 1700 slash 1700. Status points, 0. Stamina, 100 intelligence, 90 wisdom, 170 soul power, 0. Attack, 5 Magic Attack, 90. Titles, Eternum, S, Uncursed, S, Soulbound, S, Contracted, S, Noticed, S, God Series, F, Devourer, S. Skill Points, 9. Actives, Status Level 40, D, Darkness Barrier Level 7, F, Piercing Darkness Level 13, F, Mana Coat Level 8, F, Dark Coat Level 9, F, Mono wave level 1, F, Dark Bind level 14, F, Extraction level 10, F. Passives, Mono Control level 25, E, Dark Control level 19, F, Monster Detection level 50, D, Beast Detection level 40, D, Night Vision level 50, D. Unique, Transformation level 70, Killing Intent level 5. Blessed slash Cursed, Unidentified. Unique Element, Dark. Cursed soul bound. Contracted skills, telepathy, F, giver, E, deconstruct, D, 
stacking, C, split, B, imbue, A, consumer, S, unique, three-thirds effects. Consumed skills. With deconstruct I can convert skills I consume into soul power, stacking is pile up repeated ones, split is the other way around, imbue is placing one of those skills inside an item or a weapon, and consumer is to get them for myself. Seems like you can finally find skills for yourself as well and become stronger. I said happily as I've been waiting so long for something good to happen to my sister. Yes, but I've accepted my fate as who I am, as such, we both know that you are the one who has to grow powerful enough to make good use of me. Well I'm sure you'll grow strong in no time and what about the unique skills, can you clarify them for me? From the explanation, I received from the system the unique first effect is the mouth which allows me to speak while being possessed by you, the second is the eyes that can see the mana amount beings have, and the third effect is the apparent full black cover that makes my class skills stronger kind of like a little boost. Oh alright, well in that case what skills did your class get? What kind of boost is it? Apparently after checking the list many times they're all about summoning monsters of many types like goblins, for example, I think that their levels will be affected by it. Can we tame them and make them live in the other world? I don't know, but it should be possible, worst case we end up killing it and farming the experience they give. We'll have to test it once I'm done with raid training in two years, I should have some of you know who, ready as well to help us with everything. Sounds perfect in a year and a half I'll do my best to have conquered some of the lands in the south, I'm currently leading a 106,000 sized army. That's very impressive I suppose that's how you've been farming the soul stones, even though they're worth money, I'm surprised you get away with them all for yourself. Let's just say that I got myself an interesting deal with one of my advisors, I told them I have a blessing skill that allows me to consume such soul stones in exchange for more knowledge, and who wouldn't want their general to become wiser right? I laughed and then said, you've also made our family part of the nobility too even though that part is whatever, I don't really need that said rank but it's fine, we smile at the idea. Aurora bows her head and says, but oh lady Iris you are the noblest of the nobles, a princess truly, sister eyes then meet minds and we laugh at each other as we mock with similar jokes and acting. The door knocks and the crown prince enters watching us laughing and acting like kids, making him see a side of Aurora he hadn't really met making him smile kindly. Dark Priest's Perspective The day before the tournament at the village of Tun. The unique item was working so well but now it's pointing to the capital what the fuck is going on? If only this piece of crap didn't have a day of cooldown, a dark priest yelled angrily while glaring at it. That's good news that means it is most likely a human we must not halt our search, and head there as today the annual tournament begins and possibly one of the candidates will be the one we seek or even one of those looking from the audience. Fuck, 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 k. A different dark priest then spoke. Lord Zylph will be there so we must convey the message secretly, send a raven it'll get there faster than us, come, brother, I understand your pain but our leader awaits. Ugh, <laughs> damn it, he kicks a rock that hits a certain beggar who gets up slowly while holding a sword. I am terribly sorry old man, as my brother did not mean to hit you in the process, he grabs the item and starts walking. I'm truly pissed at the moment, do you want to fight? You shitty old man. You'll become my venting tool today, a poisoned knife appeared on each hand through the black robe he was wearing. We'll be heading on our way, meet us at the capital when you're done, they vanished swiftly while the dark priest walked closer to the old beggar while chanting a curse making the man in front of him slower, I want to see you try to run from me now. The old man then said, unique skill 7 sword arts, first move, the lightning flash, an electrified aura ran through the sword as it left the sheath at an incredible speed and then back inside to it and then no longer feeling the slight weight from the curse, he sat again on the same spot without muttering a word. Are you done you trash? The moment the dark priest took a step further half of his body disconnected from his other part falling on the ground dead as the blood and organs poured out dirtying it, making an old lady who was observing the situation in fear from her room window scream then pass out. Chapter 67 Annual Tournament Arc All the participants are to be expected and where this you'll be my representative Iris. The crown prince extends me a white set of clothes who then turns around as I change. All right, I'm ready prince, upon hearing those words he turns around and notices something. Your hair is short that could be a problem, or not, it seems like Aurora has cut hers. We're twins after all, my sister says while she hugs me from behind. Well that leaves the eye color but since it'll be so far away it shouldn't be easily noticed aside of your opponents. Just so you know every representative under the age of 16 from the Rose families will participate along with any noble, peasant, and my brother and sister representatives, 
so do your best, but no need to get heavily injured for it, that would in a way ruin our image, if you must forfeit due to injuries you can do so. I understand but I believe I'll be fine, at least against the ones of my age as I'm most likely a tad stronger. I've heard good things about you from my advisors, so I feel like you'll do fine, and don't worry if you lose against those older than you, the difference in ages really does make a gap and you're like eight right. Actually today is our birthday day one of the flowering season, so we could say we're both nine years old now, I smile kindly at him while Aurora smiles awkwardly as she didn't remember that. Oh apologies, happy birthday Iris and Aurora, after today's share of fights we shall celebrate it with a banquet. Sure, looking forward to it. I smile from cheek to cheek happily, imagining what kind of food I'd be able to try. Good luck Lady Iris. Aurora makes a teasing expression as she says that patting my right shoulder with her left hand. Mina, I laugh as I accompany the crown prince to the Colosseum, throwing my tongue at her just before I go past the room. A while later I and him arrive there and through the main hall I notice some statues stopping at the first one, who is this? I ask curiously as she looks interesting, and in a way powerful along with intimidating. If you ever read a certain book called Tales of Artana that would be the hero of the first tale. I actually have. I look below her feet and read her name, Rizia the peasant hero. Yes, she was the first peasant to ever reach a class that is usually gifted by our goddess, and she was also stronger than most summoned by Arya to help the kingdom back then, some people say that she was the reincarnation of the goddess Arya herself, the blue sword in this grey statue is still passed down to this day, to the strongest swordsman in the kingdom. I don't remember my teacher having it. Her teacher having it. I'm pretty sure she turned down Alfred's guidance. Is there someone else close to his strength or did she ended up accepting it? The one who owns the sword currently is Lord Alfred, the sword master of the White Rose family, he's the strongest swordsman in this kingdom, upon hearing those words and having faced both I just smile at the statement. I guess she doesn't believe it. Even though I've heard they met each other as she has the white ring in her hand. Where do we go next, Prince? I ask disinterested in the conversation we were having, in order to find something new to fill my mind with. This way towards that receptionist over there, he points towards the spot and then we move there arriving shortly. Upon noticing our arrival a man speaks, Greetings your highness, this is the tag number of your representative, the lady has been seated as number one upon the traditions. Seated as one. I ask confused as no one told me about it beforehand. Basically since I'm currently the most influential person in the Lumen Kingdom, you get to be the one fighting in the first round as a way to open the tournament. That's very interesting meaning I'll have all eyes on me, I reply slightly nervous thinking on it, that would also mean Aurora will be the center of attention, so the first match has to be a victory even if someone older and stronger than me, I'll have to do my best for her. Also your highness her teacher sent this pair of swords for her to use, he said if you chip either of them that you will be murdered blondie, those were his words, the man looked really old and arrived a few moments ago, I believe that you may find him watching the tournament, and then pick you up when you lose. Upon hearing those words I gulp as I know just how much Ray is obsessed with those swords. Seems like she does have one, I wonder who it is, and for it to be an old man. The crown prince thought curiously thinking about a lot of strong people he knew. I grab the two sheathed swords and follow the crown prince towards a big entrance where light illuminates our path as we cross to the other side, after a while, we start hearing an intense mix of cheers from the 500,000 seated spectators in the Colosseum, which is its max capacity. Don't stop walking. Come, Iris, upon barely hearing his words I keep moving as my body stopped unconsciously momentarily due to the surprise from all these voices. Oh look husband there's a cute blonde girl following Prince Julius. Whoa. You're right, hey blonde girl go back home before you get hurt. I look at the person from the audience who shouted and notice he has a baby sitting on his shoulders while he shouts at me. Hey stop it, love, you're a little far for her to hear you, plus she wouldn't be here if she was weak. But dear she's so small. Fine, I bet a cute dress that she will reach the top ten which is usually disputed by the oldest heads of the noble families, if I lose you can have your way with me tonight however you see fit. Eh? Even the back door. The man makes a very perverted expression imagining it. Yes, but do prepare your wallet I'll make sure to pick an expensive one. Upon reaching close to the center after barely hearing the initial shout, I notice a black stone paved area in a square format surrounded by a cleaned and well-paved ground made of dirt. Wait here, you'll be told what to do, I have to go sit up there, he points to a place where I end up noticing another male and a female sitting. An unknown man starts speaking, welcome gentlemen, 
his voice resounded strongly through the Colosseum as it is amplified with wind magic by a few mages behind him. The crowd cheers loudly in agreement and ecstasy, as there aren't many exciting events like this one throughout the year. That's a pretty interesting way to use magic, if I had it, I'd use it to shout at my enemies to scare them away, I smile at my own silly ideas relieving myself of some pressure. The wind blows my hair backward as I close my eyes while hearing the man's voice close to me. Today the annual tournament will be in honor to next ruler candidates, starting with our Prince Julius, our Prince Marty and our lovely Princess Liliana. The crowd cheered loudly for the royal family. As you all know the tradition dictates that we have an opening match with the representative of the most influential person currently in our great Lumen Kingdom, as such, we have this young girl with beautiful blonde hair, called Aurora the General of the Crown Prince Julius Army, a peasant who ascended to nobility recently, a lady with only eight years, a genius of the art of war. Upon hearing the name of who it was, the peasants screamed even louder than before as a lot of them heard Aurora's speech. He's really trying to make sister look good, though it is normal as this happens so they can gather more men to their army. Lady Aurora you may step on the ring, as you are the seated number one for this tournament, as such you will be fighting the one with the last registration entry, named Yona Young Adventurer from the north of the capital. A boy that looks about my age appears on the ring on the opposite side of mine. The two rules that will go through the entire tournament consist in, the first to be incapacitated or to fall off the arena will lose. Surrendering is also an extra option to avoid deaths. Without further wait, on our black paved floor, of exactly 30 by 30 meters, our two contestants will now begin fighting. I walk slowly towards him, now then rule number one don't get hurt, the second rule would be, don't get the swords damaged, and third, win without showing any significant skills you may have. Yes that's about the assessment Ray would have made me do for this tournament after training with him for two seasons. Either that or if he was drunk, he'd just say go all out and stop wasting time hiding your true strength. Ugh it's hard dealing with him sometimes, the boy runs at me from afar while I walk slowly lost in my thoughts. He's coming it seems, to think I used to run slowly like that, no wonder Ray would get angry at me, living in his dimension sure must feel different, it must be hard to be in the pinnacle of something but I want to be the strongest to see what he sees, so I'll have to keep chasing after him if I want to surpass teacher one day. For completing the training and in the case of me surpassing him, Ray said he'd gift me something, I hope it's not another ring like that pink lady who thought that'd be a good gift, speaking of which teacher told me Isabella was an interesting one, so she must be strong, my teacher rarely says anything good about anyone, and even that, I have my doubts about it being a genuine compliment. Five steps, four, three, two. 1. I dodge to the side avoiding the blow from his club, and hit his stomach with the pommel of my sheathed short sword and then keep walking slowly in the direction he just came, 3, 2, 1 and a sound behind me of a body falling on the floor along with another loud one, the weapon, I tried to hold back, but after having teacher Ray as a sparring partner for that long, I don't even know how much strength I can currently exercise accurately, I didn't get experience so I didn't kill him, I think I was able to restrain myself enough, Controlling my breathing, my body, walking, running, jumping, dodging, have been most of the things I've done, along with a skill or two he made me learn just in case. The crowd goes silent as most of them couldn't notice the strike at close range, since it was either vision blocked by the boy body or on the opposite side of my own. I look at the royal family who looks confused at me, and then slightly on the row above them, I notice familiar faces, such as Lord Alfred, Sylvia, a few others I don't know. The Lady Isabella who is the one who gave me a pink ring, she's also the head and lord of her own pink rose noble house, a weird looking one with white and red hair, and a few others, I guess those are the rose family heads meaning that the Pope and Saint Tess should be close by too, not like it matters too much as they think I'm Aurora, so I should be fine under the Crown Prince guard, hopefully. Seems like the sister turned out to be very strong love. To think a sickly girl would become not only a genius at war but also in swordsmanship, that's truly amazing. Your friend Rosalyn was certainly blessed with two amazing daughters. Well in that note so were we, I can't wait to see her clash against our little prodigy, Sylvia smiles coldly and expectantly at their duel. It'll certainly be a very interesting fight, but if that was the extent of her power then she has no chance against Alicia. Of course, after all, she learned from both of us, and was also blessed by our elements, I can't wait to see how Aurora will react to her. The judge in the black paved arena asks, can you continue boy? He checks his face and realizes his unconscious, what a shame to have ended already, and the victory of the first round is Lady Aurora, the crowd cheered with a low tone as many were still confused and didn't find the duel that exciting. 
You may return to the waiting room in that direction, the judge points at a passage which I head towards to. Once I arrive on the other side, I sit on an empty bench and notice a lot of other challengers, having Aurora ability here would be interesting to perceive how strong they're at least with mana density. Speaking of which will the summoned appear in the tournament too? I'd love to see how strong Goro has become, I'm sure he'd be fighting with some big hammer, I smile happily thinking back in how kind he was. A certain girl passes by me, which I instantly grab the hand tightly, causing her to turn to me and slap my cheek with her other one, whereas I'm fast enough to grab her hand surprising her, as we look in the eyes of one another while I smile. IRI I interrupt her by saying, Aurora here, you're not wrong but it's a complicated matter, she nods and says, wait here Lady Aurora I have a match to win, she squeezes my hand tight and then leaves it by letting go of her softly. Chapter 68 Annual Tournament Arc Not even 10 minutes later and Alicia returns. Apparently we both won the match with one strike each it seems you've grown stronger old friend, she sat next to me while smiling. Yes, I got myself a good teacher the strongest sword master in the kingdom. Didn't you decline my father? Upon hearing that question I smile feeling like I heard that line before. I'm studying under the man who taught your mother teacher Ray. I've never heard of that person before is he strong? Yes, very I've never beaten him even by using all my power which is not as small as it used to be even though I have a very long way to go. Same here, I came to this tournament to find possible sparring partners and I'm assuming you came here to do something similar. Yes, that's right, and also to do a favor to a certain clingy sister. I giggle cutely making her laugh placing my hand in front of my mouth. It seems like Isabella is attempting to recruit you, I didn't expect, then again you're probably strong enough to become a knight of any house or at least have the potential to do so. I pat her hair, don't look sad at me I couldn't cope with the speed of her placing that ring in my finger she was that fast, almost like a forced marriage of sorts, I instantly make her laugh with such a bad joke. I'm truly happy to see you doing well my dear friend, she hugs me while I keep patting her hair. It seems that I have been going through the struggles that you have been with this teacher of mine he's a complete sword maniac, she laughs as she hears me venting. We both seek to become the strongest so it's normal that we'll cross paths at some point in this tournament if we don't lose meanwhile there are many strong opponents so don't let your guard down and when we meet I'll also go with everything I have, I wish to see how strong my dearest friend has become. Please go easy on me, my teacher will kill me if I chip one of his favorite swords, I lift them showing her. She looks at them and notices that the sheath and the short swords are both beautiful and of great quality, this must have cost a fortune you should truly treat them with care otherwise you'll have a debt for the rest of your life, she says it with a serious expression making me nervous. IILBC careful with them. She starts laughing at me seeing as how I'm still childish in her eyes. By the way, what's your swordsmanship and sword art skills at now? Alicia asks curiously as we shared this information in the past. I'm at swordsmanship level 50 and sword art level 40 so far. Sounds like you've caught my old me when we met, I look even more forward to dueling with you now, I'll be happy to show you the difference between the two of us, she gets up and walks away smiling. I wonder what's her current levels, now I'm very curious and am itching for a fight. Two hours go by and they call for me, the second round for all of you will now begin and Lady Aurora you'll be opening this one and all the ones till you lose. I understand. I say in a serious tone as my sister has an image to maintain. Please do head to the arena the judge and your opponent are waiting for you, upon hearing those words I move there while holding both swords in the middle of me with my arms. Ladies and gentlemen the second round will now be opened by the representative of the crown prince the general Aurora and this girl from the west of the capital Ava. Good luck my lady, she bows respectfully. Good luck to you too Ava. I've heard that you only unsheath your sword towards strong opponents so I'll make sure to force you to pull it off with my rare element, she placed her hand in my direction and a two meter fireball flew my way which I dodged to the side and then with her other hand an explosion below me erupts which I backstep barely in time as my clothes get grazed and I receive an injury. Notice, 100 health and 100 mana have been deducted. That explosion was unexpected does she have two elements? It seems like I'll face her with my magic instead, mana shield. I let my weapons fall on the floor and start running, icicles. I imagine they appear in specific positions. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. They appear behind her in blind spots and a fire pillar surrounds her as she points her hands below protecting herself by melting them. She then shoots a fireball at me and I use an ice wall taking a step back hiding behind it which she then uses explosion magic behind the wall missing me. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. Ice spear. As the weapon appears in my hand I throw it against her with all my strength the moment the wall melts. Notice, 300 mana has been deducted. 
pointing as fast as she can the hands in front of her casting a fireball against it, but they get pierced by it, as Ava couldn't do it in time but, at least, enough to melt the tip which hits the middle of her chest without piercing it instead causing some impact and pain. Icicles, four icicles appear from blind spots and as they start heading towards her she screams, I surrender, a protective barrier appears around her from the mages that are keeping the tournament safe, as much as possible so that no one dies. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. Before I leave I lightly bow at her out of respect which makes the crowd cherish for both of us, encouraging Ava of her effort, I then pick my swords and leave. It seems she too had a rare element and a supposedly weaker than mine, I didn't expect her to materialize a weapon like that and throw it at such speed, just how much strength does that little girl have? Ava thought as she recalled the way she lost, she certainly got me, if I hadn't melted the tip in time, it would have made a hole in my chest, probably letting me gravely injured, if more mana had been used. I'm sure Aurora could have since I didn't see any unease in her expression. In the end, I couldn't make her unsheath the sword, I'll be looking forward to this tournament. One of the royal guards melts the ice spear and a healer treats the hands, while a different mage fixes the arena as a part of it exploded with the earth element. As the tournament went on, ZYLPH noticed a black raven heading towards him so he got up excusing himself, eventually receiving the message which he unfolded and started reading in a somewhat safe spot. Dear friend, it seems we were close to finding the estimated leader, however, it now points towards the capital, possibly due to the annual tournament, and as such we're heading there, will surely take a while, so feel free to pay attention to any who may use some strange elements like darkness or skills related to disgrace, a smile filled his face as a bump stretched from the pants, it seems one of the winners should be the one we seek, possibly even the winner, ah, I can't wait. After ten minutes the matches resumed and the echoes of the stands started once again. I sit on the bench where I was before. Sorry teacher I was careless, if it wasn't for the skills you taught me, I would have certainly become heavily injured with that combo. Here you are Lady Aurora, a man appears and starts healing my wound reminding me of my father Luke. Thank you, I lean my head on the wall behind me. If you permit me saying, that was a fantastic duel for both sides. I agree it was enjoyable. Notice, 100 health has been recovered. Seems like you're done. Thank you for healing me, the man makes a surprised face as he didn't realize it before her. You are indeed right Lady Aurora, I'll be cheering for you on your next matches, hope you win, he bows lightly while smiling. I wonder what my parents are doing, I couldn't get in touch with them since 30 days ago, so I don't know if they came to watch or not. I also have to get at least in the top 20 or Ray will feel offended as he thinks I can go that far. Aurora is probably bored waiting in that room. I bet she'd be much happier being in the tournament even though she'd probably kill her opponents. I start hearing a conversation from two boys in front of me. It seems like none of the Royal and Rose family's representatives have lost yet. Indeed there seem to be quite a few unknown names and dark horses this year round, I wonder who'll win. Well, 100 participants to go therefore will know soon enough if not today then in the following days, even though it usually doesn't last that long. True. It seems like Lady Alicia has won yet another match without as much as receiving damage. Prodigies don't know what's it like to work hard after all, the two boys start laughing about it. After taking damage like that I'll make sure for it to not happen again as to not bring shame to my teacher, and once I'm back to training I'll put even more effort. They continue with their chattering. That representative from the Crown Prince was pretty interesting too, she had amazing magic control with her icicles if the ones protecting the participants aren't careful she's bound to kill someone from one of the blind spots. Yet, she's very sneaky most mages use their hands to aim their spells, however, I didn't see any motion from her combat style, it's truly interesting. If my father heard the discussion between these two he'd smack some sense into them, I smile while reminiscing of the days he taught me magic. One day I'll become famous like my father even though I don't have the unique light element to help people. Ray says I should stick to one path, and in my case to become the strongest is a goal that he and my mother respect. He told me that when my mother was younger, she'd often say things like surpassing Sylvia and become the best adventurer ever. I'll make sure to reach that goal in your place mother no matter what. Chapter 69 Annual Tournament Arc Less than two hours go by and I'm called once more to fight this time for round three. Once I arrive at the arena a hateful expression is shown in my opponent. Ladies and gentlemen the third round will now start between the representatives of the Crown Prince Julius Lady Aurora and the Red Rose family successor Kai. I look at him and notice that he's way older than me perhaps about to reach 16 years he has red hair and black eyes and looks strong at least ferocious. This is as far as you go you fake noble. 
he shouts at me. I guess he has some issue with sister not that I care I'll just ignore him. Should I kill him? If he stands in my sister's path it would certainly be good to remove him out of the way. That does sound like a good idea, Iris. Aurora. Did you sneak out? Well yeah, I was getting bored of waiting for you, so I came to see how you were handling things. Makes sense are you enjoying the fights so far? Actually am, there are some interesting participants including the guy in front of you, he overwhelms the opponents with the use of fire magic. If you surrender now you won't die, I shout at him a warning. I rather die than lose to a maggot like you, you piece of trash. Well he said it himself, Aurora laughs in my mind. Seems like it'll be a fired match, you may begin. Ice wall, I place one a little further than me of around 10 meters tall to which he starts laughing, and then as he starts moving to strike around the wall. Notice, 1000 mana has been deducted. Ice bind and ice expansion, as I use my skills the opponent gets stuck on the arena in front of the wall while shooting a 20 meter fireball at it. Notice, 1000 mana has been deducted. The first skill roots the feet to the knees causing him some pain, and then my second skill activates making the ice bind grow which starts to climb through the legs, the first extension results in piercing through the right knee, the second through the left thigh, the third penetrates his liver and from there onwards it expands all the way up inwardly causing his organs to be pierced ending up with ice coming from inside to the outside of his body, as he didn't protect himself properly or even burnt my root skill which would have been enough to stop my combo, making me waste a lot of mana. Notice, 100 experience has been received from a human. System, the title Human Slayer has been received. System, the title Murderer has been received. Protection. A couple of men outside the arena shouted while rushing inside and started healing him, but from the status and system messages, I knew he was already dead so I remained there staring at him with an innocent smile, as the mist disappeared slowly from the ice wall who got hit by a 20 meter fireball. That boy belongs to the second prince faction, so that's certainly one down which should make his father take his place. Think the nobles will attempt to attack me Aurora. Don't worry Iris it is in the rules that death can happen and people do sign up for this and he was older than you, how are you feeling though for having killed your first human? To be honest, I didn't expect him to die that easily, but he's no different than the monsters we killed, after all, I understood back then that all of us have souls. Correct, we could have been reincarnated into a monster territory, so I'm relieved to hear that you're okay, though do ask him if he's okay just to look friendly. Upon hearing those words, I voice, Sir Kai? Are you all right? I make a worried expression, and then his body falls making the ice outside and inside break into smaller pieces, forcing a genuinely surprised face as I didn't expect that to happen. He's dead. One of the healers says which the judge then speaks. Ladies and gentlemen the winner of this round is Lady Aurora, as you all know in the rules death can happen and is something that our participants sign up for, our condolences to the Red Rose family. The men take Kai body out of the arena and I leave back to my usual spot. At the benches where all the heads were sitting, Francis the head of the Red House family rushed to the second room where they took Kai body, you stupid idiotic son, you saw she had two rings on her hand, you knew she was very strong and it's the representative of the crown prince why did you act so arrogantly? His thoughts didn't match the expression as he made a sad face while tears streamed down. From all of the rose heads, there was only one happy about his death, Zylph. This little girl seems pretty nasty, I'm surprised to see a successor die that fast, he was like level 10 but lowered his guard trying to overwhelm her with a big opening attack which resulted in the past matches, however, he failed to gauge his opponent's strength, I'm looking forward to how many more foes she'll kill in this place with her exquisite ice element, as this arena used to be white dyed in red every year in the forgotten past. Ava who was watching the rest of the tournament after her loss thought, she did go easy on me after all. I've faced Kai before and he was stronger than me in a fire to fire match, however, by using both elements I'd outdo him, but even then he should have melted the ice in his feet, at least, that's what I would have done, the rare ice element, it truly is very artistic, when she grows up perhaps she'll even make beautiful art with those attacks. Upon entering the hallway and sitting on a bench, the leftover participants keep a safe distance from me, except for Alicia who sits next to me creating confusion on their faces making one of them say lowly. It is normal for two monsters to sit next to each other, to what the ones surrounding him agreed by nodding silently. Almost with a whispering tone so that no one around us would hear even if they kept some distance from us the girl next to me said, Are you okay Iris? I look at her with a kind smile and reply, I'm alright don't worry, I've killed plenty of others during my quests, not humans but monsters even though I see everyone the same, 
and well if I got hit by that flame ball I would be the one dead. That's for sure it was a very good wall the way you used it, and sub blocking the view of your opponent while shielding yourself giving you some time to do more skills, though if we face each other I would have just sliced it in half, as she says that I notice her sword that has a blue sheath and remind myself of the crown prince words, curiously I end up asking, is that the sword the first hero Rizia used? While smiling she unsheathes the sword and then points at the middle of it where the words Goddess Arya can be written, yes, it is, my father lends it to me for every tournament. Is there anything special about it? I hold it in front of me looking at how beautiful it is. I don't know I've had blacksmiths inspect it, however, they weren't able to find much about it other than its attack and durability. In that case, allow me to appraise it, I use the skill on it while reading out loud the information I receive from the appraisal. Notice. 1000 mana has been deducted. Azure sword, 300 attack, plus 330, magic potential as zero hero effect may give the unique hero class. Durability 900 slash 1000 rank blessed weapon. After telling her the details I return the sword to her and ask, do you have a class yet Alicia? She takes a while to reply as she's lost in the amazing information that I gave her, so I decided to poke her cheek lightly. Ah. She shouts surprised and looks at me almost as if waking up from a trance, sorry I don't have one yet though I do have some options mostly melee classes, I was thinking of getting the blader class, however, if I could get a hero one then I wouldn't mind it at all even though we can always change classes unless we get cursed or blessed with one, she laughs lightly taking it as a joke making me realize I'm forever stuck with mine, how about you? I have one related to magic, I say hiding which is it even though I trust Alicia who smiles at me and replies. I actually expected you to take one related to sword seeing as how skilled you've become which means you must be more talented with magic. She thinks, now it makes me wonder if I can beat her if it was a duel of swordsmanship I could easily beat her, but the ice magic proved to be dangerous, however, by using the elements I inherited from both my father and mother it should be quite possible, but I would need to go all out since the start. They're calling for you Alicia seems to be your turn. I'll do my best to reach the finals so you better not lose till then. In exchange I'll beat you to a pulp and show you that my parents' swordsmanship is truly the best in the kingdom, she smiles happily while saying that. Sure and when you have the chance sign your name in the sword with your mana, I smile back at her, and then I get up and head to a little room which is a bathroom, and inside of it, I enter the mirror world. Chapter 70 Annual Tournament Arc I start feeling my mana recover fast and walk around the snow. It seems like the walls have reduced their range. I tried to enter when I had that gigantic amount of soul before and their range stretched infinitely, however, now it seems to be small again. I approach a nine-pointed star circle with a soul stone on each point except on one of them where I sit as I'm part of it. I've brought some soul to help you girls grow, I place my hands in the circle and feel my soul growing thinner and thinner. An hour passes as I exhaust most of my soul, let's see how much I have left, status. Notice, 50,000 souls have been deducted. Notice. 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Level, 14 experience 1390 slash 1400. Fame, 2300 disgrace, 25200. Unique class, Babel which rank 3 experience 4030 slash 8000. Race, human name, Iris 9 years old. Health, 1170 slash 1170 mana, 3690 slash 3700. Status points 0. Strength, 301, plus 29, Stamina, 77, plus 40, Agility, 85, plus 35, Dexterity, 119, plus 20, Intelligence, 244, plus 31, Wisdom, 330, plus 40. Attack, 0 Magic Attack 0 Defense 0 Magic Defense, 0. Soul, 1754. Titles, Reincarnated Plus, S. Mana, S, Mana Exhaust, S, Health, S, Purchase, S, Wisdom, S, Body Training, S, Animal Slayer, S, Cooked Fish, S, Preyed Upon, F, Cheater, S, Heritage, S, Amalgam, S, Ice, S, Cooked Bird, F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series, F, Sale, S, Soulbound, S, Element, S, Contracted, S, Peasant, F, Class, A, Monster Slayer, D, Slime Slayer, B, Skill Mastery, A, Criminal, S, Herbs Gathered, S, Herbs Types, S, Potion Brewer, S, 
Potion Types, E, Status Mastery, S, Beast Slayer, C. Horned Rabbit Slayer, C, Potion Administered, F, Goblin Slayer, E, Orc Slayer, F, Assassination, S, Herbalist Series, C, Skeleton Slayer, C, Noticed, S, God Series, D, Potion Selling, F, Potion Failed, D, Potion Succeeded, D, Alchemist Series, F, Money Maker, S, Merchant Series, C, Trading, S, Herbs Sold, S, Herbs Bought, S, Acknowledged, S, Disgraceful, S, Ignored, S, Forgotten, S, Zombie Slayer, F, Curse Slayer, S, Turtler Slayer, F, Corpse Transporter, S, Library Completion, S, Crime. Series, F, Wise, S, Strong, S, Human Slayer, F, Murderer, F. Completed Series, Fishing, S, Farming, S, Illusion, S, Reader, S, Tree, S. Skill Points, 1. Actives, Status Level 60, C, System Library Level 100, S, Monocoat Level 70, B, Monowave Level 20, E, Ice Bind Level 30, E, Ice Sword Level 20, E, Icicle Level 60, C, Long Slash Level 40, F, Ice Expansion Level 10, F, Ice Hammer Level 1, F, Ice Spear Level 1, F, Ice Wave Level 10, F, Ice Light Armor Level 20, E, Ice Heavy Armor Level 10, F, Triple Slash Level 50, D, Thrust Level 30, E, Parry Level 40, D, Backstep Level 20, E, Dance of Death Level 5, F, Vanish Step Level 1, F. Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 50, D, Swordsmanship Level 50, D, Sword Mastery Level D, 40, Mana Control Level 50, D, Ice Control Level 38, E, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 40, D, Slight Mana Recovery Level 60, C, Acid Resistance Level 1, F, Axe Art Level 1, F, Axe Mastery Level 1, F, Corpse Dismantler Level 10, F, Brainwash Resistance Level 100, S, Night Vision Level 30, E, Slight Stamina Boost Level 40, D, Slight Agility Boost Level 35, E, Slight Strength Boost Level 29, E, Slight Intelligence. Boost Level 21, E, Slight Intelligence Boost Level 20, E, Slight Health Recovery Level 46, D, Ice Resistance Level 50, D, Cold Resistance Level 60, D, Heat Resistance Level 30, E, Lightning Resistance Level 40, D, Knockback Resistance Level 22, E, Stealth Detection Level 15, F. Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 50, Destiny Cards Level 1, Cursing Objects Level 5, Decay Level 5, Mana Shield Level 40. Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 40. Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 100, Curses Mastery Level 100, Rituals Mastery Level 30, Magic Control Level 60, Magic Knowledge Level 60, Ice Mastery Level 40, Babel Mastery Level 20, Grimoire Mastery Level 20. Babel Arts, Grimoire Possession, Grimoire Renouncing. Unique, Appraisal Level 53, Illusion Level 1. Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Mirror Level 51. Rare Element, Ice. Cursed Soul Bound, Grimoire Rank Unique Final Phase, 1 51200. With this much, it should be enough for them to awaken soon, Aurora really did a great job, the amount to rank her up further seems to be really far away hopefully she's able to gather more soul stones with that army of her. I get up and return to Artana's world, after passing through I make the mirror disappear just in case. Lady Aurora? Lady Aurora? I hear some shouts and head outside the bathroom, I'm here. Ah you were in the bathroom, apologies, it is time for round 4 to be open. That was pretty fast. Yes my lady, it'll get faster and faster now as there are only 50 participants, we usually end the tournament after a full day of fighting unless unexpected events happen or when the late king requested to be delayed due to his health, but now that is no longer necessary. I understand, I move to the arena. Once I get there the judge shouts, it is time for round 4 we have Aurora the representative of the crown prince undefeated, and on this side a veteran of the annual tournaments, the successor of the Blue Rose family. Make sure you don't kill Lee. Iris he's the son of Ryu one of my allies. I'll do my best to hold back, 
I walk on top of the arena and bow lightly out of respect as he too bows in respect for me, and then I say, I do not wish to repeat what happened in the past round so feel free to forfeit, he looks at his father who can hear our voices due to the wind magic and sees no reaction, turning back to me and says, I shall use my rapier and mana alone a contest of skill, seeing as you have two swords, I'm sure you'd enjoy that Lady Aurora. May the match begin. The judge shouts creating a strong reaction as many are fans of Lee. I place one of the two swords on the floor and make a stance lowering my hip and back a bit, I shall commit to those rules, however, you might still die, if you do I apologize in advance, a smile appears on his face which is then consumed by a serious and extremely focused expression. As I'm about to move, the aura around my body becomes vicious and mana surrounds my body spiking crazily doing cuts in the air and deep ones on the black floor of the arena, surprising Lee who had never seen it taking a defensive stance placing one arm behind him and walking slowly to the side. What the hell is wrong with my mana? Notice, mana and soul assimilation complete, the adorable witch has awakened, the contract has been successfully established, status has been updated. Notice, a black circle has appeared on your body back which will develop further as more witches are awakened. My mana returns back to normal, that was way earlier than I expected, did she just consume the whole soul instead of sharing with the others? Perhaps that amount was enough for them? In the worst case, my mana will spike a few more times if that happens. Are you okay Iris? Yes, but it seems one of the witches has awakened, the adorable one, and a black circle supposedly appeared on my back. You named her that? Aurora started laughing in my mind. I kind of named them after what I imagined their personalities to be due to the different tones, temporary names. Upon hearing my justification Aurora laughs even more. Well it's fine just focus on your fight and if by chance another awakens just be careful with the aura around you, it looked very interesting. Yeah, I didn't know we could use it that way, something worth exploring in the future. I dash at him surprising him with my speed, mana coating the sheath which he mimics parrying my attack still being slowly knocked backward due to the impact. Notice, 300 mana has been deducted. He quickly uses a thrust skill at my face which I dodge to the side resulting in a series of thrusts making me backstep out of his range while Mana waving horizontally in his direction. Noticing the danger he falls on the floor with the whole body as fast as he can, making the Mana wave disperse some seconds later behind him. While he's laying on the floor, I step forward and thrust towards the face, and he uses his hand to push the body away rolling to the side, then getting up carefully after the Mana wave completely disappears, while sweating from the relentless attacks. How come you don't unsheath your sword? is the rumor true that you only do it towards foes you find worthy? He asks while catching up his breath. Without knowing what to answer I say, you wouldn't believe the real reason if I told you. Try me, he replies seriously with a captivating smile. I'll be murdered by my teacher if I chip the swords he lent me, upon hearing those words he bursts laughing. You're a funny one Lady Aurora, he then charges at me relentlessly aiming for my vital points, while monocoding his rapier which I mimic by parrying and dodging them. Notice, 500 mana has been deducted. Just how much mana does this girl have? She shouldn't have this much after that last round, I'm glad she went on with melee combat otherwise I'd have to be a lot more defensive in this combat. Ugh, upon hearing me he stops and gets some distance then asking, are you dissatisfied with something Lady Aurora? I walk back and slash the air with the sheath on, it really doesn't feel right you know. He looks at me confused yet admired at the speed of my slash. I unsheath the heavy sheath out letting it fall on the floor making a low bang, and then I do another slash which makes a clean sound cutting through the air, making a smile fill my face, I pass the mana to the sword making it shine in a blue clear tone. I then turn at him and say, as I have a really hard time holding back after training for so long with my master do your best to not die, I charge at him and start slashing him multiple times forcing him to parry and every time he does he can barely defend getting cuts through his body giving him pain and making his expression slowly look grim. I charge more mana into my sword step back and throw him another mana wave at him from a closer range leaving him no option but to duck this time. Around while preparing a stance. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Noticing my attack almost on his face, he shouts, unique skill repel, then the rapier attacks my mana wave throwing it back at me while releasing his own mana together with it. I charge mana and attack the mana wave with a stronger one as fast as I can as I watch it getting closer. Notice. 800 mana has been deducted. The mana waves clash ultimately making mine win, then it goes towards him which is then cut in half with his sword coated in mana, and then our swords clash as I put more on my own to match his. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. 
the crowd goes crazy making the floor and air vibrate with the euphoric voices of our fight. How about we do our best skill as the last attack next? You can even use magic. You have something nastier than that unique skill of yours. He smiles upon hearing my surprised voice pushing my sword away then falling back two meters, channeling all his leftover mana to his rapier gradually making it very intense creating a wave of noise. Heavy ice armor, thick layered ice surrounds my body protecting me increasing my body weight. Notice, 1000 mana has been deducted. I don't really like to use this much but it works against Ray, so whatever he attempts to do I'll be sure to defend it and counter attack. Whoa. That armor looks amazing. Alright, here I come unique skill lunge. He dashes forward insanely fast lowering the body while stretching the feet and the right leg to the max along with his right arm in the same direction aiming for my face which I notice in time taking a large step further, forcing the rapier to clash on the ice protecting my chest. A loud bang echoes and pieces of ice flew through the air as well as half of the rapier that broke and then without hesitation, I punch him with my hand that is covered in ice making him fall on the floor, then point the tip of my sword in the throat. We stare into each other and he says, that was really tough I breathe heavily while he starts laughing and then adds, I surrender. I then lend Lee a hand helping him get up, it was a nice match if you had user a bit more mana, I would be the one laying on the floor possibly even dead. I didn't expect you to be able to move that fast while in that heavy armor otherwise, I would have hit your face and likely to kill you, we smile at each other happily despite the morbid words. As I'm about to turn back he asks, just how much mana do you have? I've been conserving mine through the rounds but you spent a lot last match. I have 5000, I blatantly lie since I healed a lot of it in the mirror world. Insane I have a lot myself but I'm also a lot older than you, next year I'll be 16 so today was my last tournament and I believe you are like 8. Today's my birthday so I'm currently 9, I smile and then leave. Happy birthday Lady Aurora, he bows lightly out of respect and I walk to the exit while waving the back of my hand at him, eventually picking the sword and sheathing the one I used. Undo heavy armor, the ice pieces start crumbling as I move towards the exit making it look like sparkles to the spectators who cheer for me. Chapter 71 Annual Tournament Arc Dark Priest's Perspective A little earlier in time. The passive glow of the item has disappeared twice now and the active skill is on cooldown for a few more hours, I don't understand how a soul can vanish just like that, this being must be really special. I believe we should head closer to the Colosseum as it was the place it glowed more even though finding the right person in the middle of all of them will prove to be hard. What do you suggest brother? Perhaps we could wait at the exit. Eventually, everyone will go through it. That does sound perfect here stick with the item I'll take a look at the participants to see if I notice anything peculiar. Alright be careful with anyone from the church or even the royal guards as they might have killing intent detect. I'll be careful and currently all I want is to find the leader of the prophecy. I'll be here with our brothers waiting for the people to leave will disguise as peasants and hide our black robes. The man removes his own robe giving it to his brother and goes inside the Colosseum. After some hours of watching the fights unfold, he notices a very exquisite phenomenon. Why is that blonde girl Aura acting almost as if it's alive? Did she lose control of it and it's now going into burst? With the earlier round it didn't felt like she lacked control in fact it was very good pinpointing her opponents with dirty attacks from behind. Seems like it stopped for now, I wonder what kind of skill would allow her to use her mana to damage the physical terrain it's worth investigating if she wasn't the general of the crown prince army, guess I'll make someone enter their army to decipher Aurora's secret. Lord Zylph appears to be enjoying himself from watching her fighting as well, too bad for him that it is yet another individual he won't be able to approach, this man started laughing at his friend's demise. That person hiding on top of the Colosseum wall seems similar to Aurora is it her mother perhaps? I'll observe both for now as they seem to be the two of the seven targets that I'd gamble my life on being worth the time. Iris Perspective Back to the present. Once I head back from the arena, I go to one of the bathrooms and then head into the mirror world once again leaving no trace. This place with the snow ritual barrier always in effect feels amazing healing my mana rapidly though this time I should have around 20 to 30 minutes till the next round. Are you adorable? I look at the back of a girl with light blue long hair who turns to me smiling and then gets up and runs to me glomping me making us both fall on the snow. Master Iris, she hugs me tight, I was wondering how many years, months, days, hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds. I'd need to wait to see, observe, stare, witness, spectate, appraise your excellent and utmost glorious beauty. This girl is absolutely crazy just how was she born from my personality again. 
I thought that I could be backstabbed in some way but she looks obsessed enough about me to completely negate such thoughts. Hello adorable witch, mind if I call you like this? Of course not my master, it brings me the utmost happiness, a gigantic joy to be called and named by you, ah my heart can't take it, it's beating so fast that I believe it'll explode, will it explode? It will explode won't it? Certainly it might if you don't calm yourself, tell me something, interrupting me she quickly says, anything, ignoring her I continue and speak, how did you awaken so fast? Me? Everyone will the amount of soul you gave us was more than necessary as the soul stone's grades were pretty good, as such I added my own power to your barrier master so that you can feel the love that I dedicate entirely to the Babel witch, whenever you're in the mirror world. Power? Love? Yes, focus on the mana around you it should be recovering twice as much as my mana is being depleted, to fill you with the nourishment you need, to refill with the life that is lacking. Upon hearing those words I look at the magic circle and use the skill magic analysis. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. Notice, analyzing Master Iris's magic circle. Oh, to be blessed with a demonstration of your marvelous magical skills, this one is too blessed, overjoyed even. Notice, the circle is currently erecting a snow ritual barrier through an area of 50 meters, alongside a mana channeling that will stay effective as long as the one temporarily known of the adorable witch, stays inside the magical circle. So that's how it works now I understand clearer, I wonder if the other witches will come out as crazy as this one, I look at the light blue haired me making her cheeks rose and embarrassed. She's certainly useful, fairly speaking all of them have been these past seasons, so I ought to treat them well, plus at some point they might become part of my family. It would be funny if I arrived with more twins of mine, I would love to show them and see their reactions, I'm sure my parents would panic. I sit at a point next to hers, shall we attempt to awaken the others? Ah, master that won't be necessary we just have to patiently wait for it, may take days, months, years, certainly all of them will awaken. I thought you said I had given everyone enough souls so why will they take longer? I humbly apologize, she kneels hitting her forehead on the snow, however my dear master hasn't awakened so you are yet too weak to contract with more of us. You don't have to be sorry for that, I'll grow stronger in no time, what do I need to do to awaken? I don't know master, but once you do, you will know what to do next. I understand, anything else I should know about you girls? One of us has referred before, but we have conditions that would make us stronger making you stronger as a witch, just say my temporary name and status, and master will understand. Something like adorable status. A screen appears in front of me. Status. Unnamed untitled class, which. Master, Iris. Health, 1170-1170 mana, 3700-3700. Parameters, the master ones. Titles, the master ones. Skills, the master ones. Conditions to awaken. Receive a flower from the master. That's certainly an interesting condition. Does it match the personality I thought you'd all have perhaps? Possibly my master, sadly the knowledge doesn't go that far, and I believe it's unhappily the time for you to go as you're expected in the other world, she looks at me sorrowfully lowering her head and containing whatever inside of the green glittering eyes. I get up then walk to her and give her a hug, I'll be back when I can, take care of our sisters till then, and tell them they can use the eye color matching the hair one, it'll feel more unique that way. The girl's color eyes change in front of me becoming light blue like her hair, and I extend my hand to her cheek patting it while speaking, I feel like it matches you a lot more now, they two are very pretty, I'll be back soon. She starts crying happily after hearing my words, knowing I'd be gone, and then I leave through the mirror back to the world of Artana. I leave the bathroom and then sit on the usual bench that is empty. Two minutes later a man appears and says, with 20 participants left as some got injured and others completely exhausted the fifth round will start Lady Aurora, once again I get up and walk to the arena. How does this girl look so vivid compared to most of them? Even her aura feels very present, does she perhaps have some special recovery skill of the sorts? The man thought confused and curious as he looked at the small blonde girl. Once I arrive at the arena, in front of me I find a handsome dark-skinned boy older than me, with very long hair wielding a long spear. For this next opening act, we'll have this great young lady, who has shown both amazing sword skills and magic ones, defeating two successors of the great noble Rose families, she's now up against a dark horse, a peasant from the northwest border who has shown great aptitude during all his combats, Raphael, the spear user. The crowd applauded us fiercely as every match this young man appears, end up becoming very entertaining. 
he bows deeply out of respect and says, It is my honor to fight the great general of the southern lands. Likewise young warrior, I bow lightly to repay the respect even if he's a peasant, which makes it unnecessary and strange surprising him. If I win I'd like you to marry me, in exchange if I lose, I'll serve as the greatest warrior your army will ever have, I blush slightly surprised upon hearing such a proposition. The crowd went from cheerful and energetic to euphoric, as he proposed to me out of nowhere raising the stakes of this year annual tournament. After taking a glance around me, my eyes meet his and I smile and say, very well in that case I hope you won't die before you join my army, as the words resounded through the crowd the people got up from their seats and started cheering madly. Whoa a battle with a compromise of marriage, that'll be the most promising rule yet in the history of the annual tournaments. I unsheath both swords holding a short sword in each hand surprising Raphael and everyone else as people thought I used one-handed sword style. I'll take that as you being serious, he says and then I smile at him while taking a combat stance by lowering my body slightly and crossing my swords leaving little to no openings. The duel may now begin. Chapter 72 Annual Tournament Arc We start by approaching each other while walking in a circular way gauging each other range and then I feint a dash to which he thrusts the spear and I attempt to cut it in half hitting it but failing as it is too tough. It seems like it's no ordinary spear, I smile becoming more excited. It certainly isn't it is made of steel, a tough material which will make you unable to cut it. I wouldn't be so sure about that, I monocoat my left sword making him smile and mimicking. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. He takes a step further and stretches the arm increasing the range and speed of the spear thrust which I dodge while parrying it with my left sword causing our mana clash making a small bang, then his spear goes all the way to the floor making a small hole in it. I spined it, the tip of the spear is frozen in the floor and I take the chance to dash at him. Notice, 300 mana has been deducted. He runs in my direction using strength on the spear jumping above me while mana coating the feet, which he then uses to kick the ice in the spear as he falls on it, making the masses go crazy at the acrobatic skills. I dash at him striking the waist before Raphael has time to move while he quickly jumps backward allowing the spear to extend upwards from the floor, which I use my left blade to cut it in half which is responded by increasing the mana in it protecting it causing yet another bang. Dance of death, I spin my body fully accelerating temporarily hiding my right arm which appears from his blind spot on his right flank while my left pressures the spear, which Raphael notices late still doing the best possible to avoid it getting cut in the hip. Raphael pulls the spear to him and regains some distance then places the hand on top of the body part that is bleeding and says, Heal, the wound I just made vanishes leaving the shirt cut. Seems like a tough opponent has appeared, best to save my mana and make it a long battle like Teacher Ray would advise me to do, in other words, I'll use my natural aura to overwhelm him into doing mistakes, I breathe deeply and then spread the aura around me mixing it with my ice element causing everything around me to freeze. In return, he extends his own aura mixing it with the light element creating a protective layer of sorts, her aura is making me spend mana to shield myself from the cold, what a nasty way to use your element. Raphael dashes and starts thrusting relentlessly, understanding that I'm attempting to go for a long match, which I parry every blow and then mana coat my right sword forcing him to do the same so his weapon won't break, and then I add a layer of ice element to it making the spear heavier each time I hit it or he hits my sword. That's completely nasty. He shouts angrily realizing the weight I'm producing every time we cross weapons making him go slower. This is the only way I could compete with Teacher Ray and even then he would ignore the slowness and beat me to a pulp, at least it works against you, I smile innocently at him throwing him off. Unique skill heavenly throw, as he steps forward to finalize the throwing of the weapon, I freeze the floor beneath making him slip then fall on the floor resulting in missing the spear, which is then blocked by the mages protecting the audience as it flies far away. I then approach and place both swords on his throat in a cross shape, I surrender, A and D. As promised I'll join your army. To that I retract and then hold both swords with my left hand, and extend my right hand to him saying, well fought, he grabs it and gets up, thank you your combat style is pretty ridiculous. I smile at his words and leave the arena, and the general Aurora wins once again will she be the final winner? Just a few more rounds to go everyone. The audience claps as a whole excited from all the rounds. I didn't expect Iris to be this strong seems like she really received her and Aurora's share of gifts, who would have guessed that a peasant could have come this far and the same goes for that Raphael it seems he acquired a unique skill that will be a great addition to our army, the crown prince thought while smiling happily. Not only did that brat kill one of my faction leaders but also is going to fight my representative next, such nerves just where did my brother find this filthy peasant? You sure found quite the representative Julius. 
She's a very pretty one for sure, Liliana spoke enticed by the child. It was a random found truly, who would have guessed my friend Luke the healer would have such an interesting daughter, Julius laughed happily while hiding the fact she has a twin sister. Playing around with trashy peasants and actually find the somewhat good ones, this guy truly is lucky. Won't you give her for myself brother Julius? Don't you already have Angelica air fighting for you? He laughed lightly to not make his sister angry at him. Well yes but both she and the daughter Ange are a little too muscular, yet yours looks like a doll that I could use to sleep hug to during the night. Sadly she's indispensable for my army otherwise I would have allowed it, my dear sister. Oh. I understand, also next round it'll be both of your representatives fighting, the statement makes the brothers look at each other. Best of luck Marty, as to which he says, for you to Julius you'll need it. Really? I look forward to seeing what your representative has been hiding. The match's order alternates to give variety and the fight that begins next is between Ange and Alicia. Seems like this one will be very interesting to watch as well, good luck sister. Thank you Julius may the best of them win, she says with a kind smile as the princess knows both since they're practically babies. Ange wields a big axe while Alicia unsheathes a beautiful blue sword, which is now signed with her name through the use of mana. I wonder why Iris told me to sign the sword, but knowing her she wouldn't say something that would harm me. She looks at the sword confused not finding anything peculiarly different. Hello Lady Alicia, it has been a while since we played together, I hope you won't hold back, she smiles happily finally having an opponent she can go all out as the past ones got overwhelmed by her strength. But of course Lady Ange I saw a few of your matches and it looked like you were bored, that's totally a bad thing for a lady to feel, Alicia smiles back at her. The two ladies may begin the fight. The crowd especially the men start shouting one of them even saying he'd adopt both getting smacked by the wife right after. Ange starts by using several skills that increase her statuses and then mana coating the axe she dashes at Alicia doing a body swing, which Alicia blocks with her sword being thrown 10 meters away towards the side due to the massive strength and impact Ange possesses. Alicia then buffs herself with wind and nature elements realizing that this gorilla girl has gotten even stronger since the last time they sparred, which Ange called playing together earlier as a joke. Both dashed and Ange started with a full swing carrying a brute force behind, to which Alicia swiftly dodged overwhelming Ange with her speed, vertically slashing the body making a long cut to what Ange responded by using her knee against Alicia's stomach, making her curve forward in pain lifting her in the air, and then blasting her in rage with the axe dull side with a loud bang. Ange kneels on one leg feeling the pain from the cut while Alicia is practically unconscious from the pain as three right ribs broke from the impact, and then hears a voice inside her mind. Do you seek the strength to protect those around you? A voice. Who are you? Anyway, it doesn't matter shut up, I need to get up and focus. Do you seek the strength to protect those around you? God that's worthless. The only strength I seek is the one to never lose, protecting others will certainly become easier with such almighty power. For a weakling you sure have ambition. Who are you? I am a fragment of Rizia's soul that lies dormant in that sword. Didn't you sign a contract knowing that? No, a friend of mine told me to do it. A friend, that's strange but I understand, do you wish to sign a contract with me while knowing about it? What are the consequences? All the knowledge, memories and emotions Rizia had back then will overwhelm you, if you manage to win then you may be rewarded greatly, if not she will be reborn. Very well become part of my power. She grips the sword tightly. A golden light expanded from Alicia's body towards the sky making the sword of the first hero shine completely healing her, while she screamed intensively for minutes scaring those around her, especially Ange who remained speechless and confused as to what was happening with her childhood friend, making the spectators go in awe saying it is the blessing of the goddess Arya making every rose head, the Pope and even the Saintess surprised while everyone got up from their chairs. The birth of a third hero, soft words left the Saintess's mouth as she watched the girl in front of her, making those around who heard the Saintess, shout the word hero repeatedly, quickly propagating through the entire audience. I beat you Rizia, ugh, that was quite the horrible life you had saving everyone around you yet no one to save you, tears that do not belong to Alicia fell from her eyes as the peasant hero felt understood at the very end. I don't think anyone from the participants can beat me as I currently am Ange, so resign, she points the sword at her while holding it with both hands, feeling fatigued. She smiles and gets up, seems like you've had some sort of awakening, yet resigning is dying. If I were to die then I'd have to at the very least beat you to a pulp like when we were younger, unique skill berserk, 
Ange body became stronger and tougher making the muscles bigger and sturdier, more noticeable, and then she gripped the axe very tightly with both hands doubling the strength compared to before and dashed twice faster at the opponent while Mana coating it, doing a big bang of a sound. As Alicia blocked it being pushed back ten meters away making the girl smile. It seems I was wrong, forgive me Lady Ange, due to berserk mode she was ignored. Alicia dashed faster than before and traded multiple sword strikes that got parried by the axe and then Ange attempted to knee her opponent who this time around dodged cutting the leg making a small cut as the skill also made her tougher. Ange then punched her making her fall three meters away while blood poured out of her lips as they got ruined. You truly are a beast, Alicia spits some more blood to the floor, if this arena was any smaller I would have fallen outside its range a few times already. Ange dashed in an insane state to attack Alicia who heard a voice, use my blessed skill otherwise you might die and if you use it, you might die too. Not much of a choice I don't want to lose here, blessed skill flowering goddess, using every muscle of her body for two seconds Alicia passed through and slashing her leaving behind a trail of colored flowers completely unnoticed by the girl, making her fall flat on the floor and cutting the axe in the process, leaving a long and dangerously deep vertical cut on the girl body next to the first one, and then in the next second, an intense pain filled every cell of Alicia body, making her cough. Even more blood as the body was not ready for such a skill, ending up fainting from the pain. The healers ran urgently healing both while the tournament went into a pause. With the two participants unconscious they both lose, the judge says as everyone in the audience rose and clapped them for a very long time as their fight was truly honorable and full of action. Chapter 73 Annual Tournament Arc Iris it seems you've awakened quite a monster, I smiled in a sinister way upon listening to such words. I don't know the details, however. I felt a remnant of a soul in that sword and figured it could be from someone important in the past, so I reminded myself of you being inside a grimoire, worst case it'd be a signed sword till the mana eventually disappeared. Understood, however, Iris there's a chance she gets possessed by the soul inside of the sword in that case. I believe in Alicia, in the worst case will brainwash whoever trying to mess with her, however, the soul inside felt weak. It should probably be inside of the sword for a very long time, so she should be able to do it. After all, she's no ordinary kid. Perhaps you're right Iris, it does seem like you've matured in what comes to finding solutions using your own class, truly like a witch. Well I had a lot of nagging moments with my teachers popping out often on my mind while you were gone, they kept me from feeling lonely but without you, it didn't feel quite enough, and I do believe I've changed quite a lot even if the brainwash resistance is maxed, a week ago I did some preparations before coming here and as such the voices are temporarily gone. Matter of time till we can go back to adventuring together once the crown prince wins and is elected king, I can then put Ryu on the command and we can return home to our parents, I miss them. Hearing that from you makes me happy since you took a while to accept them deep down yourself, I've seen them a few times since I'm closer but I do miss them a lot too. Seems like Alicia was disqualified along with the other one both for being too injured, they're being taken away now. Too bad I really wanted to fight her and see how further ahead is she on the way of the sword. I guess. However, magic can easily beat melee weapons at least in our last world that was the case. I feel like both have their advantages, personally love them equally especially after seeing how strong teacher Ray is with a sword, I feel like he wouldn't lose against a wizard of any kind no matter what magical skills he supposedly might have. As long as you get strong that's what matters, once you're done with training swordsmanship we'll start handling things on the other world. Sounds perfect, even though before that I'll still test myself on those ruins back in Astia village and see how far I can go through them on my own, so that I can compare how stronger I have become to the past where I almost died. In the end, we could really use the experience so we go higher in levels, it is a very nice way for both of us to grow stronger. Soon I'll do my best to conquer those ruins and see what lays hidden at the very deep inside of them, I'm really curious about it and also spent a while reading books, in fact, I got to discover very interesting things about this world that I'd love to share with you but sadly we'd need a lot of time for that. It certainly doesn't help that the rounds are becoming shorter and shorter almost as if they're trying to rush the tournament. From what I know it usually doesn't last longer than two days, those who win are generally the ones reliant on a weapon, as mana easily ends after a few rounds. It would be the same for me if it weren't for the little world of ours that has a better mana density along with my snow ritual, and one of the witches providing the ritual with a boost of her own making it extremely easier for my mana to recover. You should start thinking on names for our, new sisters and also figure out their titles, if it works similar to our past life, then I'd recommend giving them a title related to what you want them to achieve as a witch, for example if you want one of them to become the most knowledgeable of them, a title named wise or sage would be appropriate for that one to have. 
I'll have to think on eight names and titles. A voice interrupts my thoughts. Lady Aurora the quarterfinals is starting now, at this pace I'm believing you'll win. I'll do my best even though there's always someone better out there, I get up and start walking to the arena. Good luck I'll be cheering on you. I wave my hand at him smiling with gratitude for his support and kind expression. Next one would be nice if you could win, but no need to overdo yourself this is just practice. Is it an important opponent? She's the successor of one of the enemies from the Black Rose family, even though most families have a lot of children due to having multiple wives. Meaning that getting rid of her would be a benefit is that it? Yes, the less influence the other factions have the best. Let's see if I can do something about it as she can be stronger than me. Be careful from what I've seen her opponents stop moving once she hits them once, possibly a poison or a paralysis of some sort. Once I step into the arena the judge starts introducing both sides, for the sixth round we have the General Aurora against the successor of the Black Rose family Elaine. So this is the girl my father wants dead if possible, she controls the ice element and is good with the sword, let's see if she can dodge my poison element along with my hidden weapons. Baggy clothes generally contain some hidden weapons beneath them, and I can expect some tricks through her body, following what my teacher said I should make this a magic duel and swarm her with magical attacks. You may begin. The crowd goes silent as Elaine defeated her opponents in unusual ways. I won't give you a chance to breathe, ice bind, icicle, ice spear. Notice, 1000 mana has been deducted. I aim my hands in the air binding and hurting her feet tricking her eyes who follow them. You bitch, she throws two poisoned daggers that are blocked by two of the many icicles spreading around her while I throw an ice spear aiming at her belly with all my strength, this time without holding back. Shit I should have gone instantly into stealth. She mana coats two other daggers with all her mana blocking the spear as she can't run away due to the ice bind while being penetrated through multiple places around her body. Protect, heal, the different helpers from outside the ring start yelling. Now to make sure she dies without they realizing it, a new attack inside of her should do the trick, ice expansion. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. The ice expands inside her body from the icicles that went through piercing the organs inside killing her out damaging the heal that is being provided. Notice, 210 experience has been rewarded from a human. Notice, Iris has leveled up to 15. I clap my hands once making the rest of the icicles that were growing against her disappear, so that the judge and those around us realize I tried to stop the attack. Thank you for stopping it Lady Aurora, the judge says which I nod lightly as I expected this behavior. She's dead judge, the result spread through the entire audience not really shocking anyone, as the barrage of the icicles was too much for her to handle. Is this Aurora's doing as the only two she murdered were our direct enemies? My brother must be pissed seeing as he thought she'd win, the crown prince thought placing a hand in front of his face hiding the smirk. The winner is the general of the prince Julius, Aurora. Who will be passing to the semi-finals, there wasn't much reaction from the audience thus I left without caring about it. Will you be okay with having two of the Rose families probably even the second prince targeting you Aurora? I'll be fine I have the protection of the crown prince and I can defend myself too if necessary. The unique dark element, that's certainly a good weapon sister. Exactly Iris even though I haven't used it in a while I've just been training the army and have the hero and the sage roaming around me all the time, which for better or worse I believe they would protect me, and they're slowly growing stronger since I made them part of different squads, they get to level up slowly due to the party sharing system. The ones who sealed you right. It must be painful to have your worst enemies being around you all the time, I truly would feel terribly wrong if it was me. Yes, however, I'll make them suffer thoroughly when the time comes. Are you going to remove the soul-bound contract after you avenge yourself, since that was your wish back then? I don't think it's possible to remove it anymore plus it makes us stronger so it'd be a waste to look for a way to dissolve it. Fair enough, personally I don't mind it, was just curious. Let me have a quick look at status see how much mana I have left for the next rounds. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Level, 15 experience 200 slash 1500. Fame, 2300 disgrace, 25200. Unique class, Babel which rank 3 experience 4240 slash 8000. Race, human name, Iris 9 years old. Health, 1170 slash 1170 mana. 2500 slash 3700 status points 5 strength 301 plus 29 stamina 77 plus 40 agility 85 plus 35 dexterity 119 
plus 20, intelligence, 244, plus 31, wisdom, 330, plus 40. Attack, 0 magic attack, 0 defense, 0 magic defense, 0. Soul, 1754. Titles, reincarnated plus, S, mana, S, mana exhaust, S, health, S, purchase, S, wisdom, S, body training, S, animal slayer, S, cooked fish, S, preyed upon, F, cheater, S, heritage, S, amalgam, S, ice, S, cooked bird, F, cooking series, E, slayer series, F, sail, S, soul bound, S, element, S, contracted, S, peasant, F, class, A, monster slayer, D, slime slayer, B, skill mastery, A, criminal, S, herbs gathered, S, herbs types, S, potion brewer, S, potion types, E, status mastery, S, beast slayer, C, horned rabbit slayer, C, potion administered, F, goblin slayer, E, orc slayer, F, assassination, S, herbalist series, C, skeleton slayer, C, noticed, S, god series, D, potion selling, F, potion failed, D, potion succeeded, D, alchemist series, F, money maker, S, merchant series, C, trading, S, herbs sold, S, herbs bought, S, acknowledged, S, disgraceful, S, ignored, S, forgotten, S, zombie slayer, F, curse slayer, S, turtler slayer, F, corpse transporter, S, library completion, S, crime. Series, F, wise, S, strong, S, human slayer, F, murderer, F. Completed series, fishing, S, farming, S, illusion, S, reader, S, tree, S. Skill points, 2. Actives, status level 60, C, system library level 100, S, monocoat level 72, B, monowave level 21, E, ice bind level 34, E, ice sword level 20, E, icicle level 60, C, long slash level 40, F, ice expansion level 12, F, ice hammer level 1, F, ice spear level 3, F, ice wave level 10, F, ice light armor level 21, E, ice heavy armor level 11, F, triple slash level 50, D, thrust level 30, E, parry level 43, D, backstep level 24, E, dance of death level 6, F, vanish step level 1, F, passives, bleeding resistance level 51, D, swordsmanship level 50, D, sword mastery level D, 40, mana control level 51, D, ice control level 40, D, slight wisdom boost level 40, D, slight mana recovery level 60, C, acid resistance level 1, F, axe art level 1, F, axe mastery level 1, F, corpse dismantler level 10, F, brainwash resistance level 100, S, night vision level 30, E, slight stamina boost level 40, D, slight agility boost level 35, E, slight strength boost level 29, E, slight intelligence. Boost level 21, E, slight intelligence boost level 20, E, slight health recovery level 46, D, ice resistance level 50, D, cold resistance level 60, D, heat resistance level 30, E, lightning resistance level 40, D, knockback resistance level 22, E, stealth detection level 15, F. Class actives, dark alchemy level 52, magic analysis level 51, destiny cards level 1. Cursing Objects Level 5, Decay Level 5, Mana Shield Level 40. Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 41. Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 100, Curses Mastery Level 100, Rituals Mastery Level 31, Magic Control Level 61, Magic Knowledge Level 61, Ice Mastery Level 40, Babel Mastery Level 20, Grimoire Mastery Level 20. Babel Arts, Grimoire Possession. Grimoire Renouncing. Unique, Appraisal Level 53, Illusion Level 1. Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Mirror Level 51. Rare Element, Ice. Cursed Soulbound, Grimoire Rank Unique Final Phase, 
1-51200. Contracted witches, adorable. Half an hour passes and the man comes for me once more. The semi-final and final Lady Aurora have been delayed for tomorrow as the Crown Prince Julius wants to have everyone at their prime for more exciting matches, he also has told you to wait here for him as he's finishing a conversation with his sister the Princess Liliana. Chapter 74 Annual Tournament Arc Thank you for the information, you may go, I smile kindly at the man. You welcome lady, also I was asked to deliver this by a, what I consider to be a suspicious man that was hiding inside a dark hood, in case it ends up being something bad you can just tell me, and I'll send the guards after him for an interrogation, he said in a very serious tone making a few wrinkles and veins easier to be seen. Very well, I'm deeply grateful for your concern, however, there's surely nothing to worry about as I have the Crown Prince Julius on my side, it would be very stupid if someone attempted to do anything they shouldn't to my person, upon hearing these words the man relaxed and smiled kindly saying. Yes, Lady Aurora I do believe your words are rightful especially so after the show you have provided to the masses today, I don't believe anyone would attempt to meddle with you easily unless they knew for sure they could beat you one on one, unless it's a group of enemies that way it becomes a lot harder to survive but even then I have faith that the goddess Arya wouldn't allow someone with your talents to die easily. I'm certain that after today I should be able to honor the goddess Arya and all the blessings she has provided me, despite being born a very weak and sickly peasant passing through death's door many times, I store the paper in a pocket and then shortly after as the man is about to reply, a different man who heard my last words voiced out in a happy tone. That is certainly true General Aurora for I the Pope Claus have started spreading the news of your capabilities towards the different churches from the non-existence of any troublesome features that most of us have, from the excellent preparing you did by creating that magnificent outpost to the defense in the southern territories, such tales have raised a great number of worshippers to which we're truly blessed to be allies with the Crown Prince Julius, in fact, I have come with the good news. That will certainly, surely, delight the ears of any who calls themselves a general. That man can detect your disgrace and if you are lying so anything related to the army I'll help you answer just relax Iris, and now bow lightly so that he doesn't easily notice your green eyes which I don't know if he remembers them, but he might, and the person next to him is the Saint Tess, I don't know what kind of abilities she has aside of the premonition one, but from all the encounters I've had I can tell that she likes me to some extent so don't worry about her. I start by bowing while speaking, your eminence and the Saint Tess honor this kind hard-working soul with your presences. I have been told great things by Prince Julius related to both of you, thus I do not know how I can be of help but if there's any service I could present with my arts of war, I'd be happy to as long as the Crown Prince himself allows such to be executed, as soon as I started speaking a smile appeared on the Pope face which became whiter and whiter, as my words flowed into his brain almost like that's what he wanted to hear, words I heard and repeated from Aurora. It has gotten to my ears that the General was interested in having the Saint Tess presence in the army. As to what I initially didn't understand the reasoning, therefore, I had declined the idea, however, after the recent events where the Crown Prince Julius is doing his best to increase his army number, and strength which by far is the largest force out of the three heirs, we came to tell you that the Saintess will join your army along with those of the church army, they left the Pink Rose family command as they didn't care for her, they want to help us and the goddess, as such you can count with 40,000 men plus the one and only Saintess of the Lumen Kingdom to heal those who get hurt during the war. Very well, I am deeply grateful for such a blessing. I promise to keep the Saint Tess safe and even make her stronger than what she is currently, along with your men of faith, they too shall reach higher heights becoming more powerful through my knowledge and severe training, as for the possible rewards which I'd assume would be the new land that we conquer, I'll leave it to your eminence and the crown prince to handle, I maintain my composure and bowing posture through the entire conversation which the Pope thinks I'm simply being respectful to. Him especially after the last incident that was our meeting which was pretty awkward, of course that Iris doesn't know this. I'm truly grateful and happy for such words, I'll be cheering you up tomorrow, and make sure to compensate you with an amazing reward if you become this year's champion. In that case I'll push myself even harder to be blessed by not only the goddess but the Pope himself, he smiled and left happily and then the Saintess after checking that the Pope was completely gone signaled the man that works for the tournament to go away, and approached me whispering in my ears. I'm truly grateful and happy that I'll finally have an excuse to be able to see the world around, for more than 30 years I've been stuck in the church as a premonition tool, anything I can do to help you just let me know and I'll move mountains and rivers to see it done, she approaches her head closer and kisses my forehead, and while still inclined towards me she says, every saintess through her life chooses between a hero, a noble or even a summoned, it doesn't matter who exactly, we of my lineage are the ones who choose therefore the one I want is you, a peasant, 
she touches her forehead to mine and speaks, May you be acknowledged by the goddess Arya and ultimately bring the humans the salvation they seek from all these monsters, blessed skill grace, as soon as she finished multiple voices filled my head while my whole body raised from the floor making me float and a green aura that expanded from me reached for the sky. System, the title grace has been received. System, the goddess Arya was forced to acknowledge you as an ally. System, the title ally has been received. System, the god of evil has declared you an enemy placing a bounty on your head through the different demonic cults, strings will be pulled against the human race as a need to avenge itself for granting you the power and thinking of you as a possible subject feeling betrayed. System, the title enemy has been received. System, the title betrayal has been received. System, the goddess of order Luna has taken a neutral stance as you took a better path acknowledging your existence once again. System, the title redemption has been received. System, the god of chaos has further approved of your chaotic self which expanded to the point of making your enemy an ally, and an ally an enemy while changing the negative perspective into a neutral one causing havoc among all gods. System, due to your influence, the god of chaos through the entire world will be implementing all sorts of dangerous seal releases that will start occurring once the system finishes updating, estimated time 5 years till it's finished, such places can already be explored but they're very dangerous and not all are visible, much less easy to find. System, due to the skill the same Tess used two random skills from the goddess Arya herself will be duplicated and given to you as a blessing. System, the blessed skill soul manifestation has been acquired. System, the blessed skill endless growth has been acquired. System, for as long as you live the one who holds the class Saint Tess will always be your ally. System, as the Saint Tess ally the affinity with heroes will increase causing them to, calculating it with your greatest type of fame parameter. Error and abnormal amount of disgrace has been detected in your status. System, the villainous title has been acquired, together with a unique skill hero detector, heroes receive disgrace detection skill once they fully awaken by leveling up their class to rank 5, affinity they'll have to you is extremely negative, if they detect you, it may cause them to think you're an enemy and attempt to kill you. In the goddess Arya realm before the light struck her. Hum? This is... Green light enveloped her duplicating two of her skills and delivering them to the chosen one by the same Tess. Endless growth and soul manifestation, the first one will make that human reach higher heights what a lucky fellow, too bad for the second one which is utterly useless for someone without a realm, the goddess laughed amused, to think the same Tess of this generation didn't pick either of the heroes I sent, what a waste. She drank some wine from her golden chalice and then said, well it doesn't matter, once the summoned ones grow. They and the armies should be enough to keep my race alive in Artana, no matter what happens, I will win, I must. She said fully knowing that out of all races hers was the most prominent to lose. This time I even went as far as to use all the power I had saved from the very beginning making me unable to do anything for the next 200 years, so this will be the turning point with the 30 summoned I brought, the other three gods shall lose. What's this? Why were four skills duplicated and not two? Unique skill observation, Iris. As soon as the goddess started checking who this peasant was, and started checking her information cold sweat ran down her back. Status. Level, 15 experience 200 slash 1500. Fame, 3000 disgrace, 30,000. Unique class, Babel which rank 3 experience 4240 slash 8000. Race, human name, Iris 9 years old. Health, 1170 slash 1170 mana. 3700 slash 3700. Status points 5. Strength, 301, plus 29, stamina, 77, plus 40, agility, 85, plus 35, dexterity, 119, plus 20, intelligence, 244, plus 31, wisdom, 330, plus 40. Attack, 0 magic attack, 0 defense, 0 magic defense, 0. Soul. 1754. Titles, Reincarnated Plus, S, Mana, S, Mana Exhaust, S, Health, S, Purchase, S, Wisdom, S, Body Training, S, Animal Slayer, S, Cooked Fish, S, Preyed Upon, F, Cheater, S, Heritage, S, Amalgam, S, Ice, S, Cooked Bird, F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series, F, Sail, S, Soulbound, S, Element, S, Contracted, S, Peasant, F, Class, A, Monster Slayer, D, Slime Slayer, B, 
Skill Mastery, A, Criminal, S, Herbs Gathered, S, Herbs Types, S, Potion Brewer, S, Potion Types, E, Status Mastery, S, Beast Slayer, C, Horned Rabbit Slayer, C, Potion Administered, F, Goblin Slayer, E, Orc Slayer, F, Assassination, S, Herbalist Series, C, Skeleton Slayer, C, Potion Selling, F, Potion Failed, D, Potion Succeeded, D, Alchemist Series, F, Money Maker, S, Merchant Series, C, Trading, S, Herbs Sold, S, Herbs Bought, S, Disgraceful, S, Zombie Slayer, F, Curse Slayer, S, Turtler Slayer, F, Corpse Transporter, S, Library Completion, S, Crime Series, F, Wise, S, Strong, S, Human Slayer, F, Murderer, F, Villainous, S, Completed Series, Fishing, S, Farming, S, Illusion, S, Reader, S, Tree, S, God, S, Skill Points, 2, Actives, Status Level 60, C, System Library Level 100, S, Monocoat Level 70, B, Monowave Level 20, E, Ice Bind Level 30, E, Ice Sword Level 20, E, Icicle Level 60, C, Long Slash Level 40, F, Ice Expansion Level 10, F, Ice Hammer Level 1, F, Ice Spear Level 1, F, Ice Wave Level 10, F, Ice Light Armor Level 20, E, Ice Heavy Armor Level 10, F, Triple Slash Level 50, D, Thrust Level 30, E, Parry Level 40, D, Backstep Level 20, E, Dance of Death Level 5, F, Vanish Step Level 1, F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 50, D, Swordsmanship Level 50, D, Sword Mastery Level D, 40, Mana Control Level 50, D, Ice Control Level 38, E, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 40, D, Slight Mana Recovery Level 60, C, Acid Resistance Level 1, F, Axe Art Level 1, F, Axe Mastery Level 1, F, Corpse Dismantler Level 10, F, Brainwash Resistance Level 100, S, Night Vision Level 30, E, Slight Stamina Boost Level 40, D, Slight Agility Boost Level 35, E, Slight Strength Boost Level 29, E, Slight Intelligence Boost Level 21, E, Slight Intelligence Boost Level 20, E, Slight Health Recovery Level 46, D, Ice Resistance Level 50, D, Cold Resistance Level 60, D, Heat Resistance Level 30, E, Lightning Resistance Level 40, D, Knockback Resistance Level 22, E, Stealth Detection Level 15, F. Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 50, Destiny Cards Level 1, Cursing Objects Level 5, Decay Level 5, Mana Shield Level 40. Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 40. Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 100, Curses Mastery Level 100, Rituals Mastery Level 30, Magic Control Level 60, Magic Knowledge Level 60, Ice Mastery Level 40, Babel Mastery Level 20, Grimoire Mastery Level 20. Babel Arts, Grimoire Possession, Grimoire Renouncing. Unique, Appraisal Level 53, Illusion Level 1, Hero Detector Level 1. Cursed, Unidentified Skill. Mirror Level 17 Blessed, Soul Manifestation Level 1, Endless Growth Rare Element, Ice Cursed Soul Bound, Grimoire Rank Unique Final Phase, 1-51200 Contracted Witches, Adorable Just what in the world happened to this kid to have this much disgrace and a cursed unique Babel Witch class? Villainous Title? Were there even such things? Don't tell me this. Unique Skill Artana Records a while passes as she reads about the birth to the present related to Iris. I don't remember reincarnating someone from a different world nine years ago, was it one of my underlings? Why didn't they remove that cursed being Aurora from her soul and destroy it? In the end, they seem to be stuck to a soul-bound contract so once Iris dies Aurora will follow through, if it wasn't for that the weapon could become dangerous in some hundreds of years and disrupt the balance of Artana. This is strange, Iris' status only has soul manifestations and endless growth. Hum unidentified skill? A skill that the system couldn't compute? I'm lacking the necessary power currently to identify it, but I have enough to at least check the other girl, unique skill observation, 
Aurora, she reads her status as attentively as she did with Iris. Status. Level, 15 experience 200 1500 class, pandemonium. Race, human name, Aurora 9 years old. Health, 1000 slash 1000 mana 1700 slash 1700. Status points, 5. Stamina, 100 intelligence, 90 wisdom, 170 soul power, 0. Attack, 5 magic attack, 90. Titles, Eternum, S, Uncursed, S, Soulbound, S, Contracted, S, Devourer, S. Completed series, God, S. Skill points, 10. Actives, status level 40, D, Darkness Barrier level 7, F, Piercing Darkness level 13, F, Mana Coat level 8, F, Dark Coat level 9, F, Mana Wave level 1, F, Dark Bind level 14, F, Extraction level 10, F. Passives, Mana Control level 25, E, Dark Control level 19, F, Monster Detection level 50, D, Beast Detection level 40, D, Night Vision level 50, D. Unique, Transformation level 70, Killing Intent level 5. Cursed, Unidentified. Blessed, Endless Cap, Endless Awakening. Unique Element, Dark. Cursed Soul Bound. Contracted Skills, Telepathy, F, Giver, E, Deconstruct, D, Stacking, C, Split, B, Imbue, A, Consumer, S, Unique, Three Thirds Effects. Consumed Skills. This status is so strange, I'm pretty sure sentient weapons with souls shouldn't have a, weight unique skill transformation. The goddess starts laughing crazily. Quite the trickster this one is, well no matter, they'll die soon enough either from the dangers of the world, the war against the goblin king that I warned the saintess about, or ultimately from age and their silly cursed contract which they won't be able to remove on their own, a bit calmer now she takes another sip of her wine. Since I'm forced to be allied with her till she dies or the human race wins, I hope they'll at the very least be useful to me and the humans, let's see how they fare in the future. Time to sleep for 200 years, I wonder how much will change by then, and how big my human territory will be. I, don't know what to say, Saint Tess. You don't have to say anything, just make sure you keep us all safe through your marvelous commanding abilities, and your own strength leading the human race to victory, as our almighty and beloved goddess Arya wishes for. I, I understand I'll do my best to reach your expectations. Good we'll meet again soon, she turns around to the exit and heads there to meet the Pope who runs at her screaming, what the fuck did you do Serenity? I have chosen the candidate I deemed worthy, I believe that this girl will be the one to follow the goddess Arya the best, she looks coldly at the Pope as it is her right and choice, the same Tess makes him quiet and furious inside as he wanted her to bless the hero they got for themselves. She starts walking back and he follows through adjusting his white hat and clothes after making a small scene, sadly for him, it was something that could not be changed, the reason why he gulped her words and moved on in absolute silence thinking in ways to possibly use Aurora in the future, alongside the church hero even the simplest method like marrying the two of them. I don't know what happened just now. I straight my body up as it was starting to hurt my back. You do but you just haven't come to terms with it, I saw this amazing green light that reached for the sky, and not only me everyone that was heading out of the Colosseum, rumors will now spread making me even more famous once word comes out of it, I whose system doesn't even give me fame or disgrace, Aurora laughed insanely at the irony of her words on top of the Colosseum. It seems I received a random skill from the goddess a soul manifestation one, perhaps it'll be useful in the mirror world, I really want to help out our sister, especially since she's alone in there. Yes I know but it'll take some time for that. Once the tournament finishes go to the mirror world and try the skill in there as we don't want anyone to see you do whatever the skill does. That does sound wise I might accidentally make my soul come out of my body, and people think I'm a ghost, like in that one book I read or something silly such as that, we laugh at each other on my silly joke, and then I hear a voice. You seem happy Iris, it seems like you were blessed by the same Tess wrongly, but even then the blessing is yours to keep, and I'll take it as a secret to my grave. I look to the source of the voice finding the crown prince Julius, yes, I was quite surprised myself, she didn't even give me time to swap somehow with my sister. Such things are fated, like the successor of the White Rose family a similar but yellow light came out of her instead, I don't know yet the details but that was the light of a hero, to think someone that young would be able to acquire such a feat, it seems this new generation is becoming rather interesting, 
and she's even a good friend of yours from that white ring you have, so it makes me feel that there's truly something special about you, not to forget about your sister who pretty much revered you, while she was with me at the Southern Military Post as she calls it. I believe that my sister is the truly special one, I smile kindly at him. You give me too much credit, she appears behind the prince with the guards wearing the black hood I left in the room earlier. Today was a pretty amusing day, so let's go enjoy some food and then rest, so that tomorrow we can celebrate with a big banquet. Chapter 75 Annual Tournament Arc From the Colosseum we got to a wagon the entrance had some peasants initially but they were pushed away by the guards before we passed, a few of them looked at me and my sister who had a great part of her covered in a black hood as we passed by them a man screamed. At long last, the one, and then something very strange started happening, the peasants started whispering, the one as they looked at me and my sister, not really sure which as we were walking together. As time passed from the entrance to the wagon the sounds became stronger and suddenly the peasants changed into dark clothes creeping the prince and the guards around us and they started saying. The one next to the one has an enneagram, this sentence made me place my arm around my sister hiding the visible star so that neither the guards nor the prince realized it, once we arrived at the wagon I pulled her hood backward and she climbed the stairs making one of the peasants notice that we were twins, I followed right after and soon we parted from that place. While inside I asked, who were those people? Prince Julius. Those who wear dark robes are the enemies of the Pope and in a way of the Church, they're a very dangerous group of people that have classes related to disgrace who are often exiled from the kingdom though they hide in different places which is hard to deal with as we don't have enough soldiers to search every inch, we also believe the group has a connection to the nobility thus making it even harder for them to be traced, he answered with a clearly displeased face and tone. Shouldn't we have captured them there then? The guards will exile them but there's a chance they will return, they always do and killing them would only make their group start killing civilians as far as we know they're just a group of people that were banished for the classes they received it happens to a lot of people and it is one of the things I want to change once I become king so that everyone is welcome to live as they are, hopefully, I achieve this before they become large and strong enough to destroy the churches everywhere. Especially now that they gathered 40,000 soldiers to our ranks, it would without a doubt be very bad. From what he said I feel like it wasn't a coincidence Iris they were there for you as you have a disgrace class and a cursed one on top of it, I don't know what they want but we need to watch out for what could happen they might have a way to discover people with such classes like the Pope has the skill to check disgrace. I received a paper which I believe to be a letter from one of them I'll read it carefully when I grab the chance we need more information about this matter. Yes, it would be dangerous to act rashly, after all, we're too weak to handle that many, I honestly think that those guards weren't enough to deal with them. It's not like they have to fight them just let them be they didn't do anything wrong aside from scaring us a bit. I believe that the guards should be reinforced the number we had today protecting you, were not nearly enough prince. Yes I know but most are handling the security of the Colosseum but I'll ask some extra men from Isabella the head of the Rose family for tomorrow. After a while, we arrive at a popular restaurant where we have dinner and then we head back to the guest room where Aurora usually stays in one of the mansions of the prince. This room is awesome sister. I take out my shoes and jump on the bed feeling the fluffiness of the mattress under the linens, this is so much better than what I've slept all my life. Aurora starts smiling gently, well it is the perks of high nobility the one you don't care much for. Comfort and luxury, I turn my face to the ceiling while saying those words, they definitely don't suit me, I rather go into an adventure, know people, and train to get stronger. She jumps next to me and whispers in my ear that does sound like you but more importantly I'm only detecting a guard 10 meters away from us so you can check the paper now. I take it out from the pocket and show it to her while reading silently, oh great and almighty one whom we wish to serve, we have found you after an extensive look ever since the statues of the goddess of order Luna started bleeding for 10 days, we have a prophecy which shows us that you are the one we must follow, live, and if necessary die for, we are a very large organization that is hiding from the many prosecutors of the church who exiled many of us into the mouths of monsters and beasts. From innocent kids to the elderly, we beg you to save us so oh, disgraceful being you who will ascend above all others and lead us to a new world. We look at each other shocked by the information in it, this isn't a joke, is it? The goddess Luna made the statues bleed just because I received an evolution in my class? Was is that significant? It seems we have a strange group willing to join, you in war Aurora, I laugh at her slightly scared. Please don't joke about it they looked and act like a cult what could we possibly do towards such a group? we know nothing about them. Well let me turn it around and see what else it says certainly they included a way of contacting no. Plus they sound like they had a very bad life because of their classes which to be fair could happen to me too at some point, I laugh nervously at Aurora who pats my hair. 
Seems like they did write a bit more, I start reading it, one of our strongest assassins will come tonight to your room and talk with you about any doubts you might have so please don't try to fight him he's friendly and less in danger in which case he's a monster capable of killing someone like Sylvia, we look at one another trying to read each other mind but realize we're both without thoughts. Should we hide inside the mirror? I ask Aurora after noticing the danger of this message. If they wanted to kill us I believe that we would already be dead you saw how they outnumbered the guards back then and without reinforces. I very much doubt we'd live even if we did tell the guards about this information probably that could lead to their death. We could hide but it would only last so long and we don't know if the other side is safe either since they know of the other world they would most likely find us or even have a way to enter it. We signed the mirror together so I don't believe that would be the case, it is your world, and seeing as the space increases or decreases depending on the size of your soul, it's safe to assume it has to do with it in some way Iris as we know that it didn't work with mine. In that case, we wait for the person to come. I leave the bed and open the curtains the windows, and stand outside on the balcony looking around to see if I can find someone suspicious or something weird. I expand my mana around my body slowly stretching it in the greatest area that I can, Aurora. I shout immediately noticing the presence of someone behind me turning around finding a man in black clothes, a mask on his mouth, and a hood. I retract my mana and stare at him who stays silently between us two and then after some seconds he speaks, I'm Omar the greatest assassin in the world. Who just got caught by a little girl, I tease him to see his reaction. I didn't expect you to stretch your mana like that it has been a valuable lesson for the next time I have to assassinate someone, skilled. Very well Omar, since it seems like you guys have done their best to find me I would like to know everything there is to learn about your group and which one were you guys looking for, between me and my sister Aurora, though I feel like it's me. But of course, we're those who have been banished from the kingdom even though we live in the slums and other dark places without security. We have connections to a certain Rose family the grey one whose head works with us, his name is ZYLPH and he's a very dangerous man we could say not in a combat perspective but more in a money, wickedness and nobility power. Why did you guys get banished? Is it truly only for having a disgrace class? There are eight archbishops the leaders of the octagon churches some of them conduct human experiments and when they're done with the subjects they throw them out of the country and sometimes they kill them, we're not a good group either as we also kill to survive. Fairly speaking in this world surrounded by evil and death there is nothing good in it, except you if you truly are the one in the prophecy. Firstly, I am Iris seeing as you haven't said it a single time I get it that you don't know my name, secondly tell me more about this prophecy of your group. I'm grateful for your kindness and blessing by hearing your name Iris, the prophecy started before the system was implemented, it was said back then through generations with no end of women who became the saint test that the human kingdom would perish through this OR due to those messages that the goddess Arya would give them. However, back then something happened that repeated itself during this generation, a pair of twins was born one being the same Tess with a blessed skill and the other with a cursed skill that did the same thing, however, in riddles and different messages. Before the cursed one was murdered she had foreseen the future but not just any close part of it, the woman prop hecized that one day, one would get a disgraced class and grow so strong that it would bring pandemonium into this world making the kings and gods themselves fall from their thrones and realms destroying everything as it is known. Thus the church who didn't want to suffer from it created a law among other evil things to stop that from happening. That's a very interesting story yet how would all of this come towards me as I am just a normal wizard girl with no disgrace whatsoever. The man takes out two items where one is shining and starts explaining, these two items have been passed since before the system came to be and survived longer than you can possibly imagine, the one that is shining never shown before till a while ago where I assume you received a disgrace class it indicates vaguely your location so it took a while to find you and this other one is our red book which gives us the information we need, place your hand, then your sister's hand, and if what you say is true I'll never bother you again, I promise. He extends it to me and I look at it, a full red creepy book that looks like it has teeth and bones coming out of it, any ideas Aurora? If you don't do it he'll force you, so just try it worst case I'll attack him from behind and help you. I extend my hand and place it on top of the book softly. Chapter 76 Annual Tournament Arc a small red light shines and then the man in front of me speaks, you can remove the hand now. I take my hand swiftly as the book and the light being emitted from it look a little creepy. I truly don't want to touch that thing again even if I'm a witch. It looks similar to the adventurers one so it should give some sort of information to them from our status hopefully not too much. Don't tell me you have something to hide, I tease Aurora through my thoughts. Who doesn't, she smiles even though I can't see as I have a really tall man in front of me. The light stops shining and then places his fingers in the pages opening the book around half, 
it's been a while ever since I saw the light take so much time to disappear it is certainly a bad omen, he smiles raising the mask slowly. Oddly enough I find the book creeper than this person, he looks kind of enthusiastic like a little kid upon checking on something secret. Aurora chuckles at my comment making the man between us tense his muscles. Once he finished passing pages all the way to a specific one which I believe is the one containing my information he starts reading out loud. Iris, descendant of Luke and Rosalind, nine years old, cursed disgrace class Babel which rank three unawakened, he looks at me confused, your class is cursed. It was given by the god of evil and god of chaos which the evil one forsake me recently as the same test chose to bless me, allying me to the goddess Arya as a consequence might as well add that the goddess of order is also mad at me even though there is a possibility she's not anymore? I don't really understand the gods. He made a conflicted face as his group is anti the church who discriminates, tortures, exiles, and sometimes even kills some of them. Omar then looks back to the page and rereads as he lost the track of it during my explanation, Iris, descendant of Luke and Rosalind, nine years old, cursed disgrace class Babel which rank three unawakened, five thousand fame, thirty thousand disgrace, special traits, and achievements, soul-bound, reincarnated, system error, cursed, unidentified, cursed, blessed, blessed, villainous, he looks at me extremely happy and speaks while bowing respectfully, it seems you truly are the one. If I truly happen to be the one what happens now? Before that, I'm very interested in your twin sister as I've been using human detection and can only find one in my range yet I can tell she's behind me, the killing intent coming from someone so young is extremely absurd. He gets up and extends the book near her which she places the hand on it. A very intense red light with a layer of black shines and then, you can remove your hand, Aurora takes her hand away and the light shines a lot more than when it did to me making the teeth of the book tremble scaring even Omar who is used to all sorts of dark cultist things. Once the light vanishes while trembling Omar opens the book and starts reading out loud, as he does the fear within grows influencing the voice that starts trembling and the shake of the body growing more intense. Aurora unknown unknown descendant of unidentified and unidentified, 10,209 years old, cursed disgrace class pandemonium unknown rank, unknown fame, unknown disgrace, special traits and achievements, unidentified birth, unidentified race, unidentified appearance, unidentified bloodline, unidentified blessing, unidentified power, walking calamity, death bringer, unfathomable power, peerless general, sealed, cursed, 100% insane, personality disorder, physical body destroyed, soul rescued, soul bound, fake reincarnation, system error, grimoire, sealed, cursed, cursed, unsealed, uncursed, mirror, unidentified, sealed, he takes careful and slow steps away from Aurora while sweating and trembling aggressively as the information that he read from the red book about himself doesn't even compare to the words of the little girl in front, and then without giving us time to say anything ends up vanishing taking the two items with him. We stand there looking at each other for a big while as I process everything I had to hear that came out of Omar's mouth. It seems your information scared him away, just how powerful were you in our past life? It's a long story, but I lost my power when my body was destroyed inside the mirror, however, thanks to you, at least my soul was rescued and now I'm starting from zero alongside you, though fairly speaking this time around I'm quite weaker than what I used to be or even born we could say. My sister sends this whole information directly into my mind just in case Omar still hiding nearby. I walk to the bed closing the windows in the process where Aurora closes the curtains and then joins me in bed. I guess they're not going to bother us further. I'm sure there will be some iris, as people always seek those who have power but hopefully they give us both time to fully awaken and become strong first, otherwise it'll be a hassle to do anything. To think the strongest assassin in the world would run away from two little girls, I laugh at the thought and then lift the sheets so that Aurora can get in to get some rest from the long day. Thank you sister, make sure you recover from all the fights you did today, for tomorrow you'll need every ounce of energy you can pull of. Yes. I cuddle my sister from behind comfortably allowing my body to dive in relaxing and falling asleep shortly after. Omar's perspective after he escaped. To think that the pandemonium was a little girl born along with the one, it seems like our prophecy wasn't entirely right as it should only appear when our master awakened. In other words, while the prophecy might indeed be right the riddle itself may be wrong or the way that it was interpreted, with the unique item that allows us to find a desired soul, it never occurred that we should search for the pandemonium itself as we expected it to be a sort of effect our savior would have, I must report this information before knowing what action to take, neither of them felt like they wanted to kill me or tried to, 
so negotiations are a possibility even if we end up allies of the filthy goddess Arya we must have Iris to lead us into the new world, hopefully one that the shitty goddess doesn't exist, worst case we'll have to change this one completely so that we'll have a place where we can live peacefully, Omar ran at full speed towards the slums using all the movement skills and items he had to deliver this information. Three hours of intensive running lead him to arrive at the main den located in Zephy's territory that hosted thousands like himself as if they were normal peasants working there for the Lord of the Grey House, which was one of the ways he had managed to hide and control so many people. At the entrance not far from the Lord Mansion two guards were securing what appeared to be a completely broken tiny house made of wood, along with a rusty door that was half open, even without guards such a place wouldn't be visited by anyone as it looked like the type of abandoned place filled with trash and leftovers, but nonetheless, Omar went through both who couldn't react in time as he bypassed the security as if they weren't there in the first place. Once he went through, entered a hole with a ladder which the man skillfully slid downwards in what felt like a tunnel that led underground similar to the sewers but without the garbage, smell, or water, once his feet touched the unrefined stone floor followed by dashing with the leftover body energy provided by the amount of stamina possessed, which wasn't low by far and ran through a few sections of the tunnel itself curving here and there eventually reaching a red door which Omar opened and closed upon entering. Similar assassins who were inside ready to kill any intruders had already detected a human presence with fast movement speed coming in, but upon seeing who it was they didn't do anything to the tall man as he was one of them. He passed by them without a moment to lose going through a few rooms eventually reaching a really wide room with four statues each resembling a different god, a male one that matched the god of evil, two female ones matching Arya and Luna, and a genderless one matching the god of chaos who was known in that place for being able to have more than one gender and even having none. This information had been acquired as all the statues' appearances would change from time to time. Evil Masters Five hooded men in black clothes turned their attention to him who stood close to them while regaining his breath. Omar? What's wrong? Did the one, call the guards on you or something? Ah, no the one is named Iris she's actually pretty kind, reasonable, and gave me a chance to explain myself while questioning me about things she didn't know or understand. One of them interrupted Omar does that mean she's willing to join us? I don't know, I found something else which made me run away in fear, as the hooded masters were about to shout angrily at him, Omar extended the red book at them noticing the teeth on the cover shaking causing an uneasiness all over them making them silent, holding their complaints back. The master in the middle opened the book passing some pages and on the left one he saw the one whom Omar identified as Iris, then read the information to the ones around him, Iris, descendant of Luke and Rosalind, nine years old, Cursed Disgrace Class Babel which rank 3 Unawakened, 5,000 Fame, 30,000 Disgrace, Special Traits, Soul Bound, Reincarnated, System Error, Cursed, Unidentified, Cursed, Blessed, Blessed, Villainous. The Master's thought confused about why would he fret over this and then as if reading their mind Omar speaks, next page is the one, Twin Sister. Once more the Master started reading out loud the information in the book this time feeling a cold sweat and fear as he progressed. Aurora Unknown Unknown, Descendant of Unidentified and Unidentified, 10,209 years old, Cursed Disgrace Class Pandemonium Unknown Rank, Unknown Fame, Unknown Disgrace, Special Traits, Unidentified Birth, Unidentified Race, Unidentified Appearance, Unidentified Bloodline, Unidentified Blessing, Unidentified Power, Walking Calamity, Death Bringer, Unfathomable Power, Peerless General, Sealed, Cursed, 100% insane, personality disorder, physical body destroyed, soul rescued, soul bound, fake reincarnation, system error, grimoire, sealed, cursed, cursed, unsealed, uncursed, mirror, unidentified, sealed. A very long silence proceeded as the men were taking their time to absorb the information they received from their almighty book that was superior to the one used by the adventurers guild, and even the church and royalty ones since there exist many types. The one who had gained some resistance to the information that was written spoke, What should we do masters? It seems neither of them is awakened which means the prophecy still has yet to happen. From the information of the Red Book it seems that depending on our actions, we either stop them both from destroying this world or join the likes of the other factions forming an alliance to defeat them which the answer is obvious as to help them triumph, after all, we waited thousands of years for this opportunity, the rest of the masters agreed by nodding their heads making it look like a weird ritual was being executed. There is something else, the same Tess blessed the one making her an ally to the goddess Arya and the church, noisy screams and shouts of anger spread through them, and then one of them asked, how could this happen? How did this happen? 
was our love for the one and the hate for those who did us wrong not enough through all these years. Master from the conversation I eavesdropped while I was in stealth close by to the sisters, it appears that Aurora the Pandemonium is currently the general of the Crown Prince Julius, who is an ally to the church as such somehow she made the saintess who was with the Pope at the time, to bless the one and also join the army that is under her command and gained a force of 40,000 men from the church that are heading towards the southern post, a base that was built half a year ago to combat. The upcoming invasion of the Goblin King, it also appears that the twin sisters intend to conquer the lands further south, perhaps that's what the prophecy is all about the new world that they'll create through the war which I sincerely believe to be the very nature of the one, the soon to be our leader, Iris. In other words, what you're trying to say Omar is that through many coincidences this girl Aurora reached the rank of general as a peasant which is generally given only to one of the Rose family heads, has the absolute control of how the army proceeds, and is attempting to pave a new world by using her enemies the nobles and the church while defeating one of the greatest enemies of humanity the Goblin King. Yes, I believe that would indeed match every bit of information we've obtained from the General Aurora who turned out to be the twin sister of Iris, Master, a different voice joined the conversation from one of the Masters. Even though they were born from the same parents why is it that Aurora ones are unidentified such a weird thing? Since Iris is a type of witch that I have never heard, Babel in specific, so I do not know the differences between her and a normal one, there is a chance that our enemies have been charmed or even brainwashed to some extent to help them since I do know that's two skills some of our witches have. A different master added, I do know that the brainwash can be countered but perhaps as Babel witch, it gives her a greater power that enables it to happen otherwise I don't believe the saintess would bless someone without proper evaluation. A different voice added from the only one who still hasn't speak, the one must truly have profound magic otherwise how would she escape the identifiers of the Pope? Four of the masters along with Omar turned to him surprised as they remembered that such skills were indeed used to identify different allies and even used to extract information from torturing methods since the Pope has a human lie detector skill. If the Pope and the Saintess have been brainwashed or even one of them, then it makes sense that we join the fight in the South which we could contribute greatly along with the Grey House. Omar then said, if we fight against the Church it would only weaken Aurora army possibly making the Goblin army beat them due to the internal struggles of the Lumen Kingdom but I don't think it is wise for this information to reach the Lord of the Grey House, I wouldn't want our Saviour nearby that fellow, no matter how much potential both of them might have they're still nine years old since they're twins who were born at the same time, which means the Aurora girl age must be the body and the really old one mentioned in the Red Book could be from her soul who somehow ended up in our world Artana. If I had to guess, Iris is the culprit for that to happen who probably summoned it while inside her mother womb through some cursed method, after all. It would be weird for the two pieces of the prophecy to appear out of nowhere, I have faith that everything happened for a reason, and this world was certainly chosen by them to help us. I truly value your faith in the prophecy and as such we shall go into a votation as we have always done the five of us, who votes to aid the pandemonium girl in the war against the goblin king while making a truce with the church till we beat him, raise your hand if in favor, three out of five raised their hands, so the man continued by saying, this means that we shall use three-fifths of our force to help Aurora and then the other two along with Omar shall take care of things in the kingdom. While we're gone and keep an eye without getting too close to the one as we still need Iris to awaken and it may take some years still as she's ranked three, but at least has beyond enough disgrace to grow much 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 more, everyone agrees. Yes, Master Balthazar, they replied in unison in a creepy tone. Chapter 77 Annual Tournament Arc on the following day two of the flowering season at a room where Alicia was laying down on a bed. It seems you went beyond your limits, I had never seen you using such a beautiful skill before, that last one you used daughter, Alfred said happily as he was excited from the swordsmanship she displayed earlier. It was a very incomplete level 1 skill that I used from the remnants of the peasant who ascended to a hero, who gave it to me, I now have a fragment of her power so I know what I must do to improve further and get even stronger like she was. Alicia said with a calm and mature tone unbefitting of a child her age. Sylvia noticing a few differences as she's very obsessed with her daughter she says, what else did this hero of the first generation blessed you with, Alicia? I got to see her whole life in a glimpse, so I got to experience her memories, her emotions and I've come to realize many things especially the truth about the human kingdom which I'll do my best to change, once I have obtained the hero of the first generation power, it was thanks to her that the goddess started summoning heroes, however, it was not always like this, this blue sword was also summoned by her and there are more of these things hidden in the kingdom, I'll be sure to collect every single piece or armor, accessories and weapons that may be loitering around before they fall in the wrong hands. You changed a lot dear Alicia, are you still my lovely daughter and not the hero? 
Sylvia asks as Alicia feels too different from what she was used to be. Alicia stares deeply into her mother eyes, I didn't go through all that training to lose to a mere soul fragment of a hero, I am the heir of the White Rose family, the daughter of the sword masters Sylvia and Alfred, I'm also the best friend of Iris who told me about this sword secret so that I could reach higher heights, I won't let any of you down, and I'll for sure become the strongest sword master the world has ever seen. I understand dear, Sylvia patted her hair softly and then Alfred asked, since you're out of the tournament what would you like to do next Alicia? I'll join Aurora in the south once I'm fully healed since I have the memories of the past wars against such monsters, I'm sure it'll be helpful as the hero used to be a brilliant general if the two of you allow me of course. They look at each other and then each nods lightly, I'll allow you to assist your friends and the army that is being led by the general Aurora, mostly because we are allies to the crown prince Julius and the Blue Rose family, however. I'll have you train for a while with your mother instead once she thinks you're good to go, then I'll have no objections daughter, after all, I can't have you dying. Upon hearing these words Sylvia smiled, it seems like you'll have to get stronger fast if you want to go meet your friends in the southern outpost even though if the armies fall we'll all die, no matter how strong an individual might be, it only matters in a one-on-one, -on -one, if you're faced with hundreds, thousands, millions of enemies, you can't help but get tired of cutting them down eventually dying, that is how war is a greedy monster consumer of souls, Alicia smiles as becoming the strongest. Has turned out to be her absolute goal. I understand and I know, I saw the memories and felt the despair the hero did through the wars she led, the friends she lost, it was, truly sorrowful, it even made me pity her who sacrificed everything, becoming the first hero and also the strongest woman in the kingdom back then, and the main reason the expansion of the Lumen Kingdom even happened, past heroes don't compare to her, much less the current ones who are still growing. In other words, now that you've obtained the hero power at such a young age which probably took her the whole life, you'll be able to transcend her past achievements, but even if that's true your body can't keep up, and you using that skill demonstrates as much, so you must train harder but for now you must completely rest as the healing was successful but that won't dissipate the fatigue you made your body feel. At least I didn't lose to Ange this time around, Alicia laughed lightly and then fell asleep, whereas Alfred pulls the linens closer to her chin to make sure she has no cold and then he says. Surprised Iris knew about the sword secret, it is information that not even I had, I wonder how that mysterious girl unraveled it. Must be a skill of sorts also it seems the same Tess gave a blessing just not sure to who yet but a green light was said to reach for the sky and when that happens it means the goddess Arya will directly bless the chosen human. Talking about that the one fighting for the crown prince Julius was Iris right? I believe so Alfred, since she said Aurora doesn't have an element and since they're twins there's a big chance the crown prince asked Iris to fight in her place to increase the general fame which could result in a bigger number of troops for his army. Hum. I'm wondering if the same test didn't mistake the twins and blessed Iris instead since she was fighting in Aurora name and place. As soon as Sylvia's words finished Alfred started laughing and then he said, I honestly hope she did I'd be happy since she's Alicia's good friend and a potential knight to guard her in the long future to come. With a lower tone while signaling him Sylvia says, Not so loud honey, our daughter resting, and yes either of the twins will be a good addition, they both can easily serve a certain purpose to Alicia in the future. The hero can and his colleagues' perspective around the same time. It seems we will be deployed to the southern outpost to take a role in one of the prince's army, it took a while for the church to come with a decision but it seems like we'll have the support of the Saintess, I just wish she'd choose to bless me already so I can reach higher heights and become a hero among heroes, he puffed his chest full of pride. It's probably due to your personality that Lady Saintess hasn't chosen you. She seems like a very long person who's more likely to choose someone who actually does something other than being lazy waiting for orders, at this pace we're sure to be behind in levels compared to the other parties, even the other hero where one of the priests said they were already there fighting along with the army, yet here we are catching criminals and doing all sorts of religious missions, I feel like you choose. The worst place for us to be here, said Anoka as she exploded tired of hearing him being so full of himself almost every day. Another classmate of their university spoke to think I'd live long enough to see the calmest girl of the world to erupt like this. Oh shut up Vini, it's not like anyone else said something when we were summoned you all agreed to be here and some of us are already on the battlefield if anything being here at least has kept you all safe from harm, so suck it. TSH, once a trash always a trash, even if you got lucky and received the hero class I'll still become stronger than you, just wait, I'll make you suck in those words soon, I'll be heading out I'm done being in the church if anyone wishes to come with me feel free to join my party. From this day onwards I'll become an adventurer and grow my own status in this new world, 
as he left the church dining hall some chased after him including Anoka leaving Ken behind with the leftovers who didn't care too much about what who to follow. I'm not sure about the rest of you who stayed but I'll do what the Pope asks as he treated us in a good way and I do believe in him and the Saintess, we can certainly take our time leveling up and getting stronger, after all, if we die it's the end. Yeah, you're right on that Ken, we have time to get stronger and it's not like everyone wants to fight, there are many ways to help the kingdom prosper, with our knowledge and different blessed skills it is only a matter of time till a new king comes forth and then we'll bring a change. That's reassuring Zen, however. We should indeed step up a bit more so that we can at least protect ourselves from the other summoned ones, as we may have to fight them in the future. Leave it to me, I've already started befriending nobles and got some contacts with the different Rose families, we'll start by establishing political and economical influences, raising the prospect of our future so that we can then manage what's to come and easily control the outcome of the Lumen Kingdom, by getting the new technology to be used by everyone, which will make our pockets full in no time. They smiled at each other as they planned quite the scheme to overthrow the kingdom behind the church. Iris's perspective in the present. I open my eyes and look at my twin sister Aurora who's resting next to me quietly, I really do look different with short hair, don't think it looks bad, maybe I just grew used to having it long for most of my life as a mother would only cut the tips to keep it healthy. I get up quietly and softly to not wake up my sister even though I never really know how her sleeping works as she calls it a sort of rest and not quite the sleep she knew about in times. Once I'm up on the room floor I dress into the set of clothing a maid brought even before we were here, and I end up in a very interesting uniform of sorts, I walk closer to the windows and take the left side curtain to the side leaving the other side dark where Aurora is. I then grab the chance to look myself into the window reflection, it really does feel reassuring being able to see my green eyes unlike when I was even younger and this uniform, it is quite cool, white shirt with a blue dragon and a sword in the back and in the front, the flag of the Lumen Kingdom. I suppose that today match will be quite important even though at the dinner yesterday night, the crown prince said I would most likely lose, after all, my opponent is the daughter of Isabella the successor of the Pink Rose family, an expert at assassination and the one this pink ring in my finger belongs to, my dominant left hand trembles of excitement. Teacher Ray himself said I wouldn't get very far and he was right. If I didn't use my mirror world to always be in top shape towards my mana, I certainly wouldn't have bested some of them, perhaps I would even be heavily injured. Ray said I can try again in two years after he finishes training me, if I am able to learn everything I'm sure a lot will change, but I wonder if it will be enough to become the strongest like that. Teacher did say that there are very strong people in this kingdom, however, they don't compare to those outside, monsters, and beasts capable of destroying us as if we're nothing compared to them. My hand shakes so I grab it with my right one to hold it tightly. Yet, why is it that I can't help but smile at such thoughts? The stronger the opponents the more excited I feel running through my veins, I want to go back to adventuring with Aurora I'll even take our parents with us so we all get stronger and even Elise to learn with my father, I could even introduce her to Alicia, I'm sure they would become good friends. You're sure filled with happy thoughts all the time little sister Iris, I turn around slowly and notice Aurora sitting on the bed to which I say, good morning big sister making her laugh. It is interesting how I get to read your thoughts just by turning telepathy on, perhaps it is due to all the things that connect us. Prying on my thoughts you evil sister, I can't even have any privacy, I start laughing mocking her. Related to your thoughts I'll try to conquer the southern lands as fast as I can but it'll depend on the total number of forces I'll receive from all of this, after all, compared to the enemy we're truly outnumbered reason why I haven't started attacking and have only been invading closest parts of the forest killing whatever beast or monster we find so the soldiers get stronger through levels and skills while learning teamwork. Leading an army sounds very tough, shall I ask the adorable witch to give you a hand? It can be tough but I already have some experience, and can she even go past through the mirror world to the world of Artana? Now that she has a physical body, and a complete soul made from a soul stone that belongs to the world of Artana it should be possible. I did try to use the most expensive ones for that, some of them were really old since not just anyone can kill rank B monsters and beasts. That does sound interesting but I have the hero and the sage always close protecting me, so it would be best to get her to do something else instead, just not sure what she can help you with. She made it so the mana recovery in the other world would become a lot faster for me, as long as she's in one of the nine spots of the magical star circle, which I used to always have close to the maximum mana during the tournament. That does sound useful but since she's over there maybe she could explore the mirror world. I'm afraid that's out of the question since the soul I used awakening you has been reduced a lot, and I don't know how much more I'll need to fully awaken you, so we'll focus on you acquiring soul power and then you can proceed to awaken on your own, 
along with consuming any skills that you find during the two years I'll be gone, and convert everything that you can't use since you're a grimoire into more soul power. Once you fully awaken you should save the skills that you find useful and give them to me once we meet again, you can either do this from the very beginning or not depending on how close you are to awaken, one way or another, I'll go back home once I'm done with Ray and wait for you at our home while doing some quests and explore the ruins from back then. Sure Iris, that's a good plan, I'll keep consuming soul stones while I can, even though at some point I might have to exchange them for money for supplies in case we run out, even though I've been setting some countermeasures to not be low on money as well as making the soldiers create farming fields by rotating crops, including some taxes from entering and leaving the kingdom, along with some other things which Prince Julius is sorting, so I can avoid someone messing with the economy while I'm absent. I'm surprised how you can just think on those things so easily. Well I did live for quite a long time and learned with a lot of mistakes and people always trying to steal the things I acquired, and since I can't just kill traitors neither opportunists, I'll have to do my best to not be stabbed in the back while I'm in the front lines. The main reason I put the one who has the most to lose handling the capital and domestic affairs, the prince himself. I suppose he won't bother you while you command the army that way as well. Exactly, this world will soon become filled with chaos once I get enough pieces to toy with. Truly like a, pandemonium, Aurora makes a cold smile upon my words. Chapter 78 Annual Tournament Arc A Certain Being's Perspective Oh, all hail it, the evil god of demons, our almighty lord hath us. He who has sent us an ordeal, the supremest of beings in the demon kingdom kneels toward the statue of his god and a voice behind him spoke, to live to this day after centuries to see the demon king Mamrath kneel before something, I truly have lived long, the female demon lord Mazdara started tearing up as she knelt behind him. In their eyes, a bloody scroll appeared on top of the statue feet shining with a crimson aura which the demon king grabbed and slowly opened while bowing and then he reads it out loud to the many beings behind him. The Ordeal of Hathis bring death to the human called Iris who's a servant of the goddess Arya of the Lumen Kingdom to the south the one who kills her shall be rewarded with a godly skill, capable of becoming the king of the different demon kingdoms, the many demon lords gulped practically at the same time due to the reward not as much for the mission, and then the king spoke in a surprised tone once more. Just what in the world did a puny human do to enrage our god to this extent? How are we supposed to cross the red dragon territory? We would need to go around conquering everything to the east then to the south and attempt to cross the mountains to do so, such ordeal will be very difficult to achieve, it'll have to be delayed as we're amidst a crisis against the near monster nests who keep stalling us. Perhaps it is time to expand to the west instead we'd have better chances conquering that side and slowly but surely become stronger as well as possibly convincing the west demon kingdoms to join forces with us and become one, perhaps they too received this message and will be willing to work with us. Despite our differences, Demon Lord Neuer, I believe not a single of the demon lords and kings would dare oppose the god Hathis ordeal, so we should strike our enemies to the west and start making alliances with the rest of the demon kingdoms, in preference conquer them and having more strong types of demons serving me, that would be the most idealistic. We'll do our best to bring that wish into realization, demon king Mamrath. To think the demon kingdoms who were in a deadlock till now would start moving due to a single human girl, demon lord Asa thought while smiling excitedly as they've been increasing their forces carefully for the past centuries slowly expanding to the sides. Iris's perspective back to the present. It's time Lady Aurora for the next fight the round 7 which will be the quarterfinals for the tournament the opponent will be the daughter of the head of the Pink Rose family a direct descendant of a famous old ninja hero from the tales of Artana. A direct descendant. I ask curiously as I remember the tale where a man was able to kill a few demon lords and beast lords eventually succumbing to one of them after a failed assassination. To my question, the man nods it is in your best interest to surrender the next fight as your services are needed as a general more than they are as a soldier. She's that strong. My left hand starts to tremble with excitement so I grab one of the ray swords sheath that he lent me, tightly. Despite the man's advice, my body moves as if I'm being pulled by the magnet of a stronger opponent which he bows out of respect in my direction going unnoticed by me. Ladies and gentlemen we'll open today's seventh round with our amazing general who no one expected to have come this far versus a true descendant of one of the most prestigious bloodlines of the entire Lumen Kingdom a direct heir of the old hero Fafner the ninja, I present to you Moonflower the one known by her meticulous assassinations towards the enemies of our past King Francis, rewarded by him with the title of the Quiet Flower as her fighting style is as silent as one could expect, the crowd went euphoric with the introduction as Isabella daughter is simply that famous and a winner of past tournaments. We stare at each other on the black ring and then Moonflower says, Your hand, so you're the one who my mother chose, I make a surprised expression which she ignores and says, 
I understand don't worry, however, I'm sorry but you'll lose, but don't feel bad I carry the blood of the past hero and also his blessings and I've trained with my mother the best assassin in the world, as a noble I'm simply above. Without saying anything I unsheathe one of my swords and hold it with my left hand preparing to attack as soon as the judge says the word. You may begin. I spined, the moment I speak she cuts the ice surging from the floor while jumping backward, and then she vanishes. Stealth. I extend my mana through the entire field and am unable to find her and then out of nowhere I feel a heavy blow on my stomach making me cough and then I see her in front of me. Notice, 130 health and 70 mana have been deducted. Even though she looks unprotected my fist didn't sink as deep as I thought. I wanted to make her go unconscious, seems like she's pretty tough strangely for such a young girl. She looked at Iris from top to bot looking for answers. Good thing I had my mana shield activated otherwise that could have been pretty bad it almost made me lose my senses from the pain alone while I can see her now I'll have to attack, I grit my teeth and slash at her horizontally which she ducks and kicks my feet making me fall. As I'm falling I see her taking a dagger from the back of her waist, icicle, ice wall, an ice wall quickly splits the two of us leaving one on each side while icicles appear above her stretching towards her which she backflips a few times dodging them and then disappears once again. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Damn I lost her, how am I supposed to find her if my mana isn't detecting her? Does she have a skill that makes her undetectable perhaps? I guess this was how she beat her earlier opponents, in that case, there's only one thing I can think about to attempt to counter her, I take a deep breath and get up and then summon icicles through the whole floor and use ice expansion creating ice vines all around me hoping one of them will hit her. Notice, 1000 mana has been deducted. As I keep a defensive stance, I notice a drop of blood that is not mine, falling in front of me, and as I'm about to react I feel a knee hitting on my stomach and then a punch on my face throwing me forcefully to the floor. Notice, 360 health and 140 mana have been deducted. Mana-coated physical attacks sure pack quite the punch yet this girl is hella tough, what's up with her body? Past opponents that were older than her were already on the floor crying and surrendering yet this kid is looking with those green resilient eyes trying to figure out how my unique true stealth skill works, but sadly for her, there are not many direct countermeasures, even if she was able to scratch me with that ridiculous ice spell. Now, icicles, I surround her whole body with magic circles and icicles start pouring out stretching at her from all the blind spots she has to which she responds by disappearing and dodging with her speed and reflexes. Notice, 1000 mana has been deducted. I wonder what teacher Ray would do in this situation. I close my eyes and start imagining her moving, I take a deep breath and relax my body, I'm glad that I came to fight. I smile. Why is this girl smiling and looking so relaxed? I could have killed her a few times now if I used my weapon instead of my body. With her pride hurt, she strikes her dagger at Iris's neck, and as she does her sword parries the invisible attack surprising Moonflower. What? How? She asks confused at what just happened. The crowd goes crazy about the development and then I use a different skill as I can now see her, before you vanish again, I raise my hand at her, destiny cards system, the skill could not be used the requirement to activate it requires the awakening of the class. Ah. I didn't know that in that case, I'll put everything on this last attack, ice coat, decay, vanishing step, the sword started shining light blue, and then a deathly aura aggregated around it merging with the coldness scaring moonflower for a moment, and then suddenly iris speed raises so much making her approach the neck of the assassin girl with her sword. Notice, 1100 mana has been deducted. That aura looks extremely unpleasant just what skill is that? I guess I can't play around anymore with her, smoke bomb, substitution skill, true stealth. I hit her neck with my sword which starts decaying her body while slowing her down, as a purple cloud appears below me quickly blinding me, and then I sense the earlier killing intent on my flank, I don't know how she did this but it appears that the one I attacked isn't the real body, I slash where I feel her and then I hear her words, switch skill and I feel a cold dagger pierce my hip from the right side where I had struck the body earlier on. Notice, 300 health and 100 mana have been deducted. The smoke bomb eventually fades and I realize what happened, it seems like you switched places with whatever this is you made, I lose the grip of the sword and let it fall, falling on my knees feeling my body getting numb, and then I completely fall on the floor. The match is over judge, I hit her with paralysis she won't move for quite a while. I don't want to die again. Especially after discovering the sense Ray was trying to teach me, I was just about to take the next step into the training. Notice, the skill Paralyze Resistance has been acquired. Not, yet. I, 
refuse, to, lose. As tears fall from my eyes I do my best with all my leftover strength while losing blood to get up, as I force my body to slightly raise. It's over Iris you did well, come back when you're stronger, I feel a hit on the back of my neck and I faint, take her and make sure she's healed properly, she was a worthy opponent, Moonflower walks back while bleeding from a few places, as many icicles grazed her a couple of times making her smile. I can't wait for you to grow up my little knight, you'll surely become even stronger, Moonflower looks at the audience where her mother Isabella is and despite being far she realizes she's smiling happily, guess you weren't wrong about her after all, if it wasn't for my stealth being unique it would have been a lot harder, even though I'm the ninja descendant who was born in a place called Japan, and not to forget that the knight is still my realm where I'm ten times stronger than this, as she passed through the tunnel she laughed softly. The winner is Moonflower. We'll be starting the next combat very soon. Feel free to go get some more food or have a bathroom break. Chapter 79 Annual Tournament Arc Goblin King a bit less than a year ago. Deep in the woods where the nest of the goblins resides a very big goblin remains seated planning on the future that is to come. It seems the humans are gathering numbers in the south, compared to us goblins they're still far below us, so there's nothing to be afraid of. Last time it took 500,000 humans and that very strong hero which I managed to murder to push us back, and thanks to killing a hero I was able to get a very special ability to name powerful goblins allowing them to become even stronger, he smiled as he thought about it. The problem is that our mother the goddess Luna statues bled and as such it feels ominous to start a war now. I initially thought on invading in three or so years, but now I don't know if it's wise. The day I killed the hero the goddess Luna the mother of all goblins whispered in my ear to retreat and build a very numerous kingdom. Yes, that voice which is impossible to forget once heard, a delicate tone that makes the ears happy just to be able to hear it. Yet someone or something made our godly mother angry enough to make her statues bleed, but I do not know the meaning, the old goblin shaman is waiting for one of his visions so that we're sure the invasion this time will work out, I have mimicked the humans from the last war and learned their tactics, this time around will emerge victoriously, but I suppose I can delay it a bit more and gather stronger goblins by naming them whenever it's not on cooldown if I die those who received my Blessing will lose their powers, so I won't be joining the front line this time around, as such, I'll need strong leaders and smart leaders, even though most goblins are stupid little cunts who can only understand fear. Goblin King, I request an audience please, a big goblin with a big axe kneels before the chair where he's sitting. Hopefully not another dumb goblin requesting for power just to end up dead or permission to use one of our sex slaves, the Goblin King sighs and then says, raise your head and speak goblin. I am grateful Goblin King. I have been mourning for the death of my son who was killed by a blonde female human, our mother the almighty goddess Luna whispered me, and she said the human is the reason why the statues started bleeding, a powerful seed capable of changing the world if left alive, and she granted me a special class called Berserker to stop her. Upon hearing these words of the goblin underling the smile and happy mood the king had vanished and he made a creepy expression filled with wrinkles. That human a blonde one did our mother Luna whispered to you her name. No king, but I know she's blonde and uses ice my sworn enemy and the human I'll kill once I master this new power our mother blessed me with, with your permission of course so Goblin King. We'll go to war soon, however, I'll be spreading my own blessing towards strong goblins so that we're sure to win what's to come as such, you shall receive a name and grow even stronger, the Goblin King raises his hand pointing towards the berserker and says, unique skill kin awakening, now show me how strong you'll become, an aura from the Goblin King spreads to the berserker engulfing him and then he starts changing. His body starts becoming bigger, more muscled and uglier small white horns appear all around his beard almost like teeth, and then when the aura dissipates the Goblin King receives a message from the system. System, congratulations your underling has successfully become a Goblin of the Lord type the strongest grade right after a King one. This is the first time my power produced such a strong type of Goblin, it seems that it may have been due to the special class he has, including the blessing of our Godly Mother. The Goblin King raises from his chair making the many goblins around look at him and then says, My children I have a new order for all of you instead of fighting each other reducing our numbers, from this day onwards you all shall go out and find your own strengths you have to fight strong opponents and experience the world and then return to me once you have acquired a good class, so that you may become the next goblin lord like this fellow here today who shall be named as Ziri, the goblins. Started spreading the word while making noise with their feet while screaming in honor of the new named one. Now raise Ziri and become stronger so that you can exact not only your revenge but also the mission our mother choose you to take, you may command as many goblins and train them as you see fit. I Ziri the goblin lord will do my best for you my king, and destroy those filthy humans once I master this new power, 
he gets up while grabbing the axe tight and then does a vertical cut after stretching his arm in the air noticing that his strength and agility increased considerably making him laugh crazily. He grabbed the axe so tight that he started feeling something peculiar, he and the Goblin King started noticing his mana aura coating the axe and so the Ziri started focusing on that failing miserably many times but getting to shape the axe with a thin layer of it as he lacked mana control severely, nonetheless, he smashed the ground with the axe making a deep cut one deeper than the length of the axe itself thus he and the king realized a new skill had been born for them in that right moment. This consumes a lot of mana and needs an incredible amount of control but if we are to teach them to every single goblin, we'll definitely become even stronger like those few humans who have shining weapons. I always thought the humans had found a way to make special weapons but for it to be the use of mana. As soon as he finished those words the king started laughing and then he spoke, with this discovery, we're surely to make a change but for that we will need more goblins with a lot of mana, most of us don't have much of it. The system titles, some of them must give mana, how else would humans have so much, unless they spend their points solely on wisdom while most of us spend them on strength. Perhaps we have been relying too much on strength Ziri, it's time to explore new ways before the war that is to come, go find goblins with a lot of mana and train them while you learn yourself, so we have at least an elite force of shining weapon goblins. As you command O oh Great King, Ziri left heading towards the goblins. I'm level 114, but I received a lot of curses from the last time I fought those disgusting humans, especially that hero if it wasn't for that I would destroy them on my own, no matter what I'll enslave every single one of them and eventually become the king of this world. At the entrance of the Colosseum, two hours later a very old man walked towards the receptionist. Greetings sir, how may I help you? The man asked awkwardly as the old man in front of him smelled badly alongside the scent of alcohol. I've come to pick my student she's the one who ended up in fourth place the short-haired blondie. This old man is the teacher of the noble lady Aurora. He started laughing and then he said with a mocking tone, Do you have any way to prove what you're saying, old man? A voice coming from a couple that was passing at the side along with their child and a butler who carried her was heard, To think I'd meet you here fallen noble Ray, the receptionist looks at the source of the voice and notices the head of the White Rose family Lord Alfred. Upon hearing such words Ray turned around and starts laughing upon noticing who they are. To think I'd meet the two of you here, so this is the weakling you married Sylvia, Ray started laughing some more, upon hearing his master being mocked Robert placed Alicia on the floor as she stood on her own who was on a piggyback ride till now. Once Robert starts unsheathing his sword to teach a lesson for the humiliation the old man is making a different voice is heard, Teacher Ray, I've brought you the swords and as promised didn't break them at all, as soon as I look around I notice Alicia family and say, why is, oh, my, I go silent as Robert has his sword unsheathed and is walking with an angry expression towards Ray. Seems like a light warm-up before we resume your training student Iris, he said politely making it look like I stand above Alfred whom he just mocked. Once Ray takes one of the swords from me I walk away knowing that it won't end up good seeing the glitter of seriousness on the teacher's eyes. You should run Robert, this is my teacher the strongest sword master in Lumen Kingdom, I warn him as I appreciate him for always taking care of my friend Alicia. So this is the person Iris decided to follow instead of picking my father offer, I can feel the pressure of his skills, as Alicia is about to warn Robert to step back, Sylvia says, it's been a while teacher Ray, you sound as rude as ever and peerless with the sword too, I thought I had been the last student before you retired, but it seems you picked someone rather interesting, Ray started laughing and then voice his opinion. Interesting to say the least this little girl will with time become a monster with the sword that will surpass even me, after her training, I'll definitely retire he smiled excitedly while showing his yellow, black, and missing teeth. Once Robert reaches the range of Ray he says with an angry tone, I hope you have prepared yourself. Bring it on puppy, the swords touch. Chapter 80 Annual Tournament Arc As soon as the swords touch each other the duel begins. Both elemental coat their swords and Robert takes the initiative by doing a flurry of windy thrusts. A rapier style that's very gentlemanlike, Ray smiles, and then weirdly enough his sword looked like it bent and bounced the rapier away making Robert's eyes open wider in surprise confused at what happened, taking a step back. Was that it? That was worse than a light warm-up, once again Ray starts laughing while everyone is focused on his sword including the people that ended up passing by watching a dispute between the White Rose family known for peerless swordsmanship and an unknown old man who kept on mocking them with words while waving a sword. Ray starts walking outside as this place is becoming too crowded, noticing this. I follow through leaving the nobles behind after lightly waving at Alicia whose eyes were fascinated at the old man's skill. That old man is quite dangerous, it seems like it wasn't all talk, I don't know what he did but it looked like his sword bent and then bounced mine off, never seen something like that. 
That was the old man showing off one of the skills I didn't learn due to marrying Alfred, but I know the theory, the sword didn't bend neither bounce that was mana with a soul layer which makes it look like it can stretch or enlarge by taking the same appearance as the weapon itself, we humans have a low life span so our soul is usually small but that old man has lived for quite a while and has done quite the killing and title farming, and on top of that he has learned how to do things with his soul, in fact. During one of the matches Iris Mana started doing cuts on the floor, that was a different use which I disregarded initially, however, now that I know she's her student it's no wonder that happened once she ages a lot more she'll be able to take the next step of swordsmanship. Mana coding, elemental coding, and soul coding. Alicia says while smiling excitedly to learn new things. I do understand that, however, the old man looks truly ancient so it makes sense, but how come Iris was able to do it? Robert questions making Sylvia also confused. I suppose. Iris must have a considerable big soul already perhaps since she has a twin, maybe they're connected in a mysterious way, perhaps since Aurora can't use an element she becomes a sort of reserve power to Iris. That does sound like a plausible theory milady, but I don't know anything that could measure a soul size, I've seen the adventurer's stone book and inside the pages, something like a soul wasn't mentioned. I do know the royal family and the church have a unique book of the sort. I've also heard rumors about a red book used by the dark priests that criminal cult, Alfred said confidently as he remembered them. In other words, from all of them the one who could possibly measure souls would be the church one since they serve the goddess Arya who makes humans reborn through the reincarnation portal, it wouldn't be weird if their book had something like that in it. Are monsters, beasts, and demons able to possess such things? Since in the end, they should be able to learn mana, elemental, soul coding, and all sorts of skills and classes that we have since the system is the same right. Alicia sneaked a bomb into the conversation as she knew through the hero memories that such things were indeed real and in the past had been quite the threat to the human race. Go on ahead I'll go back and talk to Julius right away as what you said makes complete sense and we didn't even think about something so simple like that, monsters might be stupid but what if one of them actually learned the very few weapons that have kept us humans survive till now, including our war tactics and everything else, in fact. Alicia you have the memories of the hero so be honest with me, was it on purpose? Upon being questioned Alicia smiles and then says, I did say I acquired important information and tactics from long ago to deal with the enemies of humanity, not to forget the hero summoning isn't restricted only to the goddess Arya though compared to other gods she's a cut above in that ability, upon hearing her words Alfred ran towards one of the Colosseum rooms to meet the crown prince Julius and Aurora who he assumed would be together. Iris and Ray left for the Tun village while Sylvia and Robert took Alicia who's still recovering to the wagon while they waited for Alfred. Meanwhile, Alfred found two royal guards protecting one of the rooms which he passed through without asking them for permission due to his own status. The doors opened with some strength surprising Aurora and the Crown Prince Julius who were discussing domestic affairs before Aurora returns to the front lines and a maid who was on standby waiting for orders. Julius, we need to talk. As soon as Aurora heard that she was about to get up out of respect for their relationship with one another, and then Alfred said, this matter includes the general too, Aurora stared at him as it felt strange from the few times she's been with the White Rose family to head the girl had never seen him this flustered. What's wrong Alfred, come sit with us, do bring the lord a cup of tea, the maid who was on duty during their discussion leaves the room and then he starts talking while approaching them without sitting. So basically, how should I say this? You might not believe me but my daughter Alicia has gotten the memories of the first hero the peasant one, and she said that the system works equally for every race, in other words, he unsheathed his sword and mana coats it and says, this is one of the things we humans learned and used to fight our enemies, but Alicia said that there have been monsters and beasts capable of using this skill too, which would include elemental coding as everyone is. Generally born with an element, as well as soul coding that is very exceptional, more like the only person I know that can use it is the old teacher of my wife the swordmaster known as the Fallen Noble Ray. He took a deep breath and then continued talking. The skills, classes that we humans have, in other words, it wouldn't be weird for the goblins to have them, be fame or disgraced type ones, their king should also have learned to use the tactics that he encountered through the last war waged against us as well, as having subordinates equally or even stronger than us, could even appear a special type of goblin summoned by their goddess Luna, the more and more Alfred talked the more startled the crown prince Julius became. As for Aurora she remained quietly listening to every single word unfazed as they were pieces of information that had been assumptions, while she learned more of this world and that she knew the short straw had been taken by her, as Iris race had been the weakest of them all, and ever since reading about the system being fair, it would certainly mean that every god had close to the same set of skills. 
that's indeed pretty dangerous and could without a doubt make it harder for us especially since their number will be a lot more than what we have currently what do you think general? Julius asked while sweating nervously from the room temperature and the news. As long as my conditions become true before the war begins, I cannot possibly imagine us losing to goblins, of course that for our victory to happen the army needs to keep training and improving the way I envision them to, while we get the number of soldiers I need, we're currently way too few and if I were to guess they should attack us with their whole force, be it composed of goblin children, females, men, or even elderly, from the information I've received from the Pope and the Saint Tess. One hundred years ago, they used half of what they had a force of 400,000 goblins, after studying and learning more about goblins they should be around three times more so 1 million and 200 as long as they're not fighting other fronts, in reality they are 1 million goblins due to the ceremony they do with the children from time to time, due to it the number ended up reducing by 100,000 and the rest murdered by other races around their kingdom, as well as internal strife. And the law of the strongest. That's an insane amount. Alfred said and then both of them frowned as Aurora had kept this information to herself to not demoralize anyone, she then spoke, and yet we live in Lumen Kingdom despite everything we have around 9 to 10 million humans, just not many into the army, in other words, due to the summoning of the heroes and the visions of the saintess the humans got used to living in comfort and peace, forgetting that they live in a world that they can die at any given time, they have turned into slothful beings. Aurora said coldly making both of them silent. Get me at least 500,000 soldiers and I promise I'll wipe the goblin race out of this world unless, of course there are other goblin kingdoms around the world seeing as we barely had any information about what's around us, the reason why I formed some scout parties when I joined the army and have been acquiring information from all the fronts, that include the sea in the west, and beyond the mountains in the east where it is recorded for an ogre kingdom to exist, but basically I'm drawing a map of the world, certainly we won't be able to reach to the deepest parts, and possibly not even to the edges of the world due to every freaking enemy we have to face because we don't have a single allied kingdom of any type, aside of perhaps the golems on top of the mountains to the east who are just peacefully living there, if it wasn't for that I'm sure we would have been invaded by that position as well. Even though she's saying everything bluntly and in an angry tone she doesn't look mad at all, she's truly different than her twin sister Iris who is fairly easy to read, what are ogres even, Alfred thought while paying attention to this little girl closely, the most interesting point would be her confidence that seems to have no end almost like a bottomless well, but from everything she has done the numbers don't lie, in a very short amount of time she's cleaned the entire central southern section of the forest and even cut the trees as she progressed shortening the territory of the goblins by force, picking small to big groups of enemies defeating them mercilessly without going beyond heavy injuries, there hasn't been a single death for now at least, if she were to fight an army of 1.2 million with what she has currently, everyone would simply die even if Aurora has the skills but does not have the numbers, she's bound to fall. Currently the defenses of the kingdom consist of mostly the guards, as the military left Isabella to command and will join us in the south through the support of the Pope, seeing as it was the choice of the people it simply can't be helped, furthermore peasants who hear your tales from the Pope, your speech, and also from the tournament, they will for sure be encouraged to join our army Aurora, I believe it's truly just a matter of time. I agree with Julius it'll be even easier now that it's flowering season named after the goddess Arya, the weather will be perfect for people to be convinced as well as I'm sure people are hearing all the changes and laws you and Julius been preparing, especially the one that protects those who end up with a disgraceful class, and that criminals will be solely those who harm others in some way, everything is changing, in fact, your brain is truly special, I'll let you meet my daughter once. She's finished her training, there are some memories that Alicia wishes to share with you to help you beat our enemies. To that Aurora replies, I'm thankful as every help is necessary especially information, the more I have the less two humans will die on the battlefield. Oops, the word toys almost escaped my mouth, she let out a smile. I'll be going now your highness, general if either of you needs anything just write me, I'll be contacting the noble houses that are connected to me, so the army side expands, once I have a decent number of troops I'll be going south to give you two a hand, and hone my skills too can't allow that freaking old man to mock me like that and get away easily next time I meet him. Seems like Iris did find a great teacher how amusing, Aurora smiles lightly, making it look like an innocent expression to not disrespect Alfred. I'm thinking in making word be spread for peasants who don't have a job to become guards increasing the law and enforcement of justice in the capital, and with an even better payment to become soldiers of our army, as well as doing a deal with the other prince and princess, so that they too get a share of men as the scale of war will need all fronts to survive since we don't know if it's only the goblins we'll be facing or not, and we may even end up fighting one of the other two successors. If they don't achieve enough, 
it's also an option that could lead to a usurpation of the throne once we win. You're truly a confident child Aurora, to think you're only nine years old and go to that extent even if I don't spend much time with you, I can tell that you're truly something else, I've met kids your age my daughter and your sister included and they're a lot more childish, the only child aspect of you is your body, for that mind of yours it's like it has lived for a very long time, Alfred says and then turns around leaving. See you later Alfred, Julius says as he stares at him leaving, and then the maid arrived with some tea and cake, seems like our break from work has arrived, Julius says happily as Aurora smiles at something since she's not looking at anything in particular. This world is starting to get fun with the number of pieces I can play with, Aurora thought to herself filled with amusement. I can't wait to destroy millions of beings with you again Aurora, it'll truly be a vicious and delightful meal, speaking of which. You didn't tell Iris that you two received two skills from the Saintess and the Goddess Blessing via Soulbound. It is fine, one of them is the Endless Cap which will allow my pandemonium skills to be better used, but she needs to awaken before we reach that stage, and the other Blessing skill is Endless Awakening which will be interesting to use once I'm alone, even though as a weapon I probably have a limited growth rate, but it should at least help me get to it faster. That way you'll become even more useful to our master as well as strong enough to protect us. Indeed. This world will be turned upside down soon enough Aurora, the voice started laughing madly in her head and then it started talking through her mind again, will you ever tell her about our past? After all, we did. As the voice was about to say something Aurora's head started hurting making the voice disappear, she places her hand in the spot where it's painful. Are you okay Aurora? Does your head hurt? Don't worry Prince Julius everything's fine. All right here have some tea it'll help. Thank you. She takes a light sip noticing it's pretty hot. Even if I wanted to tell Iris anything about my past life I don't remember it, I was something different in a world of humans I was a different being, something else entirely, but I don't remember what, in a way, I hoped the Red Book held the answers to my problems but the information was classified sadly, and even then my memories are all messed, cursed, sealed. I don't know who I am anymore, all I know is that I'm Aurora, and even that name feels rather, wrong for me.